What is up, YouTube? Welcome in to another edition of Bucky and BK live on Texas Sports Unfiltered and on the free Texas Sports Unfiltered app. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023, and the Buck and I are with you for the next two hours. Plenty of Texas football conversation to get into. It is Kobe Black Commitment Day. Will the Longhorns pick up a commitment from one of the top DBs in the class of 2024? Plus, postseason awards. That's right. We're going to be handing out some hardware this morning. Team MVP, Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year, Assistant Coach of the Year, and so much more. We've got some NFL power rankings to get into today. There's an interesting report about the future of Bill Belichick in New England that we need to talk about and some funny videos and audio to play for the people. We are jam-packed on a hump day edition of the morning program right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. What's going on, Buck? I'm doing quite well, BK. How about yourself? And uh, yeah, I, I know I, I saw out there swinging that club yesterday. You're looking good. Nah. Uh. Oh, no, you were man. okay. It was okay. You hadn't been out there in a while. Let me tell you, that was fun. That was uh, the folks at Lake Cliff. Thank you very much. That was uh, that was an enjoyable day. It really was. It was a beautiful day yesterday. It was, yeah. Man. Upper 60s in the middle of December. Had some wow. sunshine out there. You can't ask for much more than that, can you? It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And that's a really cool place out there by the lakes, you know. And it's it's just wide open, lots of fun. Unbelievable greens, you know, I mean, good to be out there with the boys playing a little golf yesterday, but folks at Lake Cliff, they did us right. They really did yesterday, and we appreciate that. Absolutely. If you want to become a member, please, member, please do. They've got about 20 memberships available. Yep, lakecliffgolfclub.com for more information yes. about that. But, yeah, we did our morning show there yesterday, had a ton of fun, and then they let us play out there on the course. And it is a beautiful course, man, wow. wide open. A uh, lot of margin for error on that place. Not enough for me, but a lot of margin for error at that yeah, so place. We got some water spots out there that aren't very much fun. Oh, and I found them. <laughs> That's for sure. I think we all found them yesterday. Uh, yeah. None, none of us played all that great. But a round of golf with the Texas Cheaters is always an eye-opening experience. That's for damn sure. You guys were passing money around after the round and i'm like what the hell is going on you guys are just making shit up as you go trying to no, figure they out pay up my birdies play. that's what they need to do pay up them birdies i think you guys ended up even like you literally were like just exchanging money with one another so fast that at the end of the day i think you guys literally all ended up with the same exact amount that you started with i lost a little bit even with two birdies i lost some yesterday the team the team deal when we played teams for six I won one, and I think I lost. No, I won. That's right. I won one. One won one. one. Two. Yeah, so I, I lost one. That's all. It was okay. I don't know. You guys are just making stuff up as you go, I think. Oh, and it's always something missing. Wait a minute. You missed that, or you missed that one. Yeah. You didn't miss that one, you know. Someone's conning you. Someone's doing a magic trick where they're just uh, getting all of y'all's money every score single keepers, time. Scorekeepers. Julie scorekeeper. Yeah, that's it's a smart one guy to keep the score, so that's, that's the problem. Nobody – Nobody wants to be the scorekeeper, so you have to trust somebody to be the scorekeeper. And you put all your faith in that person. Then when they're done giving you the score, you're like, no, that's wrong. Is it the same guy every time? Same guy. Uh-oh. Always Richard. Yep. Well, Richard is richer than the rest of you. Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt about it. Score. No doubt. Good morning to the soldiers at Fort Cabasas, Texas, the soldiers in the state of Texas, and all those that fight for us each and every day. Thank you so much for what you do. It is appreciated. Thank you very, very much, and please do be safe out there. Amen, amen. Thanks to uh, everybody for commenting this morning. Hit us up on the code of text line, 512-222-9328. Appreciate the love. Make sure you like this video if you're in here this morning. Uh, it was not a six-hour round. We got in and out of there in about four hours, man. When you, have, when you don't have those tea times, when you can go as you please, that works out. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. All right, plenty of Texas football to talk about, as I mentioned. But stop me if you've heard this one before, Buck. Last night in the NBA, Draymond Green got ejected for taking a cheap shot at somebody on another team. Yeah, that was a pretty cheap shot. Now, it wasn't a These nuts. kick <laughs> like we've seen from Draymond in the past. That guy has no regard. Going. 
No, that guy's a, a big fan of the gonads, or at least punching or kicking the gonads. We didn't have that, but we had a UFC spinning back fist from Draymond Green last night. Check this out. Middle of the game against the Suns, going up against Yusuf Nurkic on Phoenix, and he literally hits him with a spinning back fist. I feel like we need John Anik and Daniel Cormier and Joe Rogan on the call wow. for this year. Yeah, Draymond Green ejected. Third time this year that guy has been thrown out of a game. I mean, he literally turns around and punches this dude right in the face. He caught him right across the chin. Pow, right in the kisser. Yeah, and this guy is just coming off of being in there seeing the commissioner, so he'll be in there again. Yep, he's got a meeting with the league office today. We'll see. Fool me happens. once, fool me twice, fool me a thousand times. Yeah, that guy is. Uh, I mean, he's not fooling anybody anymore. He's no. he's a dirty player. He's obviously been a great player for Golden State throughout the dynastic run that they've had, but this is a, a long pattern of behavior at this point. And I love, I love the apology we got from Draymond after the game. He said, quote, I'm not one to apologize for things I mean to do, but I do apologize to Yusuf because I didn't intend to hit him. I sell calls with my arms, so I was selling the call, and I swung, and I unfortunately hit him. Or fortunately hit him. Yeah, you think that was selling a call? or That looked pretty intentional to me. You kind of know where the guy's face is when he's guarding you like that. First of all, you're not a ballerina, dude. Don't even give me that ballerina move that you just pulled. Yeah, You can't make that move. You can't make that move coordinated enough that a big guy like that, you're, I don't know if you want to hit him in the face. You want to hit him, though. You want to make, you're trying to make contact with him somewhere, and you did. Yeah, you're either going for a groin kick or a kidney punch or something Shot to the, to the neck. Yeah, I mean, something to the yeah. jugular. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 intentional. That's not a mistake. Yeah, that was uh, very deliberate without question. And I think Draymond's about to be suspended again. I mean, if he did that shit at a bar, he would get arrested. So. Oh, yeah. Feels like a suspension is is definitely coming. And you had the choke. Didn't Draymond Green choke out Rudy Gobert oh, yeah, earlier this season? Yes, he did. Had his hands around his throat. This guy really is something else. And Steve Kerr's head coach, you know, I don't know if something ever will happen to him for his player doing this over and over again. But, uh, yeah, there's your latest with Draymond Green. Uh, I'm waiting to see yeah. Draymond on court TV sometime. Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. I mean – once he's done with this with this antic that he's doing here, he'll be on court TV for something he's did outside of basketball. This dude can't help himself. A little Judge Judy action, oh, perhaps? That's ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Warriors are also struggling this year. They're 10 and 13, and a lot of people are thinking maybe the dynasty is officially over in Golden State. So yeah, I think there's some last-year contracts coming up right now, so – yeah, they've got some interesting decisions they've got to make. Their GM, Bob Myers, is now an analyst on TNT or ESPN, one of the two. Uh, it kind of feels like he jumped ship when uh, he realized the Titanic was going down. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, Golden State struggling, and Draymond Green continues to do the ridiculous stuff that he always does. And, once again, a suspension probably coming his way once again for a UFC-like move. That's a new one. We've seen plenty from Draymond in his NBA career. I don't know if we've seen the uh, the spinning back fist right there, making Izzy Adesanya happy with that one. Yeah, he's uh, he, this is this is going to be five or more. This is going to be closer to ten games here. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. How about this comment that I saw earlier? Yo, Buck, my son has the flu. He's He hasn't talked about never having the flu. He needs to talk about it more. Mm. You got to tell yourself you'll never have the flu, and you'll never have the flu. I'll never have the flu. I'll never have the flu. She's had it before, but she'll never have it from that point on. Gloria? Gloria's never going to get the flu again. That's impossible. Once you start saying that, the flu just gets scared and runs the opposite direction. She must be taking a tibia or whatever it is. A tibia? What was, isn't that, what was that deal the lady was taking the dancer? Oh, Jardians? Jardians. That's for, like, I diabetes, just, dude. I just saw a tibia. I don't know what that... That's something for your head. That's for head games when you start to forget shit, sort of like me. Oh, you know? are you taking that? Maybe you need oh, to be I'm taking Oh, I'm not taking that. any of that stuff. No. Optivia. 
I oh. take a baby. I take an 81 milligram baby aspirin a day and some Vicodin before I play golf. Taking baby meds? Take baby meds. Take one baby med every morning when Is I get up. Is that normal? Yeah. 81 milligrams helps you. It helps you, you know, keep the blood flow. Mm. Octavia is apparently for weight loss. So, oh, are you calling that woman from yesterday fat? Fat? No, she's a pretty lady. You think so? Yes. The dancer? Yeah, it looked like a big blueberry to me. <laughs> the dancer? Oh, man. I'm sorry about your son having the flu. Just yep. re- tell him to repeat that those words. I'll never have the flu. Well, Once if you he- have the flu and you start saying that, does it's that too mean late. the flu? Uh, okay, the flu doesn't go away quicker if you do no, something like that. No, it yeah. won't go away. You just have to, once it's over with, you have to start, when it starts to, it says start to go away, that's when you start saying it. You'll never have the flu. It means you'll never have it again. Right. But if you if you don't say it and you get, it's over with and you say, well, that's all right. I'll just wait it out. That's the problem. Don't try to wait it out. Talk about it. Get it out. Get out in front of it, huh? Absolutely. I got to start doing that a little bit more. That is smart. Hey, while we're on the uh, the NBA, we don't spend much time talking NBA basketball here, and I know some people are probably frustrated with the fact that we have talked about the NBA. Or they're, or they're happy as hell. Or some people are happy as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you hear what Stephen A. Smith reported about Zion Williamson earlier this week? Please don't. Is it about his eating habits? Of course it's about his eating habits. That's why we're <laughs> playing it. I mean, come on. It we're talking about the Jardians. We're talking about the Jardians lady. You're bringing up weight loss pills. Of course we're talking about Zion's eating habits right now. He must. He can put it down. This, Somebody got whose weight fluctuates. This is real, dude. Like, this sounds like something from The Onion, or this sounds like something that's AI generated. But this is Stephen A. Smith. On first take with Shannon Sharp. You know, that's where uh, Uncle Shannon is nowadays. Yes. And here was Stephen A. talking about a report that he heard involving Zion Williams. It is shameful. You got chefs in New Orleans. I'm not exaggerating. I'm quoting people. You got chefs in New Orleans who love him. They're looking for him. Everybody, every chef there wants to meet him. Because they know he'll show up to their restaurant. The, the, the word out on Zion Williamson is that he'll eat the table. I'm quoting. He'll eat the the table. What in the hell is going on with Zion Williamson? Dude, that is a real report from a... <laughs> he will eat the table? Real journalist in Stephen A. Smith. He will eat the table. And then he said it again on national television. If I'm Zion Williamson, I am kicking Stephen A.'s ass the next time I see him, or I'm just eating him. Oh, yeah, he'll probably just eat him. Yeah, he'll because probably that dude it. is eating the table. Yeah, and, and the everything table, around it. The tablecloth, the curtains in the restaurant. The chairs. The chairs, the crowns that are given out to the kids, for the drawing on the kids' menus. <laughs> that dude, can you imagine how the meals come in and he gets his portion first? Oh. They let him divvy out the portions to him and his guests. Oh, my goodness. You think he's a dessert first kind of guy? He's a, anything that hits, anything that gets in front of his eyes first. That's what he's having. Dude, New Orleans was a such jug a- of milk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> chugging it. He's, he's half chugging it out of the jug. Oh, you, you, ever, that guy? you ever tried to? You ever tried the gallon challenge? No, no, no. no. Oh, that's that's the worst night of your life, right there. Oh my God, that guy! I can imagine when that slice of cake he he stops him. Hey, oh no, no, just leave the cake here. You don't have to slice the cake. Just leave the cake. <laughs> they, they like roll out the dessert cart and he's like, just leave the cart. Yeah, that's like, right. No, you, you pick one and Zion, these aren't real. These are models. That doesn't matter. I'll, no. I'll, I'll give me the real ones, but I'll also eat these too. <laughs> God, he's so big. Oh my God. He is a big boy. And yeah, New Orleans was such a bad fit for that dude. I mean, that's oh my goodness. one of the best eating cities in the country. And I'm so excited to get out there. I think I gained like five pounds every time i go to nola well it's good because i'm trying to gain weight so this will be a good experience for me there you go yeah i I could put on a few lbs too so we'll make sure we get some good uh cajun Mm -hmm. food out there our guy michael says zion is on the seafood diet yeah oh yeah you see food you eat it man oh man yeah people ask zion what his favorite 
He eats the table. That's yeah. awesome. It again. is shameful. You got chefs in New Orleans. I'm not exaggerating. I'm quoting people. You got chefs in New Orleans who love him. They're looking for him. Everybody, every chef there wants to meet him because they know he'll show up to their restaurant. The, the, the word out on Zion Williamson is that he'll eat the table. I'm quoting. <laughs> he'll eat the table. What in the hell is going <laughs> on with Zion Williamson? That dude will eat the table. Anything that they roll out, he's eating. It's not like, hey, would you want to taste this? He goes, oh, no, I want to eat it. Just I don't need samples. It. I don't no need samples. samples. What do I need a sample for? I'll eat the whole thing. Whether God. I like it or not, it's going down. I, I hope we somehow, some way, end up in the same restaurant with Zion Oh, while we're out there. I don't want him coming over to my table eating eating my table. No, yeah, we might have to take our food to go and then run fast so he doesn't <laughs> tackle us trying to steal our grub. Uh, they asked Zion Williamson recently what his favorite food was, and his answer was more. More, yes. All of them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great it. player, man. Like, he's had a really good year. He's actually stayed healthy for the most part this season. Like, he's a supreme talent. There's no doubt about that. But – uh, yeah, the injuries have taken a toll, and you feel like maybe the weight has been a reason why he's been oh, hurt as often. Oh, you think that's one of the reasons why he stays hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a lot uh, for those legs and those feet to have to carry. Wow, you're playing basketball, so carrying that extra person on him. Yeah, <laughs> get that dude some Jardians. <laughs> oh man, get that guy some uh, Optiva or whatever you call it. Here's a, a big Tiva or whatever it is, just for memory loss. You know, it'll help you out with your memory or something. I'm like, I don't need that shit to help me with my memory. There's your girl right there, by the she's way. Okay, she's okay. Okay, she's out there dancing. She's doing her thing, making her coin. You know, yeah, that commercial plays all the time. So wearing her outfits, she's got the one, the banana fan outfit, the yellow one. It's got the yeah. blue one. I like the banana fan one. That was cool. Yep, indeed, indeed. That's what I was dancing to when she was doing the first one. Oh, I, yeah. I can do the little spin she does. Let's see it. I'm not doing it in my desk. I'm spinning around in my chair. Hey, we're on YouTube. You, you can't say you can do something and then not prove it to the people. When I'm back. <laughs> what? I don't even know what, what was that was. I'm back. There you go. You're impersonating Draymond Green doing a spinning back fist there. Poor Draymond getting blamed for that unfortunate incident last oh, night. Oh, my God. Now you're on his side. Oh, he just – I mean, he just swung. He wasn't inte- – he said he didn't mean to make contact. By the way, just because you make spinning sound effects doesn't mean that qualifies as a spin, Buck. Oh, really? I'm, I'm afraid so. thought I got back in a hurry. That was kind of That was kind of cool. You did get back in a hurry because you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's talk some Longhorn football. Kobe Black will commit later today. We've got some awards to hand out. But before we oh, yeah. dive into all of that, Buck, how about a shout out to one of our sponsors? How about our good friends over at Texas Orthopedics? If you're seeking that specialized patient focused orthopedic care, oh, and my left knee is starting to hurt me, you know, got that right knee repaired and got it replaced. And the, and the doc said, you know, eventually that left knee is going to need some help, too. Well, when I went to work out the right knee before I had surgery for three months, I worked that out and got back on the golf course really quickly. The left knee quit hurting because I worked, you know, I worked that one out, too. This one's starting to give in a little bit. But if you're that's Texas Orthopedics is the place you want to go. Now, their physicians specialize in surgical and non-surgical orthopedic care for children and adults. I'd rather have that non-surgical deal going on. But if you have to have surgery, that's the place you want to go. Spinal care, sports medicine, trauma care, joint replacement, rheumatology, and even more. When you're there, ask about Dr. Christopher Danny and Dr. Christopher Stockton. Their goal is to get you right back into good health and that great quality of life that you deserve. Texas Orthopedics is the largest independent orthopedic practice in the state of Texas. For more information, go to TXOrtho.com. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Texas Orthopedics and shout out to Olipop as well. Oh, yeah, get you some of that next time you're at the grocery store. Make sure you're picking up a couple of cans of that game-changing soda. Go to that H-E-B display right there and grab yourself all the different flavors. Tons. Yep, tons of different flavors of Olipop. It's great-tasting soda that's actually good 
for you. That's right. Inside of every can of Olipop, you're getting nine grams of fiber. You're only getting two to five grams of sugar and the flavor. I keep harping on the flavor with damn good reason. This tastes just like the stuff you grew up sipping. They've got the original cola. They've got the root beer. They've got the cream soda, the cherry cola, the lemon lime, all of the classic soda flavors that you've loved forever but without the crap that goes into drinking a soda. I mean, that is so bad for you. Speaking of Jardians, you're going to be on Jardians. <laughs> you keep drinking those Cokes and those real sodas. Now get you some Olipop. Hey, everyone's got their New Year's resolutions coming up. This is an easy one because it still tastes like soda, but it's healthy for you. So you there can you go. get healthy, but also still enjoy what you consume. Uh, Olipop has made it happen. Pick it up. Wherever you get your groceries, H-E-B, Walmart, Target, Costco, Whole Foods. They've got it at some of the convenience stores as well, including some of the 7-Eleven locations. Uh, yeah, drink Olipop. You won't regret it, man. Absolutely. Speaking of 7-Eleven, you see I had my hard copy with me yesterday. You did? Uh, yeah. I rolled in there with the hard copy of the Austin American Statesman from 7-Eleven. I, I got an early we, – we, we were out, uh, of course, on Highway 71 at 6 a.m., which looked like Grand Central Station at 6 a.m. My goodness. God. Going out, not coming in, but going out 71, going out west. I'm thinking, that's going to be a smooth sailing yeah, yesterday morning. Man, people were out there. They got to work. People got to work. I'm driving like 40 miles an hour on <laughs> 71 at 6 in the morning. It's like just sitting behind these two semis. Oh, no, can't get up all the hills up there. It's like, oh, oh shit, yeah. this thing's about to roll down and take me out. Yeah, that's that's um uh, that was surprising to me because I'd been, I, you know I'd been out that way I'd gone out you know I've it's been a long time since I played golf like when the the butt crack of dawn you know I'm generally you know having something to do in the morning so we get out there 11 11 30 to play but there are people that you know we saw them yesterday there were folks when the sun came up that were ready to go get their day underway get their golf and then get their you know they got to go there and get a, an hour worth of workout in first before they actually get to the golf course which is I don't get that. They're probably a lot better golfers than I am, probably because they do that. Me, get out of the cart and let's roll. Yeah, that, you don't take yeah. any practice swings, no practice swings. don't take any practice swing. No, let's go. I think you could be so much better if you actually did. Or take a practice swing? No, like, well, yes, a practice swing or did some kind of warm-up before you started the round. I warmed up. We talked for two hours. <laughs> Yeah, we were, we talked for two hours and had some great breakfast out there. I did there. have a nice sandwich. That sandwich was that hit the spot. That bacon egg with cheese and a, a little bit of a, a toast. That was awesome. Good yeah. food there. No kidding. And we're lucky. We're lucky. Our guy Jason says he's on Mopac near Dr. William Cannon going five miles an hour right now. Oh. Uh, yeah, the, one of the beauties of this job is most days, yeah, we don't have a commute. When we do have a commute, it's usually early in the morning. Like, we'll be at Sue Patrick tomorrow morning. Yes, we will. On Burnett Road, but we'll be there so bright and early that we don't have to deal with too much traffic. But, yeah, obviously right now it's, uh, it is it is brutal out there, man. Yeah, come visit us tomorrow for sure. I, I, I think they'll probably open up around 9 o'clock. We'll be there at 8. I'll talk to Jay today. I don't know if they're going to open up at 8 o'clock, but we will start the show at 8. But by about 9 o'clock, they're going to be ready to rock and roll, and they've got all the gear that you're looking for. If you're headed to New Orleans or you've got those Christmas presents that you want to get your Longhorn fans and friends and family, They've got it, man. They've got some outstanding golf shirts, golf apparel out there. They've got, they've got some nice little hoodies, and they've got some sales on their hoodies. They're like thirty-eight bucks for a hoodie. Hoodies are big. Kids like the hoodies. Yeah, I like the hoodies. Hoodies are great. I've got like six or seven of them. I love the hoodies. I'll be in a hoodie on Saturday morning there for Blue Santa. I guarantee you that. I'll wear a hoodie without a shirt underneath. What? You ever do that? No. Yeah, if it's like chilly. It's like 50 degrees, right? That's that will be the shirt that I wear. And that that will do it. I'm a big fan of those. So how do you like my how do you like my new thoughts of no golf if it's 62 or lower? I mean, 62 is it. It yeah, can't no. be I no no golf at, at 60. Oh, it's gonna be 60 today. Nope, that's too cold. Not too playing. Cold. I'd play in 60. No, man. 62 play, and above. I, I, I'm like 50 and above. Well, once it gets into what? the 40s, I don't think I can play. But 50s, I can tough that out. You can tough 55 degrees golf yeah, but, with, the, with the wind? No. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm not good, but I'll, I'll tough out the elements. I'll try it. 
I got to go play, man. There's that BS. People say if you take a few months off of golf, you'll actually be better for it. Doesn't it work. No. Yeah, I took like four months off of golf and I forgot how to play. <laughs> no. I'm like, I'm back at square one. It's the worst. No, you can take, it's all right to take a couple of weeks off. You can't take months off of no. golf and think you're going to be better. So I said, well, you forget your old, your bad habits. I'm like, no, you forget about golf. You forget how to swing. I'm out there doing like a Jeff Bagwell batting stance. Like, oh shit, wrong sport. <laughs> It was fine. You'll be just fine. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm not we worried about of, it. We got some guys that can hit it, though. Those guys can play. Yeah, some of the Texas cheaters have some game, man. There's no doubt about that. They all right. Putt like I can. That's all. No, nah, you, you are pretty good on the greens. You know, putt for show, drive for dough, putt. No, wait. Drive for show, putt for dough. There yeah, because I'm not driving it very far. It's not going very far. No. It takes me, it takes me a few hits to get it to the green. It takes you a few hits to get it to the fairway, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and those All fairways right. were running fast were they running fast yesterday Jeez, and the greens my god you'd barely <laughs> tap a putt and it's going way past the hole you got to learn an awful lot at that place i mean for putting you've got to. i mean that, those bent greens are fast as hell it's like you got a pool table no kidding no kidding Love fun it. course though yeah out at lake cliff go check them out you can even play a demo round if you're interested Absolutely. in becoming a member Today is commitment day for one of Texas's top recruiting targets in this class of 2024. Waco Connolly defensive back Kobe Black is set to make his announcement at his high school this afternoon. I think around 4.20 p.m. Interesting timing there, Buck. Is he, He's got safety. They got some height on him. Is he? So he's – it depends on who you ask, right? Like some recruiting sites have him listed as a safety – some recruiting sites have him listed as a cornerback. Like, I literally just did a Google search for Kobe Black, and 24-7 has him as a safety, and on three has him as a corner. So it, it kind of depends on who you talk to, sure. where Kobe Black projects uh, at the next level. Um, more people I've talked to say safety. They at least feel like his ceiling is higher at sure. safety than it is at corner. But he did play a lot of corner at Connolly in high school, so I feel like there's a chance that at least some schools out there are recruiting him to be a CB at the next level. But either way, this guy is a high four-star. He is one of the top 50 players in the nation. The 24-7 sports composite ranking has him listed as the number 41 player in the country and the number 10 player in the state of Texas. The Longhorns have been in on Kobe Black for a long time. And every crystal ball projection that I've seen out there, Buck, has Kobe Black committing to Texas. And, of course, signing day is a week away, so he'll commit. And you would think a commitment this late in the cycle means that he will put pen to paper and actually sign with UT next week. But this would be a big-time get for the Longhorns. Uh, the DB I room they struggled. Need. Yeah, the DB room has struggled this year for Texas, and you can never have too many defensive backs in today's era of college football. This would be nice. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they need him in a, in a bad way. They need him and a couple more just like him if they can because that room needs to be filled. That's like your running back room. You just don't have enough of those. You, you never have enough of those, and, and especially at pure corner. You know, you can, you can turn guys into safeties, but for this group, they need cornerbacks that can, that can cover, guys that aren't in a constant backpedal, you know. And this group is uh, – this kid, I, I mean, if, if he's played safety, and most kids do in high school, they're safety, they're corner, they're, they're everything when it comes mm -hmm. to the secondary. So, I mean, that's good to hear. I mean, I, I mean, is he a six footer, six one, six two? I uh, mean, let me pull that up. Six foot. That's fine. Yeah, six foot one ninety. So that's None a wrong relatively with that. relatively standard DB build. Yeah, I mean, if he was a wide receiver, you'd be going great. That's great. Six foot one ninety can fly. Yeah, you got to have him. So, I mean. Can never have enough of those type of athletes. So, and, and Texas truly needs them. Yeah. And Texas already has three cornerbacks committed in this class of 2024. They currently do not have a safety coming in. Now, the Longhorns are going after Andrew Makuba in the transfer portal, the former uh, LBJ kid who has started his college career at Clemson and has played there the last couple of years. The Longhorns trying to bring him home. And Texas uh, also in the mix for some. Uh, another safety, a guy who's committed to Florida right now, Xavier Filsame, who is a five-star who Texas is trying to flip. I think the Longhorns actually have an in-home visit with him this week. And there's a lot of buzz about uh, that young man flipping from Florida 
to Texas. I think he's from McKinney, so from the state of Texas. The Longhorns would obviously love to keep him here in the state. So no safeties currently committed in this class of 24, but Texas has their eyes on a couple of them, uh, both in recruiting and in the transfer portal too. So Sark, I think, realizes that, hey, the safety play that we've had around here, not great. Obviously, Jalen Catalan uh, is hitting the portal. Yep. You know, he's gone. So that is a, a point of emphasis, I think, for Texas fans. And it feels like the Texas coaching staff realizes that needs to be a point of emphasis for them. Yeah, plus you're going to come here and play early. If you're really, really good, you're playing the minute you get here. Yeah, and I think that's that's an appealing thing for Phil Same and for Kobe Black. Like, Oh, yeah. They obviously want to play for a contending team. I think most people do. But they look at Derek Williams, who's a true freshman, who has been a big part of the Texas safety rotation this year. Unfortunately, he suspended for the first half of the Sugar Bowl for that garbage targeting call against Oklahoma State. But, uh, like, he's been playing a lot. So these guys want to play early, and they want to play on good teams. And it feels like if you come to Texas right now, you're going to have the opportunity to do both. Yes, indeed. So I would like that. Yeah, this afternoon, Kobe Black set to commit. He he has pushed his commitment date back. He was uh, originally slated to make his announcement the week of the Big 12 title game, but he postponed it. And usually that scares me, right? Because everyone thought he was going to pick Texas, and then he delayed his date. And it's like, well, does that mean there's another school that's really pushing? And does that mean he's having second thoughts? But the belief as to why that happened, Buck, is Kobe Black has a brother who plays on Oklahoma State right now. Ooh. So Oklahoma State's in the mix for Kobe Black, too. Uh, they're one of his finalists for well, him. He wanted to see if Texas could beat them, and that's fine. That ended up happening that way. Yeah, maybe that was a part of it, but I also it's like, man, it, is it disrespectful to your family if you commit to the school that your brother's playing against this Before weekend? Before the game? Yeah. Like oh, I, that, would be, that would not be cool. I think that was uh, kind of a part of things. So Yeah, that makes sense. You wouldn't do, want to do that to your family. Yeah. You'd be pissing people off before Christmas. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I think that's uh, – I don't think Longhorn fans should be too nervous about uh, the postponement for Kobe Black and why he pushed things to today. Um, once again, all of the crystal ball projections that I've seen on the interwebs over the last few days have Kobe ultimately committing to the Longhorns, which would be great. That is great. That's that's great news right there. Yeah, indeed. Someone asked how many years does Makuba have left. I think it's two. I think it's yeah. at least two. Yeah, it seems like he's been at Clemson for a while. I mean, the Makuba brothers are – man, those are those are fantastic players. So it would be nice to have him for a year or two back home. It really would be. Yeah. And, and he can play now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he absolutely can play. Um, you know, Texas wanted him out of high school, and he ultimately decided to go play for Brent Venables when he was the defensive coordinator at Clemson. But Clemson did a great job of recruiting Austin in recent years. Oh, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say that in past tense, but it felt like, yeah, when when Dabo and Brenton Venables were kind of at their peak, uh, they were plucking all sorts of talent. Yes, they were. Of course, their quarterback right now, Cade Klubnick, is uh, an Austin area kid from Westlake. So uh, there you go. There's the latest on recruiting. Uh, be sure to tune in to It's Only an Hour with Jeff Howe and Jordan Scruggs. They're going to give you all the latest intel that you could ever need. Uh, those guys are as plugged in as you could possibly be. So they'll talk more about Kobe Black's commitment, which is coming later this afternoon. And uh, they'll give you the latest and greatest on all things Texas recruiting. Right now, the Longhorns have the 11th rated class in the country, which feels kind of low. But between now and next Wednesday, when the first signing day gets here, I wouldn't be surprised, Buck, if that class ranking jumps into the top five. No doubt. I mean, if they're able to get Kobe Black to commit, they're able to get Phil Samay to flip, and there's a couple of other names that the Longhorns are going after, uh, there's a chance, once again, Steve Sarkeesian is able to close on a top-five recruiting class. Last year, Texas brought in the number three uh, group in the country, and once again, it's not quite that high right now. I don't know if it gets that high, but uh, shoot, I, I do expect it to be decently higher than 11 by the time this thing is all set. Oh, and up. when the new year rolls around after the bowl games are over with, things are really going to start to kind of perk up. I mean, that that transfer portal is going to be – that thing will be hit hard. There will be people moving all over the place in the transfer portal if yeah. they haven't already. But after after the bowl games are over with and people, you know, feel like, well, you know, I thought I was going to play here. I'm not going to play here. Maybe I can get back home. 
closer to home. That this thing will be, it'll be a madhouse like it's been over the last couple of years. Definitely. Yeah. One of the uh, Texas's transfer portal targets, or at least reported transfer portal targets, uh, committed to Oklahoma yesterday, a wide receiver by the name of Dion Burks. Uh, I don't know if Texas ever offered him. I don't know how serious Texas was about getting him. Uh, there are tons of receivers in the portal that have been linked to Texas. Burks is a great player, though. This is not like, ah, he committed to Oklahoma, so he sucks. We didn't want him anyways. Like, I mean, I, I don't want him to make it sound like that. It's a good get for Oklahoma. This kid was a second-team All-SEC this year, so he's uh, very, very talented coming over from, I think Vanderbilt is where he was. Yeah, Texas uh, is not in the Purdue. Purdue. He was second team all Big Ten. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Texas is not in the market anymore for filling spots for depth purposes. They're looking for guys who can play. You know, they're looking for yeah. players now. Yeah. 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 And look, I, I think Deion Burks will be a player, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Texas was focused on some other guys who are sure. already in the portal or if there are a few receivers who haven't entered their name in the portal yet, who uh, Texas is maybe hopeful that will. And uh, then they'll go after them there. So yeah, you can't contact them, but you know who is because they got friends, they got buddies who are, who are out there telling. They tell their friends, their friends tell the other coaches, and that's just how it works. You're telling me tampering happens in the transfer portal? I got to believe it does. Wow, really? Every day, twenty four seven. Next thing you're going to tell me is we get tr uh, tampering with NBA free agency. There's no way that happens, right? Next, you'll tell you that Draymond didn't mean to hit that guy across his <laughs> mug last night. Yeah, Draymond's also a great guy who's innocent of any crime that he's ever committed. No, man. All of those things are true. So, yeah, the latest and greatest uh, for Texas football. And you're right. Like, Texas, even if they don't have a top five or top three recruiting class from a high school standpoint, uh, I think Texas is going to have one of the top three to five just off seasons in terms sure. of accumulating talent with the combination of the portal and high schoolers. Like just this, this thing is rolling right now and uh, people want to come play for UT. And now you and told me the Russian, the, the Russian from UTSA, he is coming yesterday. No, no, oh, no he no, hasn't no. made a decision. Oh, he, he was on campus. He was on campus. Yeah. He took a okay. visit this past weekend, Trey Moore, the uh, edge from UTSA, but he's being targeted by a number of different programs, including the, Ohio State. Ohio State University. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, Trey Moore, I think Texas was the dream school for him. He's a Texas kid. You would hope that, uh, yeah, the fact that he's from here and obviously UTSA is just an hour, hour and a half away from UT. Yeah, you need to come here. There's no reason to go to Ohio State. They can't beat Michigan. Don't you'd forget like to think. Yeah, you'd like to think all of that stuff is enough to sway Trey Moore to come here, but you know, NIL potentially plays a role for anybody in the portal. Got so, some cash here. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. But if Ohio State is desperate, they've got some cash up there. Yeah, that's true. So we'll uh we'll see. It doesn't seem I would say their coach dry. their coach is pretty desperate going yeah, into next is. year. Oh my God. Yeah, he is. Speaking of tampering, I wouldn't be surprised if Ohio State is doing some portal tampering to try to get a quarterback. Well, they're just trying to catch up to the cheaters right around the road from them. They have to. Yeah. Got to keep up with that group. Now those reports coming out about Jim Harbaugh maybe signing an extension up there at Michigan. I'm sitting here thinking he for sure is off to the NFL because he's trying to pull a Pete Carroll and avoid any punishments that could be coming Michigan's way. And now people are thinking eh, he might actually stay and yeah, get which a tells you they're dropping everything. Uh, I don't think the Big Ten is going to let them drop that. Oh, I don't know if the Big Ten cares. They've already closed their investigations. It's now the NCAA, right? Oh, that's right. They already got their money. They're about to get their bowl money now, playoff money. I'll see how much the NC2A cares. They cared about USC back then. Oh, they did. Even though they've got a reputation for letting those big blue blood type programs off the hook, they did uh, They did care about USC a little bit. And Pete Carroll said, I'm out of here. And Pete Carroll didn't want any part of that. And I, I've always thought that's what Jim Harbaugh was going to do until recently. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, if he actually does ink an extension to stay. Yeah, how, but how fun is, is it for him to be beaten up on Ohio State every year now? Three in a row. He must, that must be so enjoyable for him, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm going to stick around just – I may lose to Minnesota, but I'm going to beat the shit out of Ohio State again. Well, he ain't losing to Minnesota. I can tell no. you that. Nobody's losing to Minnesota. Or Illinois. Yeah. yeah. No, no one's losing to your guys either. 
Um, what is it? Michigan Harbaugh's ninth year there. So he lost the first six against Ohio State and then has won three in a row. Yeah, that's got to feel pretty good. Yes. To turn things around. I mean, it was a big deal when they won the first one, but the fact that, yeah, they have proven to be the better program three years in a row. Better uh, cheaters. Yeah. Well, the cheating, I think, probably contributed to that. No. Definitely. They had an edge. Yeah, they knew their plays. They were definitely scouting Ohio State this year before Connor Stallions lost his job, right? Right? Yeah, he, he lost a good gig. Yeah, and that, that my, my hope is that, you know, if Texas ends up playing Michigan in the national championship game on Jan 8, that Michigan didn't have enough time to scout Texas and learn Ooh. our signs, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't do the same thing over and over again, like – when we have our big guys catch touchdowns, we wait like a couple months after the, the initial touchdown that they have when we run the, the defensive guys in there. Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. That was just because those those dumbass Oklahoma State, those dumbass Cowboys that screwed that up. Come on. They You're mad about a play that worked. Suckers. It worked. What a bunch of – come on, Gundy. What a to- sucker. We got to see uh, T Sweat strike the Heisman pose. You didn't like that? I did like that a lot. That was badass, man. There's no way we see that in the playoffs. Oh yeah, yes though. you will. Oh yeah, you will. That's coming out. That's coming out in one of these playoff games. It, it only comes out if Texas has like a three touchdown lead in the second half. You don't think it'll come out at a crucial time? No. No. Only against those the cow pokes there. That wasn't a crucial time. I think Sark realized that he could call whatever the hell he wanted and it was going to work. (laughs) I mean, Gundy was going to fold up his tent. Oh, Gundy had no answers that day. Sark knew it too. I mean, the first couple of drives, Texas marched down the field with ease. Throwing to running backs. They were five for five with five touchdowns in the red zone. Think about how awful Texas's red zone offense has been all season. And they were five for five with five touchdowns. Now, I'd love to think that that is Texas turning a corner. And I obviously feel better about the red zone offense going into the Sugar Bowl than I would have if they didn't have a performance like that. Could it feel any better better doing that to Tech and and Oklahoma State, though? They struggled in the red zone against Tech. Like, they remember, Burt Auburn kicked five field goals in that game because they couldn't punch it in. So it's not like – That's right. That was supposed to be 70. Yeah, I wish we had two games in a row of Texas going five for five in the red area with five touchdowns. Unfortunately, we don't. At least we have one. But I think uh, with what we know about the Texas red zone, oh, I think that's more of an indictment on Oklahoma State than it is like. Oh, you for sure. Oh, Texas has clearly figured something out in uh, inside the 20. So there you go. All right, before we get into some uh, awards, let's hand out some hardware for the yeah, Texas man. Longhorns here in 2023. But before that... Uh, a coughing buck will tell you about one of our great sponsors. Got to tell you about Relax the Back. And let me tell you, yesterday I was in one of the, the club chairs, which was okay, but it wasn't like the one I'm sitting in right now from Relax the Back. 20 years ago, I had surgery on my thoracic back. I had it reconstructed. And now I'm feeling great because I found the chair that I needed to be in. And I found it at Relax the Back. They have all the different types of chairs, recliners, office desk chairs, stand-up desk chairs that, that uh, Trey Elling is looking to, to purchase, as a matter of fact, from Relax the Back because, you know, he's having hip problems because of the sand, I believe. Playing that, you know, that tough volleyball, hitting that sand so hard, dislocating hip and joint areas. So now he can find that comfort just like I did. And you can also. tempur pillows, tempur mattresses. As I said, all these different types of chairs that are going to fit you. You can go over to the store, whether it's at the Hill Country Galleria or up on 183, folks. And sit in those chairs. And, and, and it's not just you go up there, you look at a chair, you go, you sit in it, you get to, to feel the way it makes that support feel in the lumbar area, your thoracic area, or even your neck area. They've got all the support that you need. Two stores, the Bee Caves at the Hill Country Gallery across from Whole Foods, where I get after that lady who almost ran me over and almost wiped out the entire parking lot. Or there's the other store at the Gateway Shopping Center across from the container store. Live pain-free like the buck and relax the back. 
Yes, indeed. Shout out to Relax the Back. Also, shout out to AV Consultations. Hi, this is Tom McKay, owner of Audiovisual Consultations, and all of us at Audiovisual would like to wish you and your family a happy holiday season. This time of year can get a little hectic, so we want to remind you to relax, enjoy the season with your family and friends, and give us a call for all your home entertainment needs. If you save the time you spend in traffic and big store crowds, you'd have more time with the people you actually enjoy. So smile, hug your kids, make love to your wife, and cheer the game with your friends. Call us at 255 8 Six seven eight. That's five one two two five five eight six seven eight, or online at avconsultations.com. Catch you a little tune. Oh yeah, oh yeah, with the uh, Tom playing the piano too. That's absolutely that's Linus. Cool. Good job there, Schroeder. Where to go? Did we figure out it was Schroeder who's playing Schroeder. the piano? He's a piano player. Yes. <clears throat> Schroeder. Good job there, Schroeds. All right. Also, shout out to Woods Comfort System. They were here yesterday. Everything is ready to go. I'm ready for the winter months. You know, winter's just around the corner on the 17th on Sunday of this week. Oh, that's the call? That's the call, yes. Now, I'm Even not though winter, winter officially you. starts on the 21st, you're calling for it to start on the 17th. Who named it that? The captain again? The captain of the plane? Uh, God. It wasn't the almond. No, it was not the farmer's almanac. I go by the almanac. I'll let you know when it feels like it's winter. And the 17th, I feel like it's going to be winter on the 17th. Not not, not the 21st. What day is the 17th? Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. You want to guess the high temperature on your first day of winter? 63? 67. Ooh. Now that's a winter we can all get with right there. Yeah, you're calling that winter? Hell yeah. How does that work? It's just the date, man. It's not. Remember, I did call for rain. By the way, it, it was raining this morning. No, it I, I did call for rain for tomorrow. So the 24-hour window has been exposed again, which I, I, of course, got that right. Again, I'm working in the 90 percentile now. That's I, sure. I need to get a degree in meteorology. I need to be a meteorologist with a degree now. Yeah? You're going to go back to college? No, I'm not going back. I just want a degree. You know how these people just get one? Honorary degree? Yeah, I want an honorary degree. For being one day off with your rain prediction? Better than the others. Better than most. You know that. I think it's, I'm looking at my weather forecast right now, and it's hilarious to me that you called for it to rain on Thursday because my prediction says it's supposed to rain on Wednesday and on Friday, but not on Thursday. So, so I'm going to get it two ways. I'm going to get it for Friday because I called for it on Thursday. No. I'm going to get it for today. This thing is working out really well for me. I'm becoming popular all around the country. <laughs> you, you could have earned yourself a degree if you're like, you know what? It's going to rain on Wednesday and Friday, but not Thursday. Instead, you just said Thursday, and now you want credit? Yeah. I, the only one who gives me credit is Trey. Trey says if you can get it within one day forward or, you know, Forward or backward, he said, you deserve it. He said, because the other cats can't do that. They can't get it by the week. No, you're right. This is, uh, I just, I don't like giving you credit, but I sure as hell don't like giving the weather guessers credit (laughs) because they're they're never right. All right. Let's give out some awards now. By the way, woodscomfortsystems.com. That's the website. I want to make sure. Be like the buck. He's got the uh, the HVAC system hooked up by Woods Comfort Systems. If you want to make sure your place, is ready to roll for the winter whenever it actually starts. Uh, make sure you reach out to Woods Comfort Systems. 60 been, years. Yep, they've been around Central Texas for 60 years. Not 16, 6D. And uh, they will make sure your home is taken care of so you and your family are cool and comfortable or warm and comfortable yes. all year long. Awards time, shall we? Okay. We're going to give out MVP. We're going to give out Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Special Teams Player of the Year, Freshman of the Year, Assistant Coach of the Year. Can't really give out a Coach of the Year. That'd probably be Sark. And also a Sleeper of the Year, a guy who really surprised you and stood out, maybe exceeded expectations for you this season. So we're doing all of that with Texas football. This feels like a good time to make that happen with this – little lull that we have between the Big 12 title game and the college football playoff game against Washington, which is now 19 days away. So we'll start with the biggest one, Buck, and I will give you the honors. Who is your Texas Longhorn team MVP through 13 games? Adnan Mitchell. Really? 
Yes. Most valuable player. Yes. I, 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 I mean, I think he's, I think, I mean, I, I know there are, are probably, there's probably one more talented receiver that maybe slightly more, slightly, I'm going to say it again, slightly more talented because of his, the speed factor. But I think he's made the difference in what this offense is about. I think he's uh, brought some maturity to this football program. You know, and, I mean, he, he's the guy who makes the tough catches. He's made big time catches. He scored touchdowns. I think he's been very dependable for no matter what, who the quarterback was. I mean, even for the two games that Quinn Ewers didn't play, that dude was there. He made plays. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think this team would be where they are uh, without him. I mean, I know there's others that play on, on the other side of the ball, but without this kid this year, I don't think they would have been where they are right now. And did you hear that? What was that? Did you hear that? I, I didn't mean to play that over you. I was trying to get a drop. No, I, did, I didn't hear it. <laughs> I think people on the app might have heard. Uh, hold, hold on. And now we've got now we've got all sorts of stuff happening here. Now playing that lady in the airplane who's seeing things. You got technical difficulties on my end here. No, not playing the lady in the airport. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a uh, a rendition of what you did to that lady in the parking lot here in a moment. Oh no! <laughs> I gotta get I gotta get that set up. So you're going okay. Ad Mitchell is your pick. Yes. I like that. I like that explanation. Um, I'm gonna go with Devondre Sweat. As my okay. team MVP, I just I think he's been the best player on this team all year long. Uh, he's been the most consistent player on this team all year long. I think you could make a case for a couple of different Longhorns, and I think for a lot of people they would have gone with Jonathan Brooks before he got hurt. But uh, the fact that Texas continued to win and continued to run the ball well after Jay Brooks went down with an injury, I, I think that probably takes him out of uh, my running at least. I won't speak for anybody else. Yeah, Tavondre Sweat. He's and he won the Outland Trophy. Like he was the yes. only Texas Longhorn to win one of those major national mm -hmm. awards. Yes, absolutely. Now Texas has had a few guys get on All America teams, which is great. But yeah, one dude winning one of those best blank at your position in the league or in the country, and that was Tavondre Sweat winning the Outland Trophy as the best interior lineman on either offense or defense in the nation. Uh, that guy has just stepped up in so many big moments. And this defense has been as good as it's been because of him. And this team, I think, has been be as good as it's been because of him. So, T-Sweat is uh, my pick Makes for sense. MVP. What about Offensive Player of the Year, Buck? I'm going to – I mean, I know he's got hurt, but I'm going to make Jonathan Brooks my Offensive Player of the Year. Okay. You know, I, I, loved I mean, I loved everything that he did this year. I, I think he – Played above and beyond. I, I mean, it was, it was, it was a terrible injury that happened to him. You know, kind of late in the season. But I, I mean, I think his growth over the course of a year. I think there were things that we thought he could do, but I don't think that a lot of people thought they would see the way he played and 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 how important he was and how good he really, really is. I mean, he's a special player. He's one of the best in the nation. I mean, I, 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 I've got to give that award to him. Yeah, He's the offensive I'll player of the year. I agree with you. Uh, even though Brooks did miss the last few games, um, yeah, what, what Jonathan Brooks meant to this offense before he went down was huge. And, yeah, he carried this offense for large portions of the season. Yes, he did. Uh, he wasn't even a starter for this team. And when he left, he was one of the favorites to win the Doak Walker Award. He also still finished as a second-team all-conference player despite tearing his ACL and missing a couple of games. Uh, yeah, the, the guy was so important to this Texas team. And, he was the best offensive player for the Longhorns while he was on the field. And I think his impact was felt, even though he hasn't played the last couple of games. Uh, I think he's taught a lot of things to CJ Baxter and Jaden blue. And sure. I think, uh, yeah, their success has been uh, in large part because of what Jonathan Brooks has done for them. Just setting an example of what you need to do to be a really, really good running back at a place like the university of Texas. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes If he does come back, how he comes back in his, his workout habit, his routine, and what he looks like as a player. Yeah, that's obviously a huge off-season talking point for Texas, right? What happens with Jonathan Brooks? You'd obviously love for him to come back. I mean, if he does, he might be the favorite to win the Doak Walker next year. Sure. Uh, he's a freaking beast. But, you know, Mel Kuyper Jr. still has him as his top running back in the he draft. still does? Still does, despite the torn ACL, despite the fact that he probably won't be able to participate in the combine or wow. any other pre-draft 
activities if he decides to go pro. Uh, Mel Kuyper still giving Jay Brooks a ton of love. So it's a lot of love for coming off a, a major injury and playing that position. Yeah, because everybody doesn't come back the same on that. I mean, you, I that's one of those you got to wait and see. But if Mel Kuyper is believing that, that'll be incredible. He'll have to work awful hard. I mean, that that's that's a that that's that's an amazing thought right there. Yeah. Some people come back better, you know. Some people they're that comes back better. Others, you know, we see that in wide receivers. It seems like it takes another a full year, a full year, and then into uh, some of the you know when you once you get back into the game and that kind of situation, it looks a little bit different. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, that was that was like the one bright side, and it was incredibly dim. But when Jonathan Brooks went down for an injury, my thought was, all right, well, I guess we'll get him for another year. Like would have preferred to have him for the rest of this season and help him be a part of a national championship team. But uh, him getting hurt maybe means that he'll be back in 2024. Then cool. That's exciting. Absolutely. Uh, be great to have Jay Brooks here for another year after what we saw from him this year. Uh, but yeah, I guess there's still a chance that despite the ACL tear, he decides to take his talents to the next level. Well, if he feels like he was going to be a second round, third round pick, somebody's liable to take a flyer on him in the third round. Or maybe if even he, in the second round. Yeah, so that's that that might be the differentiator right there. Like, I know Jay Brooks was putting up numbers similar to Bijan Robinson in Bijan's last year in Austin, mm -hmm. but Brooks wasn't going to be a first round pick. Like, no, Bijan's oh, no. just a, a different animal. So, like, my thought is, okay, maybe if Brooks is going to be a second round pick, like sure. maybe that's enough for him to go. But if it's like if he hears from NFL teams and personnel that it's going to be third or later yeah we want I to think... see you we want to see how you come back from this injury yeah. what's yeah. your what are, what are your workout habits like well i mean in order for him to be as good as he is obviously he works out pretty damn hard because and he's pretty physical so you know he's going to work his ass off to come back so uh but in my in my mind if i'm looking at the history of running backs i'm thinking why do i want to come back come back to the sec and get banged up by those cats for another year that's just more licks on my body as a running back anyway. And if right. I'm going to go in the third round, say I'm going to go in early third round, late second round, I mean, you weren't going to be a first round pick. You weren't going to, that wasn't going to happen. If he'd have won the Doak Walker award, still he was going to be, you know, second round. So if you go later in the second round coming off an injury, I'd probably be out of here. I probably wouldn't come back. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what the, uh, what the line is for Jonathan Brooks. If there is a line, right? Like if he, if he thinks he's going to be a second round pick, does he go, uh, and if he doesn't think he's going to be a second round pick, does he stay? Well, if he thinks he's going to be even a third round pick, the possibility of going. I don't know. I mean, he he could make more money here at Texas next year than he could on a third round rookie contract. So you talked about it as a running back. You only have X number of hits that you could take. Uh, there's less tread or excuse me. There's more tread on those tires. There's less lasting power to those tires than any other position in football. And now you're coming with a major surgery. Yeah, so maybe Brooks is like, hey, but my goal was to play in the NFL. I've got a chance to go play in the NFL next year. I'm going to do that. Uh, or he says, hey, I think I can improve my draft stock. I love sure. it in Texas. Uh, I think we could compete for a national championship again. I want to prove to the world that I'm still really, really good. And hell, I can be even a better. Pretty good young uh, group of offensive linemen returning. Yeah, most of the O-line will be back. Like It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting decision for Jay Brooks to make. Hope he comes back. That goes without saying. Sure. But, uh, I don't know if it's as cut and dry as a lot of Longhorn fans may. All right. So both of us go with Jay Brooks as our offensive player of the year for Texas. What about defensive player of the year, Buck? Well, you named him your your player of the year, so that's who I'm taking the defense. Sweat. I mean, there's there's just no doubt about how good he was. I mean, as you said, all the things that you said about him as your most valuable player, I, I'll, I'll say the same about him as the defensive player of the year. There's just, there's nobody like that guy in the country, you know, and it, as, as hard as he works at all parts of his game, he's great against the run. He's, he's, he's great against putting pressure on the quarterback. He's a boundary. He's a sideline, a sideline guy for a guy, 360 pounds. He's everything that you're looking for. And, and a team leader. I mean, people follow this cat. So he's got to be my defensive player of the year. Okay. Yeah. Hard to argue with that. I'll, uh, I'll go with somebody else. I'll do what the big 12 did, right? The big 12 named Tavondre sweat. It's defensive player of the year. And they named Byron Murphy. It's defensive lineman of the year. Interesting. So, 
Well, everyone gets a trophy action, but I feel like Byron Murphy deserves some love, so I'm going to give him some love. Yeah, yeah. T okay. Sweat was my team MVP for what you just talked about. Byron Murphy, my defensive player of the year for Texas, because well, he was just about as good as Devondre Sweat was. I mean, those two guys were the highest graded interior defensive linemen in the country. Like, they're amazing, and they fed off of each other too. Like Devondre Sweat doesn't have the season that he had unless Byron Murphy's playing right next sure. to him and vice versa. So having that one-two tandem there on the interior of that defensive line was absolutely massive for Texas. Uh, Byron Murphy was a beast, especially in terms of getting after the quarterback. Oh, right? yeah. you, don't, you don't think much about pressure when you're talking about interior D linemen. That's usually reserved for the edge guys. Both of those guys, but especially Byron Murphy, were able to do a tremendous job of getting pressure right up the middle, and that's where quarterbacks hate pressure more than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah, even though Byron Murphy's a little bit undersized, uh, that dude overachieved. He has been a tremendous, tremendous player for Texas, more than likely gone after this season. But that one-two punch right there of Sweat and Murphy, I mean, you just think about some of the great defensive tackles that Texas has had over the last two decades. Like, I mean, Tavondre Sweat, I don't think he's Casey Hampton, but like he, he's close to that conversation with all that he's done for Texas this year. You know, Byron Murphy, I don't think he's Sean Rogers, but he's close to that conversation with all that he's done. You think about Malcolm Brown, you think about Lamar Houston, oh, some yeah. of the other greats. I mean, the Longhorns have had so many good DTs. Dude, Malcolm so, Brown was a stud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. First round pick. And he was, uh, I think, the last unanimous defensive lineman All-American that Texas has had. And that's obviously what Tavondre Sweat is about to accomplish. It's not official yet, but he's going to be a unanimous uh, first team all American when this thing is all said and done. So yeah, like those guys are in that conversation, man, which is really, really cool. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, they're, they're both a huge part of why Texas is two wins away from a natty and uh, they deserve some love. For and Murphy's sure. out of here probably, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think he's already accepted a senior bowl invite. So he could come back for another season if he wanted to. Yeah. But, but without the other guy over there, that combination, that's a little different. Right. Yeah, it's like on one hand, it's like, well, can you prove that you're that good even without Devondre Sweat? Like, that And I think help. he would be, but he's going to catch a lot of double teams from this point on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've led myself to believe that uh, Byron Murphy is gone, and of course, T-Sweat has to be gone. So uh, there you go there. What about special teams player of the year? You know, th th this could be easy because Burt Auburn set some records this year, but Ryan Sanborn was great as the punter. Uh, Xavier Worthy had some big time returns. Keelan Robinson was a big time factor on Just special. Go ahead teams. and give it to your guy with the red hair. That's all. Sideshow Bird. Yeah, nineteen in a row. Yeah, yeah. I mean he that feels like the right guy, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go with Bird Auburn as well. Once again, I mean those other guys. Ryan Sanborn was great, uh, especially you know early and midway through the season when this Texas offense was a little stagnant. And they needed Sanborn to win the battle of field position in some of those close games. Yep. He was really, really good. And that was a great get. That was great self scouting by Texas, realizing yes, that their punting wasn't good enough in 2022. They knew they needed to go to the portal and bring somebody in who was going to make an impact. And Brian Sanborn wasn't long ball Michael Dixon by any stretch. Oh, no. But he was uh, more than solid for Texas. Obviously, obviously Xavier Worthy, it's big time punt returns for this team. Keelan Robinson, pump blocks, kickoff returns for this team. But, yeah, Bert Auburn's got to be the guy. Carrot top. Getting the job done. Absolutely. Um, freshman of the year. I was going to give it to the running back. You going CJ? Yeah. Okay. I think he proved I, – I think he proved, you know, I mean, he started out the season as the starter. I didn't think that was right, but I think they made a poor choice early in that. And it still could have worked out. I mean, I don't, I don't, he wouldn't, I don't think he would have had the kind of yardage that Jonathan Brooks had. I don't think he would have been close like that, but I think he matured as the season went on. I he really did. Even as the starter, I think he matured physically. I think mentally he understands what the game is about. It's not at the high school level. It took him a couple games to figure that out. As I said, the, the game of Baylor, when he took that hit and went down like a sack of, you know what, <laughs> potatoes. I mean, that ain't what you said. From that point on, I think he he understood. Okay, they, they hit for real. 
This isn't like the 180 pounders that play linebacker in the high school level. This is some real stuff here. I think he then took, took on, you know, being able to, you know, every time, every time he got hit, he would come up limping or go out for a play or go out for a game, or he'd be on the, on the, you know, on that injury list as, you know, he, he'll be practice this week. I think he'll be able to play. I, I think he's past that stage of, you know, bumps and bruises and things like that as he goes on in his career. He'll be there. I think he'll be he'll be a, a solid running back. He'll be a big time kid and you won't have to worry about him, the physicality of it any longer with him. He's going to be the one dishing out all the punishment, I believe, from this point on. I hope so. And yeah, he uh, definitely got better as the season went yes. along. And uh, boy, Texas is going to need him in this oh, yes, game against are. Washington coming up. Because, look, I mean, Quinn Ewers is going to have to play well. Of course, you need your quarterback to play well when you're going up against that high-powered Washington offense. But in my perfect world, Texas is a stay, uh, able to establish the run game. And they and should be able to. Control the clock and win that time of possession battle against UW. So we don't have to see Michael Penix Jr. on the field a whole hell of a lot. And obviously, you need your running backs to be effective. You need your O-line to be good up front. But you're going to need C.J. Baxter and Jaden Blue to uh, – Yeah, to I was very surprised at his ability to catch the ball for a big kid, you know, a big kind of tall kid coming out of the backfield to really nice hands. And that got better and better too. I, I think they started to depend on him and not just the screen. Dude, there are people that have trouble – they're running backs that have pr- trouble catching the screens. If it comes to you a little off target, they miss it. I mean, you always hear when, when, when people in the booth describe running backs, you know – Oh, you got to put it right on him and all that. No, if you're an athlete, you catch the ball high, low. I mean, I mean, like A.D. Mitchell, if you're a really good athlete, it doesn't matter where it comes. If it hits you in your hands, you catch the damn ball. Yeah. I, think, I think I saw that from Baxter as, as the year went on, that the ball didn't have to be perfectly thrown to him anymore. He's just a good enough athlete and, a, you know, big, strong body kid that just go up like a basketball player and make a catch and go. Yeah. I, I think you saw a little bit, and I was really surprised by that in him. I thought that would take a little bit more time but it didn't. It just took the course of this season. I think he's done a lot of things that it, it didn't surprise me because as the number one running back in the country and the number one, you know, and it's in like a state like Florida, when you see those running backs coming out of there, I mean, you would expect that, but I think he did a good job. I think he did a good job of maturing. Better hands than Keontae Ingram. That's for sure. Oh, that drop. You still remember that drop? LSU still hurts and always will. I'm going to go with Anthony Hill. As my freshman of the year. Okay. Uh, second on the team with five sacks. I think top five on the team in tackles for a loss. That guy was great in the Alabama game back in week two. You know, Texas has lined him up at a couple of different spots too, which is tough for anybody, but especially a true freshman making the leap from Fridays to You're Saturdays. Right. Uh, yeah, Anthony and having Hill. to play different positions for sure. Yep, sometimes coming off the edge, sometimes being more of an off-ball linebacker. Uh, the guy has done just about everything this coaching staff has asked from him. And speaking of getting better as the year has gone on, I mentioned how great he was in week two, but he has just developed and evolved so much as a player. And he's he's got that dog in him, too. He'll he'll hit you, oh, and yeah. then he'll let you know about it as well. Uh, fun player to watch. The sky is the limit for that young man. And he's already been great. And I just – I'm excited to see him against Washington because those 15 practices, like that's oh, going to yeah. help everybody, but especially a guy like Anthony Hill who is just like eating up knowledge from this coaching staff. Like just, uh, I think you might see a leap from him. Forget just next year when he's a sophomore in 2024. I think you might see that leap early on uh, on Jan one, which I guess is in Great. 2024. But you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. So I'll go with uh, Anthony Hill as my freshman of the year. What about this one? Assistant coach of the year. Can't really do a coach of the year because uh, that's That'd be the head coach. Always giving out the head coaches, and Texas only has one, and we're just focused on Texas right now. But uh, give me an assistant coach of the year. It can be a coordinator. It can be a position I'm going to have coach. to go with Coach Banks. I think they they came a long way in the special teams. I, I said the special teams had to be special this year, and I thought they were. I, I think – I mean, his ability to understand about blocking punch re- and returns with great returners. I mean, 19 in a row for your kicker. I'm, I'm going to have to say it's he. It would be either he or Coach Choice, but I'm going to take the special teams because I talked about the special teams a lot this season and how important it had to be for them to get where they are right now. I think the special teams had a lot to do with, with their success. You do know that Jeff Banks is also the tight end coach here, right? Well, I know that part. I'm, okay. I'm not saying he's the greatest tight end coach. I didn't say that. I said the special teams coach because I, 
I don't know about him as a tight ends coach. Okay. I mean, it's assistant coach of the year. So just making yeah, sure. I, I, I understand that he did well okay. enough as a tight ends coach. He ain't the best in the country, I believe, at coaching tight ends. But I think he's one of the best when it comes to special teams. Yeah, I do too. I'll go with Bo Davis, the D-line coach. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, as Jake says, and we've mentioned all three of these names, Buck, because you brought up Tashard Choice. I think these are your three top mm -hmm. answers. Uh, if you want to throw PK in there too, like it, you sure. absolutely should, because PK is the coordinator of this defense that has performed really well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Bo Davis, the Texas D-line has been – the most consistent position room on this roster all season long. I mean, we just talked about Devontre Sweat. He won the Outland Trophy. That guy was a three-star coming out of high school. Like, that's development right there. And Bo Davis did a bunch of that developing. Uh, Byron Murphy, undersized, but still one of the most impactful forces on the D-line in the nation. Uh, that's development right there. Uh, Ethan Burke, with what he's done, leading the team in sacks this year. Baron Sorrell has turned into a really nice player. Anthony Hill, we mentioned him. Like, Bo Davis... Did a great job. That's been the best position group for the Longhorns in 2023. So I will, uh, I'll give him my vote for assistant coach of the year. Does Mr. Collins come back? Does Phil Collins come back next year? Phil Collins. Is that Dana Holgerson at Houston? He's gone. <laughs> That's what Trey calls Dana Holgerson. Big 12 Phil Collins. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Alfred Collins? Yeah. No, he doesn't come back. I think he could. He should. He should. I mean, there, there, there is. I mean, you that guy can walk into a pro camp and people will look at his body and go, "Oh my God," and then they can turn on the tape and go, "No, not quite." Oh my God, no. I think if he left, he'd get drafted because he would crush the combine. You think so? Yeah. Like I'm not talking about day one or day two. It'd be a day three pick for Alfred Collins because the production in college. Why, why not make yourself a day two pick by coming back? Oh, and just dominating nice. individuals that you play against, you know? Is there, is there a guarantee that that happens? Because he hasn't done that. I mean, he's had some good moments this year. This has been his best year at Texas, without question. But and that, there, that's not saying an awful lot. Exactly. Like, is there a guarantee that with what we've seen from Collins in his first four years that, oh, he for sure is going to come back and be that dominant player that you're talking about? Well, I just – I got I got to believe he, he knows exactly who he is. And if he feels like one more year for him – and and uh, another year of, I don't know. I it's 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 more in the heart than anything to me because you don't walk around with a body lot like that and say, oh, I'm not that good, or I, you know, what I'm saying. I think it's a, it's it's more in the heart and the head with him. There's something about that that desire. You know, his mom was a great athlete. I I I would say come back. I I, I would hope he would come back for another year at Texas. I would too. I think it benefits him and I think it benefits Texas. So. Oh, I, I would say it benefits Texas too. Yeah. yeah and I'm the guy that you just named is your coach of the year to be with him for another year. Yeah. And Alfred Collins would slide into a starting role, you would think. So he'll have the opportunities to. That's what I mean. Yeah. He'd have any every opportunity uh, with the body that he has to be a starter and to be a full time player. Yeah. All right. Last one, I think, unless we're missing any award and. Y'all let me know if we are. This isn't even a real award. I just came up with this one because I figured it'd give us an excuse to talk about another great Texas football player. What about sleeper of the year? Maybe a guy who you didn't have many expectations for going into the season who has actually performed really well and maybe opened your eyes to him. Who's a, a sleeper of the hmm. year for you? You got one? I can go first if you need. Go first, bud. I'll go with Manny Muhammad, the true freshman corner out of South Oak Cliff. Now, you could maybe make an argument that he's this team's freshman of the year. You went with C.J. Baxter. I went with Anthony Hill. Both of those guys have a, a case too. But, yeah, Muhammad, to do what he did as a true freshman corner, like I, I get scared as all hell when you've got two, true freshman DBs playing. Like I, I think those sure. guys need more coaching than just about anybody and I think the leap for them from high school to college is tougher than just about any other position on the field. Definitely tougher than any position on defense. I got the utmost respect for dudes who can come in there and be really, really good corners in year one. And that's what Muhammad has been. And Texas has needed him, too. Uh, yeah, secondary I, I, hasn't you're been right. Great. Gavin Holmes I don't think is as good as people were hoping he would be when he transferred in. From no, Wake Forest. Ryan Watts has dealt with injuries uh, at a couple of different times. 
here this season. So Manny Muhammad, who's just like, it's gotten better. Another one of those guys who's gotten better as the year has gone along. I wasn't expecting much from him as a true freshman, even though he was one of the higher graded recruits that Texas brought in in last year's class. He has uh, been great. And once again, it feels like the future is very, very bright for that young man. Well, I, I, I've always got to find a way to get Jake Major something. I mean, he's just, I mean, for, for the, the years of him being a starter there, the undersized center that everybody had been trying to get rid of, I think in order to, to have your offensive line do the things that they did, you know, sometimes they, they would start out slow. You know, we talked about twists and stunts and how they were going to be this year. I think they did a fantastic job. I mean, their, co- their coach could have been coach of the year too, assistant coach of the year also. I mean, uh, the, the way this group got together and the way they protected the quarterback, uh, the way they, they got the run game. I mean, they had a Doak Walker uh, candidate in there. They had a Doak Walker winner you know, last year. So, I mean, it's just, I, 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 I got to get, and Jake Majors was the leader of that group. Yeah. No matter what you thought about Banks and some of the other guys there, that guy had to make the calls. He had to put people in the right spots and he's been doing it for a number of years. So I got to give him something. Yeah. No, uh, no disrespect to Oklahoma. Although I do like to disrespect Oklahoma. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that the only game Texas lost this year was the game that Jake Majors got hurt. Interesting. Yes. Right. And Texas was down to its third string center in that game and Oklahoma won. Yeah. Oklahoma won up front. They won the game obviously, but they also won up front. And that was one of, that was probably Texas's worst offensive line performances of the season. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, Jake Majors is not the most talented guy Texas has up front. Like Kelvin Banks is probably going to be a first round pick next year. He can't right. come out this year. Uh, DJ Campbell, five star, he could be a really high draft pick at some point. Christian Jones, I think, is more talented. Like Jake Majors is not the biggest, he's not the most athletic, he's not the most gifted, he's not the most talented offensive lineman that Texas has, but he is clearly very important to that group. Yes, up there's front. no doubt about it. There's no and doubt. I, and I've thought that for the last couple of years, and yeah, it's just it just seems when that dude's not playing, things aren't quite right at center. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw that this year. So I like that pick. Yeah, Jake Majors. Even though he's started around here for a, a number of years, it still feels like – He's a four-year starter, correct, now? I think, I think so. Wow. I think so, yeah. He kind of uh, flies under the radar. But, yeah, he started two games his freshman year, only played in three, so that counts as a redshirt year, and then it started the last couple of years as well. So he's made starts in three straight seasons – and uh, yeah, he does have the ability. Yeah, I, lo- to I love those. Year. Yeah, and I love those dudes. You're always trying to replace, but you just can't seem to replace them. Oh, we want somebody just a little bit more athletic. We want somebody a little bit taller, but they still end up playing and they play well for you. Yeah, man, that's Jake Majors, and I, I, I think regardless of who Texas brings in in the portal and in recruiting, like. Jake Majors is your starting center in 2024. And that's oh, yeah. a good thing. Like there, there were times where it's like, ah, yeah, maybe we can upgrade here. But nah, Jake Majors is uh, one of the more solid centers, I Absolutely. think, in uh, in college football. Jake goes with David Benda. Not a bad pick. David Benda, a guy who I think exceeded some expectations for Texas fans this year at linebacker. You know, your your, your pick of, of the young cornerback, I, I always just think of standout players at a position. And, you know, I uh, – I think about cornerbacks of, of when I saw the kid that's playing uh, for the Texans now that went to LSU. Oh, Stingley? I mean, that that hits me. Like, when I, when I see those guys come out of high school and play like those guys, like he played as a as a true freshman at LSU, those are the ones that stand out to me. I think your pick of Muhammad is, is pretty good. Um Yeah, he was – yeah, I mean, when, when you come in as a freshman, you play that certain, that certain position – that's one of those ones that people are saying, let's just survive. I think they did more than just survive with him at cornerback. Yeah. I mean, I, I think cornerback is the second hardest position in football. No doubt. Behind quarterback. Yeah. Um, and, you know, quarterback is number one by a pretty hefty margin. But, yeah, with just how good these receivers are nowadays oh, yeah. and the fact that you just – you don't know where they're going. Like that – I mad respect, dude. Mad respect because that, that shit looks impossible. Well, you know, well, you know when they're not good. I guarantee you that. And those guys, oh, yeah, I mean, if they, they get burned one time, everyone just dunks on them. And like, it's, you know, you, you can uh, – Rod B, our guy Rod Babers always talked about it. Like, you can you can give up those nickel dimers, right? You can give up short and intermediate passes. Oh, yeah. One time you get burned over the top, like, people hate you. 
You can't you can't be that guy who gets burned deep repeatedly. No, and that's that's hard when you're going up against guys with four three four four speed on every single play. Guys who are taller than you, six two. If, I mean, you're, a, you, if you're a if you're a six footer or a five eleven guy, and they're six three and six four guys that are doing exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, this group is about to see some. Yeah, definitely with Washington. But like, even if even if wide receivers were telling the DBs the routes they were going oh, to run, you it still would got still, to cover your ass. It would still be tough. And obviously, they have no idea what the receivers are doing unless you're Michigan. Uh, and and you like these guys still cover at a high level. I don't know that position's hard. That's my point here. Yeah, when you use the word sleeper, I thought about Michigan and. I, I'm going to have to pick all of those players because they're all sleepers. All right. Yeah, Michigan, your sleeper team coming into the year, even though they started the year ranked number two in the country. Yeah. I mean, it's a team that's – I mean, expectations were high. Guess what? They lived up to expectations, except for that cheating part, huh. unless there were people – unless people knew that they were cheating. I think it's hilarious that your sleeper was the most talked-about team in the nation. Oh, for Nobody. the whole entire year, for sure. One way or the other, they've been the most talked-about team – yeah, exactly. Oh, yes. Yeah, most of it has to do with the cheating scandal, but oh, obviously on now. they didn't lose, and they're number one going into the CFP. So, uh, yeah, your sleeper. Good call on a sleeper. And I don't even think Blake Quorum's all that great. Really? No. Okay. So he's, you not, like- he's, not, he's not my style of running. He wouldn't be my style of running back. If I, if I were picking a running back, he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be in my top five. I mean, he just wouldn't be. Wow. Okay, the nation's you know, leader in rushing touchdowns. I know. He just wouldn't be. I mean, I like him towards the goal line. I like him as, you know, for a long time, you know, it, it took me a long time to understand that Emmett Smith was the all-time leading rusher in the NFL history and how great he really was. I mean, I watched him in high school. And then in college, I got a chance to, you know, at Illinois to play against him in a, in a bowl game. And But I really, I really watched him in high school as I was, you know, learning how to recruit as a young coach and stuff. And he never had that breakaway speed, but I just never saw anybody catch him in high school from behind. Hmm. And I got to the pros, and you did see people catch him. But I did when I saw him in college when he ran. I was I, we had a couple DBs at, at the University of Illinois that played in the NFL. Henry Jones, you know, played, and that guy could fly. And I saw them have an angle on Emmett Smith in a bowl game, and I'm like, oh, they're just gonna shove this dude out of bounds, dude. No one laid a glove on him. And they were right there with him. And these are guys, these are 4-4 four, four guys. You know, they talked about Emmett Smith running 4-6 or whatever. But he ran so well with his shoulder pads on, with his uniform on. There's certain guys that run really differently with pads on. Some guys just look slower. He looked like a track dude with shoulder pads on. And nobody ever caught him. And I just never I, I just never knew. I never felt his greatness, you know, because he had one of the most historic uh, high school careers college careers and then into the and then obviously into the pros but I never gave Emmett enough respect I I just you know I always talked about Gail Stairs and Jim Brown and you know of course Barry Sanders players like that you know Ricky Williams the Earl Campbells but I never gave Emmett his due I don't I don't know what that is about me with him for some odd reason I don't think you're alone like when you're having conversations about the best running backs in NFL history right feels like Emmett Smith's name does not pop up, even though he has more rushing yards than anybody else who's ever played the position. I wonder what so. that is. I mean, he, he yeah, was like a, actually, that guy could make you miss. He could do all the things that you talk about with these other guys. Power, play, hurt, yeah. you know? Yeah, you don't put up the numbers that uh, he did at all three levels, like you talked about, unless you're really, really good. But even me, as a Cowboys fan, like I, Emmett Smith's not the best running back of all time. Like I'd put Walter Payton. I'd put Barry Sanders. There you go. I'd probably go Gail Sayers ahead of him. O.J. Um, Simpson. Misogynist Jim Brown. I'd probably yeah, put OJ. ahead of him. I mean, there's a lot of others that you, you're looking at him. You're going, no. Well, man, I didn't, we're not talking about it. knife salesmen here. We're talking about <laughs> running back. So I'm not putting O.J. ahead of Emmett Smith. Come on, yeah. man. That yeah, dude. I got to get that dude. I got to need to. I need to watch more film of him. I need to go back and watch how great that guy really was. So you, uh, back to the Blake Corum thing. You'd feel good about a Texas Michigan matchup going up against him. I do. Yeah. I mean, he's a little. Not- he's a little dude. Yeah, I know how I, powerful I, he is. I know how he plays down the goal line. That guy gets into the end zone somehow. Now, not to say his offensive line is chopped liver either. That group is good. How tall are you, Buck? Five 
nine and three quarters. So you're taller than Blake Corum. Oh yeah, I am. Corum is shocker right. smart. All, all, all the above. I'm taller than all those dudes. All the above. Now, you're not taller than me. I'm above you. Yes. A lot of people are above you. You can't yeah. say all the above. You're actually shorter than all the above. I'm Doug Flutie's height. But Blake Corum is 213 pounds. At least that's what he's listed at. So he's he's tough to bring down, man. Like he's short. But he is a load, and you don't put up the numbers he's put up over his Michigan career unless you're no, he's a physical. Good. He's physical, too. I mean, he's a physical running back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm not worried about Texas's run defense against anybody right now. No. They're just that good. Uh, but Corum, obviously, a tremendous season. Another 1,000-yard year for the Wolverines. That's two in a row and 24 touchdowns. Oh, he can season. score. He understands what about the goal line. Yeah, he's uh, Mel Kuyper Jr.'s number four running back prospect. So I mentioned it. Jonathan Brooks is number one. Trey Benson from Florida State, number two. Florida okay, State. I buy it. I like I like the way he played at the end, yes. Politicians in the state of Florida are still not happy about uh, – Is the, the kid from Kentucky in there still, the Davis kid, or has he got another year? I think he may have another year. He's number 10 for Mel Kuyper Jr. Wow. You like him more than most, I think. I do. Uh, Audric Estime from Notre Dame is number three. And then Blake, back, Corum, yes. Blake Corum is there at number four. That's, that's okay. the uh, the top four for Mel Kuyper Jr. right now. For yeah, Blake Corum comes in me as a third-round pick, fourth-round pick Okay, in the NFL. Yeah, that, that he's a running like, back. That's just where it is anyway. Yeah, that feels like where he would be if he's Kuyper's number four. That that feels like about the uh, this, this spot where Corum would be drafted if Mel is accurate with his prediction there. So there you go. All right. Um, there was a comment that I wanted to get to. Which one was it? That you wanted to give Bert Arbor more love than you've given uh, to him so far. Uh, Longhorn Media Coverage of the Year, Texas Sports Unfiltered. Thank you. Man, I appreciate award. that, man. That's an award we will absolutely take. Thank you for that Accept one. Accept it. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, We won't turn down many awards, by the oh, way. No. We don't turn down many of anything. If you want to like this video, we won't turn that down. If you want to subscribe to this channel, we won't turn that down. If you no. want to share... We're on Facebook, by the way. Make sure you uh, share us on Facebook every day to let your friends and family know what we've got going on. Also, I keep from, uh, forgetting to promote this. We've got a bowl pick 'em contest going on. It's free to enter, and we're going to give out prizes to some of our winners. Not just first place. We'll give out a few prizes. Some of you people, yes. To uh, whoever does the best in our bowl pick 'em contest. If you're watching on YouTube, the link to join is in the video description below. It is free to enter. You get to compete against us. Bucky, I'll uh, ask you for your picks at some point. Okay. So we'll get you in there. I'll be in there. A bunch of the Texas Sports Unfiltered guys will be in there. And more importantly, a bunch of you people will be there as well. Free to enter. A chance to win some great prizes. Check out our uh, Bowl Mania Pick'em Contest. It's over there on ESPN. If you're listening on the app, just uh, search Texas Sports Unfiltered in the Bowl Mania group search bar. Yeah, that's, that's not very helpful probably, but check our Twitter account or check out the YouTube video to find the link for how to register just like that. Okay, awesome. here's, uh, here's what you said to that woman in the grocery store parking lot the other day. Shut up, bitch. Oh, it that was, was like you. that. It was shut up, bitch. Oh, I was mean just like that rock. Yeah, you rock gave her the Bethlehem, rock treatment. Pennsylvania, Freedom High School in Bethlehem, that, Pennsylvania. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Did you go to Freedom High School? No, I went to Bethlehem Catholic High School. Mm, they didn't let my kind in there. I was a private school dude. Of course you were. That explains course, a lot. That's right. That's right. Good. Country clever, private school, you know, the whole works. Yep. Wearing, you... I had to wear a uniform every day. I had to have a, a tie on, white shirt with a tie. Yes. You wore a tie every day? Every day in high school. Of course oh. I did. I had to do that in middle school. I went to Catholic school from first grade all the way through college. Only place I didn't do it, they didn't make us wear ties at Boston College. I went to Catholic, Catholic grade school, middle school, high school, and college. God. And it took me a while to find out that Boston College truly was a Jesuit college. I was like, really? Am I going to continue this? I'm going to continue on with this? Yes. Dude. Yes, I wore an outfit. I had to wear, you know, you had to wear like khaki pants, white shirt, and they had this little tie that you had to wear. Clip-on? 
No, I mean, you could wear a clip on if you wanted to. I studied now middle school. I had a clip on. I didn't play that tie it up deal. I had a little clip on and went to class. Nobody cared about that. By the time you got to ninth grade, 10th grade, you had to be able to tie your own tie. Yeah. I think uh, going to all the bar mitzvahs I went to in middle school forced me to learn how to tie my own tie. And uh, my late grandfather, may he rest in peace, owned a uh, formal wear shop in Houston. So he taught nice. me that. Well, he he taught, me that. that. taught you how to tie a tie? Pretty early. Yep, 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 yep. So that yes. one stuck with me. But That's I thank God. That, dude, man. Yeah, I didn't have to tie a tie every day dude that's that's one of the beauties of public school no uniforms that would have sucked hell you don't have to wear anything damn near to public school anymore i mean really although they're starting to tighten up on the dress code oh, they didn't man. have that oh they didn't tighten up on the dress code when i was in school in the 70s oh really hey, are you kidding me bell bottoms with big big ass patches on them and holes in them you yeah, know we couldn't do that now, the dress code, the dress code school. was pretty tight for me like it, it, i don't know if it's looser now or just kids break the rules a lot more. Yeah, these did days. you go to, to a really public school? Or did you go to a little semi private school? No, I went to a public school, man. You did with yeah, thousands did. of people in your class? No, nah, I mean, it wasn't that big. Like we were 4A at the time, uh, but now the school that I went to is 6A. Um, Where COVID but, began at your school, probably? No, I didn't go to school in Wuhan, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school in Richardson. And I, you know, I liked Richardson enough. I won't compare it to Wuhan. <laughs> COVID, no, COVID did not start. COVID didn't start until 2020 or late 2019. I was uh, out of college by then. I was well removed from high school. So, uh, no, don't blame me for COVID. I see what you're the trying flu, to do The there. flu started at your high school, though. I'm not, I'm not eating any bats, dude. That's not my deal. <laughs> I'm not doing that, Batman. I'll let somebody else do that. All right, before we get to some NFL conversation, and there's also an interesting – Potential Texas target that has hit the portal within the last 24 hours that uh, I want to ask you about, and I want to talk about a little bit. Let's give uh, some love to some more of our great sponsors. Dr. Greg Eckert. Love Dr. Eckert. He and his all-star group professionals do everything from general dentistry to the most advanced work, and I had my teeth restored in two visits. Now, that's advanced work for sure, and you can have the same done for you. Now, find out, though, if you're a candidate for dental implants. If you've got a problem with one tooth or many teeth, see Dr. Eckert, turn a frown upside down, you will leave his office with a smile the same day. Find out if you're a candidate for that. 512-345-3166. And folks, if you got some problems, ex teeth extractions, tooth loss solution, teeth cleaning, teeth whitening, Dr. Ecker will be there for you too. As I said, he doesn't want you suffering through the holiday season. He doesn't want you suffering at any time. But if you've got problems going into this holidays, please, and you want to eat all the things that you want to eat for sure, See Dr. Ecker, get, uh, get an appointment with him because time is a running out. And especially if you got that dental insurance, you're going to lose it if you don't use it for sure. 512-345-3166. If IV sedation has to be the way to go and you've got very sensitive teeth and a nervous mind and are worried about going to the dentist, if you get IV sedation, you won't know what's going on and oh. you'll feel great. You'll come out of it feeling fantastic. I had to have that done, of course, obviously, to have my teeth uh, redone there with the veneers. But, folks, he is all he wants to do is make you feel good during the holidays. And if he can't have it done, he'll refer you to somebody that can get it done. But most likely, Dr. Ecker and his group definitely can get it done. Give you that smile that you've been looking for going into 2024. He is taking on new patients. Once again, telephone number 512-345-3166. He's our dentist. Should be your dentist also. Yes, indeed. All right. Maybe the link that we had for our Bull Mania Pick'em contest was a little faulty. So I just oh, we had problems with that in the last place I was with. They always had contests that the shit never worked. No, not a lot worked at that place, did it? No, I mean, it didn't work. It was like, it was the hardest thing to get into. You, It was always told that, oh, this is very simple. But the simpletons couldn't even get in. You know what I mean? Yep. I know what you mean. It is a Brian asked. It is a confidence pool, but I just refreshed your YouTube and uh, I just updated the link. So hopefully this one actually works. That's my bad on that. Um, but yeah, it is a confidence pool. If you're trying to search it, we're going confidence this year. So not only do you have to pick the winner of every bowl game, but you got to rank them in order of confidence, which uh, makes things a little bit spicier. So make sure you get on that Shreveport game. Oh, yeah. Texas Tech versus Cal. 
You're, I got a hunch you're putting 5,000 units on your mark you in that game. I'm not touching that game. I'm bypassing that garbage. Come on. Prime time Saturday night? Is that Huge game on game. prime time? They're actually showing that on TV? Yeah, they show every bowl game on TV. They show like every college football game on TV. The Mac, the Whack, and the, the Jack. Come on, that's why, man. That's why the Mac plays on Tuesday and Wednesday, so they can get on TV. So no, yeah, nobody I'm, would be I'm, watching them you know, on Saturday. You know, during the bowl game, I think I'm going to have to follow Jacksonville State, the team that won me cash during the course of the year. I never heard of Jacksonville State, I think, until this year. Even though they played football, I thought Jacksonville State was like a basketball school. Jacksonville State? Aren't they like FC? Are they even FBS? They FCS. Yeah, they. I mean, they won a bunch of games. They crushed people this year. Oh, they're in a bowl. They're in some kind of bowl. They're one of the new FBS programs. Oh, they've got to sit this one out. I don't know. What? A, I'm not putting my money on Texas Tech. Dude, you are a degenerate if you're betting a bunch on Jacksonville State. You, you like know their them. mascot? They're the Gamecocks. Is that them? Yeah, the cockadoodle doos. Yeah, they are playing in a bowl game. They're playing on Saturday. Oh, I got them. In the R and L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Some that's people are asking. Some people that are that asking game? if that's that a Tulane bigger game. Stadium? What are they playing at Tulane Stadium? Some people are asking if that is the biggest game that will be played at the Superdome in bowl season. <laughs> Some are. <laughs> It's at the Superdome. Why in the hell is that game at the Superdome? Yes. Take Jacksonville State. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But 5, a road, you to play early. It's a road game because they're playing the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. Taking Jacksonville State all the way. Making Jay- yourself some money, folks. Jayville State is a three-and-a-half-point favorite right now. Yes. Oh, easy money. Okay. Now, you're not allowed to get your 5,000-unit plays in until Thursday. So oh. we'll – I've Which, got some too. My sleeper team, don't worry. My sleeper teams like Michigan, they're going to be something special for you. Oh, now we have multiple sleeper teams. No, 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 no. Just Michigan. Oh, well, you don't I have to make that pick that team, early. Right? No. Okay. You've got some time before you have to pick the Rose Bowl semifinal and the Texas game for that matter. I do yeah, want to Jack- see them. I do not want to see Alabama again. I was saying earlier, early in this for the playoffs. That, I mean, college football wants to see Alabama and Texas because they want to see if that was for real from the University of Texas. Now that, you know, now that Alabama's back, remember they were going to suck this year? Remember they were only going to win six six games and they were going to truly suck? They didn't have it. They Dude, didn't have the quarterback. I, I, I don't want to see that game now. I, I got so mad at so many people for saying that shit. And there were Texas fans who were saying that too. That's the worst part. Like a bunch of people hate Texas. So uh, other fan bases trying to downplay a big Longhorn victory. That doesn't surprise me that much. But even Texas fans were like, really? Like this is the year we beat Alabama. They're not even good. Is this win even a thing? It's like, hey, here's what I say to that. Shut up, bitch. (laughs) <laughs> that's what i said i've been saying that all year long and people were like after after that game especially after alabama barely beat south florida oh, yeah they won by two touchdowns but they played like crap for most of that game even texas fans were like oh man like really this is notre dame all over again this team's gonna win four games or five games or six games and wow and then it's it's like really like you think Alabama under Nick Saban is going to go four and eight or five and seven or six and six? Not not with that guy as their head coach. No, this isn't no. his first year. In the, it's not his first year. Like he like, did his first year. It's not happening anymore. Oh, no. that yeah, guy will be like, done coaching when that starts to happen. Right. Yeah. Texas. Oh, you know Texas went up against a backup quarterback. Yeah, Jalen Milrow, who finished fifth in the country for the Heisman. Uh, back up my ass, dude. Give me a break. At, no, I don't. I don't want the. Re, I don't want the rematch. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, no, I, thank, I, no thank you. I'll take all those others. I, anybody? I huh? Really? You're yeah, anybody Alabama's but, the team that scares you the most in this playoff. Oh yeah, I, I yes. Yeah. Okay. That would be the team that I say no thank you to. I'd rather play Michigan. I'd rather be playing Michigan on the first, but I'll take this one. I'll take this group of throwers that played out there in that conference that have that have taken on Oregon and defeated Oregon twice. And I'm not calling Oregon imposters because that's a good football team they beat twice. 
Well, yeah, Bo Nix had a crazy high completion percentage. <laughs> so they must be great. That's, hey, he was, by the way, he was in New York too. Don't forget that. He was. So I forget he took a trip to New York yeah, last Oregon week. Was, Oregon was still a very good team. They, yes, they uh, were. Just lost twice to the same team. So How do you do that. Hey, shouldn't that give you confidence? No, it's, no, it's not. I don't want to play Alabama again. No, okay. I don't want to see. No, I don't want to see Sark versus Nick Saban. We'll see that stuff soon enough. I don't want to see it twice in a year. No, that was the logic. You know, I don't. And I'm not going to beat the same team twice. Washington just beat a top ten team twice. I'm not going with that. It's hard to beat a team twice and all that other shit. No, don't want to see them. They are way more better than they were in the beginning of the season. They are now. I'm not saying it was. I'm not saying they were bad. They're freaking Alabama. For those that think they were going to lose four or five games, no, it's Alabama. They weren't ever. I don't care if. Jalen Mill Rose or Mill Road or the other road was playing quarterback. They weren't losing four freaking games. I don't even know where that's coming from in fans. That wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, it didn't matter well, who their quarterback was going to be. They weren't going to lose a bunch of games under Nick no, Saban. No, 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 no. Uh, they are way more better than they were, as the Buck says. Way I thought, I think they are. I think they're much better than they were in the beginning of the season. I do too. And I thought, I thought Texas was, was better than they were. There are yeah. some teams that have been just consistently good, like my sleeper team that I chose as a sleeper. They weren't getting better as a season. They were good from the get, like you said. There was nothing wrong with that Michigan team. No. You know? They've been talented all year long. Oh, for the last two years or for three years. the last years. two years. Yes. Hey, a, a group that's been getting it done for way longer than that is Great Blue Hair and Furniture. There you go. They've been around since 1991. They've been around longer than I've been alive. Great Blue Heron Furniture Company, a custom leather furniture company, Longhorn owned and operated. Most of the manufacturing is done right here in the great state of Texas, and they build the best looking, most comfortable, and best built furniture anywhere in the world. That's right. Just go to their website, greatblueheronfurniture.com, or click the link in the video description below if you're watching on YouTube to take a look at uh, our Texas Sports Unfiltered collection. That's right. We're moving up in the world. We've got our own furniture nice. collection this stuff is gorgeous it's the last couch you're ever gonna have to buy it's the last recliner you're ever going to need the last bar stools chair bar accessories whatever they've got it all right there online or if you know you don't see anything exactly to what you're looking for they can custom make a piece just for you if you use the promo code HOOKEM, you're going to get 15% off your purchase as well that's right 15% off no questions asked at great blueheronfurniture.com if you're looking for amazing looking furniture that is going to last you and your family decades look no further than greatblueheronfurniture.com now folks would say since 1909 when i was still around then when i was born but i was not i was not around either in 1909 when the cobra family first started their business serving central texas with cars trucks and suvs no bk i was not around in 1909 it took a few more years after that before I came around, but the Covert family, they've been doing it, as I said, since then. And they've got Covert Ford and Chevy and Hutto. They've got Covert Ford and Lincoln in Austin. But then out there in beautiful B Cave, where we went by yesterday morning at 6 a.m. with those with the with the lights shining out there in BKs and the lot filled with unbelievable cars, trucks, and SUVs. Six brands they carry: Buicks, GMCs, Cadillacs, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and of course Ram. And get that Sierra. You know, get that Sierra. That truck, get in that truck for the holiday season. Buy mama a nice Sierra. There you go. Maybe mama would like a nice Cadillac. One of those SUVs. I love those Cadillac SUVs. That's what I'm into. Can I, I be mama? Because I'll take a new caddy. Because I got to be able to put my golf clubs in the back. I also got to be able to put some of my plants and stuff that I do as my gardening too. But they've got all of that. And the Bee Caves, they got 42 acres of unbelievable products just for you. Go to CobertBeeCave.com. Find out more information on the great weekly sales they have. And when you're there, do say hello to Dan Colbert himself, Mike, the general manager, of course, Stacy, Jerome, everybody out there, quality people at all levels out at Covert BK. And nobody beats that Covert deal. Not now, not ever. Not now, not ever. Okay. Um, I want to talk school dress code stuff here in a second. Okay. We'll save the NFL power rankings for tomorrow. Cool. But I do want to mention the, uh, the potential Texas target that entered the transfer portal yesterday. There are a couple of University of Houston Cougars 
that Texas could be interested in. Of course, Dana Holgerson was the coach at UH. He lost his job. Willie Fritz has taken over that program. And anytime you get a coaching change anywhere, you see attrition. Sure. And you're seeing that at U of H right now. Uh, a lot of Texas fans have talked about Matthew Golden, a wide receiver right. from Houston. And that's a guy who was a high four-star recruit out of high school. Texas offered him out of high school. And I think Texas could very much be in the mix for Matthew Golden right now. But not talking about him. Talking about a new player that entered the portal yesterday for the Cougs. Jamari Caldwell, who is a defensive tackle. Second team all Big 12 in Houston's first year in the conference. Six and a half sacks as an interior defensive lineman for the Cougs. Okay, think about how good Tavondre Sweat was this year and is this year. Think about how good Byron Murphy is this year. Neither of those guys got the six and a half sacks this season. That would actually lead Texas this year, those six and a half sacks. So I'm not sitting here telling you that Jamari Caldwell is anything close to Devondre Sweat or Byron Murphy. Look at Lil Ed Oliver. Because he's not. But 6'1", 325, uh, redshirt junior for the Cougs, so he'd have just one year of eligibility. He's but a plugger. That, that's a guy, yeah. I mean, that is a guy who could – make a big impact. He actually had two sacks in the game against Texas this year. So he gave wow. the Longhorns offensive line some fits in that close game down at TDECU. Absolutely one to keep an eye on, trying to figure out how Texas is going to replace, you know, T-Sweat and Byron Murphy, who are both probably gone. Alfred Collins could come back. We talked about him earlier. Uh, Vernon Broughton's coming back. Those guys obviously got some run this year. Those yeah. guys are good players, but it wouldn't surprise me if Texas is in the market to uh, add a more established interior D lineman and Jamari Caldwell from Houston could be in that conversation. Yeah. I, I got to believe that. I mean, you, you got to take a, you, you take a flyer on that kid for sure. From right down the road from you, you got to, you, you don't pass him up. Yeah. Yeah. 20 career games for Houston, red shirt, junior uh, 12 TFLs, eight and a half sacks in his career. But this year was a breakout season for Caldwell. Once again, second team, all conference, six wow. and a half sacks. So, uh, yeah, a guy to uh, keep an eye out for, for Steve Sarkeesian, Pete Kwiatkowski, and company. Okay, I'm pulling up. I, I did a Google search. So we're talking about dress codes a little bit earlier. And you had to wear a tie every yeah. day? Yes. From what? From kindergarten to senior year no, of high school? From first grade through senior in high school, yes. I wear a tie every day. Okay, so not, not that far off from kindergarten. Yeah, you're uh, right. Not a suit, just just a tie, a button-up shirt, and some slacks. Yes. And khakis, they're all Jake from State Farm every day. <laughs> just about. Okay. Well, Great. we had the we had the blue ones too, the blue pants that look kind of that same material. Mm -hmm. And we had the 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 off-white looking pants. You know, yeah, we do that stuff. Uh oh, here's general guidelines. Okay, so here I just pulled up the I'm gonna try to zoom in on this a little bit. Although I, I think this is Relatively easy to read, but let's make it okay. even easier. How's that? Better? Yeah, good. Okay, so here is the current Austin Independent School District dress code. Basic principle. Certain body parts must be covered for all students at all times. D's. Clothes must be worn in a way that such abdomen, genitals, buttocks, breasts, and nipples, so those are different than breasts, yes. are fully covered with opaque fabric. All mm -hmm. items listed. Listed in the must wear and may wear categories meet this basic principle. Okay. Okay. Students must wear a shirt with fabric that touches the waistband in the front, back, and on the sides under the arms. So it's got, you can't have that Zeke Elliott cutoff. No, you can't come to school with a cutoff on. No. Got to at least reach uh, what your sides. Yes. And pants slash jeans or the equivalent. So skirt, sweatpants, leggings, a dress, or shorts, and you, shoes. Sounds like you can come in with holy jeans, though. They don't say anything about holes in your jeans. Well, let's go. Students may wear ripped jeans. Uh oh there you go. As long as underwear and buttocks are not exposed. So that means they can be on your thigh area. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Thigh's pushing it, right? If there's just a giant rip on the thigh. Yeah, you know, some come with those little, yeah, with the material. I, I understand. Yeah, you don't want, you don't want, you don't want a lot of thighs shown. 
Okay. And th- this one is new from when I was in school. Now, I didn't do AISD, so maybe this has been around there for a while. But uh, tank tops m- may be worn, including spaghetti straps. Back when I was in school, back in my day. Back in your I, day? Oh, dude. I had to walk uphill both ways oh, in the God. snow in the mean streets of Richardson, Texas. You know how tough yeah. that was for me? The yeah, girls came in there strapless. You couldn't do strapless. Or you couldn't? No, no spaghetti, no spaghetti straps, no jersey. We couldn't wear like basketball jerseys or anything like that. No sleeveless shirts. First of all, nobody no. wants armpits. No one wants to see everybody's hairy armpits. No wife beaters. No. We might have had a few of those on staff. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. At least I hope I hope I'm just kidding. Um there you go. Hoodie sweatshirts. You can wear hoodie sweatshirts, but your face and ears must be visible to school staff. Yeah, that's a big thing. You can't wear a hoodie with the hood on covering your ears nowadays. Yeah, you can't be walking around listening to your music underneath your hood. They don't want that happening. No, they don't want that. And then students can play students can, people's music. Oh yeah. Well, I always and I, I did that bit all the time. Like not necessarily in school, but just when I was in public places where I was supposed to be paying attention. You know, this is this is pre Bluetooth headset days. You'd have those wired earbuds, and I'd like stick it under my shirt and have the so the cord was hidden. I just have the little earbud sticking out of the top. You know, I would be listening to Major League Baseball with a transistor radio in my pocket and the wire run up through my collar. You know, my little collar there by my tie. Yeah, to my ear with my hand over my ear Boom. in class as a middle schooler. Uh, well, not even as a middle schooler. That was before middle, I was in. Fifth and sixth grade, Our Lady of Miraculous Metal in Greensboro, North Carolina, where all the students were black and all the nuns and priests were white. I Our mean, Lady, Our Lady of what bullshit was she on? <laughs> miraculous Metal. I what went, is that? Miraculous Metal. It's was a your metal, rival. It's a metal. Your, your rival was Awesome Aluminum. No, what, what is that? Were, I, that's where I went to elementary school, right up from the Civic Center in Greensboro, where Curly Neal who played with the Globetrotters, where I used to try to chase and get the ball from Curly Neal. And so I wore that. I, I would replace the earpiece in, put my hand over my ear, and listen to the when the uh, Baltimore Orioles were going to world championships and playing. I would listen to the World Series, you know, and the nuns, they couldn't see it because they would you know, run up by through my neck. Through the, you had the collared shirt on with the tie up like this, as tight as could be, and a little piece that would run. And you're listening. Transistor radio, BK. AM. Transgender radio. Oh, AM. That's what you listen to now, I think. <laughs> no, I listen to, you know what I listen to now. We built this city on <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, you literally listen to Texas Sports Unfiltered and Bob FM. Bob FM. I still, I can't, you know, that Bob, that Bob FM thing started. I, and now I listen to a variety of different, I listen to Sun Radio, too. I love Sun Sun Radio on the weekends. I love their jazz format on Sundays. Is that all Christmas stuff right now? No, it's okay. still they still run their jazz on Sundays. Nice. But Bob FM, that's that's just kind of happening to me. I know I, I start humming those songs. I can't. They play them twenty five times a day. Yeah, you, you know you I hear have, the Rocky theme. I hear the Rocky theme at least five times. But Eye of the Tiger. The Eye of the Tiger is on. But built this city on rock and roll. I hear that about five or six times a day. A day? Think, There's no way they play it five or six times a day. Of, of course they do. I, I think all that stuff's on a loop or something. But you got to hear it. I hear yeah. Eye of the Tiger. I have not been in my car that I have not heard Eye of the Tiger at least twice during the course of a ride somewhere. I, I hate that song, dude. What? Yeah, I just don't think that's a good song. I also haven't seen any of the Rocky movies, which people hate me for that. So maybe I'd like it more if I actually watch the movies. You'd like you like some of the, the music from Home Alone if you'd actually watch. You will see Home Alone this, this holiday season. I had the Tiger is Rocky, right? Because isn't there a different yeah. Rocky theme song too? Yeah, there's there's one by Jim, Jim uh, James Brown. Okay, that's I Living don't... in America. I hope you're right because I I don't I don't feel confident in my knowledge of movies that I haven't seen. Believe it or not, uh, I gotta believe that. I gotta believe that Bob is playing. Uh, that's gotta be music from the '60s, '70s, '80s. They play uh, everything. They, now they don't go pad. They don't play any. They play. They play '60s stuff. Yeah, they do. I think they do. 
They play classic. Know. They play the classic hits. I think they. I think they might go back to the seventies. I don't know if they go before that. Boy, it's nice being able to talk about a different radio station, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's it's just it's music, man. It's it's yeah. the music. It's that time of the year. But I get in there and I, I like the. But I the built this city is not my favorite. Who's that? Is that Jefferson Airship or whatever it is? Uh, Jefferson Starship. Yeah, I don't think that's it. That's, I think that's just Starship. Yeah, what was the one I was humming to you yesterday? You you told me there's there's Jefferson Airplane and there's Starship. I think we built this city as Starship. Okay. Um, what was the one you were singing yesterday? It wasn't we built this city. You've been singing that every time I've answered the phone when you've called in the I last. I can't help week. myself. That thing is going to play. Just hit me with we built this city, and I don't know <laughs> if you know any of the other words besides that. You know oh, what they I built see. this city on? Rock and roll. Okay, there you go. You yes, they did. Part. They built it on rock and roll. Mm. That song is catchy, though, isn't it? It is catchy. It yeah. is It it is catchy. I mean, something by ABBA, that's always good. A I'll dancing get Queen? Yes, yeah, so you'll, you'll get the Dancing Queen a couple times a day. Okay. I like that. All right, a couple more on this dress code. Students cannot wear violent language or images. So I guess no, they can't, no birds, no double birds. You can't have a clothing. Yeah. Meme of Tom Herman giving you the double birds. That's no, not double. allowed. Violent language. So I guess no cuss words on there. Images or languages depicting drugs or alcohol. So no Altstat beer shirts allowed. That's a shame. No Chi-Ching Chong faces. No Chi-Ching Chong faces. No, the kids are doing that stuff. Let them wear the shirts. Come no on, there. Hate speech, profanity, pornography. Images or language that creates a hostile or intimidating environment. That feels subjective. Uh, anything that reveals visible undergarments. Swimsuits. No, no see-throughs. You can't do see-throughs. No see-throughs. No swimsuits. Accessories that could be considered dangerous or used as a weapon. So no brass knuckles, kids. And any item that obscures the face or ears except for religious observance. So I couldn't come in here dressed like a priest and say, hey, listen. I'm just dressed like a priest for the day. I like the gear. Uh, no, I don't think you can do that. No religious promotion? No, unless you're actually a priest. Yeah, you can wear religious headwear. Oh, yeah. So I guess you, you could come in dressed like a rabbi. Yeah, but I feel like you'd have to do that every day, right? That's got to be part of your gig. Like if you want to dress up like an Orthodox Jew, you would have to dress up like that every day to where it's like, no, this is he actually is observing. Or she actually is observing, so that's that's what they can wear. Like unless it's Halloween or school dress up day, like you can't just randomly show up as a priest or a uh, rabbi or something like that. Or Elvis, right? you couldn't dress up like Elvis every day. No, yeah, you could do Elvis. I'm not gonna do Elvis, <laughs> dude. I I just no, I just had to wear my little tie, and it was it was like a little plaid tie too. It had a little color like green and yellow in it yeah. every day. Same tie, same. And then I got so good at it, I didn't have to redo the tie. Just take it over like that, leave it there, put it back on, tighten it back up. I guess in a sense, like, I guess it's kind of nice that you didn't have to pick out what you were going to wear. No. To every day, like you just knew. Now, I assume you had like multiple shirts and multiple pairs of pants, so you weren't doing laundry every single day, right? Oh, my mama wasn't about to. I was the oldest of eight. There were eight kids oh. that went to Catholic school. No, no. There, there was... No, you were, hey, you are wearing that, you are wearing those khakis for at least two to three days in a row. I don't mm -hmm. care what you did them. If you charge yourself, they were going back on your body the next day before they hit the washing machine. I mean, that's why you made the claim early on that you were never going to shit yourself. Maybe you were just <laughs> worried that you knew you were going to have to wear the same pants for three more days <laughs> in a maybe row. That, maybe that's the reason why. Yeah, that could have been your issue right there. Oh, um, no. I no 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 being let me tell you something I'm talking about hand me down being the oldest of eight boys stuff got handed down brother there wasn't a lot of newness coming around where'd you get your stuff oh i got i was first up i got first dibs so you i got, got all you got all stuff. the new stuff everyone else got screwed plus i had you know for a little guy i had big ass feet you know I, when i was in high school i wore 11 in high school i was a size 11 in high school by the time i got to ninth and 10th grade i was 11 and none of my brothers could. They were they were all like nines. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They're like, we can't wear these clown shoes this dude used to wear. <laughs> we can't be putting these on and going to school. 
Know what they say about guys with big feet? Big hearts. I was going to say big socks, but yeah, that <laughs> that, that checks yeah, out man. too, I guess. That works. Oh, man. All right, quick well, shout out. We couldn't wear sneakers. Oh, you had to wear dress shoes? Yeah, we had to wear dress shoes too. Oh, Catholic school, you couldn't, you couldn't roll in there with, no, you couldn't wear, you couldn't come in there with cons on. You couldn't wear Converse back in the day. Now, when you got to high school, you could, but okay. but middle school, you had to wear these penny loafers, these nasty ass shoes that look like the ones that nuns used to wear, just jet black. They're like work boots. Like you're going to work, you're either going to, going to Catholic school, you're going to go work down to the steel mills. It was your steel toed boots. It was the same. It was uh, unbelievable. Oh my, you had to go to play. I mean, you had to go, you know, recreation time wearing those big ass shoes. Running around, nope, couldn't wear sneakers. When you, yeah. got to, when you got to high school, you could. You still had to wear that. Still had to wear that tie, though. There you go. Yeah, dress shoes suck. That's the worst part of the outfit, right oh, there. It was. It was absolutely. Quick shout out to uh, Old Stat Beer, the best beer in the entire world. I think we've given them some love, but I'll give them some more love. It's like there you cool. go. It's the best beer that exists. If you're drinking other beer, you're wasting your time. Uh, no controversy with the cans. You know, it, it's it's great beer. Great cans available wherever you buy your beer. This stuff is legit. One sip and you won't go back to the other beers you've been drinking in the past. It's all stat beer. No impurities. No regrets. Love it. And you won't have any regrets listening to these two jabronis. Let's bring on both halves of chaos theory. It's Rodney. It's Wags. Those are Tell two me. public school kids. There's two public school guys right there. <laughs> oh, oh, I guarantee yeah, you. Oh, right. A couple, couple of pubbies. We used to call them the pubbies. I the actually went to a magnet school in baltimore called ba baltimore polytechnic high school or baltimore polytechnic uh, is that where you learn plumbing and stuff like that you were tech school you go to tech? You, you, you learn engineering so you got to take two maths and two sciences a semester really? what the hell are you doing what, why are you doing this then yeah i mean what, what was that all about <laughs> um i i do other stuff guys like I, i'm here with my friends Roddy, did you have did you have friends. shop in your school did you back in those days you have shop yeah, yeah, we, we had it. shop as well. Um, so also after Polytech, um, I went to Brunswick High and then to Polytech and then back to Brunswick High. And at Brunswick High, we had shop, uh, not just auto shop, but you had wood shop. Um, you had welding. I mean, did you make all your your. Did you make all your weapons there? Is that where you made all your weapons? No, I I, I I factioned my own weapons and fashioned my own garbs and stuff just <laughs> wow. living in the woods, living in yeah, the woods we, out there. So you know where the Blair Witch Project is. Or, or you've heard of the Blair Witch Project? I have, yes, yes. Okay, Brunswick, you see the sign that says Brunswick Burkittsville? I'm five minutes from the Blair Witch Project. And oh, by the way, it was old man Lorenzi's house. It wasn't the Blair Witch Project or whatever. And if you walk up into the South Mountain Woods, you can get out of them in like two minutes. You could literally piss from one side to the other and get out of the South Mountain Woods. So it wasn't like, to keep, like them running for miles in the dark? That's all no. they did was just run back and forth and then go into a damn cobblestone <laughs> house. And then, oh, I mean, hell, it, it produced, you know, thousands of dollars or millions of dollars, man. Great on them. It was uh, it was kind of like the the pathway to, to doing streaming and shit like that, to live streaming or whatnot. Pioneering. Yeah. Pioneering. We, we had we had auto shop. We had auto shop. I didn't have to take it because I had my dad working on race cars. I knew more than the fucking instructor. So <laughs> so we had that. And then we had then we had industrial arts, and that Ooh. was like crafting. You, you know that that's where you went in and you made shit out of wood. And, and and Bucky back in back in my day, man, I actually took typing. We had typing. Well, I did class. too. Oh, yeah, typing. I was I was great. I could type. Yeah, yeah. You walk by there, and all you could hear was. And then then of course you had and 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 our people were ruthless back then. But you know nobody cared. We had FFA. You know, Future Farmers of America, but. All of these smart asses in school, they used to call it future, another very bad F word of America. Oh, yeah. And, and well, we, I'll, we I'll let you figure there. out which we F it was. Aggies. That's good. I mean, yeah. we did. Yeah, we did. Exactly. I never, I, I, I didn't do shop. We didn't, you know, I, what was that? I was, all the, all the kids that did shop and vocational stuff ended up working in the steel mills making, you know, in the, making in the, in the 70s, like, $25 an hour then I said oh I'm going to college and play football these dudes are making like thousands of dollars a week yeah you were a you were a yeah. student athlete you got yourself out of there right yeah, also, I myself, own, yeah. the, the auto shop 
teacher was the the female soccer coach too. So you had a, you had a whole bunch of oh, girls soccer players in auto shop too that were trying to learn stuff. And you that know, was my typing I'd be dropping class, yeah. all the time. They had some big Cadillacs in that shop. I'm just going to say, they had some big backseat Cadillacs in shop. (laughs) Nice. Hey, buddy, um, earlier you were talking about that you wanted to be a meteorologist. I I am. Well, well, I know, but but if you want to be certified, I mean, it's got to be pretty easy. I can perform marriages, dude. I'm I'm like a minister. I've performed like serious marriages. Have we talked about this? No. You've done marriages? Like real marriages that matter, they count? You're a priest. Yeah, I get, I get <laughs> to sign. A priest. Yeah, yeah. I'm, well, they actually call me a minister. I'm a minister. Ah, I did it online. Ordained. 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 <laughs> I'm ordained, man. I'm, so you, you folks out there in TSU land, if you, you need to get married, call your man right here. I'll, I'll hook your ass up. Twenty five dollars. How much? I mean, he's trying to marry something. you. He's trying to steal the bride. Don't go. Rates, don't go nowhere near him. Rates vary. He's rates out. vary. <laughs> Rates vary by your economic situation. Rates vary. That's right. That's right. Most of my friends are broke, so that can tell you what my rates are. (laughs) All right, boys. I got some things to do. Smashing. There you go. Slamming it. It is hump day. Welcome to Chaos Theory on your Wednesday here, man. This uh, December 13th. Oh, it's not the fake wags. You can find me there on Twitter, and you can find the Rodney R on Twitter there for my guy, Double R. Also on the gram. The underscore Rodney R, and then I'm at the Wagner Wire. The chaos has already started. My guy, what's going on, man? How are you? We welcome everybody to the show, by the way. If you're not watching us, you can listen to us mobile, like we always like to say, on that Coda text line, 512-222-9328. Mr. Rodriguez, my guy. You're illuminated. You're looking lovely today. I added another light, my man. And, and, and I got to tell you, it's this, it's this cleaner living that I've been doing since this illness. You know, I think it's like I'm getting my glow back. You know, it's like I'm losing my bags under my eyes and all that shit. It's like, damn, I looked at myself the other day and I'm like, who is that? Damn. Look at, yeah, Jay, look at this. Uh, you know, good morning to everybody. Good morning, CB. Good morning to, to Joe. Good morning to Ruse. Of course, good morning to Ruse. Stay cloudy, my guy. Uh, Jake, what's good? Longhorn Bear. Yeah, I got you guys. Look. Uh, Caps and Wizards yeah. um, going down they, to the Commonwealth of Virginia here. So we'll have to talk a little bit about that coming up in the, in this hour of the show. Um, it kind of it, it kind of su- it, it sucks. Um, well, maybe it's best for the teams, right? Maybe it's best for travel. But I thought that was like one of the really cool things was to go to uh, hell. What's it called? It was called the Verizon Center. I don't even know what that yeah. what it's called. I ain't been home and for in or I ain't been back east uh, watching a game back there and hell almost 15 years man um but no it was it was it was a very intimate vibe or whatever you get up off the subways it wasn't like a new york feel ran but it it gave you a little bit of that energy coming out of dc right now i mean you're gonna have to drive i I feel like that's how it is with um with watching the commanders too right you got to drive all the way around the beltway Mm -hmm. just to get to um fedex field or whatnot just to watch you know washington play dude and you got to sit in bumper to bumper traffic and whatnot you don't you don't get a chance to take the uh take the actual subways or or you know light rails or what i, I think yeah it's subways in dc it's light rails in baltimore um uh and the difference is light rails run above ground and subways go sub you know what i mean oh there yeah. we go lesson well, learned anyways that's, that's, um there's your there's your there's your damn school lesson yeah of course I'm the how did i become the brain of this of this show i don't know dude that's that, that's that's pretty bad if you're the brain of this if show. i'm if guys the ship's going down if i'm leading this thing i'm telling you right now i thought pk was the brains of this whole deal no nobody you guys didn't have to take two maths and two sciences um i took let's see what did yeah i had to take two sciences um i had to take i actually had to take three maths but it, it's because i had to take one over but you um, took three, you took three maths in one year. Oh no, no, it was one math a year, dude. If I had to take, if I had to no, take, dude, we took two maths in two sciences a year. Fuck that, dude. If I had to take yeah. that, I'd still be there. Yeah, I'd still be there. I'd never gotten out. And then, of course, like you got to do your, you got to do your um engineering, drawing, and 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 drafting and stuff like that with a T squared oh, and whatnot, man. and learn how to do blueprints. And we shit did like some that. of that. We did some of that in, in industrial arts, where we'd use the T square and, and all the different stuff. But it, it wasn't, man. It, it sounds like hardcore over there for you guys. I mean, well, I mean, this is very big, very big. It was, it, it was, free. It was uh, it's, I, it's public. It's to the public, but you got to test to get into it. You know what I mean? And also, like, let's 
let's keep it real. I was there on a football scholarship. I was there, you know, off of a, a legacy plan. My father played there. And so I was able to go to school there. So, and hell, I, I was from Frederick County. I had, I had to use his address to come all the way down to Baltimore and play. So, so, so in high, in high things, school, you, things get crazy in, in Maryland football, like they do in Texas football too, this man. Is People in high school? all over the place. This is in high school that you're talking about. Yeah, this was high so school. You had, you had a scholarship in high school. Yeah. Damn, that's NIL before shit had ever happened. Well, I mean, it's not it's not NIL. It's it's directly to yeah. your education to go there. Like you Yeah, no, costs, no, no. It no. costs tuition to go there. So so I guess that's more like so so it's like a charter school here now. Is, yeah, yeah, is the whole yeah. Thing. Good that's a good point, but but they are included in the public um school or scholastic athletic. I don't know what the hell they call it now, but well, um, and, and and I really think, you know, Trey and I were talking about this yesterday, or, or we kind of touched on it a little bit, and then we kind of went a different direction. I can tell you here in Texas, public schools, we need to we need to go a totally different direction with some of the stuff that we're teaching right now. Because, I mean, what they're teaching is test-taking, which is a bunch of bullshit. And yeah, it's chunk and dump. That's exactly. all it is. It's chunk and dump. I, I mean, they need, to be, they need to be emphasizing, you know, um, how to how to balance a checkbook? How to how right. to financial I mean, skills, um, crafting skills, stuff yes. that you actually use yes. in in the in the world today, man. Now, I mean, they're they're just getting you ready for college. Like, right. seriously, that's 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 what it seems like. Like, I ask Reed what he does or when he comes home. He's like, oh, we did this and did that, and then I said, hey, what what did you guys do last year? I I can't really rem remember. No no kidding, man. It's because you're not attaining. Uh, like actual skills and that you're able to apply right no practical yeah. skills yeah well but at least that's just my take man i don't want to i don't want to get on a, a soapbox and make this you know an old man old head show but yeah well and and, and the other part of it is i mean i, I think something that that really needs to happen is it that's actually of the week too guys remember that we got oh, Ashley right. of the week coming up that's coming up. Yeah, I mean, they do need to focus in on, on real life stuff because I mean that that's really what it's all about. And, and you know, and 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 here's what I'm really glad about, and then I'll drop this is that I'm glad yeah, that got, finally, you, what got you on this thing? Let me ask you that. What got you on this? Well, because I got a kid about to graduate college on 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 Friday morning. So so I think okay. that's where I've been reflecting on all this. But I am finally glad that I am see that I'm seeing in some school districts, some school districts, usually the smaller ones public schools that they're actually putting an emphasis on trade schools it's okay to go to trade schools because i know a lot of dudes that have gone off and become electricians mechanics welders pipe layers uh, doing different things that are making a hell of a lot of money than folks that have gone out and spent put themselves in student debt and are not making anything near and living the life of my electrician welder plumber friend yeah, yeah. Right? do you know what you can make if you're a, a master electrician yeah dude you know what you can make around here yeah and it don't, it don't take long all you got to do is just be an apprentice and log some hours man it's literally it you know how to move power a few times like it and i mean every i think people know basic electricity right and yeah in in their house like with with the black wire gold wire and and white wire right if you yeah. know how to move one outlet from one location to the next and you're logging hours you can become a great a, a, a master electrician and do you know what master electricians do they go around and supervise just to make sure that the work was done right they exactly actually right. don't even do the wiring or anything that's, that's all exactly the apprentices right. do that that's so it you're, you're, you're collecting a over what uh, uh, six, it's six figures. I, I I can't remember if it's one ten to one twenty, but it's it's up there, man. For a nice little cush job, I'm not going to say it's cush because a lot of responsibility goes into that. But you got to make sure that all the wiring is done right, your buds are yeah, on correctly yeah. in the blue yeah. boxes and stuff like that. And it's, <laughs> and, and it's extremely frustrating when 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 people would look at those would look at those jobs and and kind of you, you know turn their nose up or kind of look down on those folks. And, and it's like it's like when you talk about. And, and again, I really won't go down this one, but when we talk about immigration and it's like, yes, there are right ways to do that. There are definitely yeah, you are all right over ways. the place today, man. You're there, cooking. There are right you ways are to cooking. Do that. What's in your kitchen, man? <laughs> Olipop, dude. It's just Olipop. <laughs> the shit works really good. But it, it's like with the immigration thing, it's like we got to get whatever out of here. I'm like, OK, who's going to fix a road? Who's going to build that cushy house you're living in? Who's going to do all that? Because a lot of higher echelon folks they don't want to go get on a roof and lay shingles they don't want to bust their hand well i mean i i gotta i gotta say like i don't want to do that work anymore man i'm 42 i'd rather I, I like sitting in a chair and, and working from home and i don't like being out in the cold man i did Amen. hell i was 
I was a Marine for, I did manual labor before I went into the Marines. I, I did some bartending and then I, you know, in the Marines, you know, I did infantry work that, that was amazing, but it busted my body up. Um, and then outside of that, I did, um, more construction landscaping. Um, and then I learned, uh, you know, contracting work and whatnot. So I've always been doing stuff with my hands or, or, or whatnot. I'm just, I'm, I'm 42. I'm done with the physical, the physical yeah. labor, man. I, I don't want to do, I've been doing it for 25 years. I'm trying to use this thing up here, man. Um, well, this, it, this is the it, first it, time it, I've ever had a chance to actually work remotely and work inside and make yeah, decent money yeah. at it. So, and, and, and I'm glad that, that, that things are becoming more stringent. I've worked, I've worked for several different construction companies before I got to live this dream of doing these cool things that, that we're doing. Cause I'm just like you. And, and I mean, I remember we, we'd hire folks in and they'd hand us an ID and it's like, I mean, it's, it, it could be like big bird on there and right. it's like, all right, looks good. Fill this out. <laughs> you know? it's also, I think it's this lifestyle we chose too. like my, my degrees, you know, it's in government. It's not in communications. Like I did, I did communications in, in some, uh, broadcasting stuff, uh, you know, out that wasn't my actual curriculum, like my, um, what are they called electives? They're called your electives. Yep. Like that's what yeah. I did in which I really wish I didn't do it. I wish I would have done more software and more video game and level design and stuff like that, uh, in my non-curricular courses and stuff like that. Um, yeah. it, it, it you know what I mean? But it teaches and it's a learning lesson, man. We learn from failure or whatnot. And I feel like I just wasted a lot of time, a lot of money on well, a degree that I don't even get close to using. I'll never, I'll never have the flu. No, darling. I'll never go back and be in the government. I'll never work in the government again, man. I, yeah, it yeah, is man. just a crock of shit. And we're going to leave it at that. That's yeah. All. yeah. And, and, and I think it's two I sides. You, you think you're on it. You sure, think you're on sure. a team. Nah, man, those teams are actually laughing at you because they're all having dinner at the same table, planning your shit sandwich the next day. And you're fucking falling for it. That's right. And, and this is and this is a great post right here, because and this is where like, like my dad, for example, all he's ever done is work and he is beyond retirement age. Um, he's, he's not able to retire. Um, and even if he could, he wouldn't. He just don't, he, he can't stop because he doesn't know anything other than work, work, work. That's the way he was raised. Well, I mean, it's, it's the land of occupation. It's not the land of freedom, right? Like, that's right. I mean, it, you're free. You're, you're free to do what you want, but you got consequences, of course. That's right. Um, But you will work. You are going to work your ass off. That's what this, mm -hmm. that's, that's what this, this foundation or this country was, was built on was work. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's with your hands, man. And uh, I think if you want to keep it going, you got to keep doing the manual labor. We just got to find people that actually want to do the jobs. Like you were saying earlier, man, not, um, not many of us, not many of us know how to do them anymore or want to do them anymore, man. But when all this tech breaks down, somebody's got to know how to fix it. So that's exactly right. Keep remember that when that grid, so when you remember when, when that, that, we were talking about, we were talking about education and what we need to teach our kids. Teach them how to fix stuff. Yeah. Remember, remember when that grid got all fucked up in, in the snowstorm? Nobody knew how to fix it. So um, it, it's times like that. It's times like that where those people are so valuable and folks that do those jobs. And that's why, dude, when I'm doing a live race show, I'm thanking veterans. I'm thanking active military. I'm thanking frontline workers i'm thinking Dude, you are, are on one there. today man are you running are you running for president or something like that are you running for local well, government i i, sp I spent some time you with doing? Kevin you're, dunn a you're doing a stump speech here man what the hell is going I, on with I, you? I spent some time with kevin dunn yesterday I, I think it's just like oozing out now man it's just like here we go here we go all right on to sports <laughs> finally Bill later Belichick. The, the end of Ooh. Bill Belichick, for 24 years, we've seen one coach and one position up there in New England. Man, you want to talk about a reign. You want to talk about a governor, uh, you know, some uh, 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 a guy that's been able to govern a team, a, a, a sports body. It's Bill Belichick, dude. Uh, for 24 years, he's been making a reign up there, winning championships. One hell of a tumultuous season right now. Are the Patriots yeah. as bad as their record reflects? One, and if so, is this really going to be Belichick's ride out? I've seen conflicting stories where it is Belichick's last year where he's agreed to part uh, with the uh, the Patriots and leave. But then there's also um, conflicting stories on ESPN saying that it might not be the last, uh, you know, the last ride with the Patriots with Bill Belichick. What is going on up in New England, Rod? 
That's a great question. They, 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 they are not good. They are not good. Uh, they, they look good the other day. I mean, it really seemed like Sunday, everyone who hasn't looked good, looked good. Uh, you know, kind of a flash in the pan, right? A problem right there. But to me, the overall uh, underlying problem right there is they haven't looked very good since Brady left. And it's tarnished the image of Bill Belichick in that, okay, it really was Brady all this time. You, you know, it was Brady that, that, you, think, that you, think, you think that's on Bill? Well, I, no, I mean, I think never it's been an offensive guru, right? Uh, I think it. I think it's more. I think it's more. You no, know, he's defensive guy. He's a defensive. One hundred percent, and that's yeah. that's his acumen. It's always been defense, yeah. man. He's been. Yeah. He's. Uh, you could argue that he pioneered the three four, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. No. No doubt. And but but the problem is, I mean that 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 team that franchise has gone. Uh, Brady obviously got the better of that divorce, and that's that's what we're what we're seeing right here. It probably is time to make a change right there. But if you're Bob Kraft, I mean, you need to go to the massage parlor and relax and figure out how you're going to handle this because this is, I mean, you can't fire the guy. I mean, you can do the mutual whatever. And I've seen different scenarios because we, we've we seen coaches traded. We, we've seen that in the past. I know that came up at, at one point last year. But what's concerning to me right now is when you look at, at Belichick right now, at times – Belichick kind of has that deer in the headlights look. Have you noticed that? I mean, you look over at him and, and it's like you think he's burnt out. I think he probably is. I, I think he probably is. And I think the fact of what we're talking about, where Brady goes off and wins another Super Bowl and they're sitting there, you know, puddling themselves in, in quicksand. Um, I think that's getting to him too. And, and and back to the trade thing, it's like, does a team want to trade for Bill Belichick? I mean, from what I'm seeing from him right now, I I don't. I mean. I might, I might go get Jim Harbaugh. The Chargers job is one. Yet the Chargers now with Herbert gone, the Chargers thing is going to get real interesting because that, that could be a landing spot for Belichick. That could be a landing spot for Harbaugh. With Herbert gone, dude, that 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 one right there, that's the gold star that's shining right now for somebody to jump in. And you've got a, almost a Cadillac ready to roll. Just need some updated hubcaps. True. Very true. Um which hub, I mean, I just don't know which hubcaps are available or which hubcaps you want to bring in and put on that that automobile. So here's the thing. Um, if Belichick does want to stick around, do you? I, I can't see Belichick in a fair weather or mild climate. Um, for some reason, I and I, well, hell, it's it's all I know of Bill Bel, of Bill Belichick. He's been in New York. He's been in Cleveland. He's been in uh, New England or Foxborough. He's been in places where it gets cold and the weather usually plays to his advantage because that's the type of ball that he knows. Yeah. I don't know what vacancies are out there that would fit him in that type of climate. But also, when you're that, I know he's, he likes to spend a lot of time with Jimmy Johnson, and Jimmy Johnson's down in Miami. I know those, those two are, I don't know how close they they still are but i mean i know they used to go on boating trips quite frequently and whatnot boating's a thing that that belichick likes to do i don't know if the the cold weather and the the you know cold tides up there in cape cod or whatever are that appealing to him anymore maybe he does want to go down south how much is working out down there in tampa bay or how much yeah. you know can mcdaniel continue to ride this thing with the fish Maybe he's looking to get down to a, a, a more temperate climate. Um, Bill yeah. Belichick is. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm of course I'm I'm just speculating. I'm I'm trying to create a, a whole bunch of dots here. This could, if if New England's his, if he exits New England, I could definitely see him not doing this anymore. What does he doesn't have anything left to prove, man? Uh, I agree, and 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 I think a lot of it is with with Bill is he, he's another. That is proving, you know, very clearly, it seems like right now, one of the best football coaches that we have ever seen. Absolutely. The resume, everything is there. Amazing football coach. But when it comes to the general manager part, it's like the whole thing we're talking about with a master electrician and an apprentice. Um, this dude is a great football coach, great football mind. But when it comes to that, it's a whole different uh, when, you, when, when you're working in the top office as well. You know, when you're the GM in charge of player development and all that. I mean, it's one thing to have the input right there, you know, to be able to to be like, OK, I like th this is this is my draft board. Th this is what I like. And then the GM goes to work and does whatever. 
I, I think that's where Bill struggles. Maybe it's too much on his plate, but it, knowing Bill Belichick the way we know him without really actually knowing him, he's just a football coach. He's an old ball coach. And, and this other added duty to me is just something that it, it's like, no, you know, get it, get away from that. Get away from that. And and there was a great call on there uh, about the Spurs. I, I mean, I totally agree. Let me see if I can find it there. It, it, it is a great run for, for the Patriots. I many times have compared the Patriots and the Spurs, franchise-wise, just the way they do business, the runs that they've had with championships and everything. The difference is I know a lot of people want to run pop out of San Antonio. I think most of it's because of his political stuff, which we won't go down that road yet again. But now pop has his piece in place. Belichick has never had that since Tom Brady left, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's still, I would argue, I would argue that Mac Jones was decent. I think Mac Jones has just gotten a lot worse under the tutelage, or I'm sorry, I can't even say tutelage because um, he's not learning anything. Uh, Bill O'Brien, I think, is doing a disservice to Mac Jones. Um, mm hmm you've seen you've seen jones be able to make some of the throws especially in this rookie see hell didn't they go to the playoffs his rookie yep. year yep um so i mean i don't understand the regression in the steps back that is happening with mac jones the only thing that i can point to is the coaching that he's getting in the quarterback room and that falls on bill o'brien yeah uh, i just like, like justin fields dude what's the succession yep. plan for for robert Kraft once bill belichick's gone uh, you're gonna are, are you you're gonna have to wipe out this entire regime of Bill Belichick and bring in somebody new, Be yeah. Because clearly, from what I've seen, is no matter who or where they go, if it's uh, who's the dude that went to um that went to Detroit, he, he was a defense coordinator and went to went to Detroit. Uh, he's no longer there anymore. He got fired. Uh, Matt. I can't think of his. Oh, uh, yeah, from from New England. That was. Yeah. Um, I can't think of his last name. Yeah, he played for the Patriots. Um, uh, yeah. No, not played. He defensive defense coordinator. I can't think oh, of the last oh, name. And oh, then also, oh. uh, Bill O'Brien went to the Texans. Did not have success there. Uh, Chad, if you guys can think of that name, please let Matt me know. Matt Patricia. Yeah, Matt, Matt Patricia. Patricia. Thank you very much, Patricia. Yeah. Matt Patricia went to Detroit. Failed. Um, didn't know how to be a head coach there. Uh, had success as a coordinator. But it's like you just said, once they get that extra added duty and they have to delegate other stuff and they can't keep their actual, um, you know, finger on on and finger on the actual, uh, you know, artery or yep. whatnot and keeping a good pulse on it, they have to let somebody else do that. And I don't think mm -hmm. that suits well for uh, for Patricia. I don't think that suits well for Bill O'Brien as well. Hell, we're seeing him struggle as, as an offense coordinator. Um, yeah. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, man, but I'm. I guarantee you that the Patriots are at the bottom of the barrel in terms of points scored this year. Yeah, and 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 it really has come down to to where Belichick is kind of falling into that into that family run business thing to where yeah hiring is that guys on like Belichick Bill. is that on Belichick because his coordinators are lousy. I mean that, that's what I think. You know, you you hire guys like Bill O'Brien. I mean, go 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 get some fresh ideas. I mean, go 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 get go get you one of these young up and comers that that's going to take that quarterback and mold him. I mean, and Belichick doesn't. He even has family on the staff. I mean, stuff like that. I mean, it's like, come on, man. You got to football has evolved. This is kind of like we talk about, like we talk about with Dabo Swinney, to where it's like he doesn't want to embrace the way college football is changing, and the results are showing there as Clemson has, has started to plummet. You know, in, in college football, you got to evolve with the game, and I just think Bill hasn't done that. And you know, it, th this really is this really is decision time for Kraft on what he's going to do. I mean, I, I've seen reports the last two days where it's 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 this is it supposedly this is it, but this is one of those. It, and and do you want to do you want this to end up like it did with with Jerry Jones and Tom Landry, where you're the guy that fires the living legend? Right, you, right. you know that that which that's a whole. That thing is totally misinterpreted, by the way. If you don't know the entire way that that happened, research that. There's a lot of books on how that Tom Landry thing actually went down. Jerry Jones released him, but it's a long story. But, yeah, I, I don't know what happens here. Um, I think Bill still has plenty of football left in him. Is this a thing where Bill takes some time off? I always thought, Wags, that Bill Cower was going to step away for a little bit, go do some TV, kind of relax a little bit, look good, break stuff down on TV, and make his way back. 
I thought he never that dude would, that's one of the that is one of the faces that I thought would resurface as mm-hmm. a head coach in um maybe he's just he's comfortable man he's making a lot of money as you know as as talent dude um and when you don't have to go through the stressors of of you know doing game plans or you know from week to week or whatever and you can just sit there and criticize other people's game plans and yeah. people love you for it like do what why the hell would you leave that i mean especially he yeah. looks great i mean he's fantastic too dude uh the yeah. the cleft iron jaw of cower man and, and the one thing that i love about that i can't say the entire crew because I, I i just i can't stand phil sims i'm sorry as a giants fan i can't stand phil yeah. sims man um it's just I, I don't know what it is about him um I, I like chris sims i think chris sims is fantastic but phil phil's just out no yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not on phil's i'm not on phil's page but anyways uh bill cower man bill cower i think is tremendous i think he's fantastic dude uh he doesn't hold back is what i was leading to man he's one of those yeah. guys they still keep it real and if somebody's having a shitty day he lets you know that they're having a shitty That's day right. he doesn't That's just right. type he doesn't dance dance around it or whatnot he's like yeah the guy's guy's playing now he might not he might not suck you know all the time but he sucks today you know what i mean yeah. of course he he he's wordsmiths it a little bit better than i do man i'm giving it to you raw because it's chaos theory well, and that's and that's the thing right there. I mean, after doing that for a little bit, you probably sit back and think, why do I want to get back in that grind again? You know, we were watching the Manning cast the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and Peyton Manning was just breaking down all these plays. And I mean, if you've watched that, I mean, Peyton, great football mind. I mean, when he's sitting here doing this, my wife looks at me and says, that dude would be an amazing head coach. And I'm like, are you going to give up that gig to be ridiculed for every move you make um, what little hair he has will be gone. People are going to piss and moan. Everybody loves you. You want to go to the most hated person in town. Are you going to give up that gig, all that money, all those endorsements to go do that? Hell, I ain't fuck that. But so, I mean, some, some people just want to be back with the guys, right? Want to be in the right. locker room or want to be around the camaraderie of, of just, just, just guys being dudes. What's that? Uh, we're, we're, we got it. We're Steve. I, we got to pull that up. We got to get that back on here as a sound. We might have it. I got to look at it when you go into a, a commercial or whatever. But yeah, just guys being dudes. People maybe just want to be around the locker room a little bit more. Yeah. Get that camaraderie, right? That uh, that unit, that that unit cohesion or whatnot. Um, yeah. I don't know. Some people long for that. It, me, uh, you know, I long for it from time to time. But I'm, I like being comfortable, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, I like being comfortable. Um, yeah. So. What about so Jake says, what about young Belichick? He's cut from the same cloth as dad. That's Steve Belichick there. And I think he is the special teams yeah. coach right now. I'm I'm not don't quote me on that. I'm you know, I don't have it pulled up. I don't have the roster pulled up in front of me. But I think that's I'm not sure if that's how uh Bill Belichick cut his teeth in the NFL. I don't know if he got started on special teams or whatnot, but the from the first memories of Bill Belichick that I have, it's as a young Giants fan watching him be a defense coordinator in 1986 um yeah, so sorry. again we're just touching you know we, we've taken a damn near you know 20 minute discussion to talk about the 24 years of reign that uh supremacy reign of um yeah. bill belichick and, and the new england patriots and will it actually be coming to an end Young Belichick actually works with the linebackers. Imagine that. Oh, right on. So, so there you go. I mean, kind of the. Well, I mean, he linebacker. would if 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 Dad has taught him anything, it's how to evolve and in, in you know make linebackers attack in the NFL. So the games change, of course, but again, if there's if there's any type of you know family lineage that knows how to teach uh, about linebacking play and how it can evolve, it's got to be the Belichicks. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it really will. I think the most intriguing thing is going to be how the exit happens and it, and it, and it needs to be, it needs to be something very respectful and it needs to be, I mean, because it is, I mean, like them, like them or hate them, whatever, you know, pe- people hate the winners. I mean, I haven't been a Patriots fan, um, you know, ever really, you know, I, I when they got beat by those 85 bears, you know, 46 to 10 or whatever it was, I wasn't a Patriot fan. And then the the run that they've been on, I mean, it's like win, win, win. I mean, you get tired of the same people winning all the time and, and the, the, the run that they've been on, but it's obviously over and change needs to happen. I just don't know if it's, if it's with Bill Belichick, but if it does, it needs to be handled accordingly with a hell of a lot of respect because without, without him say what you want about Brady without him, um, the, this this history this piece of nfl history is totally written differently no you're right 
You're absolutely right, dude. Um, we got some other news to talk about there, but before we get into that, I'm going to talk about AV consultations. Um, for 35 years, uh, audiovisual consultations have been setting the standard in audiovisual automation. If you're watching hockey, if you're watching basketball, um, if you're watching baseball, a lot of baseball news right now. You know, we got some other, you know, free agency, you know, flying all around. We got football coming into the the pinnacle moment where it's coming into the playoff play. Uh, we got. Hell, the college football playoff, all things are firing right now for sports, and it's also a great gift to give for the holiday season, man. 512-255-8678. That's avconsultations.com. Go to their gallery of projects that they've done over the past 35 years, and then you'll get an idea of maybe the, the perfect setup that's in your house. I think I got the perfect setup with my two flat-screen TVs right here, 4K style, my arcade system behind me, and then downstairs with that dream theater system that my wife gets to watch all of her. Uh, I, I call them you know, smut shows or all your, your trash shows that you just, um, you know, veg out to or whatnot. Uh, hell man, she's down there for half the time for about three hours or whatnot. Uh, you know, after work, just watching all of her damn, uh, you know, real housewives of any damn yeah. you know city in the world there. Uh, anyways, it's all done with avconsultations.com 512-255-8678. Make sure you give them a call today. So uh, how did, uh, how did, uh, dream and green look on your, uh, setup last night over there? Uh, I'm all about it. Again. I'm all about it, man. Throw some bows, baby. Throw some bows. It's a soft league. It's a soft association. We were doing that back in the 80s, man. Bring back Detroit. I'll tell you, man, that, that that was definitely bad boys right there, right? I mean, that that's exactly what that looked like. The league needs Draymond Green. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. It, it does. It does need it. I mean, because, and that's, and that's, I mean, I've, I've always loved basketball, but, I, but I've been a little bit turned off on it in the last few years because of shit like that, you, you know, but I mean, hell, we're seeing it with football. Because football of football. Yeah, man. No, no, no because, it, because of the fact that you can't, because the fact that oh, you can't, oh, oh, gotcha. uh, okay. Okay. that, and you can take about 10 steps and it ain't traveling, but yeah. um, yeah, dude, that was, but, but I'll be curious to see now, cause that that's three, not one. Not two, but three uh, for for Draymond Green. Um, they're going to suspend his ass. What do you think? Twenty games? You think they're going to throw oh, him out yeah. twenty games? Oh, you know, uh, Silver's going to make Silver's going to make this a damn, uh, you know, a lesson. He's going to make a what a a damn spectacle out of it. He's going to make sure that nobody does this type of shit anymore. He's going to keep his league soft. Eighties Pistons think Draymond is soft. Oh, You're yeah. damn right, Longhorn Bear. You're oh, damn yeah. right. Bill and Beer, Sally, and all my guys, oh. Oh, all my guys. But um, you know, Robin and everybody, hell, dude. I was all watching those, stuff dude, with Robin man. too. Robin was so Robin wouldn't even hit you. Robin was just so good at making contact with you, just by like just just touching you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just putting his leg on your leg or whatnot. Just just messing, just getting in your damn head, man. Doing stuff, picking on you like a big brother would just mess with his little brother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. almost like robin got picked on when he was a kid yeah it was it was intimidation it was bullying back then it, it's like the other the other night with the cowboys and the eagles the, the cowboys Dumar. were just bullying the eagles last night or was, third, or sunday night was, whenever Dumar, was. was joe dumars dirty i thought joe dumars was kind of clean i thought isaiah joe, was a little bit dirty joe dumars i remember joe dumars was he was a little more um not as obvious you know what i mean right he he, he, he was kind of that dude where where he was dirty but he was like smooth as silk being dirty. It, it was, it was kind yeah, of, I don't of remember. I don't remember too many yeah. clips of, of Dumars throwing haymakers. Like Dumars might've thrown like a nonchalant elbow or whatever, or gave you the shoulder to kind of throw you off of your landing spot and maybe rolled an ankle or something like that. But yeah, I never really saw him yeah. getting to the spotlight. Yeah, like, the other, well, like, like the rest of the Detroit Pistons, man. Well, and were the Detroit Pistons, the only one that were throwing bows like that. Like I remember Oakley when he was on Chicago doing that type of stuff. And Oh, yeah. by the way, Ring of Honor going in Chicago. I think, uh, of of course, Jordan's the first inductee going in there. But still, Ring of Honor going up for Chicago Bulls. We got to talk about that in a little bit, or yeah. I guess you know we'll let we'll let Kevin Dunn talk about that. He's a big Bulls fan. Yeah, no, but D- Detroit man, they they really were the ones, man. They, they they were just down and dirty, didn't give a shit, and 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 that's a whole. I also thing. remember the Celtics fighting though, Rodney. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it went all off the rails when uh, who was it from Indiana went in the damn stands. That's when it was like, oh, run our test, yeah. Metal World Peace, baby, Metal, Metal World, World Peace. Peace. It was like, damn, there we they, go. They the met that over. dude on a hike one time. They met Ron Artest on a hike. Matter of fact, that's Zay, one of Zay's profile pictures. Is him when he actually met uh, Ron Artest. Man, 
Yeah. Can you imagine me yeah. in that, dude. I'm sure. Oh my God. I wonder if they got cloudy. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. It's like, it's like the two moments, the two moments that, that, that changed the NBA was Ron Artest going in the stands. And then when the NBA was the first to cancel the season because of COVID. It's like, it's like, damn, the, the NBA has got some monumental moments right there that are not the best. But yeah, Robin was on happened, the, the like, Piston team with the Jordan rules. Yeah, you guys remember the Jordan rules, right? You know, take him out. Oh, yeah. If, he, if he's in the air, you know, you know, make him stay grounded or whatnot. So, that, oh, dude, have you seen, talking about, you know, good documentaries and everything, you know, you know, everybody with the last dance with Jordan. Have you seen Bye Bye Barry yet? Uh, Barry Sanders? Bye bye, Barry. About I Barry have it. I have it taped in the VCR, uh, the DV, DVR. I have it Why, taped, but I have okay, not. Watched. I won't talk about it until you watch it. Then, but okay. but please watch it so we can get it, so we can actually have a discussion on this. Okay. Rodney, it, it might be, it might be one of the best documentaries I've seen, man. Really, um, I rem, I remembered how good Barry was. But when you watch this documentary, you're just taken back. And it's not because you're going down a trip of, Mary, uh, of memory lane. You're just like, geez, did he really like, did he really do that? You know, like there's, yeah. there's no way that, and, and, and what you see or what you've seen back then, it's not replicated today. There, It's just not like, like Barry was a unicorn. Oh yeah. He just is. And, and I, I, I didn't remember how many times he actually removed himself from ball games so he wouldn't break records. I, I, I did not know that I couldn't, I, I was too young to, I, I guess, comprehend that at the time. Like, I just like, Oh, he must be hurt or something like that. You know what I mean? Or, or he might be too tired or whatnot. Um, and one, I, I probably wasn't even thinking about records when I was like 10 or 12, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Watching Barry Sanders. I just knew that he was the best running back in the NFL. That, that guy, I mean, just, I mean, just highlights alone, you, you know, without without any backstories or, or anything. I mean, just to watch to watch what he was able to do in, in the manner that he did it. And, you know, it, it was it was always to me just a very, a very sad story that 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 he wound up where he wound up, you know, that he and wound Detroit, up. I mean, well, he, he had Detroit. Detroit. Detroit was Detroit was kind of like going on a winning. Tr and that's yeah. what this that's what you'll 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 be reminded of. Yeah. When you watch this, you're just like, holy shit, like Detroit actually was kind of pulling away with some things there. They're actually starting to become contenders. And yeah. then it just went the shit real quick. They yeah. they they had terrible uh ownership in the in the front office and just bad mismanagement with their offensive line, allowing free agencies to walk and not paying anybody, man. For basically just being very frugal with their money. But dude, um like and and the one thing I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give it you know, all the way for you, but hell, like I'm not placating to, to the crowd here, man. I know everybody loves Emmett Smith and, and the double deuce is one of the best running backs to ever touch mm -hmm. him. But even, even Emmett Smith says there, there was nobody like Barry oh. Sanders. Like Emmett Smith gives Barry his roses and be like, yeah, I would have never even came close if Barry yeah. would have stopped, you know, if, yeah. if Barry, cause Barry had four or five great years still left in him. He just stopped. Oh, absolutely. And and I have to tell you that that that's something to me that's even that that's been so so fascinating to me about one of the many things about Barry Sanders because we we see so often with athletes when they have to walk away you know when they have to walk away not choose to walk away how hard it is for them to walk away and yet they still want to get themselves back in they still want to find a way to get themselves back into the game and and there's never been any inclination there there's never been we we would have known by now if there was something to where Barry Sanders would have walked away and been like, well, you know what? Uh, I think I want to go play for, you know, who, the Patriots or, you know, whoever may have been the uh, Green Bay, you know, the dominant team at, at that point. There was never that with them. What does that tell you about the soul? What does that tell you about the belief of this dude where it's like, I'm done? You know, I, I, I really compare that to, you know, folks that, that may deal with some sort of addiction because football is an addiction. Sports is an addiction. Trust me, with car racing, I want to fucking race all the time, but I can't. It's it's one of those things when when you walk away and just make a clean break. And that dude has done it um, better than anyone, better than absolutely anyone that I can think of. On his own accord, on his own accord, because that's the whole difference. It's one thing when you have to, right? But he chose to. He chose to. One hundred percent, man. That's I, I like. If you guys haven't seen it yet, please. I will.
Check it I out, man. Bye watch. bye, Barry. That way we can all talk about it. I don't want to do any spoilers or whatnot. I don't want to give too much away, but it's 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 one of the best documentaries that you watch, especially if you're uh, if you're a, a, a football fan, a nostalgia football fan, yeah. um, and and you long for those old days where you had you know solid hardcore running backs, and and you were actually paying attention to who was uh, who was going to actually win the rushing title. Was it going to be Barry? Now that's the last time I think I remember paying attention to the rushing title. Like who was actually going to win the rushing tower title was between Barry Foster and Emmett Smith. Yeah, like or or what was it? Emmett Smith and Barry? I, I can't remember. But Barry Foster for like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like yeah. that's the yeah. last time I think I was actually into thinking or or knowing who was going to win the the rushing title. Ever since then, it's just been crazy running back or or kind of like a one horse race. Man, there hasn't really been you know two horses that were actually leading the uh, leading the the ground and pound, so to speak, yeah. right? Or the stats for the ground and pound. I think that's that's kind of been like the transition or the transfer of how the game's changed, right? Yeah. Since then, I, the, I you know, you. the game started to emerge to a passing league and whatnot. Yeah. Now we really pay attention to the quarterbacks and the wide receivers who lead the league. And yeah, to those that, days, as those May, yeah. what's that? The, yeah, those the, those days it was the running back, right? Uh, and now, and, and now it's the wide receivers. I mean, look at the look at the news right now. Look at the headlines in in the NFL. Like, will Tyreek Hill get two thousand yards receiving? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or, or the other stat that pops off to my head is is Randy Moss's twenty five touchdown receptions. You know, yeah. like I don't, yeah. I don't really. I mean, there was there was Chris Johnson with the two thousand yard season one year, but other than that, like. Yeah, you, you know when Dickerson when Dickerson went, you know, broke OJ's record, you you know you you had that, um, you know, uh, up over two thousand. Speak, speaking of, have you seen? Have you? I watched a lot of the football lives, and and I've seen these before, but it's just been a while. Have you seen the the NFL uh, network, the football life of Marcus Allen? Have you seen that one? I haven't. I haven't. Dude, I yeah, recommend. You know what? That I, I got to tell you, I haven't really seen a lot of the the football lives on watch, the NFL network. Watch the Marcus Allen one because that. I mean, Marcus Allen, obviously, just, I mean, we know how good he was. Uh, dude looks like he can still play, by the way. But it, um, dude, you, you want to talk about just a bunch of bullshit. You, you want to talk about getting the shaft, and you want to talk about, well, oh, hold, well, hold on, hold, hold on, man. Are you talking about like when he was in when he was on the Raiders? On the Raiders, when he, when he was with LA, the whole, well, the how, whole how do you, how do you, and I, I know like, Man, I I know I'm talking about a Hall of Fame running back here. Yeah. Uh but when you have Bo Jackson in your backfield, Rodney, I mean Well, but this was before that. It, it's kind of oh, okay. Kinda goes okay. Back I thought before. you were I thought you were talking about him getting yeah. getting carries taken away because no, no. Al Davis was big it was, on Bo Jackson. It was before and after Bo Jackson, uh, uh, ironically, because w what happened was, and, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen this one, but but a lot of it, what it was, it was the ego driven. When we talk about owners and all that, when you know when the when the Raiders go to the Super Bowl and they beat the Redskins, you know, 38 to nine or whatever it was, in 82, 83, whatever it was, and you know Marcus runs for 191 yards or whatever. Oh, I remember the, the run up the middle. middle. I remember the run up. Yeah, the, middle, the run yeah. up the middle. Yeah, everybody, everybody in Los Angeles goes ape shit crazy over Marcus Allen. You know, he's a USC guy. You, you know, he's doing shit that they hadn't seen since I OJ. Knew, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So you have all of this going, and it it essentially came down to Marcus became bigger than the Raider brand, and Al Davis was and not Davis gonna have that. Al Davis was not gonna have that, and pretty much blackballed him the rest of his time there, and that led to the Bo Jackson coming in. Um, and then when Bo went down, um, then it's like, okay, well, Marcus is there. Well, then you go get Eric Dickerson. <laughs> you know, it's like they're just finding ways to replace him. And then when he goes to Kansas city, I mean, that that's the really cool part of it. When he goes to Kansas city kind of reemerges there because he still had a lot of, he still had a lot of traction left because his ass was on the bench all the time. Did he play? So it, it's a really good one. Did him and Montana yeah. finish their careers in, yes. in Kansas City? Him, that's, him, that's outrageous. Him, him, him and Joe Montana were a part of that group that came in and beat Houston in the Astrodome in 93. Uh, Houston 93 is another one to watch where th they come in and the Houston, the Oilers won like 11 straight games. They're going to the Super Bowl. It's going to be Houston and Dallas in the Super Bowl. Kansas City comes in with Montana and Marcus Allen and fucking beat them in their own house. Beat them in their own house. It's good. It, it, it's a really good one. It's that, really I mean, good one. You, you and you think about that 
that Kansas City team. Like that's just the all like what I I gotta go back and check out their wide receivers. Uh was Tony Gonzalez a tight end there? Was a young Tony, Tony Gonzalez there? I don't know if Tony Gonzalez was actually there. Because I know their defense, they might have they might have had Neil uh God, who the hell is I can't think of his can't think of the defensive end, Neil. Oh, Derek Neil Thomas, Smith. I Neil know. Smith. Yeah, Neil, Neil Smith. Smith. They might have had yeah. Neil. Thank you very much. They might have yeah. had Neil Smith, and I know they had Derek Thomas. They had Derek Thomas. Yeah, yeah. So, or that, was that Neil Smith? Had Neil Smith gone to the Bills at that? No, by that no. Time. He he was still there. He he was still there during that time. But yeah, it, it was. Imagine that shit. Marcus Allen and Joe Montana on the same team, man. On the same team, they had a pretty good little run right there. But yeah, yeah man. So, Marcus, that, man. I think I think I like. I think I am a fan of 90s football more than a fan of current football. I think the game was a lot better back then. Um, it is, man. I mean, it, it really was. I mean, it really was. It's like, it's like, I could I be wrong. I'm sure that's, a, I'm sure that might not be, you know, a, a, a decent take or a popular take with a lot of people, man. They, I'm sure a lot of people love the high scoring, you know, football affairs or whatnot but i mean yep. walking down going back down memory lane and, and thinking about those those 90s teams that's yep. some of the best football I, ever, like god some of the best playoff football i think i've ever oh, remember you know the steelers going up against uh you know the 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 chiefs in, in one year or hell the colts the colts being with jim harbaugh captain comeback back in the day man those colts marshall falk on the damn yeah. on, on the colts back in the day yeah man yeah yeah, I mean those those days, and I mean you remember. I mean you, you can relate it's as a, a proper as a, league when the jerseys were made by Reebok. Yeah, you, you can go. you can relate to this as a as a Giants fan. I mean, remember? I mean the NFC East between all, all of them. I mean the 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 Giants, the Redskins. Telling my, I was telling Eagles. my kid about this the other day I mean, how they all took turns beating the Bills up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean every one of them, and and it was you never knew which team was going to be good, and none of them were ever bad. Really, I mean, eighty nine, the Cowboys won and whatever, but you know they they managed to bounce back. But that was such a fucking powerhouse lead, or division back then. It's and definitely you, different. So after I told that story, the first thing that my kids say, like he he took about a minute to think about, it, and he's just like, the Bills though, they went four times in a row. You can't take that away from. Them. I'm like, you're right, dude. You're right. That's one little silver lining, but they never got it done. Remember that. Have, have you seen that? Have you seen done. that documentary, Wax? I did. About both. I haven't. I gotta. I gotta. Oh. There's a lot of things. You know what? You need to recommend. You need, you need to send the Dude. stuff that you recommend over to me. Hey, before we get out here, we gotta talk about covert. We gotta talk about blue hair, but we also gotta give the athlete of the week here. Oh, that's awesome. right. That's right. That's right. We so gotta you want to you want to pull up covert, or you want to talk about covert before I uh before I pull this up. Yeah, let's get covert. Let's get covert done. Make sure we get that done. Three state of the art dealerships out in uh, B Caves, out in the beautiful hill country. Um, man, they're going to take care of seven different brands for you: Buicks, GMCs, Cadillacs, Chryslers, Dodge, Jeeps, and Rams. Of course, you got covert Ford and covert Chevrolet out in Hutto. The Fords and the Lincolns, one eighty three Research Boulevard, whatever you call it, right here in the fair town of Austin, Texas, USA. Covert B Cave also services all makes and models. Uh, 86 service bays there to get you in and out the door for your pre preventative and major maintenance if you need it. Cars, trucks, SUVs, new and pre-owned. Covert B Cave is the spot to go. CovertBcave.com. Check out the specials. They got great specials going on right now. I actually looked yesterday. Might need to get my wife a car here in a couple of months. And uh, I'm going to have to go see the uh, Covert family because uh, we'll need to get her hooked up. CovertBcave.com. If you don't want to get online, you don't want to mess with the keyboard and all that, hell, just take the beautiful drive out there. Stop by and see Dan and all the great folks out there. The Covert family serving Central Texans, generations of Central Texans since 1909. It is the Covert family. And remember, as they say, nobody beats a Covert deal. Not now. And sure as hell not ever now best part of the week hey, now you gotta you gotta talk about you gotta talk about blue hair and my dog's going ape, ape shit real quick i gotta let her out real quick i'm sorry got you covered great blue hair and furniture always a joy to talk about them custom leather furniture company started back in 1991 it is a longhorn owned company focusing on heavy leathers hides fabrics ranging from traditional to western farmhouses this stuff is absolutely beautiful i got to tell you guys it's also the highest quality that you're going to find and that's really what you want when you're searching for furniture um is high quality because you can get some really good looking stuff out on the market but if the quality isn't there it's not going to last you very long and the wear and tear begins to show 
And that's really the bad part. That's where you find out how good the quality is when the wear and tear starts to show. You cannot, will not find anything more stylish, more comfortable, or better well-built out on the market today than Great Blue Heron Furniture. Down below, there's a uh, link in the YouTube uh, video description down at the bottom. It'll take you to our Texas Sports Unfiltered collection. Remember to use the promo code HOOKEM, and it's going to get you 15% off of your purchase. Let me tell you, friends, you look no further than Great Blue Heron Furniture when you're looking for furniture that is that just looks amazing and is built to last decades, man, decades. And I'm talking 10-year periods decades this stuff is going to last click that link down below or call them at 866-247-9688 now we got to get like theme we music. have the best fans in all of sports and michael c ah, you are yeah. all over this dog you are all over this my guy athlete of the week nominee alicia lehman i know i'm late but give her a look dude you are you're you're all yeah. over this one, my guy. The Swiss football player, the Swiss soccer player. Um, that's she also plays for, I believe, Aston Villa in the Premier Women's League as well. Let's pull her up. Let's give her a look. She is athlete of the week here. We'll share the screen. Um, what have we got? Direct share. Boom. And here we go. Great form. Nice little, nice little touch there. Oh, and one hell of a kick. Let's watch it. Look at the footwork here going down the sideline, tiptoeing. Oh, a little bit of a croif there. Yeah. Not, that's not a croif, but anyways, she's got some howitzers there. She, oh my goodness, able to touch and tap toe that line and then just send that ball off into the corner there. Athlete of she's the week. Skills. She is Alicia Le Alicia Layman. You can give her a follow there on Instagram. Yeah. Um, hey, she's not just beautiful, Wags. guys. She is very talented as well. Yeah, you can see that. yeah. Great call there. I, from I did Mike. a little re great call. I did. I did a little research on her, um, and it turns out, you, you know, just kind of, you know, wanting to learn more things about, you know, athlete of the week. Uh, uh, Layman is openly bisexual. She formally identified as lesbian. She previously dated a uh, Swiss national teammate, uh, Ramona Bachman. She was in a relationship with Aston Villa midfielder. But she went, Doug but Lewis. she came back. She came back. She, she now, now she plays for the other. I mean, she's a free agent. She's a free agent. She's playing Ain't the field. She's that. going all over the place. You know what I mean? No, she's got 15 million followers on the Instagram. So she's, uh, obviously doing something right man that, that is a great call right there michael c uh, i tell you michael c that, my um, guy hey look this is why this is why you guys are the best fans in all of sports that's for show that are that's yeah. for sure man um we 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 couldn't do this show without you guys dude we need more of your candidates man hit us up it's great that we're firing on the same page that's, that's the best right. thing about this that's when right. i know that you're on the same mindset as i am Oh man, we yeah. can touch on yeah. so many levels, guys. Yeah. We and, can go on so many places. We can get dark with it. Oh, we can get crazy. Oh, the chaos can actually start to arise here, man. You, you know what we got to do? Be a good, warm and fuzzy inside. You know what we had to do, Wags? Maybe once a week or or, or something like that. We it's, speaking of that, we had to do a we had to do a chaos theory after dark, like at night. Why? I mean, I mean, I know we said. Why? Whatever the hell. I know what we say whatever the hell we want to say right here, you know, every damn day, but every damn day. <laughs> but um, what, what would what would what I, I'm, I'm intrigued. What would you want to do after dark? What would you want well, to talk about? Would you maybe, want to would you want to highlight some athletes, some more athletes, but maybe, maybe not focus more in that? Maybe we could do we, we could have like sip a drink while you want to just it. pull up Pornhub and talk about Pornhub, <laughs> Rodney. Is that what you want to do? Oh, yeah, we do have screen share, don't we? We do have My screen. God, share. I don't have I'm not a member of that stuff. Well, I'm not either. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I know I know how to get on it, but I don't have a subscription to it or anything. Sugar Bowl is January first, guys. Sugar Bowl is January first, and we will what's, be talking a little bit more about that bowl? as it comes down, man. What's the Sugar Bowl? Is that is that a porn site? <laughs> the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> Crack open a few cold ones after dark and start talking about porn. No, nah, that's not what we're gonna do. I'm I'm sorry. Um, that's just uh, I, not my cup of tea. Uh, there's also other news. Um, 
you know, you know the Capitals and uh, and the Wizards are leaving and, and leaving Chinatown, uh, D.C. area that they were there since 1997 and heading out to the Commonwealth of uh, of Virginia. Man, they're going to go down to I believe what it's called. Let me look this up here. I believe what it is called. Maybe all of this the, defection will. Maybe all of this that? defection. Maybe all this defection can get the commanders something nicer than FedEx Field, or at least renovate that bitch. <laughs> well, the commanders are still staying there. The commanders are still staying put, from what I'm seeing. What is it called? The Potomac Yards, uh, just south of the Reagan National Airport, is currently occupied. Uh, by strip malls or whatnot and other retail they are going to look to break that down a little bit and then build up around there. Um, the proposal is a 9 million square foot Virginia Entertainment District would be developed by J.B. JBG Smith and publicly traded real estate firm uh, that is also the developer of Amazon's new headquarters in the neighboring Arlington Yonkin's office or uh, the governor uh, Yonkin's office said. So basically... Um, they're baking this into a huge super center. Maybe the commanders will attempt to move there after the domain, you know everything's set up and built up there. But um, dude, it kind of like sucks. It's going to be on the outskirts, right? So right now, it's 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 in a prime location, I would say, that you can come right up off of the subway or whatnot. And yep. then um, now you got to actually travel around the Beltway and go in bumper to bumper traffic, like I was just talking about, yep. which it hey. it. it just absolutely sucks yeah hey hey wags must see What's tv up? tonight i mean i know there's lots of i know there's lots of things to watch six o'clock on espn two hour special 2024 sec schedule release full schedule release so we got all i mean we know we, we, all, we, we know national all the signing day coming up too man national yeah. or, or should i say nsd1 nsd1's coming up um let's we got are the guys there or the guys in the back see yeah, jordan yeah, and like see mike and I haven't seen yeah, Jeff yet. Is, uh, maybe Jordan and Mike are going to roll on instead of Jeff here. Let's bring Jordan yeah. on. Let's bring yeah. Mike on real quick. Mike, Mike What's up, Rocha guys? You guys well. ready to rock? Or are we guys know Jeff today, or is it just you two? Uh, Jeff's coming on. I guess he's just late joining, but he, he's supposed All to be right, on. Well, welcome to the show, guys. Let's chop it up. We do have National Signing Day coming up, guys. Anything in the news? What's up? Or uh, hold on, stop. I don't want to steal Jordan's thunder. I'm sure yeah, that's do like, like I did. Jordan's going to lead with here. Yeah. We got Mike Roach coming on as well. So these guys actually know what the hell's going down with uh with recruiting, especially uh for Texas sports. You can find them on Texas sports. What what horns twenty four seven is what all these guys are, are rocking and rolling with. Hey, did you guys see our athlete of the week? Were you guys able to see that? Oh, no, uh, no, you haven't uh, seen like, of the week. Uh, I know what's coming. That was, that was Jordan's no, it's, reaction it's actually, last she, week. She, you know, she's I know. Athlete. I didn't know it was coming last week. I know it's coming this week. All right, it's uh, we, we got to have it. All right, it's athlete of the week. She is Alicia Lehman. All right, it is a Swiss soccer player. It's it's kosher. <laughs> Jordan, chill. It relax. It's it's not Jordan. a bad one. It's not a bad one. It's actually presentable. Jordan's here. gonna start gonna taking off up. on Wednesday. Jordan's gonna be like, I'm not <laughs> so we don't have available to show on Wednesday. Anymore. We gotta give the guys one show. We gotta give them a show. <laughs> She's fantastic. She's a Swiss soccer player. Look at the moves. Look at the tightrope down there. What is that? A Cruyff? I don't even know if that's a Cruyff there. Great shot into the top corner. Athlete of the week, guys. Can we get her in the portal? Yeah, guys, is she coming to the portal? What's up? Let's add Jeff up here. I'll get her in the portal, all right. <laughs> oh, my God, Rodney. It's a hell of a way to come on to Oh, hi, Jeff. Show. Welcome to the on, show, folks? Jeff. Hey, Chaos Theory's got to head out of here. We uh we turn it over to It's Only an Hour. I'm sure there's a lot of great recruiting talk that they're going to talk about. More stuff that's just better than sports, right? More that's stuff right. that's just better than sports. That's kind of what Chaos Theory gives you. But anyways, we got to get out of here, man. Thank you guys for watching, Chaos. Have a good show, boy. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow, man. Be good. Thanks, Rodney. Thanks, Wags. Yep, it's only an hour. Jeff Howe, Jordan Scruggs, and as promised, joining us today because we are one week away from the start of the early signing period. It's my good friend Mike Roach, Longhorn fans. He's back for today to talk Texas recruiting, talk a little portal, talk a little state of Texas recruiting. Whatever the topics come up, it'll be all on Mike Roach. Mike, good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been it's been a minute since you and I have done a broadcast together. So back on your on your days on the horn, I used to do a weekly drop in. So this is bringing back those memories. And Jeff, as you know, 
you have uh, you've you've raised a young daughter. I have an, a, a nearly nine month old, so I got her to take a nap about thirty minutes before this started. So I'm hoping she holds up through the hour. That's an accomplishment. Um, let's go. Let's start with the portal before we get into recruiting. We got Kobe Black's decision coming up in the four o'clock hour today. Uh, we'll definitely hit that, and and I, I do want to hit some things. But Mike, I want to start with with this. Your quick thoughts on Texas this season because you were our boots on the ground covering recruiting in this market as this roster was being put together. I, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch every game or parts of games or whatever, but what are you kind of give me your 30,000 foot view on, on what you've seen from this Texas team where you feel like things are headed under Sark? Well, I mean, they needed roster talent infusion when Sark got here. And I think that he, you know, if you, really, if you go back to Charlie Strong, Right. And what he built. And you look at Tom Herman and you think, OK, Tom Herman took a step and built on top of that. What I think Steve Sarkeesian brought was a way accelerated timeline. And and the yeah. portal certainly helped um, when you look at guys like A.D. Mitchell, who were able to come in and just be such a big factor. But I, I think that they went out and recruited elite talent in a way that hasn't been done here in a long time and in, in the, in the key positions where, you know, you saw them put together that offensive line class in 2022. That's kind of the foundation for what they're doing now, sure. what they did at linebacker last year. I could remember when I was still on the beat, people questioning Jeff Choate's recruiting ability in year one. And, you know, when you look at what they've got stocked at linebacker, including what he was able to do with the development of Jalen Ford. That's obviously going to be a big loss for Texas and congratulations to Coach Cho for earning that job at Nevada. He's going to do a great job out there. But I think in the past, when you looked at their highly ranked recruiting classes, they were always a little deceiving because they would have a lot of skill guys that were highly rated, but they never really built through the middle and and they've done that. And, um, you know, I, I getting to watch uh, Jeff, tell me if this is a hot take or not. Because okay. I last I said it um, where I was at a high school game right after the Big 12 championship, and I said it to somebody else there. But is the duo of Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy on par with Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers? Uh, before I answer that, Jordan, what what's your knowledge base of Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers since those guys last played a snap at Texas two years before you entered this mortal world? I just know they are pretty, pretty damn good ball players. That's what. That's about it. They were. Um, I. I don't. On par to me, Mike is probably a stretch, just because I. I don't know. You know, Mike and I are closer in age, and Jordan and I are. But you know, the older we get, kind of the more you lean back on nostalgia a little bit. Maybe you remember things a little more fondly than they actually were. But for me, those two guys set the bar. I think why it's hard to judge is you look at parts of what they were in 99, and that's probably the peak of them because Sean was hurt so often in 2000 and Casey just had an insane year. It's definitely the best duo they've had since then, and that's not anything to scoff at. I mean, you think about the duos they've had since then. I mean, uh, you know, Rod Wright and, you know, that, that kind of – that group they had of defensive tackles on that national championship team, Rod Wright, Frank Ocam, uh, Derek Loki, uh, Roy Miller was in that rotation. I mean, all those guys played in the NFL. Uh, you have Roy Miller and Lamar Houston. You had Lamar Houston and, and Keiston Randall. Uh, you know, Keiston Randall and, and Chris Whaley were really good, and those, you know, those guys got cups of coffee in the league. Malcolm Brown and Hassan Ridgeway was a really good tackle tandem. But, yeah, it's by far the best. I think where I've compared them is personality-wise. Byron's a lot like Casey in that it's pretty much no nonsense, no screwing around. And, Mike, you know this from having been around him in recruiting because, I mean, you you had a pretty good pulse on, on the kind of player he was going to be. Just kind of no nonsense, no screwing around. It's all business. And Tavondre, a little like Sean, is kind of the big teddy bear, can be a little bit accused for being maybe aloof at times. But once he gets locked in and decides, you know, all right, I'm ready to just line up and get in a three-point stance and kick your ass, it's probably what's going to happen. Those are two, like, personal victory laps for me because <laughs> I remember having the conversations with people on our board and other people that worked with us about Devondre Sweat when they took him of, like, well, he just doesn't look very good in high school. And I'm like, just wait until this guy's 330 pounds. He's going to be a nightmare. 
I, I said it over and over. I think everybody looked at him as a defensive end, and I'm like, no, he's going to be a, a 300. Oh, did Mike freeze up on us? Town knows, and I, I haven't looked at the roster weight, but I think Byron Murphy. You you talk about a guy that I wrote for the entire cycle and, and constantly said like. This is a guy you want in your program because when you talk about – like people throw the word dog around a lot. But when you talk about dogs, like By, that's Byron Murphy. He is a souped-up pit bull. Yeah, he doesn't have the prototypical size you want. But if you're a guy who sets the sack record at DeSoto in a single season, you know, playing with Shamar, uh, Shamar Turner on the same line at a school where Vaughn Miller went, like that that's saying something and doing it from the interior. I – I love that kid's game from the time I first saw him. He, and I mean, he told me then, like, um, it's three years now for me. And that, nobody thought that for him, right? He was like a three-star recruit. He'd be like, okay. And he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to get this. Like, I, I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Byron Murphy's going to be, they list him at six one. Mike. He's probably going to be, you know, at the combine, probably six foot and change. And he's going to be six foot and change whether he comes out this year or next year. So his draft stock wouldn't be helped all that much, I don't think, by coming back. So that's a good overview, Mike, of where things are. Jordan, I want to turn it over to you. And this is kind of how it's going to work today for those of, those of you that normally watch the show. or Maybe this is your first time checking it out. Thanks for supporting Texas Sports Unfiltered and obviously supporting Horners 24-7 and supporting Mike in his national role at 24-7 Sports. But I'm basically going to play moderator and – toss questions back and forth between Jordan and Mike. Uh, and Mike, you can actually kind of throw anything on this if you want to. Uh, but Jordan, the big news, Matthew Golden officially in the portal. Uh, you know, we the, the couple of crystal ball predictions came in in favor of Texas yesterday. I know this is one you and I have talked about it a lot once it was reported last week that he was planning on going into the portal. This would be a monster get for Texas. And, you know, we've kind of been waiting to see exactly what the plan would be for Sark and company wide receiver. But I think it kind of starts with with Matthew Golden now that they can actually go out and pursue him. Uh, Yeah, um, he officially showed up in the portal yesterday and uh, a lot of schools have been in contact already. Um, Texas is going down to Houston today or the members of the staff are in Houston today looking at some high school guys while they're down there. They're going to go and meet with Golden and maybe on the Houston campus. I'm not sure exactly where it'll take place or what time, but uh, was told last night that he'll be meeting with the Texas staff today. Uh, I was also told last night he'll be visiting Louisville this weekend. Um, for about a week or so, I've been reporting the five schools to watch for him will be uh, Texas, Georgia, U or <laughs> almost said UT, LSU, Louisville, and I believe the other was – I don't remember what the other one was, <laughs> but Louisville seems to be the main competition for Texas at this point, or at least yeah. as of last night. Um, Louisville's shown they can get really aggressive with NIL in the past. And, you know, just like every other high profile portal recruitment, this is going to be a pretty big, uh, or a lot of factors will depend on NIL here. Um, and, you know, that's not out of the ordinary at all nowadays. Um, but yeah, Texas is, I think, in the best spot. Uh, I don't feel quite confident enough yet to put in a crystal ball, but as of right now, I think Texas will be the eventual landing spot for him. Yeah, Louisville's got more NIL money than Colonel Sanders right now, it seems like. Uh, Mike, you, you, uh, I've mentioned this, like Matthew Golden's a guy that the Texas staff, Sark and company, they actually pursued and they wanted. It just was kind of a wonky time with them coming in and his recruitment kind of going the way it did. Uh, didn't really have time to form a relationship, but uh, what, what's your take on Matthew Golden just as a prospect? And uh, I, I think he's probably the most complete receiver in the portal, not only because of what you get on offense, but I'll, I'll mention this till I'm blue in the face. He immediately helps your return game, and in an offseason where you're, you're going to lose Xavier Worthy and Keelan Robinson, Matthew Golden's going to be able to come in and help you somewhere in the return game. Yeah, credit to Jaden Blue when they were in high school together at Klein Kane, who told me, like, hey, you've got to help this Matthew Golden kid who's on my team get recruited. And I I always roll my eyes when kids tell me that a little bit because I'm like, okay, what am I about to watch? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> what is what are you going to give me to work with here? And I turned on the film and I was just like, why does he need my help? Why is every school in the country not knocking this kid's door down? Um, 
that's another personal personal uh, fan favorite of mine. Um, he was sensational at Klein Kane. Just you talk about an athlete, and you could see it from the way he moved, from the way he jumped, from the way he he attacked the ball in the air. Um, that was a guy that I think Texas bundled it, bungled it a little bit the first time because he was there all of Sark's first cycle, right? But they didn't pursue him early. Um, I, it was Andre Coleman was was the receiver coach at the time. He wasn't. He wasn't that into him from from the conversations that that I had with people, and um, it, it was only until uh, Armani Winfield decommitted in the late fall that they decided, okay, we're going to go all in on Matthew Golden at this point. And once they went all in, they there was a point where I, I can recall being in in Missouri with my in laws for Thanksgiving and like on the phone getting getting the stink eye from my wife because I was on the phone with Matthew Golden <laughs> um, after he had visited. Uh, for whatever game they played the day after Thanksgiving, Sark's first year. And I, I you know, he was kind of like, yeah, I, you know, I'm kind of into it, but like, I don't know. They waited so long to offer me it, and credit to Houston who had done a really good job uh, getting him to, I think, I mean, what you could say about Dana Holgerson's staff is they did a really good job keeping some big name prospects in Houston at home. And so getting him to stay home was huge for them. And in the end, you know, TCU came on really hard. Texas was pushing really hard. I think the eventual thought was it was just going to end up back at TCU. Uh, But Matthew told me like at the time, like he really just kind of wanted to blaze his own trail and go away from the big schools. And so I think that this is a guy that people have had their eye on with the impending changes at Houston that like, yeah, if he goes in the portal, we don't want to mess this up a second time. We love the we love this kid in high school. We're gonna try to get him again, and I, it certainly helped that he had a heck of a performance when Texas went to Houston to play them this year, uh, yeah. right in front of them. I think that yeah, Louisville, obviously extremely competitive in the NIL game. Um, anytime Georgia's involved, you got to worry. But like for me, I can recall a couple of years ago having a, a conversation with a Texas source who said with our offense and the way we can develop receivers and get the ball to them, we're going to be in contention for the best portal receiver every single year. And that's what I think this is to them. And I can recall last year, um, the the staff being really patient with early portal offers or a lot of guys who were in the portal early who were reaching out to Texas and they were just like, no, no, we're good. And they, cause they knew that, you know, there was always talk that AD Mitchell, could become available. And that was the guy they wanted to pursue. And so I think that they've kind of chosen their shots um, with those kind of guys and, and and it's paid off for them. So I, yeah, I do really like where Texas stands in this, obviously taking other visits is going to throw some, some wrenches into things, but I like where Texas is. I think the the crystal balls that have gone in are are probably well-founded knowledge wise from what I know. Jordan, let's talk about Chris Jackson real quick, because, you know, Mike was in your position when Andre Coleman was there and it just it seemed like either you know the the wrong guys were getting brought to the table or uh, you know the the guys that were on the table just, whatever it just it didn't something didn't click with Andre Coleman and Sark I think the way Sark probably thought it would and they hired Brennan Marion who brought in talent but you know I think everybody knew that was going to be kind of a short term deal Chris Jackson's in that role now you've talked to not just guys in the 24 class uh, and you'll be talking to portal guys, but also guys in the 25 class. I know you just caught up with Kalik Lockett. You talked to some kids in the 26 class. What What's the opinion on Chris Jackson, just how he is as a recruiter? We know he can develop guys because what, what he's gotten out of this receiver room this year. What What's the thought of him as a developer of relationships as a guy when he gets out on the trail? Uh, I mean, pretty much every every wide receiver prospect you'll talk to that's getting recruited by Texas will tell you, like, kind of just how real he is. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of a similar thing that would come up a lot with talking to, like, linebacker recruits. With uh, They would say the same thing about Jeff Choate, yeah. um, where he just seems like a, a real-ass dude, you know what I mean? Um, I know a lot of players love his NFL experience as well and coaching in the NFL with the Jaguars before coming to Texas. Um and that also stands out because a lot of a lot of college coaches can't offer that. Um, and obviously, with seeing the improvements the receivers have made this year, and uh, with the room as a whole, 
I think kids are also starting to realize that and realize that while a lot of that's coming from experience and the program as a whole, you know, majority of that is Chris Jackson as well. So, you know, I think it's definitely a plus. Um, I think we don't have a big enough sample size yet to compare him to Brennan Marion and have it be fair. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I think we're coming up on that when it, it is fair to compare them and look at the different pros and cons of each. But, you know, Chris Jackson only got here in January and he's coming up on a full year. So, um, but you know, in the, in the year he's been there, I think I have yet to hear of any bad things. Um, and you know, I, it'd be kind of weird reporting it if I did, but you know, I, I can say very confidently, like there, there's nothing bad or negative I've ever heard yet mm -hmm. uh, in Chris Jackson's time at Texas. Mike, before we get to recruiting, I want to go back to a Texas roster question for you real quick of the guys that did not play a ton this year. That could be, you know, Jelani McDonald, Warren Roberson, Colton Vosick, even a guy like Leunga LaFau who only plays special teams. Who's that guy that you're going to be paying attention to for reports coming out of spring practice? And you'll see you'll see something from a, a practice report or a scrimmage report, and you'll feel like, yeah, that that's one you feel really good about. You felt good about the eval when they were coming out of high school, and you feel like they're they're going to be a big-time player at Texas. Maybe the people aren't aren't really honing in on right now that they just haven't seen a ton of. You said two of them right off the bat for me are, are Jelani McDonald and Leona Lee Fowl. I, I heard a lot about Leona Lee Fowl, uh coming out of this past uh, fall practices or, or spring practices. Um, he is a, he's a guy that I think was a little undervalued, and, and we've seen his value a little bit on special teams. There's obviously going to be some room in that linebacker rotation, and, and I think he, after a year with the program, is kind of ready to step up and take that mantle. But – to me, Jelani McDonald, Jelani McDonald was a, I, I want to almost call it a steal for Texas, which like it doesn't really make sense, but it 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 is in the fact that they almost ran unopposed for him. I mean, in the end, TCU, who had his, who had kind of the juice later in his recruitment, decided that they were just going to take two portal guys over Jelani McDonald. Oklahoma State was kind of hemming and hawing about taking him back. And, and it was almost a layup for Texas. And you're talking about a Ferrari of an athlete. I mean, if you, Jeff, you've been out to practice, just eyeball the kid and tell me, you know, th this doesn't look incredibly impressive. We saw him last year at the yeah. All-American Bowl. He was a late addition to that. And he was incredible in that game. And that when you watch, yeah, when you watch the kids and then I've had a chance since, since I've been on the beat to watch these two teams warm up and just get off the bus the guys that get off the bus for Alabama and the guys that get off the bus for Georgia, that's what Jelani McDonald looks like. Yeah. I mean, he is a supercharged athlete. And when you talk about like what you look for in an athlete like that, it's things like bounce and, and explosion. And he's got that in spades. I mean, this, this is a kid who was like the Waco, I think he was the Waco papers, like all uh, basketball MVP, his, uh, junior year in the play. I, he averaged like 24 points a game in the playoffs at Connolly, uh, his junior year. I mean, when you, we talk about a lot about multi-sport ability and how does that translate to the field, it's bounce, it's explosion, the ability, like when you watch a guy like that on the basketball court, who's like punching it off of one foot, it's a different type of athleticism. And that does translate directly to the football field. Yeah. So for me, for me, he's the guy I'm kind of most excited about. Like, I, I really want to see him step up and get a lot more playing time. I think, I mean, again, I didn't follow Texas nearly as closely as I have in the past just because I had so many other things going on this fall. But I did try to watch most of the games. And I I, I would guess I saw him a lot on, like, kickoff coverage and some stuff like that. Uh, but, I mean, this is a guy that I can't wait to see what he does when he's on the field, whether that be at the star position or, um, you know, at safety or at linebacker or wherever they, they see him. Let's stick with uh, Conley High School. Again, I, I forget if Conley's technically in Lacey Lakeview or if it's just like in the Bermuda Triangle between Lacey Lakeview and Bellmead. But at any rate, Jordan, you'll be there today. We've talked about it on this show. I, I don't know how much more I can spell it out without just saying it, but on a level of – on a scale of 0 to 10, how shocked would you be if Kobe Black picked somebody other than Texas today? 10. It'd yeah. be 10. Yeah. And that's, you, you, we don't, 
I don't like saying that very often in recruiting because, man, Mike knows this. At the end of the day, we're dealing with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and I've seen kids change their mind at the last minute and have staffs, coaching staffs, be like, what the hell just happened? Like, we thought we had that kid. So, but, yeah, it's it's Kobe Black. Uh, Jordan, start with you, then go to Mike. You guys have both seen him in person this year. What do you like? And, and Mike, do you want to take up for uh, – for Andrew Ivins and Hudson Standish and Gabe Brooks and the folks on the national side for the uh, the safety corner conundrum that we seem to be stuck in. Jordan, go ahead. You go first. Yeah. Um, the game I saw was the game, actually his final high school game of his career uh, versus Jasper where they kind of got donkeyed. So wasn't the best uh, exposure for only seeing him once. But um, just like, man, being, being around at all these high school games, like guys just either have, college bodies, NFL bodies, and, you know, they either got it or they don't. He definitely has the look of a guy who's going to play in the NFL for sure. Um, and, you know, we have him listed as a safety. I know he says he's a corner, all that. He could literally play anything, and I'm pretty confident in that, um, that he would do it at a high level as well. So, but my Mike's a Kobe Black guy, so I don't want to take too much of the uh, evaluation <laughs> stuff, whatever, so I'll pass it to him because he's seen him way more in person than I ever have, so he can speak on it much better than I can. Yeah, I was also at that game uh, with Jordan, and it didn't – I mean, there just wasn't a lot of room for Kobe to do much against that Jasper team. Uh, Connolly was a little hopeless on offense, and it was a run game festival for Jasper. So he wasn't getting a whole lot of a lot of push and coverage. I did see him last year against Springtown in a game where he had five touchdowns, uh, four on offense, and then a pick six on defense. And it was funny. I was at the State 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. We were in the same hotel as Springtown. And I was talking to their defense coordinator at the bar one night in the hotel lobby. And he was just like, I just couldn't understand why we were throwing balls at the guy with an Alabama and Texas offer. And then it, it burned <laughs> us. So he is a big play guy. Absolutely. I think that that two way uh, playing offense, playing defense lends itself to a lot of success at the next level. As for the safety corner, look, I mean, our guys on the national scouting team, right, wrong, or indifferent, if you agree with them or not, they put a ton of work into it. Right. They study a lot of trends and their job is not necessarily to project him to what he's going to play in college. Their job is to project him because we grade on an NFL draft scale. Hey, is this guy an NFL safety? And that's kind of what they think. They think that's the way the NFL is going to view him, even if he does put a corner at the college level. And so it doesn't really matter. I mean, like Jordan said, this is a guy that can play your either side at corner or your fielder boundary. He could play at safety. I mean, he is a uh, uh, ball skills through the roof. He's a ball hawk, a coverage demon. Like, he's physical enough to, to come up and play in the box and tackle. He's built like a dream, you know, six one and a half, six two, probably. Um, I, I wouldn't get – I know Kobe is – I've had conversations with Kobe about, like, just don't worry about it, man. Like, just go play football. Like, you're, you know what schools are recruiting you at. Like, we've got to do our job. You go do your job, and, and we'll see how it kind of all shakes out. Maybe when he gets drafted, and if he's an all-pro NFL corner, then he can call me or tweet at us or, or whatever he wants to do. You know, uh, I I like him for about what Texas likes in their boundary corner. Like, Ryan Watts now is the prototype. I think he mm -hmm. fits there. But I think with the way teams are attacking the field now, guys, when you look at – teams are more willing to take those high risk throws over the middle of the field between the hashes. And that's kind of the one thing this and maybe Derek Williams can be one of these guys. We just haven't seen it enough from him. Uh, but Texas needs one of those guys. They need a ball Hawk in the middle of the field uh, for that center field safety. And, you know, they don't have that guy right now. And a guy with ball skills like Kobe Black has, Mike, I think you hit it on the head with what, what little I've seen of him just on tape. What stood out to me is you got to go with those kind of ball skills. I want to put him in a position where he can have the most opportunities to make plays on the field. And for me, that would probably be at safety. But I think he could play boundary corner. He could play nickel. Uh, he, he's a really, really good prospect. Mike, you on board with Jordan in terms of you'll be – shocked and we don't use that word often if it's anybody but texas today 
I get Jordan's sentiment of a 10. I've been in the game much longer and I'm much more scarred by past things. So I'm going to go nine and just give the one point like allowance for anything can happen in recruiting. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would be pretty shocked at this point. If, if it, I, I think Texas has run the best race from the beginning. I mean, there are times when Texas wins kids over, you know, even if they get in on them late, it's not often. There's a lot of times that burns them. Um, you know, we'll see how that shakes out with like Xavier feels to me. Um, but when they're early on a kid like that, they almost always, and, and they really treat it like a priority from the beginning. They yeah. very rarely lose those recruitments. And so uh, Kobe was one of those guys for them, a guy that they, they really set out from the beginning to land. And, uh, and I think that they've run the best race to this point. But which, whichever one of you guys wants to take this, please feel free. The Xavier Filsimi situation is interesting, and Jordan, you you recently put in your your crystal ball prediction with confidence level of six uh, for Texas to get him. What again? Wh- whichever one of y'all wants to take it first, go ahead. How did that evaluation process for Texas work, and what was it maybe the first time around that didn't jive? Things weren't jiving, or whatever it was. How have things come together when they have? The timing of Texas getting on him is is really interesting. I'm passing yeah, this all think, the way to Mike. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, again, this is another longtime Mike Roach guy. Uh, known Xavier since he was an eighth grader. Um, and he was a receiver. I mean, he was a receiver until literally his junior year. So his junior uh, his junior year, spring, uh, his sophomore spring, he's, he kind of flips to safety. I remember seeing him in a seven-on-seven tournament in the spring of his sophomore year, kind of the first time he was playing safety. I called somebody at Texas, and I was like, look, man, like, I, there's no film on him playing safety. There's – you're going to just have to trust me on this. But, like, this kid is a different-looking athlete. And I, I called him and said, hey, I think – it was like the weekend – I think I was at a tournament on a Friday for a state qualifier and then Saturday they were having their elite camp. And I was like, just get him down there tomorrow and work him out and let me know what you like go from there. And they didn't for whatever reason. And, um, you know, his first year at safety, he struggled a little bit. He, it was his first time playing the position and the athleticism was there, but he didn't have the, the instinctive ability. He didn't have the, the technical ability even. You know, he was just a big athlete running around on the back end. And I think yeah. when you had that, he had an off-season injury, so nobody got to really see him during the spring. A lot of those schools offered him off potential. This is a kid who was six six foot, six one, whatever, 190, who runs a 10-500, who is – when you see him move, it's, it's different. Again, it's like Jelani McDonald in a sense. And I think Texas kind of had some safety targets in mind. I think that they really would have loved to have evaluated him during the spring, but because he was recovering from a shoulder injury, they, they didn't get that opportunity. And I can remember I was at McKinney High School late spring. I was speaking at their recruiting seminar, and I talked to one of the coaches who said that Texas had called. Xavier was about to make his commitment to Florida at this point. Texas had called and said, hey, is it too late to get in? And they were kind of like, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's about to make his commitment. So I think they kind of circled back around after um, after that and were able to get into the Red River shootout, obviously. And then it kind of just progressed from there. They had the good fortune of things falling apart at Florida a little bit, and uh, that, that certainly helped them. I don't think hey, you know, Florida gone out and had an eight and four season or whatever. Um, I, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. Uh, yeah. X would be – totally locked in, but it gave Texas an opening. I think that they've done a good job since that time because you have to repair a lot of the, hey, you didn't offer me early, you didn't believe in me back then type of stuff. So they're in a really good position going into this week's official visit. He'll have a, a Florida in home tonight um, with uh, Billy Napier and the new DB coach, Will Harris, are coming in. Um, and then uh, I think Blake Gideon wants to get last in home uh, before – uh, the official visit just to make sure everything's uh, locked up. I would as I would say, if you, I don't have a crystal ball and and I think it's clear if you follow my reporting, I'm getting the most inside information from Xavier Filsimi's camp. So sometimes we trade crystal balls for those things. Uh, so read into that what you will. Uh, but I would say I I like 
I, I would give the edge to Texas at this point going into the official visit weekend. Jordan, you you riding with Mike on that on liking where I mean you've already put in your crystal ball. You liking where things are with with Phil Simmons in Texas. Oh yeah, riding with Mike for sure. Nice, uh, Jordan. I'll start with you on this one. We're a week away from signing day. We talked about Kobe Black. We talked about Xavier Phil Simmons. There's portal guys. Trey Moore's out there. You know, we talked about the Matthew Golden thing. Texas is going down to Houston to talk with him. Give me a couple of the guys that. If you're a Texas fan following recruiting, and again, I hope Texas fans are rewired at this point to treat the December signing period like you used to treat the February signing day. So everything kind of comes to a head now, except for a handful of guys. Give me a few guys that you tell a Texas fan, hey, pay attention to this guy and what he does and where he ends up going on signing day. <laughs> well, man, uh, Phil Smee's obviously one of them. Um, I'd say Terrence Hobler, who's an interior D lineman from Mississippi, committed to Mississippi State. Um, I'd say uh, Alex Foster, the interior D lineman from uh, Louisiana that's committed to Baylor. He could be one to watch as well. Um, Aaron Butler, who is in contact with Texas. Texas is yet to offer there. He just decommitted from uh, Colorado in the last week or two. I did yeah. see he's visiting Arizona this weekend, so – with Texas not offering and signing day a week away from today. I'm, I'm doubting anything will happen there, but it's still something we're watching. Um, big name we're watching is Dominic McKinley, where it's actually looking like he's going to sign in February now. So not really looking forward to it being extended two months. Um, but, you know, maybe Texas can get in there and shake it up. Uh, they're scheduled to go in home with him tomorrow. Um, I believe the other schools that have been in home or will be in home with him this week uh, include A&M, LSU, Ohio State, Oklahoma. I think uh, Alabama may also have one, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on them. Um, so I'd say, yeah, those those are the guys to watch. Um, in terms of guys committed, I think Aaron Hampton is certainly one to watch. Uh, behind the scenes for months, Alabama's been in contact with them. Nick Saban obviously was out on a home visit – or not a home visit, uh, visited Hampton at Dangerfield, um, mm -hmm. I believe, last week it was. And, you know, he's – Committed, he's been committed to Texas twice. Committed to Baylor once. Uh, you know, we've been over it. He's a, he's a, you know, one of the guys we're watching um, because of past history. And you know, I'd be stupid if I didn't mention him as a guy who we're watching going up to signing day. Right. So, yeah, an interesting. Jeff, can I just sure. say? Go can ahead. I just say? I'm so interested. I'm going to see Jordan all week. I'm going to get my fill of Jordan at the Texas State <laughs> uh, State Championships this week. But I'm so interested to talk to Jordan next week because you and I have done it for years, so we kind of know the drop. But, like, this is Jordan's first signing day, like, on the big beat. Yeah. And, like, he just he kind of just hit on it, like, what it's like. It's like, well, this guy might, you know, we're, we got to monitor. He doesn't have an offer, but we have to monitor him. And it's literally like operating a stovetop, and you've got 15 pots on the stove. And you may have the gravy over here, like turned on low, but you got to keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn. And uh, yeah. just it's a it's a fun experience, but it's uh, it's definitely you spend a lot of time chasing things that don't necessarily matter or, or probably won't end up mattering. For sure, uh, there's always I rem you know I remember back in my days when I was in the chair, Mike, you were in Jordan that you're in now. I remember having to uh lend credence to a rumor that that laramie tunsil might be coming to texas and every fiber of your being is telling you the dude is going somewhere in the sec because that was that was mac brown time and mac just didn't they didn't play the game back then like other schools were and like you know what i i have to report on this because then your your readers like, oh man, what's happening with Laramie Tunsil? What's happening with Laramie Tunsil? I'm like, I really want to tell you guys not to pay attention at all to Laramie Tunsil, but I have to do the whole dog and pony show. Mike, there's been some of those for you where you had to do it, and then there's the you know uh, one that we actually wrote about. I think Eric Henry wrote the piece right before the Big Twelve Championship game. Uh, you know, something like Jalen Ford pops up where it's like in that window, like, oh hey, by the way, this is probably going to pop before you know in the next forty eight hours. So now you're the, scrambling. The Jalen Ford out thing. The Jalen Ford thing was so again, and, and to reference one of our old coworkers, EJ Holland and I were the biggest Jalen Ford fans in high school. Like we would watch him at Frisco Lone Star and be like, "Why is nobody recruiting this kid? He's awesome." And 
Um, that was part of a, a tenure at Texas where it was very annoying to constantly call people and say, hey, you need to check this kid out. And they'd just be like, nah, we're good on we're good on Marvin Mims and Jackson Smith and Jigbo and Jalen Ford. Um, and so I had kind of just given up hope or whatever. And I remember sitting, I was at, uh, that was the year, I mean, it does this some years, it, it does it, you know, the last two years, but signing day uh, crosses with state. So a lot of times I'm working on signing day stuff from the state press box. And like, it was the day after, and I got, saw something that was like, hey, Jalen Ford never signed with Utah. And I was like, that's weird. And I knew it was kind of Tim Beck's parting gift to the program. He was on his way out but was the area recruiter for Frisco and had gone and sealed the deal for Jalen Ford on his way out the door and uh, got a call from somebody that was like, Hey, we just got Jalen Ford's letter at Texas. And so I was like scrambling to write a story. I can remember like, do you remember the Rashawn Gary? Uh, like the, the weekend before signing day, hey, Rashawn Gary is going to show up in Texas. And I vaguely remember that. that yeah. It comes from, yeah. I mean, there's so many, I think, and by the way, I think it's changed a lot. Um, I think that NIL has changed the late signing day entry a lot because a lot of these guys are now locked into deals and they've got what they need. And yeah, there may be some last minute bidding. There's always going to be a couple of things, right? Like Dylan Rayola visiting Nebraska this weekend is giving, giving like life back to this. And it's great for guys like me who he's not in my region, so I don't really have to cover. If he's in my region, I'd be slamming my head on the table. But as a guy that's in a different region, I'm just like, yeah, this is awesome. So I think it's it's kind of changed from that perspective. But, man, I can remember, and Je like, Jeff, you know, signing day, you're up at, like, 5 a.m. And yeah. you're starting to monitor if, for if letters. If you slept at all the night before. If you slept at all because I, you'd, spend, you'd be up till 3 a.m. on the phone with people trying to confirm these, hey, is this – hey, man, are you guys really going to get uh, – I don't know. You, is Travis Hunter really going to like flip to Texas? No. Where did you hear that? Okay. Sorry. I had to chase it. You know, like th things of that nature. So I, I'm interested to see kind of what this signing day Eve holds for us, because I, I think it, it could be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jordan, yeah, you haven't, you haven't experienced any of that, Jordan, but you will trust me on, on this beat there. There will be a prospect that's been totally off your radar and it's probably going to be complete BS, but he'll pop up like next Monday afternoon and you'll be having to chase your tail trying to track it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one I've been the most. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. I was just going to say 95. I'm 95% sure it's not going to ever come to anything. Like that's usually how it happens. The yeah. 5%, it does. Like, oh, okay, that's something. Ethan Burke was kind of one of those guys, right? Yeah. Like, okay, that is something. But it's 95% of the time. It's like, why did I just spend an hour chasing this? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was I was pretty upset when I saw that McKinley is pushing it back to February. <laughs> just because I was like, oh, my gosh, two more months. Like, we can't sign next Wednesday, man. Come on now. It gives hey, you something to do for, for January, though. Yeah, but before we get back into Texas, Mike, real quick, uh, and, and I mentioned this because he's such a big prospect – and Jordan and I talked about Dylan Rayola. You know, Texas didn't get Arch Manning. Uh, one of Ju uh, Julian Sand or Dylan Rayola would probably be committed to Texas right now with Sark's quarterback taking the 24 class if Arch Manning didn't come to Texas. Uh, but you've been, you know, you've had a lot of intel on the Dylan Rayola situation from when he was at Burleson, uh, which seems like forever ago now. But what, what's your take just on the way things have transpired in the last, I don't know, 72 hours or so? It, it makes a lot of sense when you talk to people around Dylan. Like, it does make a lot of sense that Nebraska has such a pool for him. It's where his dad went to school. His, his uncle, his dad's brother is, on the off, is the offensive line coach there. Like, they grew up watching that program. You know, Dominic Rayola is a legend at Nebraska. Yeah. And I'm sure every Saturday still watches Nebraska football. Like, I mean, that's, you know. And so I think Dylan's always been a kid who – has been a, a little bit marches to the beat of his own drum in the sense of, hey, I could go to Georgia and be the next guy, or I could go to Nebraska and be the guy that institutes that change. And I, I don't think anything, I mean, I I still do talk to people um, around Rayola 
And it's, it is essentially like a, they have an understanding that I'm not going to report any of this. It's like, yeah. we have a longstanding relationship. I'm just an observer here. I, you guys will answer the phone for me and nobody else because you know, I'm not going to turn around and write anything about it. So I don't want to say too much of, of what I've been told, but I, I don't think it's a slam dunk that it's done or anything, but I do think that, um, you know, there is that pool from Nebraska. And I, I do think it's interesting for him to say, I, We've seen it with Texas in the years that they've been down where guys have said, I want to be the part of the class that changes that. And I think it is is appealing. And so, you know, I we'll see how it turns out this weekend in Lincoln. I it, if it were me, it, yeah, it's tough to walk away from like what Georgia brings as a program. Yeah. But if you're a kid like Dylan, who is very individualistic and who a lot of self-confidence, and you can I mean, his dad's name's up in the stadium. So when you think about the sense of I could go back, I could do this, and my name could be up in the stadium right next to my dad's, how cool would that be? You got to go look at that, I think. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, two things before we move on. <clears throat> Dylan Rayola is one of the only, one of the very few you know, high school kids right now that can actually, actually understand that Nebraska was really good at one point. Because his his dad was there when Nebraska that was that was back in the day, Mike. When if you beat Nebraska, you accomplished something. It was a great achievement to beat Nebraska. Talk to one of the like the funny conversation. Like talk to Dom Rayola sometime about uh, what was it ninety? I guess it was ninety eight, right? That was Dom's freshman Nin year when Texas went into Nebraska and beat them. Was it ninety eight? Yeah, 90 98, yeah, and then he had to deal with uh, in 99. He had to deal with uh, Sean Rogers and Casey Hampton that game in Austin. The Texas one. It's funny he mentioned that. Like when I talked to him, he's like, "I did that, and then I ended up playing in the NFL on the same team with Sean Rogers and and all this stuff." But yeah, I mean, he it was. It was funny. The first time I met Dylan and Dom, he was like, they had just come off a visit to Texas, and Dylan was not a known prospect at this point. It was literally like he was Cecilia Connor's good friend. And that's why he was getting to go on visits. That's how <laughs> I met him, was, was interviewing Cecilia Khan. And um, it, Dom had told me at the time, he's like, man, I hated Texas. I've always hated Texas because I played for Nebraska. They ended our winning streak. Like, he goes, and then we went on the visit, and I was just blown away by everything. Like, it was everything yeah. was so professional and so well done. So it's funny to hear him kind of go back and talk about playing Texas in the 90s. And, yeah, I mean, that's – you Jeff, when you and I grew up, that was the standard. I remember mean, watching those those Tom Osborne yeah. teams, and and uh, you know just kind of dominate teams on the field. I think they would probably get their heads kicked in by some of the Nick Saban Alabama teams, or maybe the Kirby Smart Georgia teams, just in terms of athleticism. But dude, you can't. The '95 Nebraska team has very few peers in terms of you know, greatest college football team of my lifetime. I mean, yeah. I've, I've heard, I've heard stories about, you know, they were getting ready to play Florida in a Fiesta bowl and, you know, Steve Spurrier was running the sec at that point And just hearing from Nebraska people like a hundred percent confident, like, Oh dude, we're going to, we're about to go beat the hell out of Florida. Like they don't, they don't have a chance. And they pushed Florida around the field. Like Steve Spurrier teams didn't get pushed around at that point. Um, so that's just something to follow. Like Jordan, I'll go to you. You, you. You've got your pick of – I'll run down the guys real quick. <clears throat> guys that are 24-7 sports, three-star prospects. You give me the guy that in a few years uh, everybody's going to regret. To, man, he should have been a four-star or higher. He'll he'll outplay his ranking. You got Trey Owens, Jordan Washington, Santana Wilson, Daniel Cruz, uh, JJR, Christian Clark, DeAndre Robinson, Parker Livingstone, Nate Kibble, Alex January, Melvin Hills, and uh, yeah, we, you know, Michael Kern's a punter, so pun no punter is going to be ranked higher than a three star. But yeah, any one of those guys, yeah, we, had that, punter. we had a four star punter last year, Tyler White, who went to AM, first four star punter. Hey, you remember when I was talking about the punter from the All American Bowl? That's who it is, Tyler White. <laughs> punk That's him. Jordan I was telling remember. him, I'm like, the best punter I've ever seen Jeff, in my life is on Texas AM. Jeff, Florida. you've covered a million Army Bowl practices. Have you ever seen a punter draw, draw a crowd of media? It was no. like watching Tyler White just hit piss missiles and just drop dropping balls on the two yard line like he was hitting a, a, a loft wedge. We He'd have 30 media members just standing around the field watching him do it. 
No, start starting with Justin Tucker when I started going to those things and leading up to to now the last one I went to, which was the the one that uh, Jamon Tap and Jalen Gilbo were in. Uh, <laughs> the punter is usually the guy you know playing grab ass at the under other end of the field while everybody's practicing. Like nobody pays attention to the specialists at these things. Just show just show up for the game on Saturday, and nobody really cares what you do the rest of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going through the three stars in the class, Jeff, how many do I get to pick? Uh hey man, how many if, do you want me to pick? If you if you think there's just one guy that's head and shoulders above everybody, or you like a couple guys, man, this is this is all you. You know, I I went to bat for and I thought I, I risked my job and was gonna get fired for changing Deshaun Elliott's ranking to a four star rating after the after the rankings came out in 2015. I'm like, we'll just I'll be honest. I, I coaxed Brian Peroni into it because he had act, database access. I'm like, Peroni, don't put him in the top 247. Just make him a four-star. He's an unranked four-star. He needs to be. And Peroni did it. And um, we, we, We're on much better terms now, but I got a very angry text from Barton Simmons after that went down. So proceed. Like him, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the guys That's I like. Move. Yeah, yeah. The guys I like. More, I like more, more balls Austin. than brains at that point, Mike, I had. Um, I like Jordan Washington a lot from Langham Creek. He's uh, the only tight end taking the class. Um, love his measurements. And just I think he's super raw. I like the basketball background too. Um, I don't think he's really a, an FBS or a, a, a high major basketball player at the next level. But mm -hmm. I think if he did put all his eggs into that basket, he could probably get some low-level interest of some sort. Um Santana Wilson, I like him a lot too. Uh, I mean, he's a true corner, probably the truest corner of any of the DBs in the class. Uh, his father played in the NFL. His father works in the NFL currently yeah. still um, with the Cardinals. I like him a lot. I think we just don't really hear a lot about him because, you know, he keeps a lot he, – he keeps to himself and he doesn't post a ton, doesn't really go on visits. Uh, since he committed to Texas on his official visit and went public with it then, uh, I have not once heard of him wavering off his commitment or anything like that. So I think he's just one of the quieter guys. That's why he doesn't get talked about as much. Uh, I like Daniel Cruz a lot uh, for a center. Phenomenal kid as well, too. Um, awesome kid and awesome player. He's also, I believe, been a four-year starter and has played all five positions at the high school level, which is pretty big. Damn, I'm just trying not to pick everyone here. Um I like JJR a lot, not as much as uh, other guys in terms of, you know, who could outplay the ranking, but I like him. Christian Clark's in the same boat. Um, Nate well, Kibble. Me, yeah, Sorry, give ahead. me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts on Trey Owens. Because you, you've seen you've seen Trey, you've talked to Trey a little bit, and, and he is the quarterback taking this class. Yeah. Um, I like Trey a lot. I like Trey a lot, and I like a high three star ranking for him. Um, and I also think he could be a guy that could potentially outplay his ranking, but I'm not as confident on that as I am the other guys. Um, but Trey knows the situation going in, which I think is the best possible <coughs> scenario. Um, like he's not – bless you. He's not expecting to come in and compete for the starting job or anything like that. You know, he knows his role coming in and that he's going to have to earn everything and bust his ass and show up to practice if he ever wants to be the starter at Texas. And he knows those things, um, which is great. Because a lot of the times, uh, as Mike was saying earlier with Byron Murphy, whenever, you know, kids say they're only going to go in and do three years or, you know, things of that nature, you most of the time just roll your eyes. Um, yeah. Because they're overconfident in themselves and different things like that. Whereas I just wanted to hit home that, like, it's a very much a good thing that Trey Owens knows his role coming into the program and everything like that. Um, I did want to talk about Nate Kilbo though, just putting out the uh, you know top plays of the week from Texas commits throughout this season. Mm -hmm. I really liked a lot of Nate Kibble's senior year stuff. Um, whenever he did commit, I was somewhat surprised that that they were taking him. Um, but, I mean, he's proved me wrong. It's kind of made me eat my words for that through just seeing his play as a senior. Also, like Melvin Hills, uh, he didn't have a ton of game experience before he was ranked originally. Uh, this year, I haven't watched this film, but I did see he has 14 and a half sacks and put up some pretty solid numbers. So, yeah, looking forward to watching that. But I think he could be a guy who I just think he's incredibly – whenever we rated him, he was incredibly hard to project just because he didn't have a ton of game film. Um, 
But I think, you know, he he's a guy who really intrigues me. I don't know about NFL draft or out playing the ranking, but just because we don't have a huge sample size, I'm very curious to see, you know, how his projection will work. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, man, give me give me athletic defensive lineman out of the state of Louisiana, you know, six days a week and twice on Sunday. Mike, anybody in this Texas class you've watched that maybe not even out playing the ranking, just somebody that you've watched this season that you're like, yeah, that, that guy's somebody that you'll be hearing about a year or two down the road? I do want to I want to talk about Trey Owens because I, I have a little bit of a different take from Jordan on him. I think that Trey – Jordan can back this up. Trey has this – like I think everybody looks at him like he's the safe pick after you take Arch Manning because no other elite quarterbacks want to come. And while you may think that, Trey Owens has a self-confidence in him that is different. Like he is – he's like, yeah, everybody thinks that I'm like the career backup, but – I'm really coming here to, to, I'll compete my ass off. And he is that kind of kid. And I think that what he showed this year on the field with his build, his ability to throw the deep ball, he made some plays, especially like when they beat Katie in the playoffs, he made a throw on the last drive to tie the game. That was an NFL level, just quick turn, get it out, put it on the line, touchdown. And, you know, was able to extend the play with his legs I think, man, like we try not to, at least on the evaluation side, look at where guys going to college when making an evaluation. But I think if you're looking at guys who are going to a program that's got a proven track record at a position or a coach that has a proven track record at a position, you have to consider Mm -hmm. that. And when you are Steve Sarkeesian's pick at quarterback, that means something um, in the college world. And I, like they could have gone a bunch of different directions in this class and they went Trey Owens very early. I think if you want to make the, the easy comparison is Mac Jones, right? Like he's in this talented quarterback room with the Jalen Hurts and uh, um, Tua, Tua and he's, he's Mac Jones. I think that's kind of the way they see him. Um, and, and a guy that everybody overlooks, but is there, I will also add that like, we've still got, uh, I think two full rankings updates to go. So these guys, I mean, could could be four stars by the time we get to the end of this. Yeah. And then, you know, who knows if they'll outplay the ranking. The other guy I want to talk about, you guys mentioned briefly, was Christian Clark, who didn't have the best senior year. And I'm a believer in, in buying when stock is low. This is a guy that in the last February, this was Tashar Choice's number one target on the board over Jarrett Gibson, over everybody else. And um, we'll see if that turns out. But the thing I've learned covering to Char Choice and covering Texas is that guy's pretty good at evaluating. He has been nearly perfect in saying, I'm going to go get that guy and going and getting them, <laughs> uh, whether it be CJ Baxter or Jared Gibson or Christian Clark. And I think that I think you guys may have talked about it a ton. I don't I don't get to watch the show a lot, but to Char Choice is an elite assistant Texas has. From both as a developer and a recruiter. And I think that his feelings on Christian Clark, if they are still what they are after a senior season, mean something to me. And so um, I think that is a guy you could see bounce back at Texas and all of a sudden be like, well, where did this guy come from? Yeah. It's an early sample, but th- this may be the best staff Texas has had at developing talent. Maybe since the Fred Akers era, to be honest, because you know, again, jo- Jordan doesn't really remember the the Halcyon days under Mac. But Mike, you ever remember like Texas was just recruiting an absurd amount of talent, and they were sending guys to the NFL. But and I've I've talked to to Rod Babers and other guys about this man. They would go to the combine, and that was kind of the knock on Texas guys was, well, you guys still aren't aren't fully developed. You know, there's still yeah. there's still some room to grow. I just feel like, you know, Tavondre Sweat, Byron Murphy, Jalen Ford, like I keep going back to those three guys. Those are great examples of, of what it looks like when you actually develop guys. And to to your point, Mike, about the shard choice, it's a you know, gunner helm is a guy that like was to me in that 21 class was a complete afterthought. You're gonna miss Jatavian Sanders a whole lot next year, but dude, Gunner Helm, Gunner Helm could be like an all SEC level tight end for Texas. It's really weird to wrap my head around saying that, but I got to get used to it now. 
you know, Gunnar Helm's yeah. a really good tight end prospect. Like it's amazing what happens when you hire good coaches, when you retain good coaches and allow good coaches to do what you hired them to do. It's amazing how, how quickly you can develop really good football players. And I got to say this and I got to run because my, uh, my daughter is up and crying and upstairs. So I got to run and go take care of her. But uh, I mean, this is going to be this could be a year where we see Texas break like it's modern record for draft picks, which is yeah. insane considering yeah. we're what a couple years removed from them going over in the draft, mm -hmm. um, and, and it just really shows that what they've done turning around this roster development wise. So uh, I appreciate you guys for having me on. Let me go change oh, the thanks, Mike. And make a bottle. Yeah, I know you're busy, but thank you, man. Sir, sure. I'll see you later today. Yeah, anytime, guys. All right, later, Thanks, later uh, Jordan. I'll see you tonight. See ya. All right, man. Mike Roach, 24-7 Sports. You can still get him at Mike Roach 247 on the Twitter machine. His work is all over the 24-7 Sports Network. Um, really good hour there, Jordan, with Mike. Uh, you know, Mike is a, a, a has a wealth of knowledge on this stuff. And again, he's Seen the rock. He, it's it's interesting to have both you guys on because he saw this roster when it was getting put together. Now, as we see, okay, Stark has gotten Texas to this point. What are you going to do to maintain it? Now you're on the side of seeing the guys they're trying to bring in to to maintain this thing. And I just can't I can't say enough about the way the staff develops, man. That's been a, the problem, the problem at Texas. And there's a lot of tentacles that stretch out from that from player development, but that's essentially been the problem. And Sark has gone a long way. To rectify that jordan we talked about the portal uh with matthew golden didn't really talk much trey moore because i don't know the ohio state visit coming up i don't think there's a whole lot to talk about until he makes that visit uh anything else top of mind for you before we turn it over to to trey and bk um no no not texas related but um Cam Ward is on a visit to Miami right now. Mm -hmm. He's not going there. Uh, DJ Lagway, on the other hand, um, him flipping to AM is a very real possibility. Really? Yeah. Uh, I spoke to a source last night who's in DJ Lagway's camp. Like, that is a very real, very real thing. Um, I'm not going to report on that just because I really do not want to get involved. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if I have information – that I know other people don't have, I'm going to release the information. Um, so, yeah, um, I think I hit on everything for, for Golden. Uh, going to visit DJ, Louisville this weekend. The Texas DJ staff. Lagway thing is fascinating because if you're the powers that be at Florida, if your class, I mean, your class disintegrates at that point. If you lose the quarterback take, what what is the incentive at that point to keep Billy Napier around? Yeah, and you know, hey y'all, y'all know how I feel. They're most likely losing Phil Smith as well. So yeah, if they lose Lagway too. I, I'm not sure how close. Like I, I definitely, I mean, I know way more about Phil Smith than I do Lagway, but um, Phil Smith's recruitment, I'm fully expecting him to flip to Texas come signing day. Uh, Lagway, on the other hand, I just think it's a very real possibility. I don't even know wow. if that's getting reported on, to be honest. I haven't been on Gigum 24-7 or Swamp 24-7 this morning. Um, but if he does end up at A&M, uh, that is not good for Texas at all. Um, no, no, because that kid's a hell of a talent. And, I mean, I, I look, <laughs> I saw Colin Klein win a Big 12 championship with Adrian Martinez <laughs> and Will Howard as his quarterbacks. So I kind of want to see what he could do with a guy like like do you hear the other hire that AM made apparently? I I don't know if this is out, but I got a text about this this morning. Who they hired for strength conditioning. Yeah, I recognize the name. Why is why was that such a big deal? And why was I mean I this always happens no matter what the hire is where the fans of the school are like great hire. But like yeah. wait, fill fill me in. I want to hear it. To Tommy Moffitt uh was the strength and conditioning guy at LSU like forever mm -hmm. and you know it's I, I, I again I got a text on that I don't see anything getting reported on uh on our AM side I think that's kind of in the Twitter verse right now but if that's who AM's hiring for strength conditioning 
you know, where it's starting to go down, actually, uh, yeah, okay, so Football Scoop is saying that it's apparently set to happen. It's one of those deals that, like, it's not all the way across the finish line yet, but for all intents and purposes, it is. Tommy Moffitt's kind of in that mold of, of what AM lost. I think when it started to go downhill under Jimbo was when Jerry Schmidt left and went back to Oklahoma. Um, you know, I, I talked to enough Oklahoma guys, whether it was, you know, Joaquin Iglesias or, or Tommy Harris, the guys that I would see around as we train BK come in. And this was right around the time that uh, Lincoln Riley was taking over the program for Bob Stoops. And Tommy Harris was the guy that told me point blank. He's like, look, I don't give a damn who the head coach is. He says, as long as Schmidt, still there running strength and conditioning. It's like Oklahoma football is going to be fine. And, you know, we saw what he did at A&M, and that, I think that that hurt A&M a lot more than I think A&M fans would admit at the time. But I think now in hindsight, you look at how it's gone, and, like, yeah, they they miss Jerry Schmidt a whole lot. But if Tommy Moffitt's the hire, that's a slam-dunk freaking strength conditioning hire for A&M. As, as, as we talked to Trey and BK, two guys who are very familiar with the uh, – Look at the strength conditioning coach we just hired. He's the greatest thing ever, and he's going to reinvent the wheel of our player development program. Oh, I can't wait to hear about the – Oh, Trey, no. the shirt's he's coming off. Shirtless today, that's it. Oh, no. Strength and conditioning program. All right, y'all, it's been a good show. Uh, hold on, it. hold on. I'm leaving. <laughs> One of you guys has to stay. I ain't dealing with this shit. One Trey's going to do his best with? Benny Wiley and look at himself in the mirror during the entire show. And then I'm going to blow out a pack. Yeah, Trey, Trey was coached by Charlie Strong. He does not do squats either. I've been told. Yeah, <laughs> fuck Dude, leg day. Trey, you remember that one camp where you know Mac used to send out like the pre-camp injury report, like so and so will be limited or whatever. So and so is not available. It felt like there were like eight guys all with groin injuries. Like, what the hell are y'all doing over there? Like, there's like eight dudes that all have a groin injury. And I was talking to guys. It's like, yeah, because after a workout, we're having to run like 14 200s for some freaking reason. There's a right time and a wrong time to do certain activities. Like I used to hear about James Harden going into the gym after games. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? That's, that's counterproductive, if anything. It's just setting yourself up. Now, didn't matter for James Harden. He kind of has an old man game anyhow. And yeah. plus he got really fat over the years too. <laughs> Big fat point guard, favorite position on the floor. When there is one, but uh, James Harden, I guess, runs counter to that because uh, he sucks as a player. You don't want him on your team. But yeah, it was it was the it was the uh, the quad injury or the lower leg injury at one point. It was the pec injury at one point. It's like how much emphasis are you putting into uh, to chest day here, guys? Yeah. Like ease up on the bench press just a little bit because you have guys injuring their pecs multiple times, like uh, J uh, Jeff Coat did, and other guys suffering a very similar injury. Eventually, a pattern is uh is a sign that you need to do something a little bit differently in the weight room yeah and I, I remember that was the knock on benny wiley which usc fans now are complaining about benny wiley just like texas fans did and oklahoma fans did even back when he was at tech with mike leach that was kind of the knock on those mike leach tech teams were like yeah they they look great getting off the bus and i'm pretty sure if they walked around shirtless at spring break they would get their share of girls that were intrigued but that really doesn't amount to anything in the fourth quarter of football games it can help, but it's not the only factor. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I think uh, the Rangers minor league system led the world in groin injuries about 10 years ago. Oh, is that the uh, the Rugnet? Not not the Rugnet door that got cut, but the Rugnet door that had the thing yeah. with the deal. Yeah. There's a deep cut. All right. Before, before y'all leave. What? I missed that. Before y'all leave. Kobe Black, is it happening? Fully expecting him to commit to Texas in about four hours. Okay. Boom. I mean, it's a yes or a no. Like, it's, this is going to your head, and if you're wrong, you're done. So, I, I need a yes. Hey, I'd like to have Jordan continue to co-host with me. So. Yeah, I would, too. And I would like to have Kobe Black commit to Texas today. That's That's what's at stake here. That's what's on the line. So, what's it going to be? You good with that? You good with well, that, Jordan? Come on, I, <laughs> All man. right. Fully expected. We'll take that. Are those hey, Jordan, sports cards behind hey, you, Jordan? Sports what do you cards say? Behind, are those sports cards behind you? Uh, Yeah, they're like uh, basketball cards from the, the 90s and 80s. When did this montage start? 
Uh, when I was sometime in the elementary school, I got really into uh, I was playing baseball at the time and got really into baseball cards and found out about basketball cards and wanted the uh, old ones. Um, so I asked them for Christmas and just ripped them open and threw them in a box for like five years. And then uh, a few years ago, I was just like, man, it'd probably be pretty cool looking on the wall if I put it up on a poster board. And that's what I did. I dig it. I know it takes the value of the card down to zero, but I think the aesthetic is really cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't, yeah, I'm, I'm not into like collecting cards at all. Uh, it was more just decoration stuff. I have no idea if I even have any valuable ones. I doubt it, but they're not valuable now. <laughs> George is not as big of a dork as I am. So be thankful yeah. for that. Big card collector. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, let's have a good show. Later, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you guys. See y'all. Great show by Jeff and Jordan. It's only an hour weekdays from 11 to noon right here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. Fun conversation with Mike Roach of Horns 24-7 and 24-7 Sports as well. Uh, Tons of great recruiting content, transfer portal content, Texas football content coming from those guys every single day from 11 to 12. But uh, they really brought the goods with Mike today. Fun, fun Listen, and now it's time for the award-winning midday show with uh, Trey Elling, who's got his shirt back on, thankfully, and me, BK, Brad Kellner, and most importantly, you people out there. Thank you all for stopping by today. Plenty to get into. We'll talk some Texas Longhorn football. Yes, Kobe Black will make his announcement in the 4 o'clock hour this afternoon. Uh, Longhorn fans obviously optimistic that Kobe Black will make the announcement that he will be coming to the University of Texas. We'll talk about a uh, PFF all Big 12 team, not giving enough Longhorns some love. wonder if Brett Yormark is a part of Pro Football Focus now. Who knows? Talk about Bill Belichick. Has a decision been made about Bill Belichick's future or lack thereof in New England? Maybe some awards, too, to hand out for this Texas football team as we sit now 19 days away from the Sugar Bowl matchup against Washington. Trey, what's going on today, man? <coughs> I was about to say something, and then I realized I was about to cough, so I just had to not say anything and cough. My apologies for uh, that being what's happening today. No, I just had a fascinating nearly two-hour conversation with a guy named Billy Walters, BK. You are a D-Gen, or your cousin's a D-Gen. Do you have any idea who Billy Walters is? That name is familiar. Billy Walters. He's one of the most renowned sports gamblers of all time. He is the guy who recently came out with a book. Mickelson? Phil Mickelson was looking to put a lot of coin on the U.S. and a Ryder Cup collapse that happened back in 2012. I was actually there on the Sunday of that collapse in the greater Chicagoland area drink up. But that uh, doesn't even come close to uh, to beginning to tell the story of Billy Walters. So I spent an hour and a half with him. He shared in this book all the secrets of being a successful sports gambler over the course of a couple of chapters. Some really, really good stuff, too. So that was a, a fun conversation, an enlightening conversation, one that uh, may figure out a way to present on this channel uh, sometime over the next couple of weeks as we're going through the holidays and whatnot. So he's been a more successful sports gambler than Phil Mickelson has. Well, I mean, look, he's he'll he'll tell you that he has uh, lost a lot too, especially gambling on other things. But that's the nature of the beast. But yes, much more successful than Phil Mickelson, who uh, tends to lose a lot more than he wins. On top of being a colossal piece of shit, too. <laughs> I don't know if I need any of those books, though, man, because I've learned to just fade Bucky Godbolt with all of my picks, and that has been the biggest key to my gambling success this season. Didn't he hit with this 10,000-unit play of Army last weekend? He hit his biggest play of the year but lost like every other game he had, so he still went down units this past weekend. Ooh, you know who went up even bigger this last weekend in picking football games? Is that you? Oh. I'm up double digits now, baby. You gained three on me? Yeah. Are you serious? Yep. Oh, what did you have that I didn't? You had army. Wait a second. I may have gone. I may have gone up to it's. I, te- I think technically it's nine right now, but I am very close to double digits. Ah, jeez. Yeah, that's not good. You had the Cowboys. Yep. Uh, you had the Bengals. 
Yep. And you had the Bills. You had one that you got right. So it is it's yeah. only a plus two for me, but I am up nine now. God. Anytime bless. you want to wave that white flag and we can come up with a new uh new set of embarrassing um circumstances for the NFL playoff run or the bowl games or whatever else. I'm I'm up for it. You you make that sound like it's at all a good offer to me when really you're just saying, Hey, do you want to do two punishments instead of one? That's what you're offering. I'm looking for something a little bit more immediate because we're having to wait until next football season to pay off this bet. Oh, well, we could bet on finals and sports like we usually do. Yeah, we'll, we'll we bet. couldn't do that with the World Series this year because neither you nor I wanted to want, wanted to uh, play something against the Rangers, even though you felt like Arizona was going to win. Yeah, we had too much of a rooting interest involved, which we might have too much of a rooting interest in the college football national championship. That's true. And if we don't, then I'm going to be too depressed to make a bet on that game. I don't even know if I want to watch that game if Texas isn't playing it on January 8th. That will feel like a massive, massive letdown. But Super Bowl, well, the Cowboys won't be there. We don't have to worry about that. We can get a good Super Bowl bet. And we did miss the MLS Cup, which is disappointing. The fuck? Did yeah. that really just happen? Yeah, over the weekend. Uh, the Columbus Crew. Beat uh, LAFC. Mm. Yeah. How yeah. far did Austin FC make it in the playoffs this year? Uh, negative rounds because they didn't make it. Mm. Yeah, not a great year for the trees here in Austin. So We went to our first game as a family this year. It was an exciting 0-0 match through 90 minutes, but then it actually did get exciting because Austin FC scored the game-winning goal like a minute into extra time, and as soon as they kicked back off, the blew the whistle. That's kind of that cool. actually was cool, but holy fuck, was it boring up to that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you uh, get that way too often with soccer, where it's just you're waiting a long time, and at least you got to see something happen. The worst is when you watch it either in person or you're watching on TV, and it's nil nil draw, and that's the final. Yeah, then you have to hear the soccer purists say, "Oh, it was a great draw. It was a great match. No one scored. No one is sitting here saying Vikings Raiders." which finished 3 nothing last Sunday, was a great football game. Oh, great defense, BK. No, that was bullshit. That game sucked. Don't sit here and tell me 0-0 soccer is beautiful because it's not. It's if, you're trying to, if you're trying to convince yourself that a tie is a good thing, just go ahead and punch yourself in the face and recognize what your sport actually is because ties do occasionally happen in our favorite sport in football. And what's the reaction whenever a tie happens in the NFL? It can't even happen in college anymore. But when a tie happens in the NFL, it's like, boy, this fucking sucked. Yeah. Why couldn't they have figured out a way to, to have some sort of outcome where you have a winner and a loser? Yeah. Punch yourself in the face and make out with your sister because that's that's what a tie feels like. Isn't that the old expression? How many of your sisters have you made out with? Zero because I don't do ties. It's not my thing. <laughs> I'm not a huge soccer guy. Not my bit. Alicia, if the Austin FC assigns Alicia Longhorn Bears going to go to games. Who the hell is Alicia? Alicia Keys, I guess. Alicia Mars, who's married to our guy Brandon Mars from mm. Top Gun, rentals and lawn equipment. Hey, I guess I'd go support her if she was on the team. I don't know. Some probably big time soccer player that we should know about that we don't. All right. I don't know how we got there, but we're there. Kobe Black, Trey. For me, I think DB is the second biggest area of need for Texas this offseason. I think number one is wide receiver, which mm. feels ironic because wide receiver has been one of the best position groups at Texas this season. But you're losing, more than likely losing, Xavier Worthy. You're more than likely losing Adonai Mitchell. And you're definitely losing Jordan Whittington, which means as of right now, Here's what your wide receiver room looks like in 2024. You're going to have no seniors. You're going to have no juniors. You're going to have a couple of sophomores, Jonte Cook and DeAndre Moore, who have a combined eight career catches, mm -hmm. and all eight of those are by Jonte Cook. And you've got Ryan Niblett, and then you've got three true freshmen who are currently committed in this class. So wide receiver is a massive area of importance for Texas, and they realize that, and you're seeing a number of guys in the portal being linked to Texas. And once again, Texas already has three receivers committed for the recruiting class of 2024, but re receiver is top priority. But DB is also very, very high on that list in part because of losing guys, but also in part because well, the secondary just wasn't that good 
and hasn't been that good. I guess the season is still going on, so we can put that in a present tense. Uh, hasn't been that good this year. So for me, getting a commitment from a guy like Kobe Black would uh, would really help this Texas team. Maybe not necessarily in 2024, but definitely in the future. Yeah, DB is definitely a need. I, I do wonder where offensive line falls in those rankings too, because I am getting a little bit concerned. I know that uh, last year wasn't a great year for offensive line recruiting. They did the best that they could. They did get some uh, highly recruited guys, but uh, you are really close to losing your starting right tackle, of course. Uh, your starting left tackle has one more year here if everything goes as planned. By all accounts, Cam Williams, it hasn't really clicked for him just yet. So even though he was a former five-star guy, he's not coming along like even a DJ Campbell is. So, um, you know, obviously every position you need to uh, give some sort of love to in each recruiting cycle. But uh, offensive line, considering how long it was inconsistent to bad, and now it's just now start, it's just starting to get better. I want to make sure that we stay on top of that one as well. But yeah, wide receiver is is pretty barren after this season, other than those uh, handful of guys that you mentioned, the recruits coming in, I would imagine that we are going to see Texas is uh, heavily involved in the transfer portal either now or once we get through spring ball and helping to address various needs, including at wide out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's a good chance Texas brings in two wide receivers in the portal. Uh, Matthew Golden from Houston has been linked to the Longhorns a lot. We'll see if Evan Stewart from AM decides to actually enter the portal there are plenty of big names, though, already there and maybe a few more to come. Is Juice Wells no longer an option? I feel like things have really quieted down with him in Texas. Yeah, I mean, he was here this past weekend, so I think there's some mutual interest there, but uh, a lot of steam to Juice Wells, to Ole Miss. Mm. I, I don't I don't know. Look, Ole Miss, they've got a lot going for them. They're playing in a New Year's Six Bowl. Lane Kiffin, offensive-minded coach. They spread the ball around a lot, so you would understand why a receiver would want to go to Ole Miss. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, number one. Number two, I don't know if Texas has other targets that they're going after, maybe a little bit more than Juice Wells. And that's that's obviously the tough game you play with recruiting, right? Like yeah. you don't want to give out your scholarships because you have a limited number super early in the offseason because then you potentially miss out on a guy who enters the portal late. But obviously if you're holding out hope for somebody to enter the portal and they never do, or somebody you think you're going to sign in the portal ends up signing elsewhere, then you could be left at the altar with nobody. So it's a dangerous game that Texas could be playing. Uh, I think Deion Burks, the Purdue receiver who just uh, committed to Oklahoma yesterday out of the portal, like I, I think Texas maybe was not as interested in that guy as Oklahoma was, which mm -hmm. is part of the reason why he ended up picking OU. I think Oklahoma showed him a ton of love like immediately. Um, and that, that might be the case with Juice Wells to where there are other – schools that maybe are more confident in going after juice wells or maybe you're just putting more resources into going after him and i wonder because of what just happened to isaiah Nayor, like juice wells missed the majority of 2023 with a foot injury yeah i wonder if texas is like well you know we brought in isaiah Nayor as a transfer and he had a pretty serious injury that caused him to miss an entire season a little bit different than wells and he just never came back and was the same guy I wonder if this coaching staff has a little PTSD, like, ah, do we really want to take a risk on a guy coming off of a pretty serious injury instead of going after somebody else in the portal who was able to stay healthy this season to where we know he's more of a sure thing? It's a fair question because oftentimes you see somebody who has to miss a big chunk of the year with an injury, like even if they are fully healthy that next season, there's still that psychological hurdle to overcome. And they need somebody who can commit immediately based on the amount of playing time that's going to be available, you assume that Jonte Cook is going to nab one of those starting spots. It's not a foregone conclusion to De DeAndre Moore is the other guy. Mm -hmm. Like we saw him struggle a little bit in the spring game, obviously. I've seen him out there at times. And I don't know, I, when I watch him, it doesn't look like he's quite there just yet. So if you can find someone who has either been playing major college football at the Power 5 or FBS level, or someone in those, uh, one of those secondary levels, like an Isaiah Nayor, who could come in and, and provide that spark, great. Because let's remember, Isaiah Naor obviously uh, got hurt here at Texas. They were fully expecting him to be an integral piece of that passing attack last year before that unfortunate injury. So Juice Wells may not be that guy, but they're, those dudes do exist somewhere. It's up to this coaching staff and, of course, the insider sides tracking down these names to uh, let us know how that's going. It's just the timing is interesting because Texas is obviously preparing 
for that semifinal game on top of making sure that the national signing day one recruits who are signing in SD one are ready to go as well and welcoming the occasional transfer to Austin too. There's a, just a ton that uh, these coaches are having to juggle, but then again, that's why they get paid the big bucks too. Yeah, it's so stupid that all of this goes on right now though. Isn't it like, yeah, it's I insane. Was, who was I discussing this with uh, last week? Uh, may have been Jeff Howe. I'm not sure who it was, but they, they need to move national signing day one, move it to prior to the start of the season. It's that simple. Yeah. Because the transfer portal is not going anywhere. This is the only time that you can really do that because it's the end of the regular season. And these guys need to make that call before the spring semester starts. So the one thing that there's some flexibility with, is when these high school recruits can sign that first letter. And it may provide a little bit more value to National Signing Day, too, for the guys who have not made that decision once their senior year gets going. Yeah, and state championships are going on this weekend, right? You got exactly, some yeah. kids who haven't decided where they're playing who have to focus on that. And also they're getting calls from a bunch of different schools and they're getting visited by a bunch of different schools. And it's just it's just a colossal mess that just doesn't need to happen right now. So... Uh, yeah, look, Texas, I mean, obviously Texas is playing in a more important bowl game than just about anybody else, but the good news, like national signing day one is next Wednesday, the 20th, and the game is on the first. So Texas, like the coaching staff is going to have some time, you know, in between then to really focus on the game. I'm sure they are for the record, but like the teams, the schools that are playing bowl games like this weekend and next week, it's like, how the hell, if you're a coach, do you focus on your bowl game? Even if it's not as important, but still like your last game of the year, and the last game for a lot of the guys on your team, you focus on that and also focus on trying to bring in a good recruiting class and deal with the portal at the same time. It's just, it doesn't have to be this way. So I don't know. Random soapbox there. Yes, Texas needs receivers and they need DBs. Go get another Adonai Mitchell. I'm sure those guys ha are, are in the portal every year, right? I'll tell you how you uh, focus on that. If you're playing in, let's say, a Texas Bowl, you focus a lot more on the recruiting side of things and you do the bowl game prep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess it's AM. and m <laughs> I don't even know who's coaching the bowl game for AM, but uh, AM's new coaching staff, they don't have to worry at all about the bowl game. They can focus solely on the transfer portal and recruiting. Who is coaching that game? Because the interim coach took a job at Syracuse somewhere? <sighs> Who knows? Like that feels uh, like I, I don't know what. And with all the guys from A and M that are in the portal too, do they just completely take that line down in Vegas? Because that seems pretty automatic that Oklahoma State is going to boat race the Aggies in that one. Boy, after watching Oklahoma State play, I don't know if they're capable of boat racing anybody. You're. I look. That's a great point, but I mean, A and M. <laughs> They don't have anybody left. They don't have coaches. They don't have players. What the fuck are they about to do yeah. in the Texas Bowl? <laughs> they even going to have enough players to field a team? There's one year with LSU a couple of years ago where they just they had nobody left. Nobody left. They're playing like a tight end at quarterback in that Texas Bowl down in Houston. I think I went to that game. They played K-State. I don't know why I went to that game. That was, that was a bad idea. a &M is – no, this can't be right. AM is three point favorites in this game right now. What? There you go. What? Come on, man. F fucking hammer Oklahoma State, you D Gens. That's the call? Fuck yeah, it is. 5,000 units, 10,000 units. What are we doing? Uh, I, I, I don't want to bet my unit on anything, but uh, yes, put a lot of money on Oklahoma State to not just cover, but win out. Money line. That's what we're going here. I've learned a few things. And gambling over the last two hours. Bet the money line for Oklahoma State. Okay. You don't have to put your unit on anything, just for the record. I don't want anybody touching my unit if I'm wrong about a sports pick. We are professional sports guessers, after all. That is true. That is uh, in our resumes. Don't you forget about that. All right, quick shout-out to some of our great sponsors before we get to this uh, PFF All-Big 12 team. And we've got uh, some NFL to get into. And, of course, where are we at in society before we wrap things up at 1 o'clock. Shout out to Covert Bee Cave. Holiday season. If you're looking for a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV as a holiday gift for you, for your spouse, for your kiddo, whatever, uh, go see our friends at Covert Bee Cave. They've got an unparalleled selection of vehicles. 
They've got fantastic service. They're going to treat you like family every time you walk in there. They'll actually hold the door open for you at the front. They'll start talking to you, and uh, they're going to treat you with all kinds of love and respect. And the pricing. Uh, everyone's looking for a great deal, right? Well, you can't find a better deal anywhere else in the world than you can find out at Covert B Cave. So go check them out. Of course, the Covert Auto Group, they've been around here in Central Texas since 1909. Covert B Cave, the newest location right there off of 71. Seven different brands, three state-of-the-art dealerships all in one spot. They've got so many cars. Once again, the service is top-notch and the pricing cannot be beat. Check them out online, covertbcave.com. And also shout out to Altstat Beer as well. The best beer that you can find all throughout the great state of Texas. Tons of different brews. They've got a lager. They've got a Kolsch. They've got a Hefeweizen. They've got a light beer. They've got some seasonal brews as well. Something for every palate out there. There's got to be one for you. One sip and you won't go back to the other beers you've been drinking in the past. I call Altstadt liquid gold. It's because it is liquid gold. Get you some the next time you're out shopping for beer. It is Altstadt beer, no impurities, no regrets. Trey, I think we can make a little bit of an announcement right now for Texas Sports Unfiltered. We don't have an exact time yet, but I feel good enough in saying where we are going to be for at least parts of January 1st, 2024, which of course is the day Texas plays Washington in the Sugar Bowl. Part of our pregame broadcast will be at Manning's. Inside of Harrah's, near the French Quarter, in the Big Easy. And when you hear Mannings, what do you think? Yeah, those Mannings. They own this place. And we are going to be a part of the Texas One Fund tailgate that's yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. A Sugar Bowl game day experience benefiting the Texas One Fund. You can get tickets right now at texassugarbowl.party. That's texassugarbowl.party. I don't know that was a domain. I've heard of .com, .edu, and .org, but hey, when you're in New Orleans, it's .party, baby. Texas Sugar Bowl .party. You can get some general admission tickets. Uh, uh, half of your ticket donation will go to the Texas One Fund, which obviously is our NIL collective at the university. So if you're like, oh, man, I, I love Texas. I love that we're in the playoff. I want to make sure that we keep playing in these playoff games moving forward. Then not only does buying a ticket – get you a great time in new orleans but it also helps support the nil collective at the university so uh, definitely check that out or we'll let you know more about timing on january 1st soon but uh, we're going to be out there get your tickets now and uh, our man barry sorrell mr sorrell says he goes there all the time cool place love it so uh yeah hope to see you there mr sorrell and hope to see a ton of you texas fans out with us on January 1st. Is it possible for me to broadcast from a pie gal table during our pregame show at Harris next to Manning's? Uh, who now? Or a friend. Pie gal. Pie gal table. It's a card game that I will likely be losing some money at while we are in New Orleans. Pie gal. Yes. Uh, is there pie involved? Well, figuratively. There's money involved, and pie, cut of the pie is sometimes a way to refer to money. Probably not. You can't have extracurriculars going on while you're playing card games in a casino, but what a great place to uh, get to be for at least part of our pregame show on that Monday. Yeah, and go play some real casino games at Harris, where Manning's is. Pie Gal. I, look, I'll play some blackjack also. Pie Gal is a fun game, though. They have that? I'm sure they do. They have that in Vegas? They do. Like on the main casino floor, do you got to go to some random ass ragtag basement to find this? Every casino has at least a row of pie gal tables. Wow. Okay. At least every casino that we went to in Vegas. Because my wife introduced me to the game and it's a fun one. And it's a game that you can sit on a small amount of money for a long time if you want to. There you go. You sure you guys were in Vegas and not Reno? What's that? You sure you were in Vegas and not Reno or something? No, I wasn't in old Vegas either. I wasn't downtown. Huh. It was on the strip. Okay. On the strip. Pie gal. Or you could play real casino games. Like what? Like the j- slots? Big slots guy. Oh, come on. Buffalo! 
I know your Jewish mother and your tendency to talk to random people. You don't need to be Jewish mother with your slot machine inclinations. I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too late. I get suckered in by those things, man. I can't You're avoid. Lucky. Yep. Yeah, the Buffaloes. I, I only play like three or four different slots, but the Buffalo, which is like the most common slash popular machine in the world, that's the one that calls me every time I'm there, man. And I, I'm one of those guys, I turn up the sound on the machine as loud as it goes. I want everyone knowing what's going on. Come on. Yep. Everyone's got to hear the sound effects. We got to dance when the music starts playing. We got to get involved. It's a full body experience playing the slots. Now, you're not so desperate to hold on to your machine that you go to these lengths, are you? with her no i also don't urinate out of that spot so i i don't know if it's possible for me to do exactly that but now i've never taken a leak at a slot machine in an effort to not lose my spot at the slot machine you know bucky does though at the machines right well yeah that's just incontinence though <laughs> yeah we got to get that guy diapers that might be my christmas gift to him <laughs> Getting close to 70. Now, he, like, makes love to the machines. He, like, caresses the machines, mm. puts his hands on them. I think does that little Brando, Spencer Tillman, jump around dance. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. That's not a good one, but I'm sure you're about to remind us of what you're talking about here. There we go. Yeah, so Bucky is Brando, and the machine is Spencer Tillman in that deal, getting grind up on. Yeah, I don't do that. Uh, the only the only weird thing I do at the slot machines, I think, is just turn the uh, turn the sound way up. Do you play blackjack also? Yeah, blackjack is the probably my most popular card game. I get into some roulette, which I know is not a card game, but some craps too. Although I have to like relearn it every single time I I go out to a casino. There's just so many rules, and I don't like to use my head that much. Yeah. Uh, but those are those are the most popular ones for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, you may have to play some pie gal with me. I tell you, it's it's a fun game. It is a fun game, especially when you start getting when you start placing money on the bonus bets too. That's where can it can really pay off for you. I'm just worried I'm going to lose a finger or something like this. Is some just underground game that doesn't actually exist, and I'm going to end up Lord knows where in the French Quarter. It sounds like it, but it's very above board, especially okay. eras. Well, there you go. Well, come out and see us on Jan 1. Uh, we'll let you know, once again, the exact timing of uh, of our show. We might have a couple of other shows out there in the Big Easy. We uh, cannot wait. And if you want to be a travel partner, there's still time to hit us up and be a part of our trip out to New Orleans. There's going to be a bunch of our team at Texas Sports Unfiltered making our way to NOLA for the college football playoff semifinal. It's our first ever playoff game. Of course, we are going to uh, show up in droves. We know a bunch of you people will be there as well. And we uh, cannot wait. All right, Trey, you've got this uh, PFF all-conference team today? Yes, I do. And by the way, Shorty, not funny, Shorty. I've just done a cursory search, and uh, you, as Jake is saying, you're spreading disinformation. I know Jake is referring to something different there. That is disinformation as far as I know right now, Shorty. Oh, you got got? I think that's what he wanted for one of us to look it up. To oh, I did look it up rather than just out. running with it because some Yahoo on the YouTube comments line said Ryan Wingo decommitted. Yeah, I, I assumed from the jump that it was uh, BS because I don't think I've ever seen Shorty comment before. So I think he or she just came in here to try to freak some Texas fans out a little bit. And yeah. I guess it worked for at least one. And I didn't freak out. I just went and double checked things. I went and double checked the original source, and the original source is bullshit. All right. Yes, I do have the Pro Football Focus All Big 12 team for 2023. And there is some Longhorn flair on here, but not as much as I thought there might be. So let's talk offense, and then we'll get to the defense. On offense, Texas has two guys. On the all Big 12 team. And remember, this isn't based on media members' opinions. This is based on the year's worth of pro football focus ratings. So, in your opinion, BK, 
Who do you think pro football focus the two Longhorns that are on the first team offense? Oh, um, Xavier Worthy. He's one. And I'll go ahead and fill you in on the other wide receivers because A.D. Mitchell's not the other first teamer for Texas. Drake Stoops and Javon Baker for UCF are the other two wide receivers. Okay. God, I would say Jonathan Brooks, but because he got hurt, I don't think he makes the cut. Ollie Gordon. Uh, JT? No, Ben Sennett. What? Ben Sennett for Kansas State is the all Big 12 tight end. That whitey, seriously? Yeah, he looks more like a fucking fullback than a tight end, but he's actually a pretty good pass catcher too. Yeah. But he's not JT Sanders, let's be honest. But no, Senate, based on pro football focus grades, is the tight end. Uh, somebody on the offensive line then. That's right. One of the tackles would be my guess. You are correct. It is one of the tackles, but it's not future first rounder Kelvin Banks. It's Christian Jones. Finds himself at right tackle. Patrick Paul for the Houston Cougars is the left tackle on mm -hmm. this list. Dylan Gabriel, the quarterback, and random fucking dudes elsewhere on the offensive line. You've got a West Virginia player on the offensive line, a Cincinnati Bearcat, and then uh, Cooper Beebe as well at left guard. Now, okay. as as no, hold on. Nobody on Cincinnati should be on this team. This, I, this is the MLB All Star game where you have to have a representative from every team playing in the game. Feel like got, it's ridiculous that a Houston Cougar is on this team. Yeah, I mean they they're better than Cincinnati. I I think, I think, but oh, okay, that that feels like a joke. Well, who else on the Texas offense should have been on there? Anybody? I think the arguments are for. See, the problem is that the two guys who probably would have made it both got hurt with Quinn Ewers and Jonathan Brooks. And then Kelvin Banks and JT Sanders obviously have a legitimate argument too. Okay. I think that Kelvin, like just based on the name, I think Kelvin Banks got screwed a little bit more than JT Sanders did. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. All right. Sorry. Go to defense. I agree with you. Two Longhorns on defense. Care to guess who? Um, Jet Bush and Michael Taff. Bingo. No, Keaton Crawford instead of Michael Taft. No, it's uh, two defensive linemen, the two highest rated interior defensive linemen in all of college football this year, according to Pro Football Focus, Devondre Sweat and Byron Murphy. Nobody else on Texas defense made the first team, according to Pro Football Focus season-long grades. God, it doesn't feel right, does it? I, look, Kevin and I have had a conversation for a chunk of the year with regards to taking advanced metrics with a grain of salt at times. And like my basic question with pro football focus is who's the one that is grading each and every one of these guys for each and every one of these games. Cause there's sometimes that the eyeball test doesn't line up with what the grade is for Texas players. So who knows who's coming up with these grades for West Virginia or Houston or TCU, or name another team in the Big 12. But yeah, Texas has two guys. The linebackers, because I think that if there's anybody else who maybe has an argument to be a first-teamer, it's probably Jalen Ford, right? Uh, the linebackers, though, are Colin Oliver for Oklahoma State, some dude for TCU whose last name I'm not going to try and pronounce, and then um, they just have two linebackers, so that's maybe part of the problem. It's just what? Stutzman isn't on there? Stutzman's not on there. Oklahoma didn't have any defensive players. They had two players on offense with Gabriel and Stoops. They don't have any defensive players, though. Golly. This is two top teams in the conference, basically, along with Oklahoma State. I guess they finished tied with OU for second. But, wow. Yeah, Danny Stutzman was – I mean, I'd, I'd put Stutzman on there ahead of Jalen Ford. Sorry, Longhorn fans, but unfortunately, we, we saw that firsthand. Who was better. They they played in the same game, and I know it's a season-long deal, but Stutzman had a better year and a better day at the Cotton Bowl than Jalen Ford did. Yeah, Jalen Ford had that two- to three-game lull that he fortunately shook himself out of, but that, that probably hurt his overall cause of making this team just based on the uh, average grades throughout the season. Who's the slot corner? Because, like, Jade Barron is the guy who has the case. I know he did not play well against Oklahoma State, but that guy had a – tremendous season 
for Texas? Do they have a nickel guy, a slot guy, a star, whatever they're calling it? They call they have a flex defender on the list, which I don't know. You you tell me what this Kansas player is, and I'll tell you if it's a nickel guy. Mellow Dotson. Okay. Yeah, he's not as good as Jade Barron. But they have two safeties and two cornerbacks, and then a flex defender. You said Michael Taff and Keaton Crawford were the two safeties. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. What about special teams? Did Burt Auburn at least make it? Texas is well represented in special teams. Burt Auburn and Xavier Worthy as the return specialist with Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year, according to the media, Austin McNamara, the punter for Texas Tech, being the punter. Ah, punting runs through Lubbock mm -hmm. and Shreveport. Can't wait for Texas Tech and Cal this Saturday as a part of the first day of bowl games in college football. Make sure you get your picks in, by the way. I'm talking to you, and I'm also talking to our viewers and listeners right now. There's a link in the video description below to join our Texas Sports Unfiltered Bowl Mania contest. When is that be done by? Uh, Saturday is when the first games start. So yeah. get your picks in. Free to enter. We'll be giving away prizes to uh, some of you who perform really well. Um, and yeah, compete against us at Texas Sports Unfiltered and compete against each other and should be a, a lot of fun. If you're listening on the app, just uh, go to ESPN's Bowl Mania and search the Texas Sports Unfiltered group and oh, you're going to find us. Fuck. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there. There is uh, a big ruling that just came down that may create even more chaos in college sports, but specifically college football. The... There is a uh, hearing that was just held with regards to the NCAA and its ability to enforce its transfer waiver rules. The NCAA is no longer legally allowed to enforce its transfer waiver rules. So anybody that wants to transfer in 14 days, so two weeks from now, can do so, and they don't have to worry about sitting out or filing a waiver with the NCAA to be eligible immediately at that new school. So anybody can transfer whenever they want, wherever they want, without having to sit out. I don't I don't know if it's whenever they want, okay. but when you you don't have to sit out the next season. Like you can't transfer within season and play immediately. But that very next year, and I, I know that this rule has already been relaxed greatly. But for those guys who want to transfer multiple times, they can do so at least in 14 days for their foreseeable future and not have to worry about dealing with the NCAA in the process. So this is just a temporary bit for now. Temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction. Ah, yeah, nothing wrong with a temporary restraining order. Those go away. <laughs> do they? I know from experience, dude. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's on the uh, the restrainee side and not the restrained side. Yeah, well, I'm not going to comment any further because I'm not legally allowed to do so. Even though the restraining order was temporary, the uh, statute of libertations goes on forever. So what what this is basically going to affect is guys who are ready to transfer for a, a second or third time, because the first time you transfer, it's already established that you can go play wherever, like the NCAA. Yeah came up with that as a try as a way to try and keep the dam from breaking. But it's those guys who want to transfer again or transfer for a third time. Maybe they transferred twice in that COVID era. Well, this and, uh, didn't have to worry about it. They, they can now transfer again. No problem. This is huge for basketball. Like, I don't think Texas has anybody impacted right now, but like sports that are going on right now. Um, Cause there are a number of like pretty high profile players who just haven't gotten a ruling from the NCAA on whether or not they are eligible to play this season. So it sounds like, yeah, anybody who's been in that mix is now eligible. Like that's like, obviously for football, that's a huge deal and guys could transfer, but we're not going to really see that impact happen until next football season. But yeah, the sports that are going on now, and then I guess any spring sports as well, uh, if you were waiting on a waiver from the NC2A, I guess you no longer have to wait on that waiver and you're eligible to play just like that. Crazy. All right. Although there's going to be another hearing, let's see, two weeks from now is December 27th. There's going to be another hearing December 27th that may reinstate their authority to 
keep guys from transferring and gals from transferring without having to sit out. That's already the case in a lot of sports, by the way. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in the major sports where you do have to sit out after that first time you transfer, yeah, that this could be done for good. Wow. Thus, uh, putting another nail in the coffin in the NCAA and its role, specifically in college football. Because you know college football, the powers that be realize this is this is an idea that uh, should not be tinkered with too much. With as crazy as things have already gotten with the transfer portal, with guys who may have to sit out a second time. So, mm -hmm. oh boy. Okay, we'll see what unfolds here. But this kind of feels like even more open season with the transfer portal in college sports. It's already felt like free agency for a while, and now it's uh, even more than that. So we'll monitor this situation as it unfolds over the next two weeks, or as Trey just mentioned, it could go beyond the next 14 days. Um, real quick before we get to where we at in society, a word for greatblueheronfurniture.com. If you're looking for a new couch, a new recliner, new chairs, whatever, uh, look no further than greatblueheronfurniture.com. Custom leather furniture company, a longhorn known company. Most of the manufacturing is done right here in the great state of Texas. I actually know the lead manufacturer, great family friend, and they're going to take care of you and they're going to give you the piece that you are looking for. They've got a ton of stuff online so you can look and see for yourself just how beautiful this furniture is. Or if you have some ideas for yourself, for your own home, uh, they'll custom make whatever you want high quality fabric it looks great it feels great and it is built to last a lifetime great blue heron furniture.com use the promo code hook'em you're going to get 15 percent off i'll even throw in a last stand hat if you uh, make a purchase from great blue heron furniture.com want to give them a shout out for their great partnership with us at texas sports unfiltered and of course olipop as well best tasting soda that's actually good for you so many of our texas sports unfiltered guys are in on the olipop so many of y'all are in on it too I, I got another text or youtube comment this morning from somebody who's like just tried olipop for the first time absolutely love it uh, if you haven't tried it yet you are missing out once again great tasting soda that is actually good for you and trey i'll let you do uh before we do pest wranglers i know our buddy tom mckay is listening right now how about uh, some words for the team over at AV Consultations. Yeah, I've talked with Tom a little bit earlier, found out that he has become a big Olipop fan too. Not yeah. surprised by that. Olipop is delicious. And AV Consultations is delicious. And that's a weird way to say that I love AV Consultations. But they did hook me up with that Dream Home Theater set up in my living room a few years ago now. Came back to set up. At what has become a video game nook in our upstairs loft area. And we could not be happier with the work either time. It's why we are eventually, once I get my shit together, going to have them back out to help with a security system that we're going to get set up. And we have plenty more plans in the future that AV consultations can help us out with. Like they love to help you out. Like they've done for so many homes and businesses here in Central Texas, going all the way back to 1988. First go to avconsultations.com. See all the different types of work that they can do for you. Once you decide on that job, give them a call, 255-8678. That's 512-255-8678 for audio-visual consultations. Yes, indeed, and I won't make you talk anymore, so we'll do a recorded spot today for our friends at Pest Wranglers. Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers. What are you doing? I'm making a silly commercial like other companies so people will remember our name. But we're not like other companies. Anyone could see that from our five-star reviews. But how will people remember Pest Wranglers? Well, once they try us, they'll never forget that we are the most effective, reliable, and affordable pest control company. I guess you're right. Pest Wranglers is the best at pest control, wildlife management, termite pest control. Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers, Pest Wranglers. What are you doing? Hey, it couldn't hurt. Pest Wranglers, 512-670-7808 or find us on the web at pestwranglers.com. Where are we at in society today? That's right. It is your regular look at stories that show we as a people are headed in the wrong direction. Very occasionally, I will bring you a story that provides a sense of optimism that has us all saying to ourselves, hey, maybe we as a people are starting to figure something out. But sadly, today is not that day. Today is a choose your own where are we at in society adventure, BK. I read three headlines, and you decide which story you would most like uh, to hear more about. Are you ready? I'm ready. 
Doritos rolls out $65 bottle of nacho cheese flavored liquor that, quote, tastes like the real thing. Yes. Got to get through all of these headlines here. Okay. I want an inflation ship. Let's live sexless and financially free in the same bed. That's headline number two. And headline number three... <laughs> This could also be an addition of Guess This State, so I'm not going to say the state's name in the title. Man found naked on top of his mother's decapitated body. Oh, I don't think I want to do that one yet. One and two are tough. Those are awesome headlines right there. All right, save number two. Because okay. I definitely want to learn more about that inflation ships let me just go ahead and let me just go ahead and fill you in it's beta males who have been duped into thinking that it's going to be okay to share a bed with a member of the opposite sex not hook up at all but you're going to be saving money in the process get a second single bed you fucking loser inflation oh inflation ships inflation ship Okay, I thought you said chips. I was like, people are getting chips implanted in their body to make them bigger so they can't have sex? I was very confused on where you were going there. Okay, well, are we in on this story? Are we doing number two then? Inflation ships? No, we're doing the Dorito-flavored liquor story. Okay, save number two because I've got more thoughts and I've got to do more research on on the, the Amish people. <laughs> All right, well, let me get to the story while also pulling up a share screen so you can see what it is that I'm talking about here. Okay. All right, you see that there? That I do. Is a bottle of Imperial Vodka that is partnered with Dorito to create a nacho cheese flavored liquor. That, according to this New York Post article, is all that in a bag of chips for 65 bucks a bottle. 65 the bucks a bottle? Six, five. Okay. Maybe worth it if it's a big bottle of Tito's. Not worth it for Doritos flavored vodka. Disgusting. I want to try this really badly, but I don't want to spend 65 bucks on something I'm going to potentially hate. Well, let's see if we can get it on their website i'm guessing it's already sold out i was like do they sell this at liquor stores or is it all online only yeah i'll go see aj 34 wine and spirits and buy a bottle if he's got them i hey. it looks like it's only online right now 65 bucks delivery options i'm actually checking to see if i can buy it for you right now I've, I've never thought of this. Has anybody asked for this before? Hell no, nobody's asked for this. Are you kidding me? I got like way the... too far with additional flavors of liquor, by the way. This is, we don't need to go as far as we have. We can stop at the junk foods, okay? I don't need pizza flavored vodka. I don't need hamburger flavored whiskey. Peanut butter whiskey is far enough for me, you know? Are you a fan of that stuff? Peanut butter whiskey is actually pretty good. Screwball? Mm. Yeah, it's okay. It's better uh, than Fireball. Oh, disagree with you there. Oh, are you a big Fireball fan? Uh, Yeah, I'll take some shots of Fireball from now and again. Okay. I mean, I guess if I'm just drinking it neat or on the rocks, I'd probably prefer the peanut butter stuff. I'd really just prefer neither. But, um... Yeah, shots of fireball. That stuff's good, man. That gets you going. That antifreeze cleans out your system. It's what you need. All right. Well, I guess I'll buy you a couple of shots in New Orleans if we're ever out together. So, yeah, same. I got you as well. What are you taking shots of when you're taking shots? Because I'm sure you do that all the time in your 40s. Uh, yeah, that's a very terrible idea at any point in life, much less in your 40s where you don't bounce back nearly as quickly. I don't know. When I take a shot, it's one of two things. It's either Malort Oh. Or why did you put your head down there? You don't live in Chicago anymore. Stop pretending to like Malort. It's all over Austin now too. And I do like the flavor of Malort. It's an aperitif. So it's a liquor that's actually good for you, sir. It, it's ass is what it is. 
It's I don't, that's, yeah, aperitif is a fancy word for it tastes like ass, I guess, because that's what it is. It's ass flavored deliciousness. Interesting. It's like, yeah, I, it's like I, I uh, Kevin would, Lord. it's like Kevin would say it's like Jessica Alba's ass, minus the STDs. Oh, well, I've lost interest then. Uh, I had uh, at uh, Justine's birthday party. Didn't we take shots of Malort somewhere? Am I making that up at the karaoke spot after dinner? It wasn't Malort. I believe it was tequila. And that's the other thing that I will shoot is uh, silver tequila, no training wheels, of course. Someone had a bottle of Malort in a car. Am I making that up? Oh, yes. Yeah. Baker did. Yes, you did have Malort. That's there right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not good. Better memory than me. I wasn't. Even, I was like the one person who wasn't uh, completely shit faced by the end of that night. Good memory, though. Make that too. Yeah. Excuse me too. Well, the, the cool thing about this Doritos liquor is I get to taste Doritos both before and after I throw up because I, I feel like that's what would happen here. I do wonder if they serve this as a drink. You've got to have cheese dust, right? You know, you put like sugar or salt on the rims of certain drinks. If you're serving this at a bar, you got to have like nacho cheese Dorito flakes on the rim of the glass, no? Yeah, and probably all over the front of your shirt too, right? Yeah, on the hands, on the shirt, everywhere. This so is the good. liquor is, it's 42% alcohol by volume, which means that it's like your standard vodka, right? Yeah, I think like Tito's is 40 Delivery dates, if you do order it online right now, which I'm about to do once the show is over with, are scheduled for January of 2024. Oh, and man. they don't have Amazon Prime on this shit? Mm, it doesn't look like it. Or maybe it's not going to be ready until then. Okay. Now, there will be some stores in New York and California that will carry the liquor as well. But for the most part right now, you do have to order it online. Empirical is an uncategory, uh, uncategorized spirits company, so it allows the company the freedom to experiment with interesting flavors and not to have to be stuck in a gin box or tequila box or whiskey box, according to Empirical's CEO. And we can take something that has a unique and amazing flavor like Doritos and evolve it into something completely new. Mm. Doritos has actually made up three new cocktails to make with the liquor all playfully named in a nod to the brand, including the Double Triangle Margarita, the Mary Mary, and the Red Bag Old Fashioned. <laughs> the Red Bag Old Fashioned? I, I feel like I'm offending somebody by saying that. Yeah, it does seem like that, doesn't it? Oh, my God. I, I'm in oh, on this. This article does remind us that Arby's actually came out with a uh, a vodka that was inspired by no, not its roast beef sandwiches, but by its curly fries back in 2021. I don't remember that curly fry vodka quote preserves the distinguished and authentic flavor profile of its namesake snack and is distilled with cayenne, paprika, onion, and garlic. Ooh, I think I'm more keen on trying the nacho cheese Dorito flavored vodka over the Arby's curly fries vodka, but. Curly fries there are solid. I don't sleep on them now. Uh, the curly fries are the one good thing about Arby's. It's the best part of the menu, for the, sure. That roast beef that comes straight from a plastic bag that's been soaking in some sort of liquid. Mm. Hard pass. Well, I'm in on. I'm in on trying this thing. This is good, but this this does feel like a what's the old Jurassic Park? Uh, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park statement. Scientists were so preoccupied on if they should. Or if they could, they never stopped and thought if they should. And that feel like this for these uh, this Doritos vodka. A little bit, but I am uh, still hitting pay now right now to order some. So once that happens, we may, we're going to have to figure out a way to. Thanks, Greg. We we may have to figure out a way to uh, to come together to drink this. Holy shit! With taxes, it was eighty one fifty. Damn it! I just got ripped off. Eighty-one fifty. I thought you said it was sixty-five bucks. Yeah, but it's a sixteen fifty shipping fee. Oh my god! You don't have to buy that, dude. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I owe you one then, big time for that. Yeah, you got to take a shot of that with me, right? We'll just do that on the yeah. air next time we do a live broadcast together. I would say New Orleans, but it's not going to get here by 
Jan one, it sounds like. So no, no, no. We're we're gonna figure out a way to do this and get some other uh Texas sports unfiltered personalities involved too. Nacho cheese, Doritos, vodka. I don't know if it's like everybody video everybody takes a video of themselves shooting this vodka and then giving their immediate reaction to what it tastes like. We're gonna figure something out though. I'm with you on that. Great find there. Doritos. I thought Taco Bell was on to something with Doritos Locos Tacos, but now we've got Doritos liquor too. Oh, that's what you shoot it with is one of those Taco Bell menu items. Yeah. Yeah, just have a Doritos Locos Taco on standby. Eat that, and then that's your drink that you have with it. A red hag bag, uh, old-fashioned. Or red, red baron, old-fat, whatever it was. I don't know what that shit is. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure I want to ask a follow-up question on these. Go ahead. Have you seen the new taquito condoms? It burns. It's good. Yeah, that's what happens when you put cayenne on the inside of a condom, you know? Taki condoms. That mm. makes more sense. I was like, what is a taquito condom? Aren't mm. they all kind of taquito condoms in a sense? Well, not the magnums. Those are Just burrito like, condoms. Like tamale condoms? Yeah, burrito condoms. Yeah, that checks out. All right, I see Zay here. I don't see Chip yet, but one half of Chip and Zay is with us. Well, Zay, uh, would, would you uh, would you try this Doritos nacho cheese flavored vodka that Trey just purchased online for $82? Oh, wow, Trey. Yeah, that was a stupid purchase by me. It was only uh, supposed to be 65 but it was a $15 shipping fee. No, I don't drink as it is, so I definitely wouldn't enjoy that. Smart. But, yeah. I wouldn't try the, the keto flavor condom either because, come on, condoms, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, the keto flavored, like you're you're eating it afterwards, beforehand. Oh. How does that, how does, what's the point of any of that? See, I haven't been lucky enough to be with a freak that does any of that edible stuff. Like I always heard of the edible panties growing up. I feel like that's what our uncles used to do and shit, but yeah, I never really, you know, I like a good fruit roll up, but during sex, I'm not George Costanza. No, you don't need those worlds colliding. I have one experience with that. And it was just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Just threw it, threw it onto the nightstand and got on with things. The now, are you talking about like whipped cream or are we talking about some serious stuff like provolone and some turkey? You're putting a whole HEB party tray on down there. You got crackers in one line. I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to see what I'm trying to get in Trey's world because he's the one that said he's experienced, you know, experimented with those type of things. So, oh, j just the edible panties, which is a fruit oh. roll up with it's two fruit roll ups with strings on either side. That's what they are. Well, I've also, yeah, I've also experimented with uh, with. Ch with chocolate syrup, yeah, a little bit goes a long ways, which I didn't realize the first time, and it turned into us having to take a shower because it was way too much of a mess. Yeah, the, the syrup and the whipped cream, I think uh, those are the things I've got the most experience with, but I've never gone with fruit roll-ups or fruit by the foot. Just, yeah. just imagine a fruit roll-up that you roll tuna salad into before you take a bite of the fruit roll-up. Yeah, I don't, know. do I have to imagine that? I, I don't, I don't really want to <laughs> think about that at all, actually. No home girl in varsity blue. She's the one that Ooh. made me say, okay, this whipped cream stuff. There might be something there. There's some to it. There's some to it. Yeah. Even still that entire whipped cream bikini, like you would get tired after, I don't know, one breast. You'd be like, all right, let's jump in the shower real quick and get the rest of this off. Okay. Yeah. This is just getting sticky in all the wrong ways between us. Mm. Yeah, I'm still salty that Vanderbeek didn't hit that. I mean, come on. What kind of movie is this? That's kind of that's one of the bad parts in Varsity Blues. 18-year-old dude, you got old old G heck girlfriend that works at what? She worked at Top Notch, basically. Yeah. Yeah. She was working there. She just come on. Look what's in front of you. You're about to go to Brown. You're going to leave her anyway. 
I was a big fan of Amy Smart back in the day, so I don't fault that decision. But Allie, what's her name? I forget what the actor's name was. She was very attractive. God, have I seen Varsity Blues? What are you talking about, dude? I don't. I don't. I don't know if you were born right around the year that that came out, but come on now. I, I I thought I had seen that movie, but I have no clue what you guys are talking about right now. So maybe I oh. haven't. Yeah, BK, every Texan has to see Varsity Blues because oh. there's some things where you're like, okay, this makes sense. And then it was made by MTV, like it's an MTV film. So then they do certain things where you're like, mm, I don't know about this. But overall, it was filmed here in the ATX. Well, a lot of it was. They hit the landing strip, strip club. At one uh, I thought you said there was no sex. Now you're telling me there's a landing strip. I mean, involved? there's you know, no sex, but you might see a titty or two, you know. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, so. more, more than one is too many. If I see more than one, <laughs> then I'm out. I only like one. That's all I can handle in, in a movie setting. All right, here's the – hold on. Let me this see. Ground. Uh, let me see if I can get you a, a picture of the bikini before this, we go. Is this in Varsity Blues or is this – whipped cream bikini in general or is this something from your camera roll please not the third no it's uh it's from varsity blues but i'm having to find the right picture here all right here we go let's see okay god damn it google <laughs> stop <laughs> for freak's sake so uh, i gotta watch varsity blues like this weekend is that what y'all are telling me i mean uh, i don't know if it's that pressing uh, okay. You, you well, got to see it before the year's over. You got to see it before 2024 hits. And not the Jewish year that just started. We're talking about the American calendar year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or whatever fits your schedule. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is in the movie. That's the parody. Uh, I can't find a good picture. I don't know. It must be copywritten or something. Oh my god! Yeah, man. That was yeah. Evans and um, not another teen movie. Greatest yeah. parody movie of all time. It, it is a good one. I agree. That one, I think I have seen. Believe it or not. Oh man, they got the token black dude Bud from Cosby Show when he's all grown up. Each yep. scene that he's in, his hairstyle changes. One scene he has a fade, the next one he has dreads, the next one he has cornrows because he's just the token brother in the movie. God. <laughs> That's my shit, man. That's some uh, good stuff right there. You had a couple of people texting in Ali Larder and not Amy Smart. Could y'all be getting that confused? Allie yeah, Larder is the bikini. Amy Smart is the girlfriend. Huh. Yeah, Amy Smart. I don't, what are you talking about, Trey? Come on. Everybody um, knows what Vanderbeek should have done. I I was a fan of Amy Smart. Oh, yeah. Real quick, Trey, if you got to go, Chip said he needs five minutes at 1 o'clock, and it's been 11 minutes, so I assume it'll be a few more minutes. Yeah, I hope he's all right. I hope, I hope so, too. Uh <laughs> We got a text on the Coda text line, 512-222-9328. Someone says, I work for Frito-Lay. We were taking shots of the Doritos flavored liquor, and it's terrible. Yeah. Disappointing. <laughs> Somebody else says, I've actually tried Fruit Loops flavored vodka. That sounds okay. On, the bar on 6th Street. Yeah. I wonder, like, is that a real vodka, or was that just like a custom creation at the bar? Maybe. It sounds like a creation, but that, that actually sounds decent. The Doritos flavored vodka sounds gross. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of cheese. I feel like cheese flavored anything is usually good, but cheese flavored liquor is not is not something that I need to experience, I don't think. She, there are limits to everything. Cheese flavored donuts, probably not going to be good. Fruit Loops, are they all the same flavor or is each color different? Oh, each color is different for sure. No. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I want to have different colors if they're all going to taste the same. They're different. For the uh, visual aesthetic, it's blueberry, the- strawberry, greenberry, yellowberry, uh, whatever other fruits there are, whatever <laughs> other berries there are. Like those are those are them. I think those are all real fruits. 
It's one of the brilliant elements of uh, of big food and its marketing. They make things look as palatable as possible. They have you intrigued by the changing colors, even though it all tastes the fucking same. Trey, your healthy kids eat Fruit Loops? No. No, oh, no, no. Man, come on. At least like make it a weekend thing, you know? Something. We had this uh <laughs> we had this cereal for a little while that was along the lines of like the really good sugary cereals, although it had less sugar and supposedly higher protein. The kids dug it okay. It was a weekend treat, but no, we don't we don't have anything like that in this house. Come on. Oh, I remember you talking about that a long time ago. That was that subscription cereal. Yeah, we get it at Target now. So we were duped into thinking that it was probably something better better for you than it actually was. Mm -mm. <laughs> no Captain Crunch, no Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs? You mean Peanut Butter Captain Crunch? No, well, they have that too. But Reese's Puffs, man, I grew up on those. That's Pop a good Pop-Tarts, Toaster Strudels, and Reese's Puffs. That was like my breakfast as a kid. I probably sucked as a kid eating all that sugar. But How's the diet, diet and exercise thing going? Ah, I'm still alive. So it's good. I think I'm hitting the gym after this. If Chip shows up. If not, we'll see. <laughs> what are you doing right now? What's... Before the New Year's, this ain't no New Year's resolution. You just feeling like about to hit 30, it's time, or what? Uh, Yeah, honestly. I don't know if it has anything to do with me almost being 30. I just feel like at some point in my life I should try to be in shape. <laughs> so it's going to get harder the older I get, I feel like. That, the opposite is true. It actually gets softer the older you get. Ah, Nicely done there, sir. Well, I've been in contact with Frank Thomas about a uh, partnership deal, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> With Frank that. Thomas and Bucky's guy Doug Flutie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love how Bucky still brings up Doug Flutie all the time. It's probably because he's getting some of those free pills. You know, he's getting hooked up with the new Genix from, from his old guy, his old quarterback. Oh, those are the best commercials, man. They were like, hey, look, it's the big hurt. Talk about big hunk. And the dude, like, I want to say he was with his wife, and his wife said that. So it's kind of awkward, but it's Frank Thomas. So the guy has to roll with it, you know? Yeah. And she'll like it too. She'll like it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's uh, what's coming up on the show to Zay? Uh, to Zay? I just kind of like Zay and Zay. We might have John Brown. That's usually what's on the schedule. Sometimes John, you know, he's a busy guy. And I feel like it was a tough week for him because he went to go see his sons play in the Lions versus Bears matchup. And Equiminius, who plays for the Bears, he didn't play. He was a DMP. And then mm -hmm. Amon Rod, they obviously lost. So wasn't the best trip for John. Hopefully we get to chat with him. But. Yeah, we'll see. Other than that, same old, same old, fellas. You see, I'm wearing my Golden State shirt in honor of Draymond Green striking wow. again. What a guy. No kidding with the striking again. I, uh, I'll show you this. I don't know if you've seen it, Trey. This is last night. Draymond got ejected <laughs> for a spinning back fist. I mean, we need John Anik on the call of this thing, dude. Like, that's a UFC move from that guy. Yeah. They insisted on keeping him as part of that team for however much longer because he's Steph's guy, and that's uh, eventually going to help lead to their downfall is, th is them keeping that dude around, even though he's uh, – at one point he wasn't locker room poison. He's locker room poison now. They wholly admitted last year that after he punched his own teammate in the face last year, things weren't right the rest of the way. But here we are. And it's nuts, fellas, because when you see him with TNT and Turner with Kenny Shack and the crew, he's very polished. Like, he's very intelligent when it comes to the game and talking about it and stuff. But when he gets out on the court and just, uh, you know, the, just switches, man. Like, and he's always been like that. He came into the league kicking LeBron in the nuts and doing all these other crazy things. And, yeah. Just the older he gets, seems like the worse it gets. But look who it is. Eaton. Hey. How we doing? What's up, man? You all right? 
Mm, yeah, you know, chop them with a butter knife as usual. Um, <laughs> had to get tennis? some. Had to get some late show prep done for my man uh, Zay. Well, I appreciate that because he. Must be good because you're late as hell. So. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> all right. All right. That's good. Because has right. been saying how Texas has the advantage in the coaching with all their college football playoff experience and national championships won. Not so fast, my friend. Uh-oh. Kalen DeBoer and his crew owned – Division two NIA. Oh, 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 come on, BK. You can leave now, bro. I love, I love you, BK. Great show, man. Oh, come on, man. D two. Two balls. D two. How you gonna? How you gonna disrespect I'm, the I'm, Sioux Falls Cougars? <laughs> That's just terrible. I'm not, man. You're right. You're right. I remember it's December. Christmas is coming up. I'll continue to repeat that. I ain't trying to be doomsday. You're right. That winning is tough at any level. At any level. My pops was a high school basketball legend in a lot of people's eyes. I could see people trashing him. I wouldn't. So I get it. I get it. But I'm just saying, I thought you were going to talk about, oh, maybe he was the ball boy for, you know, I don't know, Bobby Bowden or something that I didn't know. Ah, something crazy. But, you know, okay, D2, I get it. He got skins on the wall. I get it. I respect it. I respect it. Winning is hard, Zay. <laughs> Who said that? Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Everybody. Everybody. Did your dad ever say that? Oh, he said a lot of things, but... <laughs> I don't I don't remember that one. He probably did. I feel like it's in every coach's vocabulary. Yeah, so Kalen DeBoer. All this dude does is win. Get this. You ready for this? This is what I was late for. Because I had to get you some stuff. <laughs> I gotta get you something that's gonna pique your interest, keep you fueled, energize you. Kalen DeBoer, record-setting wide receiver at Sioux Falls, 234 catches, 3,400 receiving yards, 33 touchdown catches, all school records. But that's not it, Zay. Kalen DeBoer was a dual-sport athlete at Sioux Falls. He still holds the school records for batting average, 492. Damn. Home runs, 37. And slugging percentage, 944. So this dude, he don't mess and he won three national championships as the head coach. He won one as a player in 1996. So he got four national championships. And he was runner-up twice. So his record in the college football playoff at the D2 level his record is 25 and 6. 25 and 6, because you know in D2, it's a 16 team playoff. Excuse me, 32 and 9. I had to include his time as a player. 32 and 9. Because <laughs> you know, they play that 16 team playoff. So to right, win a right. national championship, you got to go 4 and 0. How you feeling now about this matchup? Great. This Still ain't D great. two. This ain't D two. This ain't. Yeah, I mean, hey, that 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 says a lot. That says a lot. That's why he has the job. That's why his teams have success. That's why he broke records at Sioux Falls and stuff. But 
Yeah, it definitely means something. I don't want to knock his credentials there. That's very thick, you know, but I still think just on this level, he's still learning certain things. Like you said, 16 team playoff. This break that he's having with his guys, like he's getting a lot of publicity that, you know, people are, it's going unnoticed. I know you see all these blue bloods in the Alabama, Michigan, and Texas of the world and Washington, they've won national championships before. So they need to get more respect there. But Michael Penix in New York, Roma Dunze was want to say runner up for Belitnikov. Like they, they get more club publicity than you think. So yeah, I, you got me, you got me a little worried a little bit. You got me thinking a little bit, but I still give Steve Sarkeesian the upper hand just because of the time he's had with Alabama and what he's proven this season, along with the rest of the coaching staff that he has. So, yeah, man. Well, how about this? Texas, including Steve Sarkeesian, Texas has eight staff members on their coaching staff, on their 10-member coaching staff who have been in the college football playoff, coached for a national championship, or played for a national championship. Eight. DeBoer has four staff members, so a total of five. And Sarkeesian's happened at the FBS level. And Bo Davis... He don't play. Yeah. Bo Davis has got. You think this is funny? You just got my ass kicked. I just got my ass kicked. <laughs> I just got my ass kicked. Oh, man. That's why and I've here. won four national championships. Yeah. Four. One at LSU with Nick Saban. Two at Alabama with Nick Saban. And, well, make that, wait, he's, yeah, he's got three national championships. Okay. One at LSU, two at Alabama. Now, Sark has... Two at USC, one at Alabama. So you'd still give the edge to Texas. Of course, Kyle Flood, uh, AJ Milwee, Jeff Banks all won national titles at Alabama in 2020. But Terry Joseph's coached in the college football playoff twice at Notre Dame. Gideon played for one in 09, had an interception. He caught that one ah, come against on, Alabama. Come on, do we have to – was that necessary? Was what? That, you was that did really a nice necessary? job. It was a fake punch. I, 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 I don't, was that necessary to take the jab, though, the gut punch? Like, he I was, was you could have just said he had the – he picked it off. He caught that one. That wasn't necessary. What the hell was Nick Saban doing in that 09 <laughs> national championship game? Trying a fake punt from his own 33 yard line. Hey, 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 to my point, haven't been there before. Had that, that Nick Saban, that was a young Nick, hadn't been there before. Well, he Under won one at LSU in 03. Uh, yeah, but with Alabama, it was different. It was different, different setup, different environment. Different setup. Different setup. They were at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Different setup. That's true. But yeah, I mean, yeah, man, you're tr we're trying to find every advantage that Texas could have just so it could overcome the secondary versus that wide receiver core. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to dig as deep as I can because I don't want that to be the game, man. You know, like Terrence Brooks has came such a long way, but he still gets caught, you know, having his back turned toward the ball, and he's just grabbing folks. Like, he had two of those this year. You're like, bro, what do we do? That one versus Oklahoma, oh, damn. 
Still tough. But, you know, you've seen the progress, though, week after week. Him getting interceptions, his confidence going up, and, you know, Big 12 championship game, he was locked in. And Malik Muhammad, like the confidence that you have with him as a freshman. Ryan Watts is the biggest key. How healthy can he be? Can he play the full 60? Because you just worry about him at this point. Like all those injuries, like it's been a tough year for him. You know, when he's been out there, he's been tough. But that's rare at this point. From hamstring to back, those are two injuries that you definitely don't want as a corner. With all that just, you know, working your body and hip shifting and having to, you know, change direction, like just on the drop of a hat. That's that's tough for what's hurting him right now. So I like Malik Muhammad. I love him. Yeah. I mean, I need to have him on the field a lot. Yeah. And if I got to play with Malik Muhammad and Terrence Brooks with Gavin Holmes rotating in. He's been tough, too. I don't, I don't think he gets enough credit. He's not flashy. You know, he's not getting crazy you know, deflections or big time interceptions, or you don't see him out here just knocking the wood off guys, but he's just steady. He's in the right spot a lot of the time. He might, you know, miss a play or two. I think that's just due to his size. He doesn't have the same body frame as a Ryan Watts nor a Malik Muhammad. But at the end of the day, I think Gavin Holmes quietly has had a solid year. Yeah. Yeah. He's fast, you know, and just, yeah. These guys need to come into this game aggressive. Don't be taking their don't be taking their stinger, man. Be smart, mix it up. Like you give Sark a month to prepare, he's going to be so in his bag offensively. Washington's defense, their heads are probably going to be spinning. They should be. Sark's that good with the screen game and all the stuff that he draws up. I mean, that uh that little swing pass he threw to Keelan Robinson where he had Jordan Whittington in motion toward the formation and then away from the more formation so that he could get a running start as the lead blocker Yeah, for Keelan on that. They counted it as a run, but it was a throw behind the line. So, and boom, out the gate, 53 yards. And like that stuff and those little – you know, turnaround screens where you're thinking, I mean, really the quarterback could go either way, but he's just, he's just locked in on that. Now Washington runs some of that stuff. So these teams are, they're interesting. I mean, Texas definitely has the better running game. Although Washington would say, Hey man, we got Dylan Johnson, our thousand yard rush are still, still active, still playing, you know, whereas yours is coming in for one play at the end of the big 12 title game. Cause he's laid up. All right. But we all know that T sweat and B Murphy, they're going to erase that running game. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my man, he's tough. Well, you got to give Dylan Johnson a lot of credit. He had a really good season, and I don't think he gets enough love with how good that, you know, passing game with Michael Penix is for Kalen DeBoer's Husky. So, yeah, if that dude could have any kind of decent game, the Longhorns are in trouble because we know the passing game, they're going to get hit a couple of times. You just got to make those, you know, instead of sixes, make those threes. When you get into the red zone, hey, force them to kick a field goal, stop them on fourth down if they're willing to go for it. Like, you have to win that battle and not allow the explosive plays to where they're scoring off of 70-yard passes and stuff. And, you know, Chip, if you look at the wide receivers game to game that have hurt Texas, majority of, majority of them have been in the slot. Like, you look back at Oklahoma State, Presley hit them, Brooks – from uh, uh, Kansas State, he hit them smooth. Farouk at Oklahoma, he hit them a ton of times. 
U of H game. They had my man in the slot, the old white boy who's, you know, not necessarily a slot guy, but what's his name? Matthews? I don't know. But he was killing them in the slot. So Jalen Polk, Roma Dunze, McMillan, they line those guys up anywhere. And I'm sure they're going to try to, like you said, get those screen plays off. John A. Barron, I agree on keeping them up there just because he's so good at sniffing those plays out. But also, if you have to move them because you're just not confident in Jared Thompson, Keaton Crawford, and what Mookie Taft could bring consistently for one half, that so be it. And then you'll figure things out when Derek Williams – you know, comes back in the second half. But, yeah, man, those slot receivers, like you said, don't take the stinger off these brothers, Pete Kukowski. Let them let them play. Put them, you know, press coverage. I'm not, not that tight, but tight enough where you're not giving up those big-ass gaps to where Michael Pence could just catch it and throw. I'm, I don't – we don't need that. We've seen that too much earlier in the season. In the last three games, they've – been done with that completely. Malik Muhammad, Gavin Holmes, Jade Barron, you know, Terrence Brooks, all of them, Ryan Watts, all of them have been playing way tighter because the confidence that they've shown and getting better from week to week. So if they continue that, don't get scared just because of the best passing game you're going to see. You can't be scared because you need Michael Penix to be Catch and, oh, shit, I thought it was going to be open. It's not. And by the time he's thinking that, here comes Byron Murphy and Travondre Sweat or Ethan Burke on a sack for that ass. So that's what Texas needs to win this game. And I know it's easier said than done, but, hell, you've got to have some type of scout report. Now, the one thing that we got to work on with Sark is his bowl record. Because he's two and three. At, like okay. that? Come on. So he, okay. So he lost last year. What are the other ones? He uh, he won the Holiday Bowl in 2010 at Washington. He lost. He won the Holiday Bowl. He lost the Alamo Bowl at Washington in 2011. Lost the Las Vegas Bowl in 2012. Won the Holiday Bowl at USC in 2014 and lost the Alamo Bowl last year. You know, Tom Herman is like 5-0 and in bowl games. Oh, gosh. I'm not – I'm just saying. That's true. You're right. We got to have better preparation. We need better preparation. But Before I go giving Herman a bunch of love, let me double check. Yeah, but we all know once you come to the bowl season and you haven't lived up to expectations, some guys check out. Some guys are already thinking transfer portal. I know the rules have changed over the years, but certain guys are entering the draft. You know, they're not thinking about – San Diego with the Holiday Bowl or Alamo Bowl, especially if they thought they were going to a CFP or New Year's Six Bowl game. So you're right. The preparation has to be better. The record speaks for itself. But I think having everybody locked in because they know what's at stake goes a long way which we haven't seen Sark being the head coach of a team and with this at stake ever. Yes, he's been the assistant with Alabama and USC and stuff playing for these type of, you know, credentials and such. But yeah, man, I'm sure man. It's hard to watch the Alamo Bowl. We have to cover it. So I'll be th <laughs> think about the dudes playing in it and all the crap that you got to go through and stuff like that, man. Like, man, we at USC. We ain't supposed to be at these holiday bowl. We ain't supposed to be here. We're supposed to be playing for a national championship every year. So when you're not, some guys check out. They don't want to go to practice. They out of school, finals over with. So they get in that nookie and stuff. They can focus on other things. I'm telling you, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give it to Herman though on this one. Because remember the year that he like fired Todd Orlando? And the whole staff, the whole defensive staff knew they were like 
on the way out the door. And Craig Niver was the interim defensive coordinator, and they beat Utah. Like, they beat the crap out of Utah in the Alamo Bowl with, like, a staff that was leaving. They beat Utah. Man, that was 2020? Yeah. And no, no, that was uh, 2019 when they beat them 38 to 10. And Kyle Whittingham, you know, his teams are all fight and heart and toughness and great culture. And Herman rolls up with a coaching staff that's heading in like three different directions. I don't think any of his players liked him. And they still beat the brakes off of Utah 38 to 10. That was one game where I thought, oh man, Texas is about to get drug. Yeah, what were Sam get... stats that game? Huh? Sam stats. Sam stats? Yeah. Sam stats. Because when you have a guy like that, that's so prideful when it comes to the University of Texas, like that, uh, he's going to show out. He's going to play his heart out. And it's hard not to get behind that, whether you like the coach or not, you know, because. Yeah, Sam Ellinger won that team. A lot of those teams in his four years, a lot of games that they probably shouldn't have won just by heart and will. Sam's stats in that game. Sam, he had he was 12 of 18, three touchdowns. Grimy. <laughs> oh, and remember, remember that Keontae Ingram? Yeah, I remember Keontae fumbling Ingram. Reaching out on first and goal against TCU. Fumble! It's tough, man. First and goal, man. You don't need to reach out on first and goal. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, but Keontae Ingram, he had 13 carries for 108 yards in that game. Yeah. And then he was off to USC. Last time I checked, he was with the Cardinals. I don't know if he... Yeah. He had a good year at Southern Cal when he went there. Of course he did. Well, of course he did. And then now he's making that money. So, yeah, kudos to him. Did he have skinny legs? Uh, That's D. Ingram had those skinny was legs. Was that the problem? Yeah, I don't I don't need skinny legs for my running back. I want to look at him up and down like that, but I need them Earl Campbell thighs or something. Yeah, you need those quadzillas. Yeah, man. I don't need no. <laughs> SD said he had no booty. No booty. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I mean, hey. Don't trust a this, running back man. with no booty. I need I need my running back with ass, man. Chill. I Cavs, hams, and back. ass. Yeah, Cavs, hams, and ass. Sean Adams. That's what he'd be talking about. Like, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Low to the ground. Tough. Yeah, man. Those quads, those come in handy. Like Saquon Barkley quads. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you got a hat at. <laughs> you got a hat at. Yeah. SD, you right. Ricky had that ass, man. Shit. Which, great interview with Ricky BK and Buck the other day. But, um, yeah, man, that's certain guys, I don't know. They just got everything you need at certain positions. That's why Adonai Mitchell, you and I, we're real high on him just for what he has. It's special, man. It's special. And, yeah, he needs to – a lot of wide receivers need to tighten up their routes. Like they were telling Garrett Wilson needed to tighten up his routes when he was coming into the league. And it's like, okay, I mean, that you work on that. That's the stuff when you go to school every day, you don't got to do that no more when you go to the league. That, that time where you were studying, instead, you're working on your craft. That's the beauty of it. 
Like that's yeah. You know, some guys don't get it. Some guys don't understand that. Some guys see the money and they say, "Oh, I got all this freedom. Then I'm gonna enjoy the fruits of my labor and what comes with football instead of remembering what got you there in the first place." But if you could stay humble and continue to get better and can work on certain things year after year and understand your weaknesses year after year, because you're gonna get exposed. Sub, so somebody is going to expose you. Like, that's just what it is. Like, somebody's going to expose you. Not everybody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? So, even Tom Brady, Tom Brady was quicking up his releases year after year, year after year. By 2015, 2016, you couldn't touch Brady. He was never getting sacked, especially after he tore that ACL. After he tore that ACL, he was like, hell no, yo. I get I'm always gonna have a good line because Giselle she paying for everything. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Robert and everybody I'm gonna make sure the line's gonna be right, but I still can't trust them. I'm still gonna have to make sure that ball gets out of my hands at an ultra high rate so I ain't getting touched and I don't have to go through any type of ACL stuff anymore. So hey, are you using your microphone today? Yeah, is it messed up? I I was having trouble hearing you. Yeah, it says it's on. I might have to get another one. It might be my Christmas present. I want to hear those melodic tones. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Man, I don't, never heard a man. Plus, I'm old. Like before. Yeah, it might, it might be time for that hearing aid instead. Because I ain't, we haven't heard nothing. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's bitched about it or anything. It's just you. So, you know, it's all right. Hey. Are you showing up for the lunch Saturday? Yeah, I'm there. Me and wifey will be in the building. I All might right. be a little late because Texas basketball, they got LSU in Houston. So, yeah. Got to listen to this. Listen to DJ working me over. All right. <laughs> Joe, Joe K says Saturday. everything's solid. Yeah. I don't have a hearing aid. Okay. I don't need to change the battery in the hearing aid. Yo, ain't nothing wrong with that. I just got done watching The Golden Bachelor, and that dude had a hearing aid, and them older women, they were all over him. So don't sleep on it. Don't, don't sleep on it. Is that know? Golden Bachelor done? Yeah, it's done. Was it good? Oh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, it could be a little sad because when you're that old, probably 90% of the time the reason why you're there is because your previous spouse croaked. So and there's, <laughs> that's why he picked the women that he chose. The winner, he picked her because it's relatable. Her husband died. His wife died. They could connect on that. And, yeah, sweet story. I get crazy, you know, brownie points of my wife for watching that, especially with all the sports and stuff I watch. Like, I'm literally watching NBA games late at night and stuff. I was watching Lakers, Mavs, and – Suns Warriors yesterday, which shout out Draymond Green, shout out to Draymond Green, baby, striking again, striking again. That's what I'm talking about. You can't be tamed, bro. You can't be tamed. They they provoke him. They, it's not his fault that he just punches people and stomps their chest and kicks people in the nuts and you know they. That's not his fault. He's provoked. You know, the NBA, NBA needs to take a look at that. It's not just him. He's retaliating. So, yeah. All right. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. All Sports Consumer at all times. Are you watching the schedule release tonight? The SEC schedule release? Uh, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I like the conspiracy theories going around. You know, I, Georgia fans, I heard they're mad because that Georgia-Texas game is the same week as F1, and Georgia fans apparently travel well, so now since it's going to be a tough ticket and the hotel prices are going to go out the roof, people are thinking that they hose SEC in Texas, hose Georgia when that game comes around in 2024, which I'm all for it. This is the SEC. I can give a damn about anybody else. Shoes. Hey, do it to us. They don't y'all we get I have F1 in Athens. That's not in Athens. No, I know. 
but you're like, oh, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, anybody else in the SEC, like, do it to us. If you could find those loopholes or something like that and with this type of situation for you, go ahead. Go ahead. See, that this is interesting because the Big 12, Texas used to say to the Big 12, hey, let's try to have us out of town F1 weekend because it's a pain in the ass for everybody. It's a pain in the ass for the team hotel. Like Georgia, the team hotel. I remember one team had to stay halfway to Waco. <laughs> I mean, it's bad. Damn. But Sankey's probably like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then he schedules Georgia for F1 weekend. Not Mississippi State, not Van Georgia. Dripping Springs has some nice hotels. You know, like, what are we? Come on, man. Do well, we then, all have to stay at a five star? Are these athletes so entitled that they have to stay at these five star luxurious places? No. Sometimes you need to stay at a spot that has the continental breakfast where you can make your own waffle. And sometimes they have eggs, but mostly you're just going to get toast. Hampton Inn, baby. Yogurt. That's what I'm saying. Like, come on. That's what these kids grew up on. Like, it is what it is. Adapt, Kirby. Adapt. I like those waffles at the Hampton Inn. Me too. They all point. When I be seeing Joel Klatt and those commercials and stuff, I be like, damn, Hampton Inn. That <laughs> Hampton Inn looks on point. I might have to, you know, check in there on the next visit wherever I go. But, yeah, I, I ain't trying to hear that. Find the spot. Like, there's so many of these. Where'd you have to stay when you went to Ames? You had to stay like an hour away from Ames. It, yeah, I was saying. So, like, why? I'm not trying to hear that shit. I am not trying. Y'all are lucky. Hey, I'm just trying to. Home. I'm trying to look out for my neighbor in the oh, SEC. Oh, that's cute. We got new neighbors. That's cute. That's cute. I mean, uh, hey, that's that's again. It's the Christmas season. I, you're in the spirit. You just had a party hey, on Saturday. You really in the spirit, man. They still talk about the 1999 A&M game when Texas stayed at the Ramada Inn <laughs> in College Station, and suddenly the staff disappeared with the team breakfast. Stop it. True story. What True staff? Story. It was the Ramada Inn staff. Ramada Inn, yeah, the staff disappeared, and dudes were running across the street to Jack in the Box. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Mac Brown, I've never seen Mac Brown so mad. He never stayed in College Station again. He stayed in Conroe after that. Wow. But they didn't get any pregame meal. Dudes were fending for themselves. <laughs> like you saw 100 dudes or whatever, 70, the travel squad, running – Willy nilly looking for food. Wow. Because the team was down there waiting, waiting, waiting. They're trying to get the staff. Hey, are we getting any food? Nope. Did the horse win that game? game. Horse, yo, uh, okay. Texas lost. Yeah, they lost that. Um, wow, man. That's cold blooded. See, that's why you can't rely on anybody else when you go out of town, especially the rival games. Like one of my favorite stories, sports stories, was Pat Riley during the Lakers Celtics era in the 80s. He would always talk about when they were in the finals and how when they went to Beantown, Red Arback, he would always, Riley would always have to bring his own water, bring all that stuff because Red Arback was such a damn snake. And then whenever they have to go to practice and stuff, they would have to practice like on the outskirts, probably in Foxborough somewhere. And then like the doors would be locked and shit because Red Arback always wanted that upper hand and just wanted to have you have that serious mind muck. And yeah, I, 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 it's foul, but. I respect it. <laughs> like, I respect those workers at the Ramada Inn saying, hey, this game means more. Damn, the breakfast. We gone. We going home. Like, y'all going to have to deal with the breakfast jack and the two skinny-ass tacos for breakfast because that's all you're going to get. And what about when Oklahoma had to play Miami in the Orange Bowl and the hotel crew – 
at the hotel where Oklahoma was staying in was giving out room numbers. And so Barry Switzer and Bosworth are getting called all night long. <laughs> Just unplug the phone. To the point where, yeah, they had to unplug the phone. Well, you need that wake-up call. This is the 80s, so it's not like we just got our mobiles here. That's a different era. You, yeah, that's some nasty work. That's <laughs> in the that's in the, the U, 30 for 30. Oh, that's amazing. That's so good. Yeah. Speaking of Bosworth, I don't know, Danny Stutzman's return video where – the boss is like pulling up in some nice ass sports car and like handing the keys over to Danny Stutzman. Oh my gosh, it makes me want to puke. It's is so this new. Bad. You got this on our bootleg. I pull it up. I can pull it up. But yeah, this it's isn't new. a Danville commercial. It's new, which the Horn fans, they've been on Danny Stutzman's ass because I guess he declared for the draft and that feedback wasn't too positive for old Danny Boy. So, you know, they said you should probably go back to school and, yeah, see what happens there. But yeah, here we go. What are we doing? <laughs> like, did they just film this the other day? Yeah, and Stutzman has on a little mink and stuff. I mean, I, I go front. It's clever. It's clever. But, yeah. <laughs> That's right, baby. The bootleg show. Yeah, man. Hey, y'all need that. I told y'all a little before. bootleg in our lives. You need a little bootleg. It humbles you. You know Keep what I'm saying? Sure. I'm still watching DVDs. I'll still go back to VHS, depending on what I need to see. I ain't too proud. Come on, man. What's up, CB? But yeah, that's the Boz and Danny Stutzman. Like, they're both cut from the same cloth, which Danny Stutzman, he wishes that he was as good as Brian Bosworth. Like, he's a good player. I'll give him that. He's a good player. And he definitely makes that defense go for Brent Venables and them. But yeah, just it's hey, nice Danny knowing Stutzman, that they're gonna meet watch. Anthony Hill. Right? For Pull real. My beer. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Anthony Man. Hill, he's gonna be your middle linebacker next year, and he's gonna be wrecking shop. Can't wait for that, man. He's ready. Like that dude. He's ready to take over the raids, man. Like, you just kind of see the confidence in him as a freshman, Big 12 defensive freshman of the year for a reason. He's had some big-time moments this season, especially against the Alabama game. He's That forced fumble that he had against Oklahoma State, like, the dude's just getting better from week to week, and how versatile that he is is what makes him so intriguing, especially as a future NFL prospect, like – it might be cliche to say I really don't give a damn. He could be very Michael Parsons like when he gets to the league. You could go one way. You could be like Michael Parsons, or you could be like Isaiah Simmons, which Isaiah Simmons, he ain't bad, but that's what we thought he was gonna be when he was coming out of Clemson. Remember? Remember oh, yeah. how high everybody was on Isaiah Simmons about being the next big thing and changing the linebacker position because oh he moves like a safety, but he hits like an edge rusher and sideline to sideline. His athleticism, four three forty, and where are you gonna put him at? And with Arizona, it just didn't fit. And he's playing a lot better now with the Giants, but yeah, Overshown is that same mold. He is. Overshown got comparisons to Simmons. Yeah. And the Cowboys took him in the third round. Yeah. Steal. I can't wait to see him in Dan Quinn's defense. That that's one of the biggest disappointments of the NFL season, honestly. Yeah. Is not getting to see DeMarvian Overshown in Dan Quinn's defense. Yeah. Cause 
Overshawn is going to give you everything he's got. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that was Anthony man. Hill. Anthony Hill's going to, Anthony Hill likes to literally pick guys up and body slam them. Yeah. You might have to watch that in the league because in the league, you get tossed for that. In college, they let it ride a little bit. In the NFL, nah. You know how soft they get, and they think that's all. Oh, that's you remember when he picked up and... when he picked up Walker from Oklahoma? Yeah, that dude's two eighteen and stocky. Yes, Anthony Hill just stopped him dead in his tracks, picked him up, and threw him down. Yeah, so I'm saying, like I, if I'm just thinking of missed tackles, I'm not talking about miss assignments because the Wyoming game, when it comes to miss assignments, that was the big one for him this season on that big run by the running back. But when it comes to just having somebody in front of you and that ball carrier trying to make you miss, I can't think of Anthony Hill missing the tackle. Either he just makes the tackle straight up or he'll stand you up to where the rest of the white hats will come for a gang tackle. But I, he hasn't really gotten juked. He hasn't gotten ran over. Like there was a huge fourth down, fourth and short conversion for Texas Tech, and they threw it to Taj Brooks. And he laid them out like it was nothing. And Taj Brooks, he's all about yards after, you know, contact. And this was just like the dude, once he caught it, it was he was stuck. And it was a turnover on down situation, big play in that game. So yeah, I I can't think of it. Somebody gonna have to find that for me, cause I saw every snap this year and Anthony Hill, I ain't seen him get juked out of his draws or ran over like a stump. I ain't seen none of that. Well, Gonzo just uh texted in on the Coda text line. 512-222-9328. Is Anthony Hill 60 worthy for Tommy Nobis? And I'm gonna say he will be. He will be probably next year. I mean, that's a tough number for a linebacker in this day and age, 60. But Tommy Nobis was the best ever at Texas. Like, love Super DJ. Tommy Nobis was, he was, like I said, he's better than Butkus. He's better than Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, all of his contemporaries he was better than. He had 300 tackles in a, <laughs> like 300 tackles in a season. It's ridiculous what that dude was doing. Yeah, did he get tired? Good I Lord. mean, it was, he just, he just wanted to maul people. And he did. Britt Hager, the all-time leading tackler in Texas football history, same way. If he didn't have 10 tackles in a game, he felt like he let the team down. <laughs> I mean, the dude averaged 12 tackles a game in 87. Damn. He had 27 tackles against Arkansas. Oh, my gosh. I mean, those are the kind of dudes that you just love to watch play. Zach Thomas was that way at Tech. Oh, that dude saw That no-neck-looking mother. Good God. Had a neck like a fire hydrant. Yo, the dude, was he like 5'7"? He couldn't be more than 5'8". He was, he he was he he's, six, he's like 5'10". Oh, oh, man, that's generous. <laughs> Let's see what they list him. Well, they got that dude, man. That dude's neck was so tight. And it's like, bro, why are you this tough? so underrated him and jason taylor for that dolphin squad that's why they used to randomly beat brady in them you know every once in a while brady for a couple of years he didn't like going to miami especially early in the season when it was hot as hell early in september and they would travel in like man didn't zach thomas's sister marry jason taylor i don't know i think that's right that's a good looking family. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, Joy Taylor, who does work with Fox with um Acho, Emmanuel Acho on LaShawn McCoy. Like, yeah, that's a great looking family. And 
Jason Taylor looks like the actor Boris Cujo. Yeah, he married Zach Thomas's sister, Katina. Oh, man. Let's see. Are they still that together? Sounds like a beautiful woman. <laughs> oh, no. They're not together. And Katina oh. was suing his ass for oh, big money. Oh, damn. Come on, Katina. See, that's why it's dangerous marrying your homie's sister. Very dangerous. You can mess up the whole friendship. Obviously, the marriage, it's dangerous. It sounds fun. It sounds great. Like, I'm cool with the family already. I'm already cool with pops. Mom's already loves me just by being, you know, friends with her son. But once you marry the daughter and then she sees that different side of you and you see that different side of her, like, y'all living together, She, you leaving that toilet seat up and stuff at 3 a.m. and she losing her what's shit at night you? on your ass. What do you mean what's wrong with me? I'm trying to give the fellas game out here who think that their homeboy's sister is hot and always said, man, we get along. You know, why not? Be careful. Because we always, we've all thought of it. We all got that one friend with the hot sister to where you would just think, man, if she liked me, if I got a chance to shoot my shot, everything would be beautiful. But Zach Thomas... He's the example of what could go wrong because Katrina, what's she suing them for? Oh, she said that he didn't he didn't pay her the the full amount of the divorce settlement. Mm. Here's Katina. Who's that brother? Is that Jason? Yeah. Okay. Why? That was when they were happy. That wait a minute. So, so, okay, okay. So, Jason Taylor married Zach Thomas's wife, sister, Zach Thomas's sister. Excuse me, that's Zach Thomas's sister, right okay, there. Okay, I had it flipped. Okay, I had it flipped. All right, I mean, are you looking at these comments over here? She's so hot, yeah, because Joy Taylor is hot. I thought you were saying Jason Taylor had another sister named Katrina, which sounds very black. This one is very white. So a white woman named Katrina kind of threw me off there. You know, that's all. It just kind of, you know, kind of messed with me a little bit. But yeah, Jason. Okay. Yeah. Jason fumbled the bag then. Interesting. Yeah. yeah she sued him because she said that he came up 3.4 million short yep. mm -hmm. of paying the divorce settlement. Yep, I remember that contract he got in the early 2000s. That was some big time money. Taylor was nice, man. 6'6, six, six, very rangy, good bend. Yeah, he he's coaching for the Hurricanes, rusher. or he was. Yeah, he was a solid edge rusher, man. Yeah, Absolutely. long. Long, light skinned, Mr. Clean looking self. Huh. Yeah. I don't know, so. Yeah, I know, he's, uh, well, yeah, he's the D-line coach for the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, I'll take that. He's still, he's still got to work. He's got to pay off that money to Katina. Oh, damn, Katina. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Hey, man. Like, your, your brother can't give you anything? Like, he, he was my teammate. He played in the league, too. Hey, he's but got his on. own bills to pay. I guess so. He just got in the Hall of Fame, too. Yeah. Well deserved. I want to see this is from DJ Dog 31. I want to see a defense with Jare Bledsoe, Anthony Hill, Jelani McDonald, Darian Gallette, Colin Simmons, Malik Ma Me too. Damn, Kobe Black. Kobe Black. Oh, in two hours. Baby. We will find out 420. Yeah, is the we'll coach want to tell us something? Huh? No. With 420, that's very specific. It's, you know, Kobe trying to tell us that he's on the Gaja. Ain't nothing 20. wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with, you know, smoking the herb. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the greatest to ever put on the burnt orange is a huge advocate for the chronic. So, Texas fans, you can't hate on it because you'll be a hypocrite. So, I trust me, I let him puff, puff, pass. 
if that makes him play better, if he has a connect here in Austin, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Give me a yeah. call. Yeah. <laughs> text us on the Coda text line. Yeah, 512-222-9328. Yeah, man. If he has a plug that, you know, has the best flower, you know, even that Brittany Griner I heard is on that good stuff. Don't be like Brittany, though. Check that back. Always <laughs> bringing it back to basketball. I'm not bringing it back to basketball. It's Brittany Griner? Related. That's sports related. I mean, it happens to be basketball, yes, but she's an example of what not to do. Well, how many of our listeners are cruising around Russia with some dro? <laughs> they're not pen. because they're smarter than Brittany Griner. They know maybe I shouldn't take this on the plane or – I've put weed in this bag before. Maybe I should check it just in case. Just in case I forget that it's in there. You know, Brittany? Love you, Brittany. Did good work at Baylor. You're a Houston girl. Represent. Going to the Hall of Fame. But Yeah, all those jokes calling her Brittany Griner. That's just terrible. <laughs> that girl had to spend months in... A Russian prison mm -hmm. for carrying around a little pen. Mm. Then we had to get like, it took like an act of Congress to get her out of Russia. Yeah. But back to DJ Dog's little message here. I'm, I'm with you. I cannot wait to see Jelani McDonald. Like, I feel like they're just keeping him a surprise from us. I mean, that dude is a monster. Like he's, he looks as big as Ryan Watts and I'm down to see what he brings to the table because he is put together like freshman put together. Like looks like he's been in the college weight program three years. And Darian Gallette's another guy. I'm like, okay. I need to see some of these dudes. Now, they're going to get all kinds of reps in these 15 bowl practices. And these practices need to be game changers for them. I'm, I'm interested to see if anyone can rise up and get some playing time in a college football playoff semifinal based on what they're doing in these bowl practices. Uh, that makes Zay just reach for the Tums. <laughs> no, it does give you the bubble guts a little bit because if you don't trust them against Wyoming, then why are we trusting them against the best passing offense in the nation? Like, that doesn't add up for me, whether it's 15 practices or not. Like... You know, and then Sark, he talked about it in one of his latest pressers when it comes to these young guys, these big time four or five star blue trippers coming in as freshmen. It's so easy to see Anthony Hill's success and Malik Muhammad's success and then look at Jelani McDonald like what's going on? Where's the disconnect there? And some guys just don't get it right away. You know, I talked about this the other day. The high school that you come from is a huge deal. Like the coaching that you have there, like every high school coach, we know there's some that are really good and there's some that are just earning the paycheck. And they don't have your best intentions like they should. And again, just being a high school coach in itself, it's very difficult. So if you're a Malik Muhammad and you come from South Oak Cliff, who's going back to the state championship again and won a state championship last year. That's you know he's getting good coaching because they're winning. <laughs> like it matters. Guess, it matters. It matters. AT so, Sanders and Anthony Hill and Austin Jordan played on state championship winning teams at Denton Ryan. Yeah. And they came in expecting to win. Yeah. And they play like it. So I'm saying Mookie Taft, a walk-on. Mookie Taft. But he came from Westlake, went in state Ethan all Burke. the time. Ethan Burke. That's what I'm saying. If you're Mookie Taft, just your knowledge 
is ahead of certain guys. Hell, he was probably showing Jaden Catalan game. Now that we see him, like, yo, Blake Gideon and Terry Joseph and Pete Kukowski are like, yo, Jalen, like, you're coming from Arkansas where they play that three high safety defense. We're more traditional with two safeties here. Mookie Taff, he gets it more than you. You're the better athlete. That's obvious, but he knows where to be. And he has three interceptions because of it. That's just those type of things matter. So, guys, sometimes JT Sanders was even a red shirt. Like, and he's going to be a probably a first round or early second day pick, second tight end taken in the next draft. Some guys need time to get their feet wet and learn more and, you know, just catch up with the speed of the game. And for Jelani McDonald, I think that's just the case for somebody like him right now. I wonder if Sanders is going to get like docked for his blocking. He's such a good receiver downfield. It seems like a natural that he's going to be the number two pick in the draft because he's just so fluid and he, he, he's a threat after he catches it. He's, I mean, he's just plays bigger than he is, but man, in the NFL, you got to block. Yeah, and, you know, he's not going to be relied on to do all the motion stuff that Steve Sarkeesian does with Texas in the NFL. They just don't do that with tight ends. Some teams do. Andy Reid does it probably more than anybody with Travis Kelsey. But other than that, he's going to be pretty stationary a lot. So it's not going to – I don't think it's going to be as much movement, which could be very difficult to do at times, depending on where you're moving and who you're blocking to week after week. Once he gets into the league and like kind of being in one spot and sometimes being a wide receiver in the slot, et cetera. So I, he'll get docked a little bit. They're going to find his weakness. We talked to Hummer yesterday and Hummer, you know, as good as he is, he mentioned it. Like, that's what we do during this time of year. Like when we have nothing to do, we just critique and nitpick guys down to the T to see what their weaknesses are and see if that's going to translate or lack thereof in the NFL when they get there. So yeah, I think it just depends on the team, but at the end of the day, his talent, his athleticism, his hands, his IQ, like he's made some crazy catches this year. Like I still think about that one hander snack that he had against Baylor over the middle of the field. Like that's special, man. That's not too many guys have that in them. So yeah, I, I think it just depends, but a GM's going to take about big. He came up with in the Alabama game, right? Like Sark, unbelievable job of, of game planning him wide open. He had a 50 yard catch and run. He had over 100 yards in that game. I mean, that's why every, every, I mean, if Texas plays Alabama for the national championship, I am not worried. I, I like Jalen huh? Milrow as a competitor, and I think he is, he's cold blooded. He's one of those dudes who's just going to find a way to get it done, whether he's got to run or he's got to throw. He just, finds a way but sark knows saban's tendencies and saban knows that sark knows <laughs> and i'm just saying whoever wins this game between texas and washington is winning the national championship wow that's how it's gonna be wow i mean that's how it's gonna be yeah, you know, Jalen Milrow, I just got to salute that dude. Like, it's difficult looking over your shoulder as a quarterback, especially with the previous quarterbacks that came before you, 
all starting in the NFL. Well, Mac Jones just got his spot taken by Zappy, but that's still dude, was still a first round pick. But Rice Young won the Heisman. He's the first pick of the draft. You see Jalen Hurts and all the success that he's having. You see Tua, who's probably going to make another Pro Bowl this year. Like the expectation for an Alabama quarterback is so high, and that could be terrifying for certain guys that just get into their first year. I mean, you go to Alabama because you want those type of things as a competitor, but still, you're human. And he was looking over his shoulder for obvious reasons. They benched his ass in the USF game. You know, like they bitched his ass to see what those other two could do. And those guys stunk it up. So they were like, yo, we better figure this Jalen Milrow stuff out now because these other two dudes with what Tommy Reese is trying to throw out here, it ain't working, bro. So they said, damn that. And obviously they've only seen success ever since. And Jalen Milrow, knowing that he's the starter and he's playing with that type of confidence, like to say what he said after the Auburn game, which is still ridiculous that it even happened, but to say, Oh, I'm the effing Heisman. I'm this and that. And he ain't getting no vote to even be sent to New York, but you can tell that confidence, like that's a different type of swagger that that brother's carrying right now. And that's what scares you. If you're any of these three other teams that are left in the CFP, if you have to face Bama, that's exactly why that room in Michigan, when they saw the CFP polls come out and that fourth spot went to Bama and not the Florida state, everybody soft and went oh and then they tried to play it off by oh okay okay yeah yeah let's do it let's do it no 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 that video was around for life that wolverine team they're flat out scared of this matchup and they should be because alabama they all still got those five four-star guys and they finally figured out still got one of the best defenses in the nation with Turner and McKinstry and Arnold and Caleb Downs and like Michigan, they, they better bring it. So here's the other thing about that game. Jalen Milrow was committed to Texas. Yeah. And then Quinn Ewers committed to Texas. Quinn Ewers committed on August 14th, 2020. And on August 17th, Jalen Milrow decommitted and committed to Alabama. Then Ewers decommitted, went to Ohio State, and Tom Herman didn't have either of them. Mm. And now they could be facing up Jalen Milrow and yeah. Quinn Ewers. Yeah. And that's a subplot. Hey, and that could have played the part of why Jalen Milrow struggled so much in that game. I know everybody's saying that it's because of inexperience, but that's that's the school that you wanted to go to that you had to face that night. And again, with everything I just said about Alabama and that pressure that he already has to deal with, now you're thinking, what could have been? Oh, this is the guy that I – this is the reason why I left Texas, because that guy's starting on the other side. And he's out here having success and stuff. Yo, you can't tell me that might not have been in Jalen Milrow's head. Because he threw a couple of passes where you're like, yo, what you looking at, bro? Oh, that one to Jaron Thompson? Wow. Terrible. Terrible. So. That was a huge play in that game. Yeah. But that Jalen Milrow on that day, he ain't he ain't here no more. No. That Jalen Milrow don't exist no more. That's, no, that hard drive has been wiped. Yeah. He is all fresh, new data, and he is – he's a killer. Yeah. And I, I, I want to see it. I know people are like, oh, hard. I don't want to see him play Alabama again. Yeah, yes, yes, you do. Because Sark knows Saban's tendencies. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But Milro – He's playing smart, too. Like, when he runs, he ain't lowering his head like Will Levis out here doing. Like, he's sliding. Like he's Quinn against Houston. Yeah, like Quinn's ass trying to talk shit after you lower your head and mess up your shoulder in your uh, the next two games. What are we Look doing, at how fired dude? up you get. That's still so stupid. I still – that was so stupid. Gosh, man. That could have ruined the season. Like, Malik Murphy – 
He won you two games, sure, but it was tough. Malik Murphy didn't help, you know, too much in that Kansas State game. He only put you in bad situations. And if Quinn Ewers was smarter, he could have avoided a lot of that. But, hey, that's the past. That's the past. If we if we could get back to Quintavious Ewers, but a sliding version, oh, my Lord, Chip. Because we haven't seen that lately. Ever since that U of H game, he's kind of went, you know, kind of what Dak Prescott started doing. He starts, which he's making the right throw still, but – Yo, man, Quintavious Buffo against Kansas and Baylor running up that sideline, showing that speed. That was a good time. That was a good time, man. And it's still there. It's still there. Like, you got another a month to get healthy, even more healthy. If I'm Sark and AJ Milley, I'm letting them know, like, yo, bro, you think we could bring Quintavious back a little bit? Just a little bit. Like we sliding now. We're practicing sliding, though. I get it. You want to be hard. You want to show your team that you tough as hell by lowering your shoulder. That's fun and stuff. But, nah, we, we know you're tough. We don't need that from you. Let's Last eight games, Jalen Milrow, 10 touchdowns, one interception. Exactly. Last eight games for Quinn. He's got... 12 touchdown passes and five interceptions. Yeah. But, hey, he's thrown a pick in each of his last two games and three of his last four. So that, that's that got to get cleaned up. Yeah, and the interceptions have been really bad, too. Like the – Whatever fade ball that he was trying to throw against Texas Tech, why? What did you see? There was no air on that pass. Zero. That was terrible. That was horrible. Like, that was. I don't know. Mitchell's too athletic for him not to have a chance. You got to like put some air on it, something, so we could like go get it. It was just right. It's a corner route. Shot. Throw it to the corner. It was just a straight shot, and he just slapped his hands, and it was on to the next. And Oklahoma State. Oh, boy, he's right there looking at you. All he's doing is reading your eyes. You're looking at the raw receiver crossing, and you didn't see him at all. So, yeah, that's what Washington's talking about. That's what they talk about. They say Quinn Ewers, as good as he's been, he's also given the defense's chances to make plays. So, I mean, you know, he's make have, plays. You got to have your eyes in the right place. By the way, that text from Gonzo, that is Gonzo. From Hoops ATX, baby. How about this Christmas? You're not uh, buying your kids video games. You're buying them a basketball hoop that they can put out and go get some exercise. That's what I'm Hoops talking about. ATX.com. They'll put in a full sport court for you. Yo. Um, and look, we got Apple leasing. I mean, some of you folks, if you're like me, you got a 16-year-old driver coming. Maybe you get the car from Apple leasing and your kid gets, you know, whatever's in the in the driveway right now. You go get yourself a brand new car from Apple leasing. It's going to change your outlook because some of you are like driving around in cars you can't stand. But you're like, I'm getting every dollar out of this car. I hate this car, but by God, it's paid for. It's in the garage every other week. No, come on. You deserve better than that. Especially if you're living in Austin, Texas, you're going to be in traffic. Get into a car you want to be driving. App leasing, they lease every make and model of car. They don't care what car you pick. There's no stress. There's no nothing. Just you getting in a brand new car. Whether you want to keep your payments in the $400 range or get a Range Rover, they got you covered. Apple leasing, appleleasing.com, 346-9977. Give him a call, tell him Chip Brown sent you. And uh, I got to call my man, Tom McKay, because I might have to do a little with audiovisual consultations, avconsultations.com. The beautiful thing about it is you're busy. They bring everything to you. They're going to bring you the best price on big screens, surround sound, surveillance, electronic shades, new lighting. Just give Tom and his crew a call, 255 8678 
and, you know, do something nice for yourself. And speaking of the sugar bowl, get over to Salt Traders Coastal Cooking at the Zilker location, the Round Rock location, and get your New Orleans grub on. I mean, happy hour every day from 3.30 to 6.30. 3.30 to close on Mondays, and you're getting $5 off the beginnings menu, which has the New Orleans barbecue shrimp, baby. So go get it. And Brain Vault, patented proven, the mouth guard that's going to protect your kids against the effects of concussion or protect you. If you're a flag football player, as an adult, you need a mouth guard from Brain Vault so that you are protected. BrainVault.com for the fittings, and they'll do group fittings, do your whole team. They'll come to you. BrainVault.com. Zay, uh, for those who haven't uh, noticed, John Brown had other things happening today, so we'll catch up with John. But um, obviously, a lot of attention at 4, 420 on the decision of Kobe Black. Now, Kobe, Kobe. Um, yeah, what a great day. I mean. There's so dude, many Kobe's now. I, like, that's, you knew there were a lot of Michaels growing up, especially my age group, named after Michael Jordan. But now we're starting to see so many Kobe's. There's guys named Kobe Bryant in the NFL. The one that came from Cincinnati. Or it's Kobe Bryant that played for Kansas. The Jayhawks has a cornerback. And, yeah, you know, the Black Mama, rest in power. One of the greatest to ever do it. And everybody always quotes Kobe on job not finished. I heard Mookie Taff say that this year. So, yeah, Kobe Black to be named after the Mama, which I'm sure that's who he's named after. Um. I'm guessing he's not named after the very expensive steak dish, but well, he is he's a prototype corner, got great length, he's got those long arms, he's got unbelievable change of direction. Um, and here's here's the uh scouting report, the 24-7 scouting report. Um High level receiver like body control and adjustment ability, knows how to high point, wins in traffic, fluid mover, better than expected suddenness relative to his length, um, breaks on throws with explosion, got the size, the frame, the length, high level functional athleticism. Fostered by a multi-sport background. He's a basketball player. There you go, Zay. Always who? Always. And Always hoop. some track. And he's a, well, I guess the verified um, 40s were hard to come by, but the sense is he's a 4-4 four, four guy. And... You know, just a guy who, you know, maybe not the best tackler. He could take some uh, lessons from our man uh, Malik Muhammad and Anthony Hill. But he can play anywhere. He's the number four. Um, he's the number four DB in this class. Number four safety. Number three safety, according to the 24-7 sports composite ranking. See, when I like you calling him safety, Chip, I saw him have to straighten somebody out on Twitter that had him as a safety, and he retweeted that post with his own quote saying, I'm a corner. All right, well then, know. get your ass in here <laughs> and beat out Jelani McDonald and Damn. Malik Muhammad and some of these – Fellas who've got uh, some practice reps under their belt. Yeah. Trust me, Jelani McDonald. Woo! I'm just calling my shot right now. This dude is going to be an impact player in 2024. Okay. 
whether it's corner, safety, he's going to be on the field. And Warren Roberson. I mean, no one's talking about Warren Roberson. That dude's dad was all conference defensive player for Gary Patterson at TCU. You get Gary Patterson going about Warren Roberson's dad. He's like, I'll be pissed if Warren Roberson isn't a player because his dad was a player. Jeez. I'm like, okay. All right, GP. Yeah, thanks for the pressure, Gary. Good grief, man. Well, he was just saying that to me off to the side. I mean, he wasn't like <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, no. Yeah, Glenn, but, you're wilding. I love you, Glenn. Thank you for listening, bro. You're tripping, bro. Well, they don't run the same offense. He's a capable runner, let me tell you. And he'll do whatever he's got to do to win. If if it comes down to it, if he's playing Michigan and he's got to, you know, make some play with his legs, he'll do it. Now, he won't do it like VY because VY was a gazelle. But, I mean, he's a, he's a competitor. Like, he can't stand to lose. And VY was the same way. And look, Jalen Milrow, you know, Vince wasn't a finished product his first two years playing, he was a finished product his third year, his redshirt junior year when he led the nation in pass efficiency. And everyone's like, what? VY's lead the nation in pass efficiency? Yes, look it up. Like VY, he, talk about becoming a complete player. But Milro, he's a force, man. He, he's a competitor. He's a killer. I think Alabama's going to beat Michigan. Yeah, Glenn, there's things that you can compare to VY and Milro. They're both really smart when they ran. Like, Vince never took a clean shot, ever. He was either getting out of bounds or going down before something happening, or he's just so strong. You know, it didn't matter what kind of shot you got on him. It just wasn't clean, and Milro is very similar to that. But, hell, there was times where Mac, he didn't fully believe in Vince. He didn't fully, you know, let Vince thrive like he should because there were just things where he was kind of trying to keep him in this box because he was so afraid of, you know, actually releasing him to the wild and letting him just kind of learn certain things on the fly. Some things, sometimes you got to be aggressive and let the kid mess up instead of being timid and just kind of, you know, afraid. I felt like that's what it was with Jalen Milrow early, and you could say the same thing about Vince Young. So, yes, there are similarities, and you're right, Chip, not being a finished product at all with Jalen Milrow, just like Vince was in his first year but yeah man like when Vince ran sometimes in the open field it didn't even look like he was going fast because at all. his stride was so damn smooth that's why like, he's a gazelle because yeah. gazelles don't even look like they're trying and they are flying yeah yeah Jalen Miller yeah, he don't got that he don't got ridiculous. that yeah VY once they unleash that zone read kudos to greg davis they sprung that on nebraska in 03 and texas ran for almost 400 yards that day it was vy and said b and it was said b for 200 vy for 100 they just totally they'd been working on it behind the scenes for like three weeks and then they unleashed it on bo pelini and that Nebraska defense, and it was – they ran it 15 times, and I think it averaged 13 yards per Man. carry. And then they just kept adding to it when they brought in Jamal Charles, Ramon's Taylor. I mean, think of all the running backs Texas had in 05. Let Ramon smoke the chronic, Mac. Just let him smoke it. It's okay. Ricky smoked it. Max should have known. Yeah, but oh. Ramont's, and I love Ramont's. Ramont's and I are boys, but Ramont's had a backpack full of it. So? The homies. He's giving it to the homies. And ain't well, no fun if the homies can't have that's intent to distribute. Money. Now it's all you good. You said that in 93, Chip. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. That's a classic. 
So, yes, he had a little bit of the chronic in the backpack. You got to let the homies, you know, let them you know, get their little puff puff pass on, too. He was too talented to kick him off the team. Get him out of jail. Let him do some community service. Let him pick up some trash alongside 35, embarrass him a little bit, whatever. Don't kick him off the team. Damn, Matt. Ramos Taylor was so cold, man. Dude, I his hands, him. he had the biggest hands I've ever seen. Oh, my God. The dude was an athletic monster. He could hope, too, back in those Belton days. Oh. I remember seeing them dunking on folks and tournaments and stuff, and I'm like, who the hell is this? And then somebody whispered, like, he's going to Texas for football. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, this stocky-ass, athletic-ass brother is going to Texas to play football? Okay. And sure enough. Dude, he, he palmed a basketball guy. like you and I palm a grapefruit. Dude. He had hands like oven mitts. Different. Different. Yeah. But think about that. Jamal Charles, Ramonce Taylor, Selvin Young, who was who became a thousand yard rusher in the NFL, Henry Melton, oh big Henry, Henry Melton, Melton, yeah, that dude used to be a pile diver at two seventy five. I'm like Henry, <laughs> lower your shoulder and be a one man brotherly shove for God's sake. Yeah, and then he flipped over to defensive line, and Will Muschamp turned him into a Multi-millionaire. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, everybody talking about this running back room getting thick and will Jaden Blue, why would he come back when he knows Jonathan Brooks is going to get back healthy and C.J. Baxter is going to be in for another year? Because of that, of what you just said. Like, Stelvin Young, Ramon Taylor, Jamal Charles, they made it work and won a national championship while doing, like doing it. Like, you're in a situation – to do that, even though Jonathan Brooks is obviously out, like Keelan Robinson. Yeah, but that was pre NIL. Now you got schools waving the bag at you, telling you how great exactly. you are. Yeah. And hey. you ain't going to get hit for weed like Vermont's did because we look at weed different now in 2023. So, why are you bringing yeah. up weed for? I'm just saying, because we brought up Ramos Taylor. That's what I always think about how Mac. No, we're talking the about move. the running back room for next year. Yes. And that's what's similar. How good that running back room was in 05 to what the running back room is now. Yeah, and but they didn't have people it. waving bags of money at them to transfer. They didn't. That's true. Now they do. That's true. We got to find out if Jaden Blue, like, what are they telling him? Oh. And is Jonathan Brooks going to come back? Why would he, why Jay- wouldn't he come back? Would he go to the NFL? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Melk or uh, Pro Football Focus has him as their number one running back off the board Still? right now. Still, I mean, the last big time running back that I can remember that tore his ACL in college that ended up being really good in the NFL was Willis McGay. Yeah, you remember and he that? Had, like multiple ligament tears. Yeah, man, like that dude. That was so devastating. And that 02 Fiesta Bowl gets Ohio State. Like, you think Miami's going to go back to back. And Willis McGay, he blows his knee out in the middle of the game. And it just seemed like Miami deflated from there, where Maurice Claret got the job done and got that trophy for those Buckeyes. But yeah, it, it could happen. You know, Emmanuel saying Nick Chubb, was he the same way? I felt like he was coming out of Georgia with all those good running backs. I think he did have knee problems, and but he still have a knee problem. That's that's that ain't the best example, Emmanuel. He tore his ACL what this year? Then he tears something out for the season. So, ah, oh man. I mean, Priest Holmes he had injuries throughout his Texas career. I think Priest should be in Canton. Obviously, I'm biased, but. What Priest did in those three years, in those early 2000s for Kansas City. I if mean, they would have won something, he'd have a chance. Because it's like Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis had a shortened career, but he won two Super Bowls. Yeah. So they let him in. I mean, Jamal, Jamal broke Jim Brown's yards per carry record. Like Jamal Charles is the all-time NFL yards per carry leader. And he's going to struggle to get in. Oh, my God. So. 
He was so cold. It is cold. They want you to win. They want you to. That's why Tommy <laughs> Nobis isn't in. Tommy Nobis is one of the best linebackers in the history of pro football. And he's not in the pro football hall of fame because he went to an expansion team that sucked for his whole career. And the guy never complained. He just went out and sledgehammered people for three hours every Sunday and went back home and came back to work. And like Tommy Nobis and Bobby Lane are my two, like sort of tell me more, like, Give me more stories like Bobby Lane, especially because when John McClain told us that in his older age, McClain went out to visit him to get all the stories. And the guy's like, oh, those were all lies. Like Bobby <laughs> Lane, what are you doing? Like you're trying to deny your life like it didn't exist. That was crazy. Yeah. Like Johnny Manziel did a documentary admitting to everything Bobby Lane at the end was like nah I wasn't drunk during the games I didn't drink during that no hitter against Texas A&M after being in a car accident and then throwing a no hitter and flipping double birds at the Aggies in Kyle Field or in Kyle Station so far I mean that's the best story I've ever heard like God you probably got grandkids and stuff yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. You know, Kim Kardashian kids are always going to see the sex tape. Some people don't want their seeds to know the past, you know? All Ask right, let me questions. jump in here. I, I'm going to, this one's just for CB because it is the 10 year anniversary today of the Red Texas football banquet when Mac Brown was working behind the scenes with new athletic director, Steve Patterson to stay on as coach when the big money guys wanted him gone. And Mac successfully pushed his meeting with Bill Powers until an, what, 3.30 on, it was Friday the 13th, December 13th. And the banquet started at six and the meeting was at 3.30. And Mac had Joe Jamail, one of the greatest trial attorneys in the history of the state of Texas, as his agent, who's also a mega booster. And they go into the meeting with Bill Powers. Sally's in there. Mac, Joe Jamail, Steve Patterson. And Joe Jamail says, well, Bill, if you fire Mac and you hire Nick Saban, I'm going to file a tortious interference lawsuit against the Regents board. That's all I've got. Y'all have, y'all carry on. And Bill Powers is like, uh, Mac, I thought you were ready to take a break. No, I'm good. Steve, you good? Yeah, good. Mac, Mac, stay in. Bill Powers is like, uh, so they go out to the football banquet. Nick Saban has not signed his extension. He was in Austin. He was listening because there was some off the books money that was going to get Saban out of a bad business deal that he was in where he's paying a million dollars in debt service on a failed apartment complex in Houston. And the big money guys at Texas were going to write a check and make it go away. It was a lot of money too, 25 mil. Damn. And at that time they weren't, you know, Saban wasn't like, Hey, Bama pay this bleep off for me. It, they just, Texas had it all. And then they didn't. They go into the banquet. Everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen, including Nick Saban. And Steve Patterson gets up there and is like, I'm looking forward to working with Mac for the next several years. And everyone's like, huh? And Mac's smiling. <laughs> and then Bill Powers gets up there, doesn't say a word. So everyone's like, 
what the hell's going on? Max still the coach? And then right in the middle of the banquet, Nick Saban leaks it to Kirk Herbstreet that he signed his extension at Alabama. And everyone just went nuts. And I had reported on Tuesday of that week that Mac would be stepping down as head coach by the end of the week. And everyone came at me on Twitter and was like, well, we're waiting. Like Jay Moore, who has 330,000 followers on Twitter, came at me and was like, well, Chip, we're waiting. And so all his followers came, you know, piling in. Like, I was like, all I ever said was that Mac would be stepping down by the end of the week. I never said Nick was coming. And sure enough, the next day, this, that was the craziest thing. So there, there are 17 kids in on their official visit for that weekend, for that banquet weekend. And the next morning, Steve Patterson tells them, Mac Brown's going to be your coach. So they're like, oh, okay, all right. So they go off, and they're doing their tours and everything. And then the big money guys are like, this was not the deal. And they told Powers, go or tell Patterson, he's got to go fire Mac Brown right now. And, and so Patterson went and found Mac, told him, hey, it's over. Mac, I'm told, called Bill Powers like a hundred times and Powers wouldn't answer the phone. And then that night, those same 17 kids on their official visit were told, yeah, Mac Brown's not going to be your coach. Like, it was so bootleg. I mean, it was so <laughs> janky. But it was crazy. And then, you know, when they announced on Sunday that Mac was stepping down, um, you know, Jay Moore apologized, had me on his show. And it was, but that night, oh, I was getting death threats on Twitter. Damn. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I think the only tweet I sent out that night was like, all I ever said was Mac Brown would be stepping down by the end of the week. I never said Nick Saban was coming because I never did. Right. There's no way. You don't say Nick Saban's going anywhere until you see him at the podium wearing that school's shirt after what he said i'm not going to alabama like nick is slick yeah so mac was he just so petty that he stayed because he didn't want saban to take the rings after him yeah because that was the guy who caused him to completely melt down by you know he losing in 09 that national championship that Mac was absolutely convinced he was going to win. And then that was the first. And Saban, you know, was going to come in and immediately have a better legacy than Mac. Mac wanted to be Daryl Royal light. <sighs> legacy prison, Zay. When these coaches get into legacy prison, it becomes about them and me and my record and do you know what I've done and Mac did a lot I've always said they should call the north end in DKR the Mac Brown north end zone he built that he built that so give it to him don't give him a statue just give him Mac Brown north end he won you a national championship but it was ugly after that like it was it was ugly yeah because your pride has taken over the fact that it should be your love for the school first. Like, your pride can't get in the way. Your time was up here. I know it hurts. Every Nobody wants to get fired. No one wants to get let go. But if you care about that university like you're supposed to, you'll do the right thing and set your pride aside and allow somebody to come in that has skins on the wall that's been there and done that and you know could do a good job and take over that's fine you want that 
Like, that's why I talk a lot of shit about Red Arback with Boston Celtics, but he's a legend because he loved the Boston Celtics. He was the coach, that he was the owner, hired the right people. You see Pat Riley over there with Miami. He won a championship there, but he's in the front office. He has Eric Spolstra in there now. Like, he wants Eric Spolstra to do better than him. Like, it's just, that's, that's weak, Mac. That's weak. And that's why a lot of people don't have a lot of respect for Mac during the end. You know, like the glory days were the glory days, but well, yeah, and I, I, felt, ended. I felt for Mac because he had a vision for how it was going to end. And he was so convinced that he was going to win that 09 national championship. I've told this story before that press conference lets out at the Rose Bowl and Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports was standing right next to me. As Mac was coming off the dais and. Dennis, who was the president of the Football Writers Association at the time, said, well, Mac, we'll never know. And Mac looked at him and said, it wouldn't have been close. Like, I've never seen Mac like that. And he it it just got to him. He couldn't believe. He couldn't believe he was still had a chance to win a big 12 title going to that last game against Baylor and was tied three, three. And then he loses. It, it, it was a mess. It was a mess. Yeah. But 10 years ago today, the red football banquet, it was an unforgettable evening. As CB said, chip got destroyed on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was, yeah, it was awful. But I mean, the fact that Mac is still coaching now is just kind of, I mean, I appreciate his love for the game, but. Well, and he's recruited quarterback well. Otherwise, he'd be out. That's right. Yeah. I mean, he had Sam Howell and Sam Howell into Drake May. Yeah. Sam Howell's playing some decent football this year, too. Yeah. You know, Washington might not be very good, but it ain't Sam Howe's fault. But right. that dude. All right. Well, let's get to the right call, baby. The right call. All right, man. For the right call, Covert B came. Got to get them a shout out. The family owned automotive dealership that's been serving the greater Austin area for over a hundred years. They have been committed to providing customers with a high quality selection of pre and new new own vehicles and yeah man that hoopty just ain't it no more y'all that check engine light it's still on you don't even go upstairs or do whatever you gotta do you come back down you think oh maybe it's gone nope it's still on so instead of dealing with that still paying thousands of thousands of dollars just go upgrade and go to covert b cave it is that time and they'll take care of you they got seven terrific brands to choose from in dodge ram chrysler cadillac jeep gmc and buick so you're going to find what you want that SUV, that two-door the truck covert b cave will take care of you or go to covertbcave.com so you can see all the latest special and inventory nobody beats a covert deal not now not ever all right chip we're gonna go to your hometown detroit basket you taking shots i'm not taking shots <laughs> you I sure detroit. i love detroit i was named after one of the most famous detroit athletes of all time and isaiah z thomas i love detroit but the basketball team right now, they're far from those early 90s, 1989 team where it was the glory days because they have lost 20 straight to where the Detroit area wing stop, they are giving out five free wings the next day after the Pistons win the game. So, yeah, when you've lost 20, it's not looking too good. <laughs> It's not looking too good. And their new coach, Monty Williams, he got paid a ton of paper. Like Monty, Monty got some bread. So for that, well, then he's got a terrible roster or cancerous roster. There because Monty Williams can coach. He's all right. He he's all right. Is I, Kate Cunningham? He ain't the, that, he ain't that's the answer. A, 
that's the thing, you know, he he's a good player, but I don't know if he's your friend. I mean, he's better than Darko Milicic. Yeah, he's way better than him. Way better than him. But I, I still don't think he's your franchise guy. They got one of the Thompson twins in the draft this year, and he's a solid player, but he's not a franchise guy either. He's more of a defensive first athlete type of player. They drafted a point guard a few years ago, and Killian Hayes, that was a miss. That was a bad pick. And Duran, they just got a lot of young guys to where it's not clicking right now. And – yeah, it's pretty disgraceful, but there's a lot of other teams that are struggling right now. Like the Spurs, they're looking terrible with Victor Wimbenyama. They're always on TV. Like the Spurs, Wimbenyama's cool and all, but they're unwatchable. So they're your right terrible. call today is about a wing stop offering five free wings if the Pistons ever win yep. another game? Yep. And I don't know when that's going to be. Like, I'm looking at their schedule right now, and they got the Sixers tonight. That's a loss. Joel Embiid, I don't see them stopping him. Uh, then Pluckers used that, to give out five free wings if Texas scored 100. What, basketball? I mean, with the running horns, Tom Pender's days, like, yeah, you were probably eating good, but I don't know. I mean, you don't always get those pluckers cards after the games at Moody and DKR and stuff. Those are always very handy. But, yeah, man, it's – Are you getting hungry point. right now? A little bit. I'm not going to lie. A little bit. I'm like – I'm going to get wings after this. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to watch the ESPN reveal show. Well, actually, I'm going to watch Kobe Black. Yeah. And we'll watch the ESPN SEC schedule reveal with some wings, baby. What's your favorite wings? Um, I mean, it's hard to miss with pluckers. Or is there like a – do you like wet? Do you like dry rub? Uh, depends on the day. If you're talking okay, dry so rub. what's your normal go-tos? Zay's um, going to get 10, 12 wings. Yeah, if you got a good lemon pepper, I'm good with that. I'm with you. I'm with you uh, on that. Spicy bar. Garlic parmesan. Yeah. You know, that can make your breath a little hot. The garlic parmesan. So you gotta be careful. Hopefully you got some Altoids or Tic Tacs around. But yeah, man, I'm a big wing guy. You know? How about you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm a lemon pepper. Garlic parmesan. Yeah, man. Man, Cover 3's got some jerk wings. Yo, jerk wings. Don't sleep on those. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm in trouble. Yeah, so. Like, oh, look, it's 3 o'clock. Megan and Rocky. There they go. Hey, guys. Can you actually hear us and see us and everything's working? Yes. Wow, amazing. it's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle, <laughs> y'all. Megan, I'm liking the hair. I'm Thanks. loving it, that. I call this my my uh, prancing cockatiel. Like when it gets up and happy, like you can tell my mood, I guess, by my hair, how tall it is. So <laughs> what was the Dolly Parton saying? The the higher the hair, the closer to God or something like yeah. that. <laughs> so, Love that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good Rocky, who, who you got the jersey, the Titans jersey on? Who you sporting? I have Derrick Henry today. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here for Monday Night Football. The king. Yeah. King Henry. All right. So what's y'all's favorite wings? We were just saying, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So listen, I am a spicy garlic parm and spicy um, lemon pepper. Like those are my two go-tos. Like when, when pluckers start, we started doing that forever ago. And then pluckers is actually putting that on, on their menu now, like the, the fan favorites and the secret. And then also I like to get, when I get the fries with it, the waffle fries, you get dry ranch, the dry rub ranch and sprinkle that on the fries. Ooh, it's a, that's, it's a, that's the way to go. How about you? I just go with whatever's spicy. Not burn your face off, trying to die, <laughs> win a contest spicy, but heat. So I just, what's what's the good, you know, good hot wing? I'm good. And then you have to cool it with the ranch. So, yeah. Whatever's spicy. Love it. Love it. Are y'all back, you know, 
good and stuff. I saw y'all on vacation, stunting on everybody. Y'all back home? Getting... Um, yes, we came home. Uh, <laughs> we could have did this from there, but you know, we have stuff to do. No, we were just at, you know, we have a house in Mexico, so we try to get there as much as possible. And we had some good friends. We're going to tell y'all all about it in a few minutes. It was fun. We had a good time. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We need to have a Texas Sports Unfiltered meeting at your house in Mexico. We do. I heard. I heard you do. Well, I heard this fun stuff this Saturday, too. So, yeah. I will be at wrestling. <laughs> oh. That's All right. Well, y'all have a good I show. I'm going to go get some lunch. <laughs> I know it's lunch, but if y'all go really late, let me know. <laughs> right. I might be back in Austin by then. There we go. I have uh, to talk to you, Brian. Yeah. Have a good show. Thank you. Bye, guys. All okay. right. We actually have it ready to go. I love it. We're it's on top like of things. Like we're. Okay. <laughs> All right, Love welcome it. back to another episode of Fire the Cannon on Texas Sports Unfiltered. I'm Rocky. And I'm Megan, and we are Fire the Cannon. So, all right, Rocky, we did. We, as as uh, Chip and Zay were alluding to, just getting back from a, a wonderful, another, what is this, year three girls' this trip? This is the third. Third annual. Third annual girls' trip. Yeah. What up, what up yeah. Fire the Cannon? Love it. Hey, CB, how you doing, man? It's good to, good to have always you on. good to have you. Thank as you. always, as always. I love that you are a keep the blue cheese away from you kind of guy. I am definitely a ranch. I, I, I don't mind I, blue cheese, yeah. but I prefer ranch. I for, like crumbly, sharp blue cheese, like on a, on a burger or yeah. a good steak. I don't mind some crumbly blue cheese, that sharpness. But to dip, I, I, I like the cool ranch. Yeah. I like to yeah. cool down with ranch. Um, yeah, so we were in Mexico this weekend. Absolutely. And I know most of you know, but... Um, Almost three years ago now, we bought a house in Puerto Morelos, mm -hmm. which is south of Cancun. It's um, it's just south between Cancun and Playa del Carmen and in the Yucatan Peninsula. And so we try to get down there as much as possible. And what's become a really fun thing is to have the ladies, friends, you know, girlfriends come um, and hang out. And we just, you know, we're right by the beach. We just load up the wagon and go to the beach. We yep. carry our chairs and umbrellas, take our speaker. That's the most important part is the music. Absolutely. And then um, we just walk around town. We go jump in cenotes and different friends come and go over the long weekend. We had a good time. We and did. we eat a lot. We the food is so good. We do. We And you were real rude this whole trip. Uh, not a whole trip, but prior to it. There was a surprise guest coming, and Rocky absolutely refused to tell me who it was. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so um, unfortunately, absolutely we had a couple refused. of friends who ended up being sick, like, and mm -hmm. just like, oh, I hope I'm better in time to go. And when you're miserable and you just don't, yeah. you can't travel, it's painful, your ear, like, you know, and so a couple of our good girlfriends couldn't come at the last minute. So, like, well, we have space because um, the house, you know, there's room for a good group. And so I'm like, well, so we opened it up to some other friends who'd been mm -hmm. saying they want to come. They want to come and our surprise guest if you saw um was mama mama b, mama b. yolanda broughton uh vernon broughton's mama she's our she's our good friend and yeah. she was just i surprised you right you did and i didn't tell the secret yeah you i thought i was gonna be able to get it out of you and absolutely did not good job on keeping a secret but also real rude yeah real rude. well she asked she, <laughs> she asked me not to tell you so i know i, know. I and it i i hate surprises i hate surprises <laughs> i don't want don't tell me you have a surprise for me because that would just make me I, yeah Ill. i'd rather it just like be a surprise yeah. you know what i mean i'd rather just but like it, yeah also it was Something's nice to have coming. a prep like i mean it was good to know that we were gonna have more people there yeah well we had to, but, to you know work the house and stuff but, right and so I, I just kept telling you, we're picking up a special surprise person on Saturday. Yeah. Special surprise. And it was Mama B. And she came in for her birthday weekend. She did. And we took her straight to it. Straight up. <laughs> like, she flew in Saturday morning. Like, the rest of us, we we got there early. Thursday. We got there Thursday. Yeah. Um, you know, and but we picked her up. Mama B was ready to party. We she, picked her she up. She celebrate her birthday. Absolutely. Picked her up Saturday morning and, like, got her the house, dropped her stuff off. Made her get on a swimsuit, and then we took her straight to the jungle. Yeah, like literally, <laughs> brought her ass to the jungle. We went to the cenote. Yeah, it was yeah. great. And then like, obviously, we kicked her off of the like threw her off of a cliff. Like clearly, not kind of sorta. No, it's the cenotes. It's a really cool place. But, um, you know how like Austin has the aquifers here, 
um, where the, the waters and the springs come up underneath and it runs through the limestone. Very, very similar in Mexico. Um, and the cenotes are just places where those aquifers and the underground water system opens up and you can see. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get in and swim in them, kind of like we have Barton Springs, but more caves you know, that you can actually access. So yeah. there's one that we like to go to that has a, a place that you can jump into one of the deeper cenotes. Mm -hmm. And so Mama B said she wanted to do it. And then it took a little convincing. We, she did it. We, we got her. We, we got to go. We got her pumped up. It was, for her. it was amazing. So, yeah. You know, we like I, I like to say, we just threw her off a cliff as soon as she got there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I had a, had a good time. It was it was a lot of fun. So, thank you, as always, for having us there. What and... the fuck is this? <laughs> um, hang on. You'll find out. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah. So, we did that. Um, we Then we had we had a good we had a good weekend. We We came home monday and right to work mm -hmm. right to everything so yeah yeah it was it was a good time we had a good time and we did um we got to go into the markets and yeah it was good. do some do some local stuff eat some good food absolutely lots of eating good food but one thing we did while we were there is watch texas volleyball absolutely that was so i think fun. we like woke up the neighbors next <laughs> next door because that that was a late game uh of course they're in the uh, it was uh, Sweet 16 and Elite 8. Uh, we were watching that. And yeah, it was a really good time, man. Like we, I was losing my mind. We had to play Stanford, which was an incredible, incredible game. Um, I don't know if y'all stayed up late to watch it. We were, we were up. I was losing it. We had some people sleeping. I think I woke everybody up mm -hmm. yelling and that sweet, sweet justice for, uh, for taking Stanford out in their own home. They got to sleep in their own beds. Still yeah. couldn't win a game. Oh, we were laughing about that. Like, that's the serve you make and you didn't. You got to sleep in your own bed. Yeah, yeah. But it, we, we had a good time. And then our other friend, Mary, she mm -hmm. went to Arkansas and Texas. And then we had Faltini and Broughton. And yeah. we were all there, all the Texas house. And I, we were all cheering for the volleyball. It was so exciting. It was fun. It was it, fun. And I have to be careful with, like, when with Mary, because like I know she went to Arkansas. She she's from Arkansas, right? Mm -hmm. But she also went to UT. So she's not one of the like super aggressive, awful Arkansas fans oh, no. like I've had she's, to run in with. She's, she's amazing. amazing. She's but I have to watch my mouth with what level, I say. She's very level headed <laughs> and she she keeps it real. She you does. Know? Um yeah, if circumstances were right, I'd live in Mexico in a heartbeat. That's yeah, our plan too. One day is to live there. Uh, so hopefully at least spend a lot more time, a lot more, a lot, lot more time there. So that'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a great time. Uh, again, as always, ton of fun there. Uh, of course, keeping an eye on recruiting, keeping an eye on volleyball, basketball. Oh, we were still following everything. The portal, the recruits, the, yeah, the who's who's setting official visits. Yeah, right. we'll talk about a lot of that today. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so today we're going to talk about, um, we have, we're going to cover our women in sports. Yep. Uh, the top stories, there's college, football, there's NFL. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about our NFL teams today. Hello. Yeah. Um, California suing the college football. I mean, Florida, Florida. Yeah. suing the college football play. Well, suing mm -hmm. the college football playoff committee. Um, are we going to get some flips? Is it going to be Mary Flipmas Mary for Flipness. Texas? Um, yeah, so we have we have a lot to talk about. And then we're going to support some of our uh, Longhorns in their charity events. Yep. So we'll give you all the information on how you can support them. Uh, some Longhorn players and what they're doing for their communities. And then Sugar Bowl talk. I love it. More yep. Sugar Bowl. We'll talk some uh, positions. We'll talk, uh, you know, we're going to give little tidbits like leading up to the Sugar Bowl um, and some some fun, exciting news about about a few things. So looking forward to it, man. Thanks again for being with us. We appreciate y'all uh, for joining us, sticking around. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, if you guys have any thoughts, throw them in the comments. We love to see it. So yes. don't, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to Texas Sports Unfiltered. Uh, we are here every Wednesday, three to five, here to bring yeah. you our Thanks. lovely, Thanks lovely insights, fun chats, and uh, all things Texas. Plus, me, me, plus some. Mean people suck and get banned. Yeah, you know, good times. <laughs> but thanks for being here. We okay. Do, we appreciate it. Yeah. So anyway, so. Got your Titans we, fans here. Like, tighten up. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, there's two of us now. Uh, all two of you. <laughs> Woo. No. And then our friend Titan Mateo, he is a Longhorn and yep. a Titans fan too. Um, so that's it. Welcome. Welcome yeah. Titans fan. We're going to talk about that win. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, oh, what also happened Saturday before we move on from the weekend. Yep. Um, so Nadia's wrestling now, mm -hmm. and we've talked about that. Um, but so the first weekend, we didn't get to go to her first tournament ever because there was a Big 12 championship game, and she did she did pretty well. Well, this past Saturday, we were all following, and fortunately, mm -hmm. Richard was, went with her and was there 
filming and giving us updates and status and scores and this and that. And so Nadia was up big. She's she weighed under that's the 165 to 185 mm -hmm. bracket. And she weighed in under, but her coach had already registered her for the 165 yeah. to 185. So she wrestled uh, girls that were like a foot taller yeah, and with 20 like pounds heavier. Crazy reach. Oh, and like, and yeah. she went four and one and oh, got yeah. third place in her like varsity. Literally yeah. the second time she wrestled officially, she meddled. That's yes. freaking amazing. That's like, amazing. So we're really proud of that. We were yeah. all watching and cheering and shouting from where we were. Yeah. That was, we were making it awkward for other people. It was great. Yeah. I so tonight it. we'll go watch her. Yeah. She doesn't want us to go with that, but we're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. All right. So uh, let's jump in. Yeah. Okay. CB, let's, let's bring this up. I actually want to have the, I want to talk about this a little bit. Oh, okay. I've got, we, we have differing opinions. We on do. This. We do. And that's fine. We differ. So I will say it's really been cool to watch like a lot of folks that are very deserving get a bunch of, you know, followers. I, it's a cool movement, right? I don't even know who started that thing. It was like, uh, what, three, know. four days ago. It wasn't even that long it's, ago. It's been maybe, maybe a, week a week already. But it was, it's been rocking with the, the hashtag no longhorn fan under 1K, right? The goal was to get people's, uh, you know, accounts up and, and increased and get them some followers, right. which I think is awesome. Like, you're you're awesome. You go in, anybody that that you didn't tweet it out, but if you were tagged in something and somebody followed you, you'd follow back, right? Yes and no. Okay. okay. Um, so no, I'm all about building the community and having more Absolutely. fun people to talk to. And through this no fan under 1K thing, I was able to find people like, oh, I thought I was following you. Same. Because I see your yeah. cool posts or your stuff all the time. So I yeah. thought, so I clicked in, was like, oh, I need to be following some more people. And then I added some new people that looked like really good Longhorn fans that, you know, wow, they're showing stuff that I missed, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh, I, I want to follow these people. But also the there's just some people that have some angry stuff or, yeah. or things that I just, it's not, I don't want, I, not, I, don't, not necessarily. I don't need it in my, I try to keep most of the negativity off. You know, those people that are like, nah, I'm glad you cheer for the Longhorns, yeah. but you're probably not what I want to scroll through. So I didn't follow everybody back. Yeah. But. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, like, I'm probably going to take some heat for this. I know that Occupy Left Field took some heat for, for putting this take mm -hmm. out there, but uh, you know, for me, my background is in social media and, you know, social media management, advertising, things like that. So I work really hard at the stuff that I put out and putting content out and, and having good info there. And mm -hmm. it takes a really long time. We've had this conversation mm -hmm. about curating your own experience on social yeah, media. Yeah, you're really good at it. Right? I, like, yeah. it takes a long time to kind of weed out the things that, like, the ugliness that you don't necessarily want to see or, mm -hmm. like, people that are bitching just a bitch or yeah. personal attacks, things like that. It takes a little bit. Or to people who aren't even really Longhorn followers yeah. who are using the hashtag to get followers yeah. and then getting blasted because there's pictures of them with their horns down. Yeah, like, yeah. Why using us for follows so so <laughs> yeah i mean it definitely like i was really i didn't tweet out you know i wouldn't ask for the followers like mm -hmm. i want people to follow me because they enjoy the content that i put out they enjoy mm -hmm. like following along or my takes or whatever mm -hmm. right so i was a little more like i was happy to amplify people and retweet folks that that i think are amazing and definitely mm -hmm. deserve all the follows but i was a little more selective about about putting it out there i, I certainly didn't ask for i and i did i will say this man Y'all are effing amazing. Like I did, I, I got a lot of followers from it. I, I truly appreciate mm -hmm. that. And one of my rules, like pretty hard and fast is like, if I've met you in person, then you get a follow, right? Mm -hmm. Like, especially folks that help out with like the tailgate and things yeah. like that. So I don't know. I, I'm a little more selective. You were much more kind. So, well, I mean, I just, <laughs> it, it, like anything else, if the per if someone gives you content, just like people unfollow me, that's fine. If I if I put out something that just annoys you or you don't like it, unfollow me, right? And that's fine. Right. And I have if, if I scroll through and I oh, there's some fun, nice new people to follow, which was great. I follow a lot of new people this week. But if you are going to be negative or anything like that, I just it's easy to just unfollow people. That's fine. Right. Maybe they'll be cool again. Yeah, and and definitely like you. You want to go in, you check the profile, make sure it's Longhorn stuff, right? Yeah, like at least fine. Or that's just what or I maybe Twitter someone else with really great common interests. It doesn't have to be right. Longhorns, but someone else with other common interests, that's fine. I just, yeah, just it was, but it was. But a good I, I appreciate that if you really work hard, yeah, it's it's fun to say, hey, let, help me get to such and such followers. Right, that's fine. It doesn't hurt anybody. To no, agreed, agreed. I'm not, I, you know, I am wearing my Bah Humbug shirt, but I'm not that much of a Scrooge about it. Like again, I thought it was cool <laughs> that a lot of the a lot of the folks that I like and appreciate like amplify their voices. Man, it's like we say, it's not pie. You yeah. know, somebody just because somebody gets a bigger piece. 
doesn't mean you have less pie. It's, yeah. There's enough to go around. It's pretty awesome. So, yeah. so love that there. But uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, CV. It's always, always fun to chat about it. And absolutely, women's volleyball. 100% rocks. Jack, thank you. Yeah, um, let's get back to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, jump go in. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, oh, sorry. Yeah, about us watching the game. Yeah. So then, so Stanford, we, we were watching the game and went back and forth. It was a brawl, right? Longhorns pull it off and win that game and end up being the only non-number one seed to yeah. advance. So yeah. the final four is 1-1-1 one, 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 Texas. And two, yeah. <laughs> Texas was a two seed for this. Yeah. Um, they are advancing. We're, they just flew out to Tampa. Right. Um, so they will be playing Wisconsin. Which is number three overall. This is no gimme. Like we are. I mean, down everybody to, left is number one overall, number three overall, and who else? Yeah, I mean, there's Nebraska, yeah. Pitt, uh, Wisconsin, and right. Texas. So mm -hmm. you know, of course, Texas and Nebraska have had some pretty epic battles in the past. You know, mm -hmm. for the national championship. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun to watch. It's a uh, again, this is all playing out in Tampa. So mm -hmm. um, you y'all, if y'all haven't watched them, it's on ESPN. It's easy to to get a hold of. Check out volleyball. It really is. Incredible. Did you see that picture of Asia O'Neill where they had her up with her ups and she's going down to, to spike the ball? Mm -hmm. I swear to God, like her feet are oh, damn near above so, the bottom of the net. So athletic. Just the ups is crazy. Just yeah. absolutely they're, nuts. They're just so beautiful. I'm so I'm a I'm glad they're all getting like some NIL success, more right. media success to, to I mean to reward them for how hard they work on yeah. the court. So they yeah, they're advancing there. They're playing Thursday night mm -hmm. at 830. Is yep. that 830 our time? 830 our time so, on ESPN. Okay, yeah. so this Thursday night, 830 our time. Yeah. And and then, yeah, they announced that Asia O'Neill, we were just talking about her, mm -hmm. uh, is the number one overall draft pick for Pro Volleyball Foundation. So wow. that, or Federation. So that's, again, Texas, this was supposed to be, again, we won the Natty last year. We lost some key players. This was supposed to be kind of the re reloading year, mm -hmm. right? But and here we are. Final four. Final four. Jared Final Elliott four. keeps them ready. So just definitely so good impressive. stuff. Especially with the early struggles. What redemption to get from Stanford. So it was the night that... Mm -hmm. Texas volleyball, you know, unveiled their national championship, you know, that they'd won the national championship and did the ceremony, everything at home at Gregory. And here comes in Stanford and sweeps them at home. Yeah, it was. It, and again, Stanford's been ranked way. Up oh, there no, they're, year, they're but... a consistently great team. And it's not like, you know, it's not like that wasn't still a really great team that came in. But Absolutely. to get swept at home on that special it's night rough. was That's rough. And, and, and they had the opportunity. How often do you get the opportunity to redeem yourself against Something I, like that. I'm just going to say. And it lined up for them. 2023 is like the revenge tour year. For everybody. The final <laughs> farewell, the, you know, for out of the, the Big 12, the mm -hmm. revenge tour for, you know, Texas was able to avenge all their all their losses mm -hmm. from the losses from last year. You know, the Big 12 championship, the one team that we hadn't the uh, from the hateful eight that we mm -hmm. hadn't got to play in Oklahoma State. Took them out in a, in a pretty nice fashion. Again, Texas volleyball getting to take out Stanford and say, no thanks. Yeah, we'll we'll win when it counts, yeah. right? Uh, so yeah, it's been it's good. I I hope that continues. You yes, know? it it was it was exciting. It was an exciting weekend. But we watched them Thursday night and again Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that wasn't that Saturday? Saturday yeah. night. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we watched them Saturday mm -hmm. night. That was that was fun. Good time. It was fun. I love it. We're so. supposed to be out like dancing or partying, and we're all around the one volleyball, little, one yep. TV in the living room. Got to watch sports. <laughs> now listen, if you have a setup like that at home. You like that? Uh, you got a yeah. setup where you're just you're crowded around. I, I need to bring AB consultations to Mexico. You do to fix my house. Get them set up. <laughs> Listen, you guys need to call AB consultations. They will get you set up with an incredible game watching party atmosphere at your home. Uh, again, stop sending your time and money driving around the city on game day. Make your home a place for friends, family, and yourself with a custom TV hookup from AB consultations. They have been in business since 1988 and can hook you up the way they've hooked up thousands of Central Texans over the years. So, look, you want that home theater, you want just the perfect sports den, uh, you know, they even do security, outdoor security and things like that, too. So oh. whatever you need, AB Consultations will take care of you. Give them a holler. It's 512-255-8678 or check them out online at abconsultations.com. So Good get, job, that, get that nice and set up. I wonder, I bet if you bribed them and said, hey, I got a house, but it's in Mexico. Will you come down and check it out? They might might make a special. I don't know if they you. know how to hang into concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. Sure they can oh, handle it oh, all. I'm sure they can handle it. For sure. Um, but speaking of top four volleyball, <clears throat> yep. All right, let's move into the top stories. And one of the top stories is Texas Longhorns Athletics yep. Program. Top four volleyball, mm -hmm. top four football, top 
five women's basketball, top five, uh, top 25 men's basketball. The women made the sweet 16. Yeah. I mean, it's just rolling. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Listen, is there, when we knew there was a lot of issues going on with Patterson, I hate to bring his name up again, right? I know the worst. Um, and then we had that transition with Perrin, but can you name a better AD? Like, again, can you name any other ADs around the nation? I think that's part of it. Just the fact that CDC is like, he gets it. He gets the fans. He gets what Texas athletics is supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. And since he's come on campus, it's just been steady building again to, to national prominence where we feel and we know Texas should be. Right. Right. I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily unfortunately the 80s do get end up being judged by this i mean that's their job is to hire the best coaches and bring fill the stands and make mm -hmm. it an environment that people want to go to meanwhile they're constantly you know working the donors working the you know the corporate sponsors are working all those things too and i i can't imagine having to balance all that cdc does an amazing job mm -hmm. he's a hero on social media he rewards individual fans he connects individually right. and with the entire environment, him and his entire staff have created, not just at football, but at all the sporting events, there's excitement, the new excitement. Well, men's and yeah. women's basketball are ranked, and then they're expecting softball and baseball to both come in the top 25 teams. Mm -hmm. So that's just, I mean, all year long, in addition to, of course, swimming and diving and track and, and, field and rowing and, rowing and, and yeah. golf and tennis and all the other programs, you know, but there's a fun environment and it, we walk into a tennis game and they're handing out free pizza yeah. and things like, Oh, thanks. Thanks for coming to the game. And yeah, all those cool. little things add up. Cause then you want to hang out and support or well, let's go stop by the tennis because they're mm -hmm. doing this or they've really made it. He's him and his crew have really made it. A, any go, any event you go to is going to be fun to watch the team. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a, a good time. Um, you know, we'll talk about this a little later about any event that you go to. Uh, maybe if you're lucky enough to get tickets, that's that's one hang up. We'll talk about that a little oh, later. We're going to talk about the, the ticket show. situation. Got a little bit of ranting to do there. Uh, yeah, but I, I agree. Listen, Texas athletics is we've talked about volleyball being one of the most fun atmospheres on campus. Um, same baseball has changed night and day difference. Um, but again, you got to You got to credit CDC for really getting it, understanding what fans want and building the programs to be at a point and, and making the game day environment fun for, for the fans to come in and actually enjoy it and have a lot to do. And it, it's a, it's a good time for sure. Okay. So more big news today. Yeah. Yeah. SEC schedule releases tonight. Mm -hmm. So they already told us um, that, that Aggie, Texas will go to A&M. They told us this a couple, week, couple weeks ago, Texas will go to A&M. The Saturday after Thanksgiving is what it's listed as now. Yeah. And then they told us yesterday or this week that Texas is going to host Georgia. Yeah. We, October 19th. October 19th. Right? We got the date. For yeah. That. We have that. Mm -hmm. We have that date now. And it's the same weekend as F1. Weekend. Yeah. Look, I saw some people real pissed off about that. Like, I mean, you can't help it. There's a big event in Austin almost every weekend. It's ACL or it's this. Right. Or it's that. There's something. Right. And that's, that's the thing. Like, F1 and had moved to like, because I think originally at MotoGP, I know that they originally had in like June, which is mm -hmm. way too freaking hot for that mm -hmm. track. It just, yeah. it doesn't work out well. So you have to schedule these events where you're on the asphalt, where it is a bazillion degrees mm -hmm. on track. Uh, you have to schedule them a little later where it's not a hundred and fuck you outside all the right. time. Right. So yeah, look, I saw some Georgia fans with these crazy conspiracy theories going, oh, well, you know, it's, it's it's Texas planned this because we can't get hotels now and can't get a uh, hotel anyway. Yeah, well, welcome to Texas games. Yeah, like, welcome to a big city. The, the other where thing, people want to be. The other thing that they forget too is this happens literally every other city that Texas travels to. Right, shit is sold out constantly. This There's, isn't. We're, no conspiracy theory. Take off the damn tinfoil hat. You know all about so the closest Airbnb being an hour and a half yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's crazy, but yeah. So excited that we know. That is, it'll be the 19th that we see Georgia. They, they come to DKR. Um, are you looking forward to seeing when, like, we go to Vandy and Arky and all that? Like, oh, I don't care about when it? we go to Arkansas. I hope that the, the Vanderbilt weekend, if we go to Vanderbilt, I hope it's the weekend that Titans have a home game. Yeah. Because You'll maybe I in. could go to both in one yeah. weekend. That, yeah. would, that would be cool. Uh, that, that would be fun to go to a Texas game on Saturday and a Titans, Titans on game Sunday. on Sunday. I've done that. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but the rest, I mean, I'm not going to Fayetteville, so I don't care when that game is. It'll be a free weekend for me. Um, uh, I'll be there. I know. The I, will so nice. I will not. I will not. Fayetteville's pretty. I will say oh, that. Oh, I've been to Arkansas many times. Nice. We used to have to go to Little Rock all the time for 
rugby. Right. But I have no desire to get there and be in a stadium of with Arkansas fans. Arkansas fans. That's, fair. That seems, that's just not for me. That's a fair argument. No, thank you. That's a fair argument. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, look, crazy news in the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there. Um, record number of players. We talked about this a little bit last week. But, right. again, we've got – I mean, there are well over 3,000 players in the transfer portal. They just – I don't know if you saw this, like, just earlier – that the um, there was a delay. Basically, the NCAA has been handcuffed in the courts right now on being able the to second transfer. Right? Yeah, to be able to enforce their own rules. Um, the the courts came down and said basically, this is a case in West Virginia. Uh, courts came down and said, nope. Yeah, we we're putting a temporary hold on this. You can't enforce that second transfer. Um, so the NCAA, as if they weren't toothless already, they're so toothless. Even even more handicapped than they had been before. Um, do you so think now, that's leading so to now more? So now more athletes can transfer again if they want. Again, right? right. Do you, a second time or even a third time now? If they can't enforce the second, how are they going to enforce the third? Right now, again, that's not finalized. Oh, this right. is just a temporary injunction saying, okay. you know, while the 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 actual case plays out, the courts are saying, look, you can't enforce this rule while we're arguing the case for the rule or yeah. against the rule. I mean, so, I guess for every, for every student athlete, it's between them and their family and their coaches. What's their goal. If their goal is playing time, they need to go where they can get playing time. If their goal is to get a degree, then they need to go where, you know, they're, if they're going to transfer where all their hours, we're going to help them get a degree because yeah. not all hours are equal and not all hours transfer and on and on. Right. And like Texas, you know, you have to have so many hours from Texas to finish at, you know, to get a degree at Texas, things like that. So I think there's, um, Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah put it no, up. No, no. There's um I think there's so much every every situation is individual. Mm -hmm. And I mean, but every other student on campus can come and go and find a new greener grass somewhere else or try to. So Agreed. why can't the athletes? Yeah, and look, Jack, you bring up a good point. Um, is this leading to the portal chaos? I don't know that this to me, I don't know that this is a thing that is defining it. I do think loosening the rules and the rules being what they are right now. Yeah, have definitely led to the portal being used more. Again, we're seeing record numbers here. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that a bigger piece of this, yes, I mean, seeing additional transfers. But at this point, like even prior to this lawsuit, you know, coming into the courts, there were still a ton of guys, you know, ton of players in the transfer portal. I would argue that NIL is having a much larger effect on the portal than something like the NCAA not being able to enforce the the double transfer rules, right? Like, um, I think that for for a percentage of the players, not everyone's not everyone's worth nil deals and money. Agreed, agreed. And a few are, and they should go if they can. If such and such school isn't even messing with nil and the nil, and they know that if they transfer, you know, they have enough clout or. or attention that they could warrant some kind of funding that was great mm -hmm. um so i i mean it probably affects some yeah yeah i i think it's affecting them a lot again we've had this conversation not every single player that enters the transfer portal is going to find greener pastures mm -hmm. that's one of the risks right and i think in my opinion i think this that's what we're going to see the courts kind of play out is look players should have the ability to leave as often or you know and they have obligations now too with nil deals with all mm -hmm. these kind of things to the school but if a coach can leave for whenever yes. for wherever he feels is they feel is a better position for them the player should be able to also and i think what's going to play into this is it's not the grass isn't always greener and this is kind of mm -hmm. like the, let the fair market settle itself yeah I can right see that. um you're right not every player is going to be worth a bazillion gajillion dollars you know we saw every, unless you're a good quarterback <laughs> right the other thing too that i think people forget um when these numbers for nil come out and they talk about oh this player is valued at x amount of, you know quinn yours is right. 1.3 million or whatever it is mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're getting paid one point three million dollars. It's not like the school coming out and going, "Okay, writing them a here's, check." That's not how that works. Yeah. It just means that the opportunities are there, and given the players, you know, social media presence and their reputation and their name, and right, that is what leads to that mm -hmm. value. But it doesn't mean they're walking home with these big fat checks. I think people yeah. kind of forget that sometimes. But I, I think what the transfer portal is affecting and I've seen high school recruits and coaches high school coaches talk about this is it's taking away from the numbers of high school kids that right. are being recruited right. um 
and you know offer scholarships because now say you you know you're taking 20 to 25 in a class now coaches say well i'm going to take 18 you know high school players and 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 then the rest seven to seven to eight or whatever i'm going to take transfer portal or you know juco graduates or whatever else more experienced players and so that's five six seven less slots for the high school kids per school and we've seen some school take huge chunks of you know, of transfer portal or JUCO graduates. And so it's, I think I've seen some people like upset, about, but that, I think it's always been where, you know, you could transfer, but it hasn't been so much this easy system, this easy, this yeah. system where you can just put your name in. And I mean, I know it's not that simple, but I would, I would say the it hasn't gotten this much media attention. Right. I would say the flip side to that coin though. I think what we saw with the 2020 holdovers, right. From the COVID years, where players were granted that extra year, that backed up the portal. Mm -hmm. That caused a lot of freaking chaos in the portal, right? right? Like that to me affected more players coming out of high school than, uh, you know, and again, players from high school, not necessarily having that one year, of, right. you know, to be on film, but I think that affected it more. Now that those, those players are starting to age out, mostly aging out, Dylan Gabriel, Mostly, you know, <laughs> some just not, some keep coming back. Listen, forever, Brock ever, Cunningham ever. is back for his 87th year at Texas, yeah. which is awesome. But camerizing. <laughs> right. But once we see those players, you know, the 2020 holdovers are out. I think you're going to see more even distribution. Um, yeah, I agree. There are some coaches that are saying, look, I, I would rather get from the portal, get a little more experience. But that depends on where their teams are, too. Yeah. What I think it's affecting more because the portal giveth and the portal taketh it, away. Yes, right? it does. So that does open. There are certain teams that do really, really well with the portal. Texas is one of them. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Sark has absolutely killed it with the portal. And for the most part, beyond that first year where we saw the transition and the culture change starting to come in, we lost a lot of players, right, to transfer or for whatever reason. Um but I think we're seeing less and less attrition with Texas. And the more successful that Texas becomes, I think that right. attrition goes away a little bit more. Now, what I will say is I do think with the current NIL rules and the portal transfer rules shaking out the way that they are, I do think you're going to start to see the gap widen a little bit between the haves and the have nots. Right. Okay. Um, schools like Texas with more resources, with more ability, with more opportunities to be able to say, hey, we can get you more money. We can do all this. Um, using the portal the way that Texas does, you're going to see more athletes want to come to Texas, right? And right. and maybe decide, oh, Texas would be a better fit. Tried it out here. Texas is a better fit. Whereas the smaller schools who maybe can't offer those things, that's where it gets a little tricky, right? It'll even itself out like everything else does. Just yeah. like they said, oh, NIL is a wild, wild west, and it's going to be for a few years, but it'll work itself out. Um, I'm just glad that Texas is in a position to be selective right mm -hmm. now. Like they're, they've recruited so well the last couple of years that they can really be selective in who they're bringing in. If mm -hmm. they bring in, you know, from the portal right now, mm -hmm. there's um, different names, wide receiver, DBs, safeties, there's different names out. So um, they can be in a position where they can be selective. Right. Especially now, with um, big announcements of commitments happening. Well, hopefully, hopefully for Texas today. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at the, the Kobe Boyce. Kobe perhaps. Black. Kobe Black. Black. Sorry. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe Black, Black today. So um, it should be in the next half hour, maybe. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that. Of course, yes. live breaking news if we if we see oh, that, we if it break breaks. It. Here. Yes. Um, now, so we mentioned Texas does pretty dang well with the portal. Mm hmm. Some schools, not as much. <laughs> some schools get, take it the way more some, than they some, give it. <laughs> some schools take it the way. You know, we got to talk about our AM, uh, you know, just an hour and a half southwest of, uh, of, or excuse me, southeast of Austin. What's going yeah. on at AM right now? It, um, it, it seems like an absolute shit show over there. Well, I looked at, I was trying to find who has the most recent numbers. And this is just from their 2022 class. Mm -hmm. You know, the daunt, daunt, not daunted, the lauded, lauded, yeah. whatever. Um, best class ever. College football report says, um, you know, they were ranked number one. Mm -hmm. They've had five, five stars transferred out. AM has. AM. Yeah. AM. And who is that? And like, let's take Walter Nolan. Mm -hmm. Um, Overton, LT Overton, Chris Marshall, Anthony Lucas, Denver Harris mm -hmm. transferred out or trying to transfer now. And then four, four stars, Smoke, Bowie. Oh, that's a cool name. I've never, <laughs> I don't even know. PJ Williams, Jake Johnson, and Marquise Grove, Killebrew. 
four, nine of their top players of that top class are already transferred yeah, that's, out or yeah. transferring. And and I know they had you know coaching changes, position coaching changes, but let's talk about the biggest position coaching change. <laughs> Elijah Robbins. <laughs> yeah. Pretty interesting news coming out yeah. about that. Uh, Go no, ahead. No, no. You, you're you more familiar. Uh, listen, I, I can't recall a scenario where this has happened. We all know that. Okay. So Jimbo Fisher's out. Elijah, you know, E-Rob is their, is their interim head coach, mm -hmm. but he has also accepted a position at Syracuse right. as the next head coach there. Right. So now we, we are in a position, this just came out and I don't think it's a great look, Rocky. Like it's E-Rob serving as the interim head coach for Texas A&M is in-house visiting players that he had recruited while he was at A&M, but now he's in-house visiting, trying to pull him away for Syracuse. Yes. While he's the interim head coach at A&M and prepping for bowl season. Give me your thoughts on that. I, I, I've well, got we some. Know, like our linebacker coach, Jeff, uh, coach Choate, he right. has accepted a job at Nevada and he is still going to coach through the bowl game mm -hmm. to help, you know, the Sugar Bowl and hopefully a championship game too. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I've seen him recruiting for Nevada um, this week. So, I, <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, it's it's not desirable it, for your coach to be recruiting. I think the worst part about this is that it's, I mean, it's I gotten out right. Like we all know, coaches once they make transitions from you know one school to another. Yeah, they're going to stick with the guys that they feel were a good fit for their system and what mm -hmm. they want. You're not just going to abandon recruiting a kid because you're going to a different right. program. Of course not. That would be foolish, right? But we, you can hand the relationship off to someone else. Most recruits have two or three coaches they talk to regularly. There's there's that. But is this a case? And, and let me ask this. Is this a case at A&M that they simply don't have enough? There's too many question marks that who's going to be coach and who's going to be at what position well, to hand them off to somebody staff right now. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. So oh, because, they're overloaded. I see what you're saying. Right. You know, that, you know, that recruiting goes on behind the scenes. Coach mm -hmm. Choate is still going to go after his guys, but it's not being blasted on social media, right? There's been a little more tact about, I'm still with Texas. We're doing this. It's not going to be, <laughs> you're not going to show me in home prior to me take, you know, officially being the head coach. I don't know. It just seemed like a really bad look. And of course, Tex Ags was melting down over it. We'd love to hear y'all's comments. Did, is it something, do y'all think it's a big deal to see a, a interim coach recruiting a player for his new school while he's interim? I mean, who's paying for him to fly there? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's it, The whole thing is, is, pretty bananas it's, to me you know it they're in a flux they're in, in, a, in a tough situation right now they have um i mean they still have a good team and we'll see it when we go next year yeah to college station they still have a good team but texas um also like we texas wide receiver isaiah nayor like mm -hmm. we know he had suffered the acl didn't mm -hmm. of course we spent the year recovering he's from wyoming and then this year mm -hmm. he didn't play a few good snaps against Rice, and I don't know what else. Right. And he just never saw the field. Safety, Jalen Catalan from Arkansas. We know he just it suffered with injuries mm -hmm. and unfortunate that he didn't – was because we we're really excited about him coming. And when he was out there, was amazing, but just couldn't stay healthy. Right. And so if he is transferring, hopefully finds the right spot for him. And then a couple of players we didn't see much of. Maybe they're young. Maybe they're getting recruited over. Yeah. Um, developed over. Lineman Sawyer Gorham Welch, wide receiver Casey Kane, who shined in moments right. but didn't get on the field much. Um, DB Xavion Bryce, another safety Larry Turner Gooden, and another safety BJ Allen. Yeah, safety might be where we need people the most, and they're all going away. right. Right. Well, again, this is where you've, you've got to have faith in in uh, Coach Sark looking and looking to that portal yeah. and saying, look, you know, we need to bring in some guys because we are now pretty thin at safety after these moves. Um, yeah. So looking to bring in some talent there. So keep an eye out on that. I mean, I, I think safety is going to be a key position wide receiver as well for Texas mm -hmm. um, looking to hit the portal. And there are some, some big names in the portal right Houston, now. Houston wide receiver, Matthew Golden. Mm -hmm. We saw him live. He was good. We painfully saw him. Live. Painfully Pain saw him. Painfully. He was, he was good. <laughs> he led Houston to the comeback for uh -huh. sure. He, the reason I'm hearing the reason that Texas really loves him in addition to that is that he's one of the best kick returners in the country. Mm -hmm. And when we're losing for kick return, Keelan Robinson, 
this uh, this year. You know, he's going w w to Zay. have somebody. Yeah, I think Zay was more punt but return. But, still, but yeah, he's maybe, a I don't know if he did. Yeah, I don't know if he does punt returns too. But apparently, the big competition for him is going to be Louisville mm -hmm. and Iowa Money. Yeah, but good for him. So hopefully, we get we get gold. We get golden. If he if Texas thinks he's the right fit, that'd be cool. Absolutely. <laughs> and then. Clemson D, uh, DB from this area, Andrew Makuba. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, maybe maybe bring him home. Right? Maybe bring him home, Flipmas. Yep. Um, yeah, let's move ahead to that. Yep. Mary Flipmas. Mary Flipmas. So it's we talk about this every year. It's that time of year it where is. you th you thought you had a guy locked in and they decommit and flip somewhere else, which is the worst when it's to you. Yeah. And it's the best <laughs> when yeah. it happens to someone else and the, and the player comes to you. Right now, the biggest um, flip miss. Well, there was some two. One that looks like oh, really leaning. Maybe Texas is going to happen. Uh, the safety Xavier fills to me. Mm -hmm. Speaking of safety, maybe the players know that there's not that we have some a safety spots, coming. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. Hopefully, he flips right now. He's committed to Florida. And did you see the drama this week with Ty Anthony Smith, the linebacker, committed to A and M? Is he he's having an official visit this weekend? And then he's not. And then he does. And then he doesn't. Like. Because he's the one who's been pretty solid to a, to the Aggies for yeah. a while, but that would be big get. Maybe trouble on the uh, horizon for the Aggies for that one. <laughs> so definitely some questions coming in. And then one more big name that we should say: five star wide receiver Ryan Williams. So he's at Sarah Land with QB KJ Lacey, and they're both twenty twenty five. And Williams just reclassified to twenty twenty four, and he's supposed to commit. He's committed to Alabama, but I know Lacey's been really pushing for him to come with him to Texas. Mm -hmm. So, but we won't know anything of that until I think he doesn't graduate to the spring. Yeah. 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 So, so definitely some names to keep an eye out on. But so next Wednesday, we can, season. next yep. Wednesday is national signing day one and yep. SD one. And we will be covering like, Ooh, who signed and all that. And then some are coming to do the bowl game practices. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That'd all right. Awesome. All right. Go back up. Oh, Sorry. no, you're fine. You're I just fine. had to get to the flip mess because we were already talking recruiting. So I think, yeah, no, I love it. So one of the things I do want to talk about, and again, this is, we'll we'll touch on it. I think it's hilarious. Okay. Also ridiculous. Another top story. Yeah, we'll kind of kill, we finish the top stories with this. Perhaps. Yes. Uh, oh, we got time. We can do a couple well, of top stories. Well, Ron DeSantis <laughs> has decided to sue, to try to sue. Or investigate. Inve well, yeah. he's threatened to sue, uh -huh. and the first stage of that is investigating. Right. Uh, the CFP, right? Because Florida State didn't get in. Mm -hmm. Give me your thoughts on that. LOL, right? I, mean, it, I, I I say LOL, but more that it's sad that you know what's a million dollars or something that's going to cost taxpayer money to investigate and subpoena docs documents between ESPN and SEC because they're convinced there was some collusion for them to have money together and for the CFP to leave Florida State out and so that they would lose money. Yeah, I mean, there is a, a huge loss of money when you don't when you're not in the top four. It is your but, conference and your school. But I would like to point out that FSU was also one of the schools that voted against a 12 game playoff. Uh -huh. They didn't want it. So, yeah, I mean, again, we feel for him. I understand the argument. You don't want to see your quarterback go out. I mean, it sucks to be undefeated in, in your in your conference and not make the playoff. Right. I get it. But. Ultimately, the top four teams, by most people's standards, anyone outside of Florida made it into the college playoff. And this this feels like whining to me. I, I will tell you, Kirk Herbstreet has been fighting with some F FSU fans. Normally, he's pretty level-headed, but yeah, he's got to see if I can get um... – Yeah, he, he tweeted – listen – Kurt Herbstreet made a dissertation length tweet uh, basically against uh, against an FSU fan that was arguing with them saying, look, man, I, I don't disagree that FSU is a good team, but Alabama's a better team than FSU. Period. Hard stop. That's it. Right. He said, so is Texas. So is Michigan. So is Washington. So is Oregon. So is Georgia. You know, Herb Street was going on to say, I, I watch all these games, you know, all year long. I have a, a fair take on who's good and who's not. Right. And and he's saying that it played out the way it did. I mean, do you think this is a, a thing worth spending money on? My question is, OK, so you investigate the CFP. Then what? Right. You spend all this taxpayer money doing this. Then what? To what end? What's going to change? Nothing's going to change. And next year goes to the 12-team playoff anyway. So, 
I, other than stomping your foot and making a statement yeah. that I won't stand for this and I'm going to write a strongly worded letter about it. I don't get it. I, it just I seems it. like I, a petulant child. I'm trying to put this bit, uh, photo right. up for you it's to right. see, but whatever. Yeah. It's Kurt Kerbstreet's tweet. I just, just don't, I just don't get it. We'll retweet that later. I, I just don't understand the point. Like, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. You might feel that you got shafted, but like, put on your big boy britches and move on. Like we, it, there's, it's, I mean, it's, I have, I, yes, I agree. But also if Texas lost, you know, if, if a key key player were a Texas were to go out and they had just gone 13 and 0 and they had just, and along the way, if, uh, Florida state did beat two sec teams. Um, if, if Texas had done that along the way and was an undefeated conference champion, In power five, power five conference champion, and struggle to get back in the move in the groove with the with the second string and then but still ended up undefeated and won a conference championship i would be furious too i get it but that's sports yes like but, but that that's sports and no one i i get it yeah. i would be furious too right i but i don't also then understand so you know investigating with subpoena document blah blah, blah. i that to me, it's like, how is the government involved with that? But they're not involved when there's, you know, horrible scandals against women and children right. in these Baylor. universities. Yeah. Where, where are they when that happens? Right. Where are they demanding justice right. for people? Like, but if they're left out of the playoffs, they're mad about it. Playoffs. They're mad. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. It seems. Oh, this is exactly what I was saying. Yeah. Exactly what I was just saying. Another example of the government sticking their nose in the private. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's, I mean, they they probably have constituents that are speaking to them to say, we got to do something about this. It just feels a lot to so me. That's probably why they had to get out and do something. It feels a lot to me like the Texas legislature when. Uh, Texas announced that they were, well, when it leaked that they were going to the SEC. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Bob Bowlesby, the the lead commissioner of oh, the Big yeah. 12, was pouting and stomping his feet and just, just being terrible about it. And the Texas legislature decided to, what, call in Chris Del Conte and, and all these people and do the same kind of thing. It was oh, such a waste of money. just for them to say, well, we beat Texas. Or, what did, no, what, it, no, that was some woman that made some little comment. Like, right, but whatever. they were trying to argue that you're taking money out of out of the you know state. Texas is taking money that the other schools deserve. Texas is doing what's best for Texas. It's not Texas's job to make other schools right. money. Right. It, it, yeah. it just feels that kind of whiny, almost worse than that. Because at yeah. least you have a money argument that money's leaving the system. Yeah. Where FSU could have played better and not been in the ACC. How about that? Like the ACC sucks. They, I know. They they looked not like a, the top right. four team and right at the end of play, the day play better don't play the world's worst conference championship game that's damn near unwatchable oh, it was so bad and maybe your results are different i it was just it's tough. just unfortunate that they you know they lost not just their best player one of the best players in the country yeah and they still went on to scrap by some tough games and win and yeah, and I don't know how Louisville Louisville went from dropping fifty points over and over to couldn't move the couldn't do a damn oh, it thing. So it was ugly. Rough. It was rough. All right, so we know yeah. that seems silly. We'll keep an eye on that for you know a story that ultimately probably won't have any consequences. We'll, well see how that ultimately. Goes. But we have one more one more big story before we move on the All Americans and Coach of the Year award. So we we've seen Sweat um, Murphy Worthy. Uh, Adonai Mitchell, like so many great players be recognized nationally for their awards. And the AP knew that Sark was the big 12 coach of the year. Yeah. So any other thoughts on the awards? No, I like, I mean, just qu so they're, many all, awards. they're all yeah. deserving. We like it. You know, I, I still want our guys to play with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, but um, you, you know, think anybody got snubbed as far as like, like the, any of the big awards. Oh, uh, I not, not on the AP level. I mean, no, I feel I like think, it felt I pretty think sweat should have got the Heisman. Yeah, well, I don't disagree. <laughs> Love that. We know that'll never happen. But yeah, agreed. No, I, I like it. And, yeah, snubbed. And, and again, um, it'll be, uh, you know, Penix is going to be a guy that's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder when we go to the Ooh, Sugar Bowl. The way, the way Vince, we'll see. The way Vince yep. got snubbed for the Heisman yep. and came out on fire. Yeah. Hopefully that does not carry over with Right, Phoenix. man. We'll we'll get into that game next week more as as we yeah. get to the game, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Yeah, today too. Yeah, it's woo. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good game. 
first to 50 wins, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you're rocking your Titans jersey today. I am rocking my Titans jersey. Because you have a winning team. No, I don't have a winning team. I have a team that actually won a game. Yeah. <laughs> finally, good. finally won a game. So, Megan, do you want to go first? Your lines and Texas? Oh, thank you for that. You go first. That's super we'll cool. We'll save the best for last. Uh, listen, I think my battered Lions syndrome. You're nine and four. I get you it. praise. I get it. Praise the... NFL yeah, football. We have looked real bad in the past few games. But you won. Well, you lost. You won one of the last three. But but you're nine and four. I get it. Listen, I get it. You nine went from four. 0 and 16. Before it would have taken y'all 12 that years to get to nine wins. I get it. I yeah, first time to nine wins since I want to say 1961. Uh, I think they said if yes, the Lions are doing well, but I don't like the trend lately. We played a bad Chicago team rival yes mm -hmm. and lost badly against them it was embarrassing the lions just can't get out of their own way recently in the yeah. beginning and listen golf has played some really atrocious football the past few games how did they lose chicago yeah it turnovers <laughs> and they couldn't get anything going in the beginning it, I, like i it wasn't the chicago game but um there was came i think it was the packers where something like three possessions in a row the lions turned it over that was week golf before. was just no yeah, it was ago, against yeah. Green Bay. I yeah. Think. And it it was just it's painful. I'm listen, and I'm reverting back to my old Lions ways. Like I hope we do well. Yes, we're nine four, yay. But if we keep losing, like we're gonna be the same Lions yeah. that we've always been. But that's all right. That's all right. Because my Texans, I can rely on Wait, my Texans, right? No, they yeah, were, I can't. Well, exactly. They were awful even before I know. I know quarterback. I'm just saying it was a rough head. It was a rough football weekend for me. Yeah. I'm I'm just going with yeah, CJ Stroud again. He hit his head real hard on the turf, um, and he's in concussion They're, protocol. Yeah, Ooh, so no, no word on that yet. But yeah, I don't have a whole and lot of hope. They got their butts kicked by the Jets. 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 They did. It was ugly. It was ugly. All right, but uh, your Titans. Let's talk. Let's yeah, talk some let's, let's talk about this game. Um, so Monday night we got home from our trip, and Richard had recorded the game for me so that I could um, catch up to you know watch it and catch up. So I started the game late. I'm flying through and I'm like, what? Okay, 3-3. Three, three. Okay, 10-10. Ten, ten. Then we took the lead. I think we were 10-7 at the half or whatever it was. And then it was 13-13. I'm like, oh, man, this is great. So, but, okay, so we just fired our special teams coordinator because our special teams reeked. And, of course, where did things start falling apart? Special teams. And we muffed a punt. And then um, – Miami. So we're 13.5 point dogs. Mm -hmm. And so of course they're going to pull away and sure enough, within a few minutes, <laughs> all of the fourth quarter, like with eight or nine, it was eight minutes left and it was still like 13, 13, something like that. Yeah. And within a couple of minutes, they have two touchdowns fast off of a punt and then off of a fumble. Like will the quarterback, Will Levis tries to like flip it lateral or whatever. I don't know what he was trying to do to Derrick Henry. And he just, it goes over his head and it's on the ground. Of course, Miami picks it up again. Yeah. But the defense was able to keep them in the game enough when they had to make them go the length of the field. It was They struggled. But when they gave them first and goal off turnovers, they got two quick touchdowns. Well, So three minutes left. We're down by 14. I stayed watching because I believe. Well, talk about it. Listen, you, I mean, y'all struggled like mightily we, recently. We, we've <laughs> struggled. So I, um, it was we we're down two touchdowns with three minutes left, and I just said, "Well, let me just watch how how it ends," you know. And I I like to look, and you know, the per per percentage of winning, the odds of winning this game. And at this point, it was a ninety eight point six something percent yeah. that Miami would win. So apparently, in the last seven hundred and sixty seven games, when the NFL team was down by fourteen or more with two with three minutes left, mm -hmm. they all lost. Yeah, the last seven hundred and sixty seven games. Yeah. So tech, the Tennessee goes down the field, gets a touchdown, and they go for two and get it. So yeah. now that's only a six point game. The defense holds, makes them punt again. They get the ball, go all the way down again. Touchdown, take the lead with one minute left. The defense holds them off, and we win the game. Yeah, crazy. Uh, look, I think there was like a record for some point scored in short amount of time or something like that, right? I, for I, don't, I don't know what I, don't, I didn't see that record, but it was a lot of points in the last five, seven minutes. Yeah, of the it game. was nuts. It was, it was crazy. Nuts. It was crazy. And it was, it was exciting. And we have a quarterback. And so they asked um, Anthony, Ho uh, Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> 
you're killing me with these <laughs> switch outs like California, Florida, you know, you know me, Anthony I'm Hopkins, <laughs> you know, famed, <laughs> yeah. famed uh, wife, Oscar Sarah winner. Hopkins, yeah. what, uh, what he thought about Will Levis, you know, I'm so glad Tannehill's moving on. Whatever. I know that wasn't your boy. Uh, anyway, so Will Levis, we, we're going to ride the bumps with him this year, but we have a little, we have a quarterback and Hopkins like, he's a dog. And I'm like, what? And he said he helps him learn how to read defenses, like he's working with him. And when you have somebody that experienced and that good come out and and just ball, I, be a leader and help coach up this young quarterback, yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah, I like that's it. That's going right. to be good. Well, and now your Cowboys oh, did pretty my well, team too. too. Yep. My, yep. my team number two. Yep. Yeah, they whooped up on the Eagles. They that was did. pretty good. Now, I will say this. All right, I'm going to throw this up here. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it up here. December 30th, yes. Lions travel to Dallas. Mm -hmm. If you ask me my confidence level right now, I'd oh, say it should be low. not great, not great. But uh, yeah, so I know, do, should we put a little friendly wager on this game? Cowboys Lions? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, you're going to win. Let's not jump ahead. I'm our teams saying. play. Our other teams play this weekend. Yeah, well. Houston goes to Can Tennessee just ignore that? this Sunday. I just want to ignore and that. I, do you have a quarterback? Exactly. I hope, I hope I, your quarterback's healthy. Yeah. Mine is just living on cloud nine right now because he actually won a road game. They were 0-6 on the road. Not It wasn't all him. We had 10 out earlier. No, it's awful. I'm joking. But now we're on a one-win streak. You can't – can't nobody tell me nothing. Right? No, I'm just kidding. No, no like, but we are four-point – well, no, two, three – Two and a half, three point favorite, something like that. Yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah, anyway, well, as soon as the, like, look, we are three as, point favorites. It went up from one and a half. If I have a quarterback, then I'll talk shit. But until I know that we do, I'm, I'm, I'm good. The Titans are four and two at home. Yep, one and seven on the road. One yeah. and six on the road. <laughs> but we're at home, so I have all the confidence all right. that if y'all don't have a quarterback. There it is. There it is. There's the caveat. C.J. Stroud is in fact out with that concussion. Uh, you're very, yeah, I, I'm very confident y'all will win too. Like, yeah. I, I mean, we need to just real quickly talk about the best player on the Cowboys team. Yeah. Yeah. The kicker. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The kicker. No, he's, he's still, he's 30 for 30 in field goals this year, including a 60 yard kick this weekend. Yeah. So that's, that's exciting. Good job, Cowboys. Way to beat down on the Eagles. Uh, I'm still not scared spot in the playoff yet. But. I like it. All right. Well, it appears Rocky that we have a, Huskies fan amongst us. Oh, welcome. Right here. Thanks for so listening. so we're gonna throw this up here. Greg, okay. We appreciate your your honest confidence. Confidence here. Uh, you know, your take. Uh yeah, look, I, I think this is gonna be a great game. I'm gonna be the first one to say, uh, again, you you're you're saying no one stops air Penix uh and the 49 ers style attack. Um, he's been held. Yeah. Um, I will say I, I do think that uh this is going to be a game that's going to be better than people think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've heard, I know a lot of folks on the Washington beat are saying, you know, kind of have the attitude like Washington's going to come in. This is going to be, a, you know, this is a vengeance game. They're mad about all kinds of things. They're mad about playing in New Orleans, whatever. But on, I will say this, it, this isn't a gimme game. And I've seen oh, that kind of commentary. I've seen that kind of commentary on the Texas side too. A, a lot of folks on the Texas side are talking like, Texas is automatically in the natty this year, right? Mm -hmm. Like I want us to pump the brakes on that no. a little bit. This is going to be a, a a really great, you know, lineup. Again, let's talk about it a little bit. We, I, next, like, I like Adios's prediction. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Listen, I, I appreciate Penix is going to be pissed. We, we mentioned this earlier. I think that was more of a snub, uh, you know, for the Heisman with Penix than yeah. It, Again, we can make the argument for for Daniels. I get it. Um, or against. Or well, I can I can make the argument for it. I for get or it. Or against. But I think mm -hmm. Penix was the better quarterback and did more for his team. That yeah. Year, right. Um, he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. You know, CB mm -hmm. talked a little bit when that Vin, Vince Young snub for for the Heisman. He came in pissed, and and that Rose Bowl was probably one of the best games he's ever played. You know, he put the team on his back and said, this is mine. I got this, guys. I, do you think we see something like that from Penix right now? Um, I mean, he's he's just really good. He's yeah. just really good and has the best – those wide receivers plus Texas wide receivers, it's 
it's going to be it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be fun. Um, I believe Texas is advantage there. I think both but both teams can throw the ball, can scheme up passing. Right. They will probably have way more downfield threats than we were, and we'll break this down more later in the show. But um, Texas is going to be able to run the ball, run the ball. Texas will stop the run. That- Texas has eliminated the run for every team they've played this year, mm-hmm. pretty much. So they're going to need Penix to win it for them. That, I think Texas will still be two dimensional and the advantage, and that might be their one dimension might be enough for them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Texas struggles defending the pass has gotten improved. Well, and we we've talked about it. Yeah, I mean, look, our where I think Washington is going to try to attack, and they should. Our our weakness has been our DBs this year, mm-hmm. right? And obviously Washington has a really strong passing game. So I think that matchup is going to be really key, really important, right? What I will argue, what I will say is that um, while UW is a great school, they beat the snot out of us last year uh, in, in the Alamo Bowl. Different team, different circumstance. Very different team. But um, – UW hasn't gone up against a defense like Texas, right? We we know our run game best in the nation. We we know that our run defense, they are. You're right. We're going to make them incredibly one dimensional. Mm-hmm. I think the key to this is going to be Texas. Can that defense get through to Penix? Can they rattle him? Can they shake him? Can they get him off his game? Right. Um, you know, we make him one dimensional. The job becomes a lot easier. So I think in that sense, yeah, it's going to be a great matchup. We're going to see. Well, we've got all right, Jason. I like your I like your prediction here. Texas thirty one, Washington twenty seven. I I like something like that. I don't I don't see this being some crazy. I don't know, all out. I don't know. I I can't. I go back and forth on is this going to be a shootout? Is this going to be you know just a barn burner where it's the last team with the ball wins? Right. Or is this going to be something where the defense actually? shows up in a game, you know, again, the likes of which UW hasn't faced before. Well, so. I think like for our, our Washington fan, welcome. Um, <laughs> Texas got fourth quartered and out of gas versus the Sooners. I, I would say don't judge Texas by the game against the Sooners, just like I wouldn't trust judge the Huskers off their game Huskies. against Air. Sorry, the Huskies. Yeah. yeah. Off their game against Arizona State. Right. Because we right. watched that game and it was almost unwatchable and yeah. it was horrific. There was no offense. So I wouldn't say what Texas did three months ago, two months ago. Yeah. yeah. Was, is what Texas is now. I would always go by what they've shown us lately, which was a butt whooping of Oklahoma state in a championship game. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the, that's the mode, the mode they're in. That's where they're rolling and that's where they left off. So just like I wouldn't judge uh, Washington off their worst game, of the year. I wouldn't judge Texas off their one possession last minute right. loss. Yeah. I, again, I, Washington had a lot of close games, uh, several they had close a lot games, of, just like Texas. They just survived like Texas. in advance and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Cause you're going to get people's best shots. So right. There's nothing wrong with surviving and advancing and right. Washington didn't blow everybody out. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Cooter, I appreciate this. I like this prediction. <laughs> Forty-one thirty-eight. Great call. But God only knows which team it'll be, right? Yeah. Like I like the score. I like that feels right. Texas definitely tickles at forty quite a bit. I think this is going to be a closer game than some of the other ones that Texas has been in recently. Yeah. We just don't know which one. I like that. We'll talk I about mean, this a little later. And guys, we we are running a little late. We love this conversation, um, but it's happy hour, and it's we happy hour. we need to celebrate. Uh, something coming up. So Richard is bringing drinks in. We, if, if y'all Ooh, are new to are they, us, are they lemons from your lemon? <gasps> Thank you. There you go. Appreciate Richard that. grew lemons. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Richard grew lemons that are like giant, very, ridiculous giant lemons. lemons, and he made us fresh lemon drop martini. So, so a little bit late. It's four oh four. Thank you. But uh, happy hour. Cheers. What? Don't spill. Yes, I know. Is it officially Dr. Rocky yet? No. But we are celebrating Dr. Rocky, and y'all better believe it's I'm going to be. Official. But I'm going to be obnoxious as shit about it because no. the score, her be grades nice. are in. I am nice. I am. I'm always nice, but I am going to be obnoxious about celebrating you. you. You deserve it. That's badass. Thanks. Like, you got your doctorate, mm-hmm. friggin' also raising kids and working and running around like crazy. Like you are a busy, busy woman mm-hmm. and are all over the place, everywhere. And oh, by the way also got your doctorate during that. So that's amazing. Congratulations. Thanks, friends. Yeah. No, I'm I not, know, no, I, don't I know have it's not a doctorate. Yet. You have to defend. I, don't I know have that. A doctorate yet. I know that. But you're Trust me. Doctor. There are people with doctorate degrees that I don't have that yet. So Ooh, I'm good. not going to 
claim that yet. I'm, You're not. I just I'm still going to start calling you. Dr. No, do do not please, because that's that that's <laughs> like that's like saying you ran a marathon at mile marker two. But I, you know, not. don't do it. Um, no, I'm just saying there's there's not yet. All but right. I finished my coursework, and I finished uh, well plus or minus like seventy something hours of this coursework with a four point oh. That's amazing. That's pretty amazing. Well, we'll and celebrate I'm gonna, that then. I'm going to message my school. I'm like, is there a valedictorian? Because it should be me. It should be. Should Can I speak? Because I have things to say. I have things to <laughs> no, say. No, I don't know. We'll broadcast Cheers, here. Cheers, Nadia. <laughs> well, we appreciate y'all. Again, love it. Love it. All right. Oh, oh, oh. This is a good question because mm -hmm. this is Kobe Black Hour. Yep. Um, we're going we're gonna to be following his Instagram. Um, his his handle, whatever it's called, is I am Kobe Black underscore. Mm -hmm. That is, um, that's his handle. So we will be following to see what happens. Lots of crystal balls in for Texas. Of course, this is recruiting. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen, but we're we're ready. We're we're watching. Absolutely. Thanks for because this is a big. This is a good big hour. Four o'clock. Lots to celebrate. Absolutely. We are also celebrate. Yeah, Kobe commitment. Yes. Yep. Uh, I mean, you. I finished school. That's pretty amazing. You think uh, crystal ball again? Another place that you can watch and keep an eye on is uh, Dave Campbell's Texas football. Uh, so at DCTF, they are broadcasting that live mm -hmm. as well. So. Um, keep an eye out on Twitter. Uh, we again, y'all. We we've got it open. We've got all. We've got three different computers going right now, and an yeah. iPad and phones and alerts set. So as soon as we hear about that, a thousand percent, we will uh, we will jump in on that and let y'all know because yeah. that's a big one. That's that's one we've been waiting. for I don't for use for Instagram a, a lot, so I don't. I'm I'm hoping <laughs> it gives me some kind of alert if he goes live. I don't know. Yeah. So let's um, let's talk real quick. I, we've got a couple of charity events coming up with some yes. of our favorite players. Um, we, you guys, if you joined us last week, you got to see the interview pieces of the interview with Hayden Connor, offensive lineman. Uh, Hayden Connor, we had a great time with him. Got a lot of fun insights. We got some. Again, we'll play a few clips a little later today, but insights on prep for the Sugar Bowl kind of behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we mentioned on the our show. The podcast is up if you want to hear podcast the full audio. Up, yep, for the full audio on uh, Fire the Cannon. So any podcast platform that you listen to, just look for Fire the Cannon. We're mm -hmm. there. Um, but he has got a charity event coming up this Friday um, that we want to make sure that people know about. It is in the North Austin area. Um, it is Pause for a Cause yeah. with Hayden. Uh, and he, it is at Mutt's Cantina, which is North Austin. We will post that um and i will tweet that out later i'm gonna try and share it um for keep, keep cantina. going keep going um it is friday from four to six so mutt's cantina is a cool place like you can go get drinks you can bring your dogs if you want to um but the coolest thing that i think you guys will really love is there is a meet and greet with texas football players and this has not been announced yet so y'all are getting an inside scoop here um it, of course hayden's gonna be there you get to meet him kelvin banks will be there jake majors of course we got our our O-line guys. But uh, then we also, you're going to see David Benda is going to be there, Baron Sorrell, and uh, guys, the big one, or Sorrell, sorry. And the big one that we know is going to be there, Arch Manning will in fact be there. So if you guys want to come out, support a great cause for our guy, Hayden Connor. Again, it's pause for a cause at Mutt's Cantina in North Austin. It's just off 183, off the 183 toll. Um, yeah, I looked it up on the map today. Yeah, you'll get the opportunity. And you can bring your dog. You can bring your dogs. I'm going to bring my little dog. Yeah. I'm going to bring Jesse. So you will have the opportunity to meet, meet again, the O-line. Arch Manning's going to be there. You've got uh, some of the D defensive guys. And uh, there is a rumor that perhaps Quinn might be there. So. Perhaps maybe Quinn too. So there may be a couple of really awesome opportunities to get some pictures Listen, for me, it would be the Christmas card with Quinn and Arch with my dogs. I feel like that would be, I mean, that'd be a pretty great Christmas card. Yeah, I'll so. hand him Jesse and see what happens. There, yeah, <laughs> she pees on him and runs away. No, I'm just no. kidding. Love that. So again, please check that out, y'all, if you are in the Austin area. Um, again, we'll tweet that out again. We tweeted out the information previously, but we'll get that going again. You can make online donations as well. Um, and then we have another one coming up on Saturday. Two big events. Two big events. Yes. Um, we've got uh, Vernon Broughton's toy drive is coming up. He is teaming up with Dion Smith, the BYU running back. Um, 
in the Houston area. So if y'all are in that area, you can show up and donate your time if you'd like, or you can drop off new and unused toys and kids clothing and kids shoes. Um, that's this Saturday, the 16th, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. at the Carverdale Community Center uh, in Houston. Again, we'll tweet out all this information. And if you do choose to donate time or um, again, unused, new, unused and unwrapped, toys, uh, kids' clothes, uh, kids' jackets, and shoes. You can do that. Or you can go online and order uh, gift cards for Walmart or Target. We'll send out the information on where to send that uh, if you'd like to donate. So again, two great causes. I love that we've got our big guys with big hearts that are yes. helping both kiddos and pups and kittens. Like, you gotta love I'm it. putting right great. now in the um, chat... There's Hayden's pause for a cause. And then I'm going to put in just a second the Vernon Broughton's info for Vernon Broughton. Yes. Awesome. And, and there's there's also ways to join. If you can't mm -hmm. be in Houston this weekend mm -hmm. and you want to just help the, oh, I still have that up. If you want to help, um, if you want to help just contribute, you can do, like like Megan said, mm -hmm. a Walmart gift card. And we'll give you the link to how to get that to them. And every, every little bit helps. And that's really good work they're doing for the communities right. and giving back to their own communities. So if you appreciate, you know, how hard they work as student athletes, this is a great way to help them help their communities. Right. And again, at Hayden's event, you have the chance to meet a lot of the football players, get some pictures, maybe get some autographs. Oh, um, pictures. And with Vernon Broughton, if you enter and you donate, you are entered into a drawing to win a free autographed jersey for that. So very cool, really great ways to help out the community and support our players. And again, big guys with big hearts. I love it. That makes me happy. So yes, <laughs> it's, um, it's really, it's really special that they, they take on leadership roles. This is, they don't have to spend their, they get very little free time, right? They get, right now they're prepping for Sugar Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And and finals and all the things. And they're using their time to give back to the community. So that's really special. Yeah. I'm putting in here. Go ahead, Megan. I'm putting in here where. where they yeah. So go. where you can find, uh, again, both of those events. So we mentioned Sugar Bowl. Uh, we've got a heated debate going on in our in our chat right now. We love it when people get involved. Yes, um, again, don't be an asshole, but we love heated <laughs> debates as well. Uh, bring bring your bring your thoughts, bring your things. If we if we like it or hate it, we'll uh, share it up on the screen with y'all. Um, but yes, please let's talk Sugar Bowl a little bit. We're getting into okay. that Sugar Bowl prep. We've got this debate going on. I like this. this we, we got some, uh, I like this. Listen, mm. LFG, you've had some really great takes on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You feel that the. Thanks for always being here. Yeah. Yeah. You feel the IDL is the best position group uh, in the Sugar Bowl for Texas uh, and overall and PK adapting enough. Yeah, I agree with that. I I think, I think, let, let's talk about it a little bit. Like we've got this, this awesome. Yeah. Great debate. conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I PK is very familiar with the Pac-12. He's very familiar with the style of play, and and so is Sark. Like he was in the Pac-12 for a while too. I I'm nothing but respect for what Washington is doing. I think the the challenge for Texas in this game, of course, the DBs and safeties will be. I mean, the, the corners and safeties will be challenged the entire game, and they know that's where they should attack. It's taken some teams this year that Texas played too long to realize mm -hmm. they should attack like Houston or TCU. Like it's down there and they, they insist that they're going to be stubborn with running the ball and you just don't run the ball against Texas. So I don't, I know that Washington is not going to wait and you know, they're go, they're going to use their strength, which is throwing Yeah. and t against Texas's weakness like I said a few minutes ago, that's also Texas can throw the ball. Texas has all American receivers. Texas has, you know, all conference receivers that there's that they can, they're going to be able to match that. And Texas also has the ability to run the ball too, multiple ways. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, well, I'll watch more Washington. We watched a lot throughout the year because they were great, great, good games that made a difference in the top, you know, playoff potentials. Right. Mm -hmm. So, we watched Washington. There were some games that were not watchable. The offense was terrible. And then there were others where they looked like Penix should give them the Heisman now. So, and especially in the championship game with Oregon, we watched that game the Friday night before our game, mm -hmm. our championship game. They were amazing. And it went back and forth and it was a brawl and they just kept punching back. Yeah. And it was a good, it was another good game, but it was another close game. So 
I mean, like we said, just survive in advance, and they did. I think Penix should have had the Heisman. That was my pick. Yeah, yeah. What do, I, see, what do you see as the advantage or disadvantage for Texas? For Texas, again, I I think what Washington may be underestimating a little bit here is they make the mistake of, like we saw a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. looking at the close games that Texas had. Yes, Texas lost to OU. Not our greatest game, obviously. Right. It was a last-minute thing. But looking at the team that Texas was early October – versus any team from now October. yeah right yeah huge development huge changes um you know we lost jonathan brooks which for most teams would be a massive massive blow and would have taken us out of the running we lost right? quinn for two games we lost quinn for two games but our again our rbu texas is rbu right the depth there was able to to recover and there is a, a really interesting argument out about our, our friend Doc, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, Doc. Doc at Doc Allen. At everybody Doc Allen. follows him. Yeah, on Twitter. follow him. Posed a really good question, and I want to ask this to you all, too. Do you think that Texas became a better offense after Brooks came out with his injury? Oh, no. No. Were, did they survive? Yes. Did they find ways and move it? Yes. What I have said, oh, it's better that Brooks went out. Hell no. That wasn't. The, no, yeah. but I'm saying to say it's they're better now without him. Hell no. You're never better if you lost depth. If you lost at that point, the number one running back in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I think it's a disservice to how much he meant to the team to say, oh, well, it's fine. We're better now. No. So you don't think the offense got better after Brooks was out? I think the offense adapted and was still just as good and mm -hmm. capable and competent and exciting. But you don't and think we're a better explosive. offense now than we were with Brooks in? No. See, no. Okay. So to me, I, that's not even, no, you're never, I don't see how you lose the best in the country and then think you're yeah. better. So I could make an argument that, okay. that because we, we lost Brooks, who we knew was our workhorse and we knew was doing really well, Sark got in his bag a little bit. Right? Did he did Sark's play calling change? So they were challenged and they rose to the challenge. Did Sark's play calling change? Did he reach in and diversify a little bit? Because now you're working with, you know, Baxter, Blue, and Keelan. Is that something where do you feel that Sark's play calling changed after Brooks went out? No. No. Because remember we said at Bama, oh man, Sark's in his bag with the play calling. Mm -hmm. At at Baylor, Sark's in his bag with the play calling. We said those things mm -hmm. before Brooks went out and maybe because we had to think about it more. How is he going to make up for this? How are the other players going to step up? It became a little more up? evident. It became, it was just, it's like when you get side note, it's like when you say, oh, I'm thinking of buying a Bronco or a Jeep. Now all you see is Jeeps or you go and get a new car. And then now that's all you see on the road. It's kind of like that when your brain, now it's the front of your brain. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what are we going to do with this? without this um, running back, mm -hmm. then it's really evident that what other, what everyone else had to do to step up to cover it. And mm -hmm. it looks, and it should, it should, if you're a good team that's developed and confident and prepared, it should look really good, a little muddy or, just, you know, getting in, getting in the groove again, <coughs> which we saw a little bit of that, like when Quinn was out mm -hmm. and thank you, Malik Murphy for leading the team to two wins. We would not be in the playoffs right. if he did not. But there's still some sputtering and some timing or some other things that just aren't the same. But everybody has to step up, mm -hmm. right? So I think that might be what we're seeing, that everybody stepped up. I mean, I guess I could see, like, some people say, did, are they overall? Is the team Did the team rise? Absolutely. Right. Are are we better because we lost him? I can't say that. Can't say that. No, no that's fair. I would want him. I, if I had to choose with or without Brooks, I would choose with Brooks. Yeah. Listen, I I I'm right there with you. Yeah. I would make the argument. Yeah. I think it felt like we were seeing more plays, but really, if you go back and look, the play calling was pretty similar. We didn't change it up a whole lot, but I think what we saw really, and, and why it might feel like all of a sudden this Texas team is explosive mm -hmm. on offense, was that. Baxter Blue and and Keelan got more reps with the O line specifically. Right. We talked about this with Hayden yeah. last week. There was initially when Brooks came out. I mean, he had a lot of times with the ones he had, he'd been around a little bit longer. Obviously, Baxter being a true freshman, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
Keelan not necessarily getting as many reps. You know, he's waiting. He was his in time. the bowl game last year. He's, right. he's bided his time. He's he's done well there. Right. Blue being, you know, similar situation. Mm -hmm. They didn't have as much, you know, as many reps with the O-line and with the ones. And I think what we saw when Brooks immediately came out is Sark even pulled back a little bit. He was like, all right, let's reset. Let's get this going. And let's figure out, you know, we talked about, Sark talked about this in the pressers. He's got, he talks to each player about what their favorite plays are, right? So now you've got three different guys instead of the first go-to, Jay Brooks. Right. And so it took a minute for our guys to get in there for Baxter to get some more reps. Again, he was playing a little bit more. Um, obviously, he started as the starter um, and then swapped out with Brooks. But Blue coming in a little bit more. Keelan kind of coming in a little bit more. When we talk, we were talking with Hayden, the communication that goes on between the running backs and the O-line is essential, right? And I think when that, when Brooks was first out, we saw some of those stutters and some of those problems where, oh, we thought, you know, we were expecting him to go to cut this way and he cut this way. And, hey, you're a young player. Look for the gap here. We're, we're pulling here, right? Yeah. That kind of communication wasn't there necessarily early on. Right. Um, but as we went on in the season and they got more reps and they got more playing time and they got those those yards and those, you know, downs under their belts, all of a sudden where we're at right now, Texas is a dangerous ass team because now they're communicating properly with with the full depth. Right. right, right You've right, got right. your three guys at running back. Reps, reps, reps. Exactly. Reps. Exactly. <laughs> so if I were Washington. I would be really hesitant to judge Texas as a team where they were before and, and certainly where they were in our close games when we have, again, we had Brooks had some miscommunication, mm -hmm. but we had Quinn years out. And then even those games, TCU was a close one. It was back and forth. Right. But that was early on. Brooks had just come out and we're trying to figure out that those communication, you know, just the little misses. Mm -hmm. But as you watch, as the team goes on farther and farther through the season, holy shit, these guys are talking. They know each other now. Oh, yeah. They get it now. And and I think this is where Texas becomes a truly dangerous team. Right. Because once your, your backfield and once your O-line is in step, now you're giving Quinn a little bit more time to see his guys. We saw this in the Big 12 championship game. Right. Better throws more time to throw. He's seeing the field better. It's not the automatic check down to your go-to guy. Right. One thing I might argue, we talked about this a little bit in season. There were a few games where Quinn wasn't looking at open guys. Sark was in his bag. He, he was making the play calls there. There were plenty of guys that were open, but Quinn wasn't at a comfort level where he was seeing the field. He was checking down to Jay Brooks because that's his guy and he knows he's comfortable with it. Right. Once you remove that element, once Jay Brooks is out, this is where I could argue maybe Quinn was put in a position to have to look for other, right? Like he has to see the field a little bit better. And he did. So, yeah, I agree uh, with you. I wouldn't yeah, make the statement that Texas is a better offense, that they are better off without Brooks, but I do think they have improved to become better once you know when brooks was out and once our guys had those reps like you said reps 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 so reps 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 mm -hmm. um thank you greg I, I love that you're engaged in this conversation huskies d is undefeated absolutely absolutely you guys are undefeated you're also the number 90 defense total defense in the country mm -hmm. texas is the top 25 defense so i know you faced some good defenses utah uh, even washington state um there's some bet, bet higher ranked defenses for you that you faced, but or Oregon, but you haven't faced a, a, the top run defense in the country yet. So we'll see. I hope, yeah. I hope you're back on here the Wednesday after the game. I, I do too. Listen, this, I, this I like the this. same team. You're saying that the Horns had no answer at the Alamo. Again, I, I caution you. It ended up a one possession game, right? And it was a very different team. We had we had nine players out either by sitting out for the NFL, including Bijan Robinson. The two best running backs in the country. Right. Yeah. They were sitting out uh, mm -hmm. for the draft. And um, we DeMarvion had. DeMarvion Overshone, who went over to the Cowboys. Correct. He was sitting out. Uh, and we also saw several transfers that did not play. So overall, Texas was missing nine starters for. Starters. Starters for the Alamo Bowl. So. While I agree with you, I'm going to give you your flowers. I'm going to say to Washington, y'all played a hell of a game and you won. No question. 
I would caution you comparing this Texas team to the team that y'all saw in the Alamo Bowl. I, there, there's one possession game, right? That's a that's a very different team that you're you're going up against. But. Yeah, just I hope your whole team is this confidence, overconfidence, based on last year's team. I hope yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, but it's fun. I'm glad you're here, and that's what we talk about. Like, yeah. let's talk about your defense. Let's let's pull out the numbers because I love it. I want to see it. I hope. I hope it's going to be a great game. It like first one, he said 41. I say 50, first to 50 wins. <laughs> first to 50 wins. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun game to watch. While the other game, Michigan, Alabama is gonna be first to nine wins. Like that, that's gonna be boring. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about again. I, I'd like to hear from folks in the comments right now, Washington fans included. Did y'all get tickets to the Sugar Bowl? Because I got some things to say about yeah, this. This it's, was it's, a it's a big time story. Like it's new this is, story. This is so. <laughs> uh, I will say I, again. I'm going to be a little bit of an arrogant Texas fan, I suppose. Um, it has been rare that I haven't gotten tickets, and by rare, I mean it doesn't happen. I've been donating way too much money to Texas for way too long, um, and I'm an aftermarket girl, yeah. so I just get wherever I want to sit. But the the cutoff, it seems like, again, I'm top and I'm speaking from this because this is my perspective. And so I know these things to be true. Top 10 percent of donors, you know, Texas goes by loyalty points and they say, hey, um, you do this and this and this and you get X amount of points for each action you take or money you donate or things mm -hmm. that you do. And they go by ranking. And the way that the loyalty points work, the high it, it's technically the lower number you are in loyalty points like you're it's you're, like golf yeah the exactly lower, the lower their number the better you are right so um you get your loyalty points and they add up and whatever your total of loyalty points are your loyalty point ranking is how they choose like give priority to request like everybody wants to be number one number two number three yeah. right so Ooh, who's number one yeah <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> cdc yeah. yeah okay so what happened this year is the request came in for the Big 12 championship game, and there weren't many tickets. The Big 12, again, being petty as shit, I've never seen so few tickets handed out for a championship game. Um, Texas only got 8,500 tickets. Now, that has to cover the band, That's the staff, crazy. the families, the fans, all this stuff. So Texas only got 8,500 tickets for the Big 12 championship game. Move on to the Sugar Bowl. Texas wins that game. Move on to the Sugar Bowl. There were a lot of requests, um, and I will say that. I will, I, will, I will argue that. Everybody requested. Even if they didn't know how they were <laughs> going to get there, just request the tickets and worry about it later, right? That's what you should do. So the way this panned out, looking at the numbers, only the top 3% of donors were able to get tickets <sighs> through Texas. Mm hmm yeah, yeah, Jason. Look, I I, I hear my friend, <laughs> and I like the fancy typing. Wow, that's, nice. that's fancy typing. Yeah, so wait, that's clever to use the. So yeah, agreed. I you know I'm I'm I think right now I'm at like nine nine and a half percent or something like that, top nine and a half percent. But you're right, I got tickets to the Big Twelve Championship game, so I thought for sure, you know, with only eighty five hundred tickets, was cool. he able to get tickets though? Yeah, Jason, did you? No, did he you wasn't. Get, oh, you didn't get. Tickets. Yeah, I okay. I can tell you. Oh, okay, he did not. But oh, okay. Um. So, yeah, it, it ended up being like top 3% of loyalty points um, that got tickets. Now, I get it. I'm going to make the argument for Texas here. The Sugar Bowl only gave Texas 13,000 tickets, right? It's a it's a smaller stadium than Jerry World, but... It's what, 67,000? Yeah, 68,000, I yeah. think. Um, but only 13,000 tickets. And again, this has to cover the band, staff families. Um, it has to cover a uh, student ticket. So any students that have the big ticket, they, Texas pulls aside a chunk of tickets for the students as well. Right. Right. It has to cover all that. I get that. However, what I think we ended up seeing was all of a sudden people give a shit about Texas again. Right. And these, these huge corporate donors that have the suites were able to come in and request tickets where I am annoyed and I don't know if y'all recognize this, but you're annoyed. I well, I know that, but tickets, people that donated fifty thousand dollars more, and it it might have bumped up to seventy five. I need to double check the numbers, but it's fifty or seventy five thousand dollars 
per year. Ridiculous. Like the average you income. You donate that the annually. The average household income or something You like donate that. that annually. We're able to request 14 tickets per person. Which was probably more like corporate people or businesses. And or that's and that's not where, individual families who love Texas. That's where I have the the that's where the burr is under my saddle, right? <laughs> it is. It's you've got you've got it's I, largely I, I, corporations. I, oh, it's largely yeah. corporations that are coming in and taking snatching up all these tickets. And again, where the fuck were you when Texas was five we and have, seven? We have to be PG thirteen. So yeah. do we have to be? No, I don't. I don't know. But listen, where were you when we Texas was five and seven? Where in, were you in my seats? <laughs> right. But I, where were these corporations? This, they, they that's were, what I'm saying. Yeah. This hurts again. This hurts the the Texas fans and the diehard fans. I, it feels, and we all know this. This has moved away from being a, a like, fan base yeah, thing. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're right, Jason. Corporations will continue to have first dibs. It's like the Super Bowl. But I, if my Titans go to the Super Bowl, I can't get a ticket right. because Pepsi or Coke or whoever bought half the stadium. But. So yeah. one of the shifts that we're seeing is yes, the Sugar Bowl themselves are and and more bowl games and mm -hmm. more Corporate, championship yeah, games yeah. are allocating more tickets to third party vendors. Yeah, because there's more money in that, more right? Uh, I know that for the Sugar Bowl, like Saints fans had the option. Saints season ticket holders had the option first. They had first dibs on buying up Sugar Bowl tickets, which they're doing, and then they're reselling on the secondary market. Um, let me give you some numbers for. Previous years. So again, Texas got 13,000 tickets for this Sugar Bowl. Right. Previous years, the 2019 Sugar Bowl, Texas got 15,500 tickets. Now. So a little bit more. A little bit more. But not, that could cover another 1,000 people. Not a college football playoff, yeah. but but still a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah. Um, the 2009 National Championship, Texas got 20,840 tickets. The 09 Fiesta Bowl, um, again, where we went up against Ohio State, Beanie right. Wells. Big game. Yeah. New Year's Six game. Texas got 17,498 tickets. <laughs> somebody grabbed two. Very specific. <laughs> it's a very specific it was 17, number. 17,500, but somebody's like, I'll take yeah, two. I'll take those. Y'all get 17,498. So, uh, and <laughs> for the 06 Rose Bowl, it was 21,498. So, again, you're seeing the numbers drop as you go through the years, no question. But, but you're still, again, I, I recognize that that is out of Texas's control. Where do you think is a fair number? You donate a million a year. You're a corporation. You don't give a shit. This is a tax. I do not year. donate a million a year. I'm hypothetical. She's, she's hypothetically right. saying. I'm saying that. If, if, if you I do were, that. I do not donate a million a year. What do you, and I understand if I am donating so much money, I want to be able to get all the tickets that I can. I mean, they're buying access and everything in life. You buy access. Where do you, where do you feel? And y'all, I want to hear y'all in the comments here too. Where do you feel is a fair number to cut off? big money donors on how many tickets they can request six i think six is a good number four to six yeah because I, I even, think four's too even low. if you, even if you're a corporation what'd you say they got 14 mm -hmm. that's ridiculous mm -hmm. I, especially if you know we're being allotted a small amount i would say more, say more let's do a percentage like i know i let me move the, cover the band let me cover the, the the people that have to have the you know the thousand or so we know that need mm -hmm. to be, have a ticket players, families, band, or whatever that number is. And then from there, let's give the first 20% to the big donors. If that works out, so they get four each or eight each or whatever, whatever it is. And let's leave the majority for all the other people. Right. I think it only takes a minute to do that math and make sure. I think this, just like FSU, quote unquote, suing or investigating, they're not being left out of the playoff. Mm -hmm. I think this is a time for Texas fans to speak up about the way tickets were allocated this year. And maybe they should say, well, we're going to, there's, it's not hard to say, we're going to find out how many we get first and we're going to allocate this percentage to big donors mm -hmm. and the rest. And then we'll figure out how much each of you get right. and everyone else gets two. Right. From there out. I mean, not everybody needs four or ten. Right. It could I like it. Ten Limit should be ten. A lot. Yeah. If Ten's I'm a lot. if I'm donating a million dollars a year, I want ten tickets. If you're donating a million a year, you can go buy front row aftermarket. There there is the argument that I would well, I mean if you're donating a million a year, you're not gonna fight for for nosebleeds. Right. Because that's what they're giving right now anyway. So I will say this, Jason. I I agree with this. something I want to bring up is I have great point, Jason. I have received, and Jason, I knew you have We've two. had this conversation. I have received no fewer than five emails between November and now 
with, of Texas asking me to donate more money to improve my chances of getting better tickets. Why? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not ever going to be in a bracket that I can donate $50,000 a year to put me in the running for this. So you're right. What is the point? Like, where is my incentive? I show up. Listen, y'all, I was at Kansas in 2016. I was at that game in Kansas, in Lawrence, freezing my ass off, losing to Kansas, a bad Kansas team. Not a current Kansas team, a bad Kansas team. Oh, one that hadn't won a Big 12 game in years. I was there cheering <laughs> for Texas. I made that drive. I was with Richard. So I've, I, I, you know, I've. I've I've been through the the highs and lows. I got tickets to I was at the 06 national championship. I was at the 09, right? Yep, like I I've, right I've been through the highs and lows. Yes, I'm obnoxious. I am a 41-year-old woman that wears a cape and dances and knows all the words to songs. But you know what? I'm there, I'm loud, and especially this year we've seen the team talk about we hear the fans, we love the fans being here. We want y'all here. We thrive off of that. Mm-hmm. But what I feel has happened is that you're taking that fan element. <laughs> I love that. That's that's fair. That's smart. See? Good thinking. That's how many will fit in a limo for those listening online. That's that, how many will fit in a limo. Ten. But again, what what you're what you're doing is you are taking the fans because I would be hard pressed to find a corporate sponsor that has obnoxious fans that are loud, be loud and scream and cheer and, and be heard, right? Mm-hmm. You're taking that out of you're taking that element away so the thing that the players are saying we love seeing texas fans there we love hearing you we we thrive on that that we hear y'all that makes a difference we appreciate y'all we're doing this for y'all you're taking all of those away and now saying only rich people deserve to be here only corporations deserve to be here that's a tough thing man and the people and older people who've donated longer amount of time right mm-hmm. like there there are young people who donate fresh out of college they donate they give what they can but if you haven't been donating a significant amount a significant amount for a long time mm-hmm. you're not so if you're it eliminates younger people or people who can't mm-hmm. afford if you can only afford to donate a hundred dollars a year you should that shouldn't mean you never get to get anything for Texas. That's all you have. Like people donate what they have, right? Or what they can finish. N- younger alumni, the fans that younger are donors, more likely to be or donors that can't afford <laughs> to donate. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having my back on this. You did just call me old. No, I said the people if you were old, you would have got tickets because you would have been donating longer. I've been donating for almost 20 years. I know, but we're talking about people who donate for 50 years or whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't call her old because I'm older than her. So um, <laughs> anyway, so let's say, yes, that's how it should be done. When I was talking about it. block a percentage, block a percentage and mm-hmm. make sure the alumni and, and supporters get opportunity to buy. Right. Also, really quickly, maybe it also needs to be addressed at a higher level, which is the actual bowl organizers, because they are the ones who said of the 70 ish thousand seats, Let's give 20% to the two schools and the less rest, than 20%, yeah, yeah, less than 20% to the two schools and let's give most to aftermarket right. to fees, seat geek so they can to make seat geek or whoever to make tons in fees, <laughs> rip, rip up the prices to completely unaffordable for most people, most families. I appreciate this. Listen, Ryan, who is a Huskies fan. He's that's that's my guy, Ryan. We met through motorcycles. We, we can tell you're yeah. I'm old. That's fair. That's that's fair. I am old. But listen, that's old is relative. That's the thing that kills me, too, though, is that I am old, on, I am in my 40s. Right. And I've been donating that's not old, though. but I've been donating half of my life. Yeah, it should be a percentage Texas, of your life. Right. I kind of feel like, you know, how you were saying, like die hard fans that are going to be in there cheering and loud and ready to go and help the team win, because we do that. We heard from Hayden Connor last week. They, our noise presence and our on the road, especially, they hear us and it fuels them. We they talked about that. I think it should be. Um, yo, did we miss? Yeah, it? no, it's okay. I just sorry we we got so hyped up with this. 
uh, we definitely thank you for breaking in. <laughs> no, no, no. Finish your thought, and then I'll I was just gonna say, nope. Finish your thought. This is irrelevant. Bigger news. No, Kobe Black. No, yeah. I was nothing. I was gonna finish say nothing. I was just gonna say it's kind of like when you run up to a restroom and there's a super long line and you really gotta pee. We should be able to get in line in the order that we have to pee because people that just came <laughs> in case they have to go, That's they good. should get to the back. I like. It. All right, y'all. All so, right, here we go. Anyway, again, Kobe Black. Sorry, we got on a rant. This is my fault. Kobe Black has committed to Texas. He Woo! is a Texas. Texas Longhorn. And yes, also, yes, I didn't get a video announcement. But yeah. That's okay. I want to give a little shout out to a baseball player right now what? Uh, to Trey Faltini. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if y'all y'all know or if you follow baseball. Kobe Black's going to be a Longhorn. We he, knew that. He is. I'm going to give a shout out in his announcement. He used the big boom box that you have. Uh, Trey Feltini was the one that kind of started it at Texas carrying around. I have this that picture giant ready to go. 50 pound boom box. Yep. It. Uh, so <laughs> again, we'll tweet that out y'all again. Kobe black is a longhorn. Texas yes, is doing great. It's the best kept secret, right? The, the worst kept secret <laughs> in all of college secret. football. I love it. Welcome to, to welcome to longhorn nation. Kobe black. We're excited to have you. Absolutely. We, we definitely are going to put you to work. Absolutely. I love it. So, all right, y'all, it is a good time to be a Texas Longhorn. It's despite my ranting, I, you know, I'm, I'm still going to try to find a way to be there. I'm going to New Orleans, whether I have a ticket or not, I'm going to show up. I'm going to Megan beg. You will have it. I'll figure it out. I'll the, figure it out. The stars will align. <laughs> Trust me. Right. I'll figure it out. I, but you will have a ticket. My point is, I don't think that, that all, that all, football fans, true fans should have to go on a wing and a prayer. Right. I, I agree. I think there's gotta be some way. It's gotta be a way for them not to go from either you've donated a million dollars or you can pay a thousand dollars a ticket. There's gotta be some place right. in the middle for real fans right. who, yeah, the, the, a lottery, something, there's gotta be something going on there, but all right. Hey, I appreciate you. I, I, I like to think, listen, I am not the person that will say I, again, there are a ton of incredible Texas fans out there. I, I'm not, again, it's not pie. Somebody being a great fan doesn't take away from me being a great fan, doesn't take away from you being a great fan. Um, I, I will humbly say put way more life and effort into being a Texas fan than is probably reasonable or sane. I will make that argument. But yeah, uh, but yeah listen, we'll figure it out. Texas football, we'd love to hear it in the comments. Again, y'all, please throw in, did you get tickets? Uh, what are you willing to pay for a Sugar Bowl ticket? What would you be willing to pay for a national championship ticket? A billion dollars for <laughs> Texas to be in a national championship so, game. <laughs> uh, and, and again, is this a thing that's going to be improved? Can it be improved? Or is it just going to get worse with the market? You know, mm -hmm. again, if we're talking capitalism here. The market price is what the market sustains. Oh, yeah. and, so you know, there's there's always the chance that five minutes before the game, the tickets drop quickly. Also, if you buy a cheap ticket in the nosebleed, you're still there. And just to get into <laughs> the stadium and then check online which tickets are still available and go sit down in that seat. You're giving away secrets. Now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, so if y'all weren't paying attention, that's really a great hack. Buy the cheapest ticket you can to get into and then look online two minutes before whatever event is supposed to start and see what's still available for sale. Those seats are open, y'all. Those seats are open. <laughs> <laughs> so. At least until somebody comes and says, that's my ticket. You go, you screenshot the thing. You're like, oh, oh, I'm this 106. Oh, oh, I thought I was in 107. And you just move. <laughs> Cooter, I will argue this. Yes, I appreciate the sentiment, but I was at the OU game and we did lose that game. So. I would like to say they didn't lose any game I was at. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Um, so yeah, so listen, we've got a, our, our Husky fan cheering, like chiming in here. Are you going to be at the game, Husky fan? I don't think he's going to make it to that, oh, but okay. if they make it to the Natty, he would go. All right. So that's what you'd pay. That's fair. Is this your Husky education that spells sugar with me? <laughs> that's my, you met him. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Still, <that> means <laughs> but it is funny. I love you, bud. <laughs> that's cute. Um, yeah. So I would agree. Um, I will tell you this story back in 06 when I was still in it, technically 05, right? You buy it. The game was played yeah, in 06. Yeah, it's, it's considered the 05 game. It happened in January. I was still 06, in yeah. college, so I mm -hmm. was not donating yet at this time, but I was still going to every home game. You were donating game. your tuition. <laughs> Shit, that's the truth. So I, my friend and I- percentage goes to help students. There was, there was a company. This company no longer exists because it was probably a terrible business plan. Mm. But my friend and I found this company where based on preseason rankings, 
you could buy tickets to the national championship game. Oh, I remember. So we I remember something about if that. If y'all remember in 05, Texas was preseason number two. And they mm-hmm. stayed number two the whole year. The whole year, right? Mm-hmm. So we spent a lot of money on national championship tickets on a hope that we would get them. So we bought into these tickets and we paid $700 a piece at the beginning of the season, hoping that Texas would go, right? That's I wasn't a, $700 as a student. As that's a student, like a million dollars. It was like my year's worth of food budget, right? But oh, whatever. Man. F it. We're going to do this. So I uh, bought in. Texas ended up in the national championship. I, as a student, probably would not have gotten the ticket, uh-huh. you know, so I was at the game. And I will tell you, yeah, in hindsight, yeah. in retrospect, I would have paid twice that for that game, right? Mm-hmm. I wonder what we but it was, that. but it was kind of cool that a team, and again, we know that preseason rankings are kind of a train Can wreck, any, but any. as, as, so if your team wasn't ranked, you could buy national championship tickets for $25. Mm-hmm. And if they ended up in it, you got to go, which is pretty cool. Again, which is probably why that team or that business model doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah, but. that can't be good for business. <laughs> Other than unless people buy in, even if they don't go. That's how you make money. Yeah. Like you pay to bid like that website yep. where you pay to bid. Yep. Okay, the uh, 80 style boom box. I have one of those. It's downstairs. So maybe we should prop it up here next week. So well, yeah, and we'll throw it up. Oh, our- speaking of our, our setup, we have a new addition this week. <laughs> We do want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Fire maracas the maracas are really working. The sound is maracas. But we do want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas from Fire the Cannon. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cute. It was at CVS. Uh, yeah. Hey, that's good to know. Yeah. See? Another, another. It, it was at CVS just because I went in to get ketchup. And- yeah. So, CB, let's again. We're we're still talking Sugar Bowl here, and mm-hmm. Merry Christmas, um, CB. We know you're the consummate Longhorn. You you follow Texas. You have for a long time. You are our Texas Rain Man because you know every stat, everything right <laughs> off the bat without questioning. And she you means have that it in a nice way. Absolutely, I do. Like you have that ready to go, and I love that. But you are in the Pacific Northwest, so it is expensive to get down. I know that that Washington fans have are are upset about it being the Sugar Bowl versus the Rose Bowl. Blame Michigan. Don't blame us. Michigan pick. They won. Michigan's the, the one that got to choose which bowl to play in, and it mm-hmm. was Rose for Michigan because they do have a great history. They have a great there. record in the Rose Bowl. They do. Until this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I agree. I, I will argue this, too, for the Washington fans that were here a little bit earlier talking about, um, you know, that this might be an easy path and beating the crap out of Texas. I will also add in that this is going to be a home game for yes, Texas. Yes, it is. It's going to be a home game. This is going to, we showed out in, in the Georgia uh, Sugar Bowl back in 2019 for the 2018 season. Um, there are a lot of Texas fans there, period. And Georgia travels well. Mm-hmm. I will give credit to Washington fans. Y'all came down to Alamo. It was, there There were some good fans there. But listen, y'all, this is this is a home game for Texas. I was looking, uh, this is another hack. If you don't know, if you're in Washington, you don't know, we're an eight hour drive Yeah, to New City Orleans. Which is less than if you like decide to fly. Yes. Less <laughs> By the time you, you pack up, go through security, you know, get there early, have to get your rental car, all that stuff. Yeah. It's actually about the same amount of time And you to can drive. stop and grab a pack of boo down to grill on the tailgate. Let on me the tell way. you, I'm yeah, best stop in yes. Louisiana is the best place to go. Just off of 10. The name of it is called Best Stop. It's literally called Best Stop. That's because it is best the stop. best stop. So, oh, you can blame Georgia too, Ryan. I, I appreciate that. So, For not winning and giving Alabama <laughs> the bump in, which if you could have had Florida State. Yeah, the big bridge in Baton Rouge, <laughs> here's the trick. Just don't go in peak times. Yeah. I I dated a guy that lived between Baton Rouge and, and uh, New Orleans. Uh, in, he lived in Maurepas. And you just have to know when to time it out. Because, yeah, it can be a nightmare hitting that that uh there you go if you get stuck and gotta pee yeah i have seen because we used to go to new orleans a lot for rugby (laughs) too because that was in our region i've seen people get out and pee and jump back in their car we love it that we're we're talking about our bathroom habits on i mean you know it's listen it's life we all pee i've driven 22 hours from austin to west virginia that's it. That is a hell of a drive. Yeah. You pee in weird places when you need to. I get it. I'm, yeah. There's zero judgment here. So I uh, like it. Well, again, this is going to definitely be a, a Texas heavy 
fan base in New Orleans. Unfortunately, it's going to be mostly Texas. Yeah, I, I, I mean, a good majority, even the championship game, which is pretty halfway between Dallas. I mean, that was in Dallas. It's halfway between Austin and Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. That was mostly Texas. Yeah. And then by the fourth quarter, almost all Texas. Yeah. And it's, it's easy to drive. It right? is easy. So driving to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl or driving to Dallas, which I told y'all before the game, if you <laughs> wanted to roll up in a new nice vehicle for the bolt for the championship game, or if you still want to roll up to the Sugar Bowl in a fancy new ride, feeling good, ready for the win, mm -hmm. go to Covert B Caves. I like that. That's <laughs> Go to Covert Auto Group. They are a family-owned group of automotive dealerships, and they've been in this area for Austin area. You might be somewhere else. They're in the Austin <laughs> area for 100 years, so you can come down to Austin and pick up a car and drive it all the way home. They are um, in Bee Cave, Texas, which is there on 42 acres of beautiful hill country. They have Buick, GMC, Cadillac, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Also, they have Ford and Chevy in Hutto, Texas, and Ford Lincoln in Austin, so if you want to see their latest inventory and whatever specials they have going on, it's the end of the year. That's usually a good time to get yeah. in the car. Listen, all the great Covert deals go on. Covertbcave.com. Yep. End of the year is a good time because they have to sell them off or else they pay taxes on it, yep. right? Absolutely. You well, might be able to find a nice car for the road. Tell us because you work for auto dealerships. I did. So manufacturers offer the best incentives at the end of the year. Again, Ooh, good about, time to go. It's about getting rid of inventory. It's about all that. Um, and on top of that, if you tell them that uh, – Texas Sports Unfiltered sent you. Oh, yeah. They'll give you a little extra yes, love. Yes, let so. them know you, you hear about us every Wednesday yeah. on Texas Sports Unfiltered. Yeah. And, and fire the cannon. Fire the cannon. So, so yeah, yeah. All right. So we are, I, I as we close out, we got 10 more minutes here. But yes. I love that we got arguing so heated about tickets. That was some good, it's good. good Thanks, conversation. Thank you to our Washington fan who was, who was heating it up <laughs> and riling everybody up. That's yes. good. Agreed. Um, let's talk about our favorite bowl games. You guys throw, throw this in the chat. We want to hear it. What is your favorite bowl game that you've been to Rocky? Give me. Okay. And, and I'm going to make this caveat. I'm going to make this stank face. Like, I'm going to make this caveat. Take out the national championship oh, yeah. Rose bowl. You have to take, take it out. out. Cause that, I don't consider that a bowl game. I consider that a national championship, national championship game. All right. So um, give me your, what, what was your best game bowl game postseason game experience not including the national the vince young national championship um if that guy hadn't called me fat for being pregnant i would have said arizona state when we <laughs> played them at san diego yeah it was great holiday bowl, holiday bowl yeah. because i love san diego and i was with my sister and husband and his and her husband so we had a great weekend together mm -hmm. or whatever days we went um i would say the funnest was when we brought the stonders our friends in south africa to San Antonio Alamo Bowl to yeah. Utah, yeah. which was 2019, yep. New Year's, 30, December 30th, maybe. I was at that. Yeah. You, well, we were together hanging out, and we <laughs> brought a mariachi band to the tailgate. Fun fact, oh. if you get me drunk enough. She will purchase a mariachi I band. will hire a mariachi band. Sorry, mariachi band. Mariachis. To, and you're not supposed to say band. It's no. mariachi. That's no. my fault. White girl here. All right, I say mariachi band. Uh, yeah, I it's not a band. If you get me drunk enough, Grupo. I will <laughs> hire mariachis to show up at your tailgate the next day at your bowl game that you're playing at. So that was fun, <laughs> that was great, and we had a great time. The whole, the whole, we did. The whole time was great. The night before, we went out, we met, we met great friends, we got to hang out with our friends from South Africa, got to see San Antonio. River so it was Wall. like the vibe of San yes. Antonio. Yes, and then so see Utah, Sooners, you'll be okay. Utah, who was okay. almost in the playoffs that year, we ran them out the Alamo Alamo Dome. That was a that was a fun good weekend, like whatever that days was, probably a Tuesday. Yeah, that was a fun few days of bowl game experience. Yeah, that was good. All right. So I am going to have to agree with Sandman 23, 2008 Fiesta Bowl. You're right. It was for the 2008 season. Technically, it was the 09 Fiesta Bowl. Um, I have to agree. If I'm taking out the national championship discussion, 08 season, 09 Fiesta Bowl, mm -hmm. where Texas played Ohio State, yeah. played Beanie Wells. Quan Cosby has that amazing oh, catch where he's like supermaning, and yes. that was probably my my very favorite bowl game experience. I will tell you, I got really lucky. Again, I was you know newer, younger, fresh out of college, a couple years out of college, booking you know all these away game things and just having a blast. 
And I got lucky enough to book a hotel that was like, oh, this says it's close to the stadium. This was obviously pre, like, you couldn't look on Google Maps exactly oh, yeah. and all this stuff. So I booked this hotel for my friends and I. And it just so happened to be in the parking lot of the stadium <laughs> where the Fiesta Bowl was played, right? Can't get much The closer. Phoenix at the time, I think it was the, you know, the Phoenix University, whatever stadium. So then we also happened to have a, it looked like a mall, like it was an outdoor mall, but, you know, two levels, but everything on the first level were bars and restaurants. Oh, fun. So we could literally walk to that walk back to our hotel, walk to the game. It was obscene how much alcohol I consumed that weekend. It was ridiculous. No way. Ended up no bull, way. I know me never. No way. Ended up bull riding. Like they had a mechanical bull at one of the uh, bars that we went to. And the guy, I, I guess I put off, I will ride a mechanical bull vibes. Yeah, you do. So he literally, it was kind of, the bar was kind of chill. And he was like, hey, if you get on the bull, you ride for free. I'm just trying to get people like if one person goes, then people will start riding. Come on. So I'm there in my Texas gear, my boots, my jeans, my longhorn stuff, blonde. And I'm again, fresh out of college. So I was cute at the time. Right. I get on this bull and, and it's obnoxious. Like it's so much fun. Again, I will post this on Twitter. It was a really great time. Made so many friends, had so many free drinks. Like the Fiesta Bowl was probably for me, top five sports adventures in my life which is seeing something it was a good time yeah it was a good time i i've had yeah for me like overall rugby is usually a more exciting community event but (laughs) i do i of course i love go ahead And, and this is fair ryan uh so if for those that are in the chat my my good buddy Ryan is a Washington fan. Don't hold it against him. Get out um, of here. No, we just... were we were at the Alamo Bowl last year. And do you remember the dog that came up to my tailgate? Yes, and you tried to take it home. You were like, first of you, all, you didn't you were try. like I should I should you did take it home and found it a house or something. Yeah. Like that. So yeah. he came and hung out at the tailgate the whole time. I fed him a little bit. I might have had dog food with me because that's what crazy people do. Yeah. Um, he stayed in uh the car the whole time. And then he also, like, after the game, he was super chill. I did end up, like, driving away and let him out to run around. And he decided he was a street dog because I was going to take him home. Straight up, I was going to take him home. He decided he was a street dog. He wanted to go home. That's fine. Let him be. Maybe he was trying to get home to his family. I like it. All right. 41-38. I don't want them to score 38, but that would be (laughs) amazing. Where are you tailgating? Okay, so figuring this out, I will definitely post it. We'll talk about it. Um, it will be near Poydras and O'Keefe, somewhere in that area. But as soon as we get an actual real lot, because that's where we tailgated for the 2019 Sugar Bowl. So uh, as soon as I have secured tickets for tailgating, <laughs> I'll let y'all know. Y'all are more than welcome to show up. It'll be lovely. Um, I will not be at this game. All right, so... We're going to do this again, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a really fun conversation with everybody in the chat. We appreciate our Washington fans. Greg, bless your heart. I hope uh, I hope you find a little more discovery in Texas uh, sports. I think we will. It's going to be a great game. Um, there's absolutely no shit talking on our end. No, nope. this this is a really great matchup. So I would say, Greg, go, I don't, I'm sure you've watched it, <laughs> but go like really watch the Big 12 championship game. It's a, it's a good comparison against the Doak Walker Award winner who ended up with 34 yards rushing. Yes, absolutely. So, all right, y'all, as we close out here again, we appreciate you joining us. Please make sure that you like and follow uh, subscribe. Like and follow uh, Texas Sports Unfiltered on Twitter. That is TS Unfiltered on Twitter. Uh, You can find us under the same handle on Instagram. Also, you're here joining us on YouTube. So you know the channel. Please like and subscribe. Put those notifications on. We will join you every Wednesday, 3 to 5, and have delightful conversations like this where uh, you know, we, we get, again, we love it. We love it when people join us from other fan bases and have great conversation. Just don't act like a butthole. Like we had to ban a few people earlier, but one guy, yeah, you know, uh, we appreciate y'all. Thank you so much, Sandman. We appreciate you. Greg, are you joining us? I'm going to ask this. Are you 
joining us from, from Hawaii. Hawaii. I hope so. That would be amazing. And again, thank you for your commentary. And yes, we are insane. CB in a split household, but we know where you stand, CB. Yeah, CB, we, we know where your loyalties lie. All right, y'all. So as always, we appreciate you. Um, we've got a few things just as we sign off on where to watch. Kobe Block, Longhorn, it's official. It's Absolutely. out loud now. We can say it out loud say now. It. it is done. It is almost done. He's just a sign, <laughs> but that's amazing. Yep. Um, we have so there, volleyball. This is a really busy, busy week uh, for weekend for Texas sports. So please, mm -hmm. y'all, if you are looking to watch, uh, make sure that you tune in tonight to Texas women's basketball versus Arizona. That's another Pac-12 team that's about to not be Pac, not be part of the Pac-2 anymore. Um, the two Pac. Yep, absolutely. So <laughs> Texas women's volleyball tonight at 8 p.m. You can watch on the Pac-12 Network or, of course, tune in. Volleyball Thursday um, night. Yep, volleyball uh, taking on Wisconsin, number three in the nation, Wisconsin, uh, Thursday night. That is a final four matchup. This is to go to the national championship game. Yes. Uh, that's Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. And... You can always catch our men's basketball Saturday, 11 a.m. versus LSU. That's going to be a great matchup. A.M. Are they at some kind of tournament, SEC Big 12 Yeah, it's tournament? in Houston. Okay. In that's Houston. I was like, why are they playing 11 a.m.? So, again, uh, one last comment. Uh, please make sure if you guys are in the Austin area, come join us on Friday from 4 to 6. We'll be for there. Hayden Connors Pause for a Cause at Mutt's Cantina in North Austin. Again, we'll post all of this on Twitter. You guys can follow us along. You have the chance to meet the O-line. You have the chance to meet some of the DBs. And Arch Manning is going to be and there. And a quarterback or two. And a quarterback or two, perhaps Quinn as well. So please join us. And if you're in the Houston area, yep. uh, please look for Vernon Broughton's Toy Drive. Again, we will be reposting all of this. You can donate your time. You can donate clothes, toys, or shoes for kiddos, or you can donate an online gift card. We just really want to support our our guys, our big guys with big hearts. We appreciate <laughs> y'all here. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for now, again, we ran a little long. We appreciate you being here. For now, I'm Megan. I'm Rocky. And we are Fire the Cannon.